Hi guys. I would like to invite you to the audiobook service where we upload more than 300 hours of different audiobooks a week, link in details in the video description. Chapter, 91. Mystery Man. What does this have to do with him? Lupin and Snape were confused. Seeing the confusion of Harry, Ron, and Hermione, Dumbledore especially explained, the person who just broke into the Gryffindor common room was. There was a red-haired wizard and he wounded Sirius. The three Harrys quickly looked at Sirius. I'm fine. Sirius waved his hand and said. Sia Ran waved his magic wand, and a newspaper suddenly appeared in his hand. He spread out the newspaper and motioned for everyone to take a look at the content. Um, Sia Ran, you still like to read this kind of gossip. Lu Ping said with a strange expression. Dumbledore chuckled and said, I happen to know the wizard here. Thinking about the ridiculous things he did when he was young, the Daily Prophet did not lie. It was at most exaggerated. Xia Ran didn't know whether to laugh or cry, and said, What are you looking at? He pointed at the news about a senior official of the Ministry of Magic asking for leave with his wand, and continued, Look here. A senior official of the Department of International Magical Exchange and Cooperation of the Ministry of Magic has asked for leave it is said that this is the first time in a row that he has asked for leave it's day three of leave I think this guy is Barty Crouch. Barty Crouch? Harry and Hermione looked confused. Ron whispered from the side, he is the director of the Department of International Magical Exchange and Cooperation, one of the real senior officials of the Ministry of Magic. That red-haired wizard is Barty Crouch, that's impossible, right? Lupin said with a frown. Xia Ran said, of course I didn't say that the red-haired wizard is Barty Crouch. The red-haired wizard is most likely a Death Eater. When Barty Crouch faced black magic, he was still able to stick to the bottom line and not fall. After a slight pause, he continued, I am talking about his son, Barty Crouch Jr. Who is an extremely loyal Death Eater. This incident was very troublesome at the time. Big, very sensational, you probably haven't forgotten it, right? I will never forget it, Lupin said softly. Barty Crouch was a member of the most determined camp to resist black magic, but his own son turned out to be one of the most loyal Death Eaters to the mysterious man. It's really shocking. At that time, many people were criticizing Barty Crouch, saying that he was too neglectful of family ties and focused on seeking power. In the end, this also caused him to lose the position of Minister of Magic that was easily available to him. Fudge is the new Minister for Magic. Ha! Snape suddenly sneered and said, Xia Ran, I think you may have forgotten that Barty Crouch Jr. died shortly after entering Azkaban prison because he could not resist the temptation. He died in prison because of his addiction to happiness. That's false. Xia Ran said, the deceased Barty Crouch Jr. was his mother. Shortly after being imprisoned, Mrs. Crouch entrusted her to serve as a senior official of the Ministry of Magic because of her love for her son. Her husband, Barty Crouch, replaced her son in prison with herself. Polyjuice Potion, Professor Snape, you must know the effects of Polyjuice Potion. Snape nodded. As a master of potions, he had brewed countless Polyjuice Potions. Harry, Ron, and Hermione looked at each other guiltily. Last school year, they prepared to brew Polyjuice Potion, pretended to enter the Slytherin Lounge, and learn from Draco Malfoy. Find information about the secret room. But in the end, this plan failed to come to fruition, and the secret room incident was successfully resolved. Think about it, did Mrs. Crouch and the so-called Barty Crouch Jr. in prison die both front and back? Xia Ran smiled, I once went to the Crouch family manor once for business. Some secrets were discovered. Barty Crouch Jr. should be controlled by Barty Crouch, perhaps using the imperious curse, and he is mainly taken care of by the house elf of the Crouch family, Winky. Snape still had a questioning look on his face. We will not discuss whether it is true or false for now. Assuming that what you said, Xia Ran, is true, but Barty Crouch, after getting rid of his father's control, what did he come to Hogwarts for? Lupin confused. When Dumbledore heard this, he seemed to have thought of something, and said softly, he may have rescued Voldemort from the Albanian forest. 
This time he took the opportunity to sneak into Hogwarts, and he also followed Voldemort's orders. Lupin, Snape, and Ron's expressions all twisted and twitched strangely. Professor, are you saying that he wants to capture Harry? Hermione asked. But I attended the Halloween party. He shouldn't have appeared at that time. Maybe it would have been better earlier. Harry said. Have you forgotten this man? Xia Ran pointed to Peter Pettigrew who was tied up and lying on the ground, and said, Peter Pettigrew's animagus deformation should have been recognized by Voldemort. So he sent the minibus Ty Crouch took the opportunity to sneak into Hogwarts and contact Peter Pettigrew in order to capture Harry at a critical moment when he needed it. Xia Ran still had something to say in her heart. If the red-haired wizard was really a Death Eater who obeyed Voldemort's orders, their plot against Harry should be the same as in the original time and space, in order to use Harry's blood to help Voldemort carry out a conspiracy. The perfect resurrection. Although the actual effect is not perfect. Professor, isn't Voldemort dead? Is he resurrected? Harry asked. Xia Ran smiled and said, I think the reason why he tried every possible means to catch you is to resurrect you. Catch me and resurrect me. Harry said, confused, I don't know the resurrection magic, why is he catching me? Lu Ping also frowned and said, if he wants to be resurrected, he should look for the resurrection stone in the Deathly Hallows, right? If the legendary Deathly Hallows really exists. The resurrection stone cannot truly resurrect the dead. Voldemort's weird and strange state, I think the resurrection stone can't do anything about it. Xia Ran chuckled. Snape said slowly, Xia Ran, it seems that you are very familiar with the Resurrection Stone. Xia Ran decided not to hide anything. After all, if Creature, the house elf in Black's old house, would get the locket from him later, he would need Sirius's help. Then he would definitely disclose everything to him frankly, so even if he wanted to hide it, it is only for a short period of a few months at most. It has no effect, but it can easily lead to a rift in the relationship between the two parties. Furthermore, this is not something shameful, so why can't it be told to everyone? What a coincidence, the resurrection stone is in my hand. Xia Ran smiled. What? The resurrection stone is in your hand? The Deathly Hallows really exist? Except for Harry, Ron, and Hermione, who knew nothing about the Deathly Hallows, Snape, Lupin, and Sirius all looked super surprised. Even Dumbledore was surprised. The wand in his hand was the Elder Wand, one of the Deathly Hallows. So he was not surprised at all that the Deathly Hallows really existed, Dumbledore also knew that the invisibility cloak passed down from Harry's family was one of the Deathly Hallows. 1. It's just that Xia Ran owns the last Deathly Hallows, which still surprises him. He had searched for the Deathly Hallows, but he had never had any clues about the Resurrection Stone. How did Xia Ran obtain the Resurrection Stone? Chapter, 92 Xia Ran, you actually own the Resurrection Stone. Sirius was particularly shocked. He had been living in Fremont Manor for several months without knowing anything about it. Does the Deathly Hallows really exist? A strange light flashed in Snape's eyes. Xia Ran nodded and said, The Deathly Hallows is a story in a fairy tale book in the magical world, but it does exist. Then he waved his hand again and continued, Okay, let's not talk about the Deathly Hallows. Let's talk about Voldemort and Harry. Harry looked confused when he heard this. Ah, uh, yes, I remember that there is an ancient mysterious magic that can help wizards resurrect. Dumbledore said, The blood of enemies, the flesh of servants, and the bones of father. I think there are no enemies for Voldemort. Including me, none of them are as significant as Harry. After all, his first downfall was due to using the Avada Kedavra on Harry. As a result, he himself died and only gave Harry it left that scar. Voldemort used this magic to resurrect himself in the original time and space. Is he really back, Dumbledore? Lupin asked with difficulty, remembering the fierce and tragic situation during the first wizarding war. Dumbledore shook his head and said, probably not yet, after all, he has not obtained Harry's blood yet, but Voldemort must have escaped from the Albanian forest and powerful Death Eaters have reunited under his command. Obviously, the second wizarding war is coming. 
No matter Lupin, Sirius, Ran, or Snape, their expressions were extremely solemn. The wizarding war was by no means a child's play, it was a battle that cost the lives of countless wizards. Muggles their lives are even more fragile. During the first wizarding war, the number of muggles who died at the hands of Death Eaters was definitely tens of thousands, or even more. Because in the eyes of many Death Eaters, muggles are not human beings at all. They take pleasure in killing muggles, and even want to push for laws to legalize the killing of muggles. No one can predict what such crazy people will do in a moment of fever. Harry and Hermione were born in the muggle world and didn't know much about it. Although Ron had lived in the magical world since he was a child, he was not yet born during the first wizarding war. When it was about to end, he when he came to this world, he had no memory before he was three years old. Like Harry and Hermione, he had almost no in-death understanding. Let's go to Crouch Manor first to check out the situation. Snape, Ran, Lupin, and Sirius, you can come with me and get ready for battle. Dumbledore said and looked at Harry too. The man said, go and inform Professor McGonagall and tell Minerva everything that happened tonight. By the way, keep a good watch on Peter. It's up to you whether Sirius can truly clear his name. Harry, Ron, and Hermione nodded immediately, feeling that they had received a lot of trust and took on the task of fighting Voldemort. We will leave Hogwarts immediately, and then use Apparition to rush to Crouch Manor. Dumbledore quickly walked out of Gryffindor Tower, although he knew that going to Crouch Manor at this time was probably over. Nothing can be done. If all Sierra Rant's inferences were true, then Voldemort and Barty Crouch Jr. must have left Crouch Manor early at this moment, and would not expose their whereabouts without thorough preparation. But there must be some clues at Crouch Manor, and they may be able to get a glimpse of Voldemort's current situation. Several people arrived outside the protective range of Hogwarts. Dementors were wandering around. Dumbledore looked at the Dementors with disgust and said, Grab my hand. By the way, Sia Ran, you have been there too. Once at Crouch Hall, right? I can just use apparition myself. Sia Ran said. Snape put his hand on one of Dumbledore's arms, Lupin put his hand on Dumbledore's other arm, and Sirius put his hand on Sia Rant's left hand. Snapped. Snapped. Two consecutive explosions attracted the attention of the Dementors. When they floated over, nothing existed. The place was empty, and the Dementors floated elsewhere. Outside a dark and quiet village, an ancient manor occupies a large area. The interior is dark, as if the owner has gone to bed long ago. Sia Ran and Dumbledore suddenly appeared outside the manor. Barty Crouch. Mr. Crouch. Dumbledore shouted, but there was no response from the manor. Sirius said eagerly, I think we should sneak in quietly, what if we encounter the Death Eaters ambushing here? You mean you know who still stayed here after he knew he was exposed? Snape said sarcastically, I think you damaged your brain in Azkaban prison. Sirius immediately glared at Snape and roared angrily, Snotlout, do you want to die? Oh, really? Snape smiled coldly and said, continue to rely on your friends. Sirius, things are different now. It seems that you have really lost your mind in Azkaban. You. Sirius' wand was instantly aimed at Snape, and he fired the spell almost uncontrollably. Snape also raised his wand, but did not take the lead in reciting the incantation. Okay, be quiet. Dumbledore said with a hint of impatience in his voice, Sirius, don't point your wand at your own people. Snape and Sirius slowly lowered their wands pointed at each other, still looking at each other fiercely, as if they both wished the other side bad luck. I just broke in through the door, Dumbledore. I hope the Ministry of Magic won't come to trouble me later. Sia Ran said and recited the spell again, open the Alejo hole. The door to Crouch Manor opened at the sound, revealing the path leading directly to the living room. I'll go in first. Dumbledore stretched out his hand to stop Sia Ran and said, as an old man, I have rich experience, so it's better for me to go in first. Sia Ran did not refuse Dumbledore's kindness. Dumbledore's strength and experience were indeed much better than his. Dumbledore was the first to enter Crouch Manor, Snape entered side by side with Sia Ran, Lupin was third, and Sirius was last. 
He looked around warily, turning back to look at the way he came from from time to time. But except for the five people, there was no other movement in the manor. Even if the incandescent light in the living room was turned on, it was still like this, as if the owner of the manor was no longer there. Hey, what is this? Lu Ping suddenly whispered and found a cotton cloth in a recliner, which had an unpleasant smell remaining on it. Dumbledore pulled it with his wand, his face suddenly became solemn, and he said in a deep voice, Voldemort once appeared here. Voldemort is not resurrected now and does not have a complete body. He may be lying on this chair. Xia Ran said thoughtfully. The five people searched every room, but apart from the recliner, they found nothing else. Neither Barty Crouch nor his house elves seemed to exist anymore. Seeing that the sky was getting brighter, Peter Pettigrew was still staying at Hogwarts, waiting for follow-up processing. Someone from the Ministry of Magic should be arriving soon, so they had to exit Crouch Manor and go back to Hogwarts again. Chapter, 93 When they returned to Hogwarts, Professor McGonagall, Harry, Ron, and Hermione were guarding the Gryffindor common room. Originally, Professor McGonagall asked the three Harrys to go back to the Great Hall to sleep. But all three of them wanted to know what the final result would be, and asked Professor McGonagall to let them stay. Professor McGonagall thought about it again and again, and reluctantly agreed. Peter Pettigrew was lying in a corner, tied tightly by a thick rope, with a look of despair on his face. Seeing that the sky outside was getting brighter and the glow of the morning sun had begun to appear in the sky, Professor McGonagall frowned tightly, looking a little worried. After all, Dumbledore, Snape, Xia Ran and other five people had been away for so long. But has not come back yet, and the target is the terrifying mysterious man and his followers, the Death Eaters. If she is not careful, she will lose her life. It is difficult for her to maintain a calm attitude. Albus is too reckless. Since he has to deal with the mysterious man, he should have called me or Professor Flittick. Professor McGonagall couldn't help complaining in a low voice. Minerva, I will definitely call you to join me in the next operation. A gentle voice suddenly came from outside the lounge, and five people entered the lounge one after another. It was Dumbledore, Snape, Lupin, Sirius, Xia Ran and the others. Professor McGonagall stood up immediately and asked, Albus, how is the situation? Harry, Ron, and Hermione also pricked up their ears and listened. When we went there, Crouch Manor was already empty. Mr. Crouch, Barty Crouch Jr. And their house elves were all missing. Dumbledore said softly, but we found a chaise long in the living room of Crouch Manor that retained a cold, dark aura. That is. Voldemort. Xia Ran interjected, those are the traces left by Voldemort. We are almost 100% sure that Voldemort was indeed able to leave the Albanian forest with the help of his loyal Death Eaters. Now, he is plotting his resurrection. Hiss. Professor McGonagall suddenly couldn't help but gasped. Professor, if Voldemort wants to be resurrected, wouldn't it be? Hermione pursed her lips and said, he will definitely come to intercept Harry. I remember you just mentioned the requirements of the ritual, the blood of the enemy, the blood of the servant flesh, father's bones. Yes, Miss Granger. Dumbledore said gently, but Harry is obviously not the only enemy of Voldemort, but Harry is the only one who survived his Avada Kedavra, to be precise. Speaking of all the people who survived Avada's Kedavra, Harry may have a special meaning to Voldemort, after all, he has failed on Harry twice in a row, the first time was twelve years ago the first time. It led to the complete downfall of Voldemort, and the second time was when Harry was in first grade, when you together defeated Voldemort's conspiracy to seek the Sorcerer's Stone, he may have temporarily identified Harry. You mean? Lupin frowned and said, the mysterious person may choose other people for the ritual needs of resurrection. I think it is possible, if he really has no way to catch Harry. Dumbledore nodded, but before that, he will definitely make many plans and efforts, and will only change the target unless it is absolutely impossible. Ron and Hermione looked at Harry worriedly, as if he was going to die tomorrow. Harry immediately waved his fist and said firmly, I will not be afraid of Voldemort. He killed my parents and so many innocent people. There is no way I will surrender to him. Well done, Harry. 
Sirius smiled and gave a thumbs up. Although Dumbledore looked very gentle and said nothing at the moment. Sia Ran secretly guessed that maybe Dumbledore was expecting Voldemort to use Harry's blood to resurrect him, which would deepen the connection between the two to some extent. Generally speaking, the deeper the connection, the easier it is for Voldemort to be killed by Harry, but it happens that he cannot kill Harry easily. Just like in the original time and space, Voldemort made several attacks, but even though he had an absolute advantage in terms of strength, he was not able to kill Harry even once. Albus, I informed the Ministry of Magic. They will come at eight o'clock in the morning, and Fudge will come in person. Professor McGonagall said. Dumbledore said happily, we'd better do this under the witness of everyone. Then he looked at Snape and said, Severus, please get a bottle of the most effective Veritasarum, I think that's the kind of situation that would allow the minister to admit the truth. Snape left gloomily. Okay, let's all go outside the auditorium first and wait for the minister to arrive at Hogwarts. Dumbledore said happily. With a wave of his wand, Peter Pettigrew floated up and walked along the Gryffindor Common. The entrance and exit passage of the lounge floats down to the tower. Several people followed Dumbledore's footsteps. Xia Ran fell at the end. He was thinking, will Fudge admit the news of Voldemort's return this time? In the original time and space, Fudge refused to acknowledge Voldemort's resurrection and return, which led to his break with Dumbledore and his subsequent downfall when the news could no longer be hidden. Sometimes many of Fudge's actions seem difficult to understand and full of confusion. For example, he always thought that Dumbledore coveted the position of Minister of Magic. This is a very unreasonable suspicion. After all, with Dumbledore's reputation and strength, he has had many opportunities to ascend to the throne of Minister of Magic, and no one in the magical world will think this is inappropriate behavior, but he they all refused. Now that Dumbledore is more than 110 years old, and almost half of his body is buried, how can he still covet the position of Minister of Magic? Fudge has been blinded by the minister's power. He is obsessed with pursuing power and cannot see the outside world clearly. In Sia Rant's view, leaders like Fudge command the wizarding world, which is really in line with Voldemort's wishes. After all, there are not so many people who are simply holding back the achievements and failure. In fact, there are not that many people who are just helpless. It's just a contribution, not a hindrance. This time the evidence is complete. Let's see what Fudge's attitude is. Xia Ran followed everyone outside the auditorium with great interest. The professor who came to patrol the Great Hall at the moment was Professor Flittick. Sirius and Peter Pettigrew appeared in his sight. When he saw them, he was startled and quickly pulled out his wand. Phileas, calm down. Dumbledore said continuously, I will explain this matter when the minister and others arrive later. Okay, okay. Professor Flittick reluctantly withdrew his wand. Not long after, Fudge came in from outside the school with a few Aurors, a big, dark-skinned man, and several serious-looking men. Sia Ran said hello to the dark-skinned burly man. His name was Kingsley Shacklebolt. He was now a leader of the Auror office. Sia Ran had a good relationship with him when she worked at the Ministry of Magic. There is a certain friendship. Fudge would not know that Kingsley was also a member of the Order of the Phoenix and recognized Dumbledore more than others. However, Fudge was present. In order to avoid arousing Fudge's suspicion, everyone else had a normal attitude, unlike Xia Ran. Said hello. Everyone present knew Xia Ran's past work, so no one paid much attention to it. Chapter, 94 Dumbledore, Minerva said you caught Sirius? Fudge came over and asked in a face-to-face -face manner. Minister, Sirius, Sirius Black, he's right here. Another Auror shouted loudly. He saw Sirius standing at the back and immediately took out his wand from his pocket and wanted to fire the magic wand. Curse. What? Ah, uh, yes, Sirius. Fudge was also surprised and took out his wand. Minister, I think you should give me a chance to speak. Dumbledore said politely. Fudge ignored Dumbledore's words and instead yelled, quickly, catch Sirius. Dumbledore, you actually protected such a vicious murderer. Minister. Dumbledore's voice suddenly became louder. With lightning speed, 
he pulled out the Elder Wand, removed the weapons of several Aurors, including Fudge and Kingsley, and then grabbed them in his hand. Fudge's hands were empty. He looked at Dumbledore blankly, as if he was meeting Dumbledore for the first time today. His eyes showed an extremely angry look, and he said, Dumbledore, I have always trusted you so much. You have finally been exposed. You must have been peeping at the position of Minister of Magic for a long time, and you finally took action today, right? You finally couldn't help it, Dumbledore. The expressions of Professor McGonagall, Snape, Professor Flittick, and Lupin all changed. They were both surprised and disgusted. They froze at Cornelius Fudge, as if they could see him clearly for the first time. Harry, Ron, and Hermione were too young to understand the specific situation and the political struggle, so they looked confused and confused at the moment. Sia Rand was watching idly. What kind of person was Fudge? He was familiar with the plot of the original time and space, and he understood it very clearly. He was a relatively capable wizard with a strong desire for power. But it was obvious that his reputation and ability were far inferior to Dumbledore, which gave him an extremely uneasy feeling. His ministerial throne seemed to be in danger of being usurped by Dumbledore at any time, at least in Fudge's view. Is such that. I have never had this idea, Cornelius. Dumbledore looked at Fudge with sharp eyes and said, but here we have an innocent man who has suffered for many years in prison for no reason, and there is also a real murderer. I think you should calm down and listen to what I have to say. As for this spell, it's the only way to calm you down at the moment. Okay, okay. I want to see what you will say, Dumbledore. Fudge said angrily. I will be happy to help the minister. Dumbledore said politely, as you can see now, Sirius, the wanted criminal of the Ministry of Magic Peter Pettigrew, a former so-called hero, was awarded the Order of Merlin, first class. The dead warriors are now in front of you. Fudge seemed to have just seen Peter Pettigrew, his eyes widened, staring straight at Peter Pettigrew lying on the ground. He, Peter Pettigrew. Isn't he dead? Obviously, Cornelius, he is still alive. Dumbledore said, this is what I want to say, about who betrayed the Potters twelve years ago and led to the death of the Potters. With that said, Dumbledore looked at Snape again and said, Severus, have you brought the Veritasrum? Snape nodded slightly. Trouble, said Dumbledore. Snape took out a small bottle from his arms, which contained a clear liquid. He opened the cap and carefully dropped a few drops into Peter Pettigrew's mouth. His desperate eyes suddenly became dull and his cheeks relaxed. Go down. Veritasrum is a special magic potion. The words spoken by a person who takes the potion are 100% true, without a single lie. It is perfect for interrogating messages. Can you hear me? Dumbledore asked. Peter Pettigrew trembled, but replied in a flat tone without emotion, you can hear it. Fudge's face seemed to twitch strangely. At this time, the students in the auditorium woke up one after another because the previous quarrel was too loud, and heard voices outside the door. One of them was the principal Dumbledore, and the other seemed to be the Minister of Magic, Cornell. Lee Fudge. Many bold students crept out of their sleeping bags, ran to the door, and eavesdropped on the conversations of several people outside. Creak. The door was suddenly opened at this time. The little wizards were stunned for a moment. But it was Xia Ran who pushed open the door of the auditorium, looked at the group of stunned little wizards behind the door, smiled. And said, you also have the right to know about this matter, there is no need to eavesdrop, just watch in an open and honest manner. Yes, but you have to be quiet and don't talk. Looking at Xia Ran, Dumbledore and Fudge ignored his actions. Indeed, this matter could no longer be hidden, and Dumbledore had never thought of hiding it from others. The little wizards immediately swarmed over and looked at Sirius with surprise and fear, but they still followed Professor Fremont's advice. Even though their hearts were scratching their heads and they were extremely curious, they remained silent. I hope you will tell us. Dumbledore said calmly, who was the person who surrendered to Voldemort and betrayed the Potters? People held their breath. Peter Pettigrew trembled twice again, and still said in a calm tone, It's me. I'm an undercover agent of the Dark Lord. 
he caught me and he wanted to kill me. I had no choice but to take refuge under him and work for him. Doing business and delivering various intelligence messages. I am also the potter's confidential keeper. I informed the Dark Lord of the news and told them the potter's specific address. The Dark Lord was very happy. Wow! The crowd was instantly in an uproar, and heated discussions started one after another. Sirius is innocent. Who is this person? Peter Pettigrew. I recognize him. He is the wizard who died at the hands of Sirius. He has been dead for a long time. Why is he still alive? The crowd murmured. Fudge's face couldn't help but twitch. Then Dumbledore asked Peter Pettigrew several more questions. Under the influence of Veritasarum, Peter Pettigrew answered them all in detail, and the crowd gradually changed their attitude. In the end, everyone felt disgusted and disgusted. Looking at Peter Pettigrew in the distance. Many people looked very disgusted after witnessing Peter Pettigrew. The truth of what happened twelve years ago has been revealed to the world today. Corneli, this is the truth, you know the effect of Veritasarum. Dumbledore said happily. Yeah, I know. Fudge said with a tight face, Kingsley, Delis, take Peter Pettigrew away. He will spend the rest of his life in Azkaban prison, and I will also be there. A meeting was held later to strip Peter Pettigrew of all titles and restore serious reputation, proving his innocence. After he finished speaking, he immediately turned around and left. Corneli, please wait a moment, Dumbledore called. What's the matter? Fudge turned around impatiently. Dumbledore said politely, There is another very important thing that I must tell you and make it public. Everyone has the right to know. What? Fudge had an ominous premonition in his heart. Xia Ran shook her head secretly. Judging from Fudge's performance just now, after Dumbledore really told the important news, the return of the Dark Lord Voldemort, the split between him and Dumbledore was inevitable. Chapter 95 The fact is as Xia Ran expected. Voldemort has returned. Dumbledore said word by word. He also did not shy away from the students in the auditorium, because this was important information that everyone in the wizarding world needed to know. When the large group of young wizards heard this, they looked around blankly, thinking that they had heard wrongly, or that this was a joke made by the principal. The principal always liked to tell jokes, and would usually get hit hard by Professor McGonagall. Interrupted by a cough, but this time they only saw the same stern face of Professor McGonagall. Everyone's hearts pounded, as if they were tied to a big boulder and were falling to the bottom of the valley at an accelerating rate. Listen to me, Dumbledore. Fudge actually had a smile on his face at this moment and said, Mysterious man, that terrible Dark Lord, is back. Dumbledore, you really know how to joke. Mysterious man he is clearly dead. The hero who killed the mysterious man is still standing in front of us now. You see, Harry Potter, our famous savior. How could the mysterious man come back? Dumbledore, are you sure? It was a mistake. Dumbledore said softly, Mr. Barty Crouch, the director of the Department of International Magical Exchange and Cooperation, is probably dead. He may be the first victim after Voldemort's comeback, because his son Barty Crouch Jr. Rouch. Stop joking. Fudge yelled, pacing back and forth, saying, Barty Crouch Jr. Ha. Huh. Dumbledore, he died in Azkaban prison a long time ago. You are really talking nonsense. Extremely ridiculous. No one spoke, and countless pairs of eyes stared blankly at Dumbledore and Cornelius Fudge. The two men were still looking at each other, as if they wanted to convince each other to accept their opinions. It could be seen that Fudge wanted to look away, but an inexplicable courage supported him. He felt that at this critical moment, he could not lose to Dumbledore, at least not in terms of momentum. Xia Ran shook her head secretly. Sure enough, Fudge's reaction was still the same. Just like the development in the original time and space, he was asked to admit that Voldemort had returned and the magical world that had been peaceful and stable for more than ten years would once again fall into war. Fudge did not have this courage. Perhaps Dumbledore should have supported a ministry official who favored him as Minister of Magic rather than Cornelius Fudge. 
but this is also impossible to say, after all, power can always corrupt people's hearts. When Fudge first became Minister of Magic, he wrote letters every day asking for Dumbledore's opinions and collecting suggestions from all parties. However, more than ten years later, Fudge seems to believe that he does have the ability to command the entire magical world. Even Dumbledore they all have to step aside. I will explain it to you in detail, Cornelius. Dumbledore said firmly, but the news of Voldemort's return must be announced to the entire wizarding world, so that people will be highly vigilant about it. Do you really want to do this? Dumbledore, the mysterious man cannot be resurrected. He is dead. He died twelve years ago. Fudge's voice seemed to contain a hint of pleading, as if he was trying to persuade Dumbledore. Leto, stop promoting the theory of Voldemort's return. After a moment of silence, Dumbledore broke the silence and said, But I know several resurrection magics, and Voldemort has always been better at this than me. Fudge closed his mouth tightly, as if his words were burning. He stared at Dumbledore, and after a long while he said with difficulty, Okay, okay. Dumbledore, if you really insist. I will order the prophet the news will be published in the daily news, and tonight, the entire wizarding world will know it. As you wish, Dumbledore. I'm very grateful and very happy. As far as I know, Voldemort's current situation shouldn't be particularly good. Dumbledore said politely. Fudge ignored Dumbledore, but looked at Sirius and Peter Pettigrew, and said, the truth about what happened twelve years ago will also be revealed. Well, goodbye. After Fudge finished speaking, he strode outside the school. Corneli, when you leave, don't forget to take the Dementors with you. Hogwarts no longer needs them. Dumbledore reminded loudly at the end. I know. Fudge said angrily, his voice seemed extremely annoyed. Kingsley and Delhi set up Peter Pettigrew, and together with several other Aurors, followed the footsteps of Minister Fudge. Dumbledore turned to face all the students in the auditorium, as well as some professors who had rushed over after hearing the news. The expressions on their faces were strange and contradictory. It seemed that they wanted to believe Dumbledore, but they were unwilling to believe him. You should have heard the conversation I had with the minister just now, so I won't repeat it again, but you must remember one thing, or understand one thing, why do you exist? Why do you fight? It doesn't matter if you don't know for the time being. But I hope you can think more about this in private and understand this. Dumbledore said loudly, Okay, now you go back to your respective dormitories to wash up, then come down for breakfast. I believe you are going through after a not-so-restful night's sleep, you'll be craving for a hot and delicious breakfast. No matter how confused and shocked people were, they still left one after another, and the low voices could not help but resound, echoing in every corner of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Dumbledore finally said softly, Minerva, Severus, Sharon, Remus, Rubius, and Sirius, I hope you can all come to my office. Ah, of course, it is in use after breakfast. A few people nodded slightly, and Sia Ran said to the Weasley brothers, I have confiscated this marauder's map. Professor McGonagall nodded with satisfaction. The Weasley brothers smiled happily and said, Professor, I gave it to you. In fact, they have already memorized all the secret passages, and it doesn't matter whether they have the marauder's map or not. Um, Professor McGonagall. Harry said tentatively, encouraged by Ron and Hermione, there is no guardian signature on my Hogsmeade permission form, but except for my aunt and uncle, the little Sirius is my godfather, so it shouldn't be a problem for him to sign, right? Sirius, will you sign it for me? Finally he asked unconfidently. Of course. Sirius smiled. Professor McGonagall nodded slowly and said, Yes, Potter, I think there is no problem. The Godfather can indeed be your guardian. Thank you, Professor. Harry quickly disappeared up the stairs, apparently looking for his permission form. By this time, the auditorium had returned to its original state, with hundreds of sleeping bags disappearing and several long dining tables once again appearing in the auditorium. After Sia Ran had breakfast, she arrived at Dumbledore's principal's office with Professor McGonagall and Snape. Lupin, Sirius, and Hagrid had already arrived before them. Dumbledore seemed to be conversing with a portrait hanging on the wall. Chapter, 96 
When Xia Ran walked in, she heard Dumbledore say, Phineas, please. The wizard in a portrait on the wall said lazily, It's time to go to bed early now, Dumbledore, I have to catch up on some sleep. To be honest, my sleep quality has been very poor these days. At noon, I'll go back and take a look at it. As soon as Phineas's voice fell, the surrounding portraits burst into fierce protests. Disobedience, sir, disobedience. A fat wizard with a red nose waved his arms and shouted, Disobedience. We have an obligation to serve the current headmaster of Hogwarts. Shouted an old wizard who looked weak. Xia Ran recognized it as Dumbledore's predecessor, Armando Dippet. Don't be ashamed. Phineas. Do you want me to convince him, Dumbledore? I will be happy to help you convince Phineas. A shrewd-eyed witch raised a very thick wand, like a birch branch. Oh, okay. Phineas looked a little scared, glanced at the wand, and said, although there is no one in the family now, the only descendant is still staying in Azkaban. He just came from escape from prison. Sirius is now innocent, Dumbledore said. Sirius faced the others with a wry smile and spread his hands. This wizard happened to be his ancestor, a member of the Black family. The portrait of Phineas has wandered out of the frame, probably to the place where his portrait hangs elsewhere. Dumbledore, what is this? Professor McGonagall asked doubtfully. Dumbledore replied, I think it's time for the order to reconvene. Awesome. Sirius was the first to cheer. Lupin and Hagrid also smiled. They had been members of the Order of the Phoenix before. Snape still had a gloomy expression, seemingly unmoved. Yes, Order of the Phoenix. Now that Voldemort has returned, it's time to restart the Order of the Phoenix. Professor McGonagall sighed. Minerva, believe me, I also hope that the Order of the Phoenix will never be summoned. This means that the wizarding world will always be safe. Dumbledore said softly. Lu Ping thought that Xia Ran didn't know about the Order of the Phoenix, so he explained specifically, Xia Ran, the Order of the Phoenix was formed under Dumbledore's call to fight against mysterious people and Death Eaters. We have never openly appeared in the sight of the wizarding world. By the way, your parents were also members of the Order of the Phoenix more than ten years ago. Xia Ran nodded. In fact, he knew the inside story of the Order of the Phoenix. Dumbledore was undoubtedly the leader of the Order, Professor McGonagall was a general, and Sirius, Lupin, and Hagrid were important members. Snape and Xia Ran are new members of the Order of the Phoenix. Although this organization existed to deal with Voldemort and was specially formed, since the fall of Voldemort twelve years ago, the Order of the Phoenix has naturally disbanded. However, Fudge didn't know it. He was deeply afraid of Dumbledore and the rumored Dumbledore's underground organization. I think Fudge is not happy to see this scene. Xia Ran joked. Dumbledore sighed, if the Ministry of Magic can win this war, I will be happy that I only need to be a good teacher. But you have all seen Fudge's attitude. Even if he agreed to return Voldemort, the news has been made public, but what precautions will his Ministry of Magic take against this? We cannot have too much hope and expectation. At this moment, Phineas came back and said, I informed Creature, the house elf of the Black family, who is very loyal and capable, he will tidy up the old Black house. Thank you, Phineas, Dumbledore said. No thanks, now the control of Black's old house has been completely handed over to Sirius. Since he has agreed to serve as the headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix, what can I say? Phineas leaned on his frame again. Pretending to doze off. The old Black House can play such an important role and make the best use of its resources. Sirius said. Phineas snorted. Dumbledore said, The Order of the Phoenix has reconvened, so the old home of the Black family will be the latest headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix. Sirius, I will trouble you to go home from now on. We may have to go to Black from time to time. There will be a meeting in the old house to discuss the next step and how to prevent Voldemort from causing greater killings. Sirius waved his hand and said, It doesn't matter to me. Even though his face was a little dull when he said this, staying in Fremont Manor all the time is too troublesome for Xia Ran. It's normal to go home. Although I don't think they will recognize me as one of them. 
You are the owner of the Black Mansion, and you are a member of the Black family. Dumbledore said. Maybe. Sirius said noncommittally. Sirius, I need you to leave now. You need to inform a few old friends, Alastair Moody, Mundungus Fletcher, Arabella Fig, the Weasley family, and others. I will also notify people through other channels. You will go back to the Black Mansion first. Without your guidance, we will not be able to find the Black Mansion, even if we are standing outside the gate. Dumbledore began to arrange the task and distribution. Sirius nodded, stood up and left. Snape, I hope you will always pay attention. You must be prepared, be careful, be careful, be careful again. Dumbledore continued, with a slight worry on his face. Snape's face seemed to pale a lot, and he nodded silently. Although Professor McGonagall, Lupin, and Hagrid were confused, they did not ask any questions. There were some things that Dumbledore did not say, and he must have considered them. Xia Ran knew what Dumbledore meant. Snape was a double agent and needed to lurk next to Voldemort, making him mistakenly believe that Snape was a member of the Death Eaters and accept his order to undercover the Order of the Phoenix. This kind of undercover work is the most dangerous, so Dumbledore will not tell the third person about Snape's identity and specific work. This is a secret that only the two of them know. Xia Ran was unexpected by Dumbledore. After all, he was a traveler from another world. Dumbledore must have been unexpected. Of course, he would not publicize Snape's identity in a big way, as this would only kill Snape. However, Voldemort has not yet been completely resurrected, so it should be impossible to summon his Death Eaters. After all, Voldemort's more than ten years in the Albanian forest were not in vain. At least now Snape doesn't need to worry about Voldemort discovering his identity and killing him. Remus, Rubius, I may sometimes need you to run some places on the weekends, you know. Dumbledore continued. Lupin's face looked slightly pale. He knew what Dumbledore meant, asking him to contact the werewolf and sneak into the dark world. Although he hates it, this is his mission and only he can complete it. After all, no one else has his werewolf identity. Following Hagrid, Lupin also nodded lightly. Xia Ran, after teaching, you may have to travel to some places frequently. Dumbledore said. Xia Ran replied, okay, no problem. But he was thinking in his heart, should he tell Dumbledore now about Voldemort's other horcruxes? Chapter, 97 Xia Ran thought for a while, but still didn't choose to speak out at this time. He decided that in a few days, when the Order of the Phoenix held its first meeting at Black's old house, it might be a better time. After all, Dumbledore always had to explain the current intelligence information and everyone's subsequent mission arrangements at the meeting. Many people may have been confused when they first received the news. After roughly explaining the mission arrangements of Xia Ran and the others, Dumbledore looked at Xia Ran again and said slowly, Xia Ran, you have the resurrection stone in your hand, right? I wonder if I can borrow it. Hearing this, Professor McGonagall, Snape, and Lupin also looked at Xia Ran curiously. Does the Resurrection Stone, one of the three sacred artifacts of death, really exist in the world? Hagrid was the only one who didn't know the secret of the Resurrection Stone, but he looked confused at this moment. The Resurrection Stone is, after all, an illusory dream. The dead will not truly return to the world of the living, except for the ghosts who fear the world of the dead and stay in the world of the living. Xia Ran sighed. He may know that Dumbledore asked for resurrection. Stone, what exactly is it for? After all, Dumbledore longed for his family. Dumbledore smiled bitterly and said, I know, but I always want to try it. So in the original time and space, you lost your life because of this? Xia Ran kept this slander in her heart but didn't say it out loud. Marvelo Gaunt's ring and the resurrection stone embedded in it were found by Dumbledore in the original time and space. However, due to the temptation of the resurrection stone, he chose to wear the ring directly on his hand. As a result, he suffered the death of Voldemort. The black magic spell left behind specifically to protect his horcrux, Marvelo Gaunt's ring, is one of Voldemort's horcruxes. It contains a fragment of Voldemort's soul, which has been cursed by Xia Ran with a powerful fire spell. Destroyed, in the end, he only had one year left to live. 
If Snape hadn't been so skilled in potion preparation, Dumbledore might not even have one year left. Okay, I'll go home when I have time. Xia Ran said. In the evening, the latest issue of the Daily Prophet accompanied by the Owl Postman flew into every household in the magical world, and the headline on the front page was nothing but an outrageous piece of news. Dumbledore, the power-hungry villain. According to internal information from the Ministry of Magic, they received a letter from Hogwarts early this morning, saying that they had captured Sirius Black, the heinous murderer. Of course, now the murderer is not Sirius, but Sirius. Peter Dwarf yes, you read that right, the Peter Dwarf who has been dead for twelve years. Sirius has overturned the verdict. What happened twelve years ago, the deaths of the Potters and the downfall of the mysterious man, were all caused by the betrayal of a wizard. We all know that it was Sirius, but now based on the facts, the traitor is actually its Peter Pettigrew. For details, please go to page 2. Sirius, the murderer. The brain-dead man who was fooled. Peter Pettigrew, the hero, or the traitor. But none of this is important. Let's go back to today's headlines. Is Dumbledore a wizard who is greedy for power? According to the information we got from Fudge, the Minister of Magic, Dumbledore wanted to enhance his power. In order to gain my own prestige, I openly announced to him the news of the mysterious man's return, in order to gain respect and recognition from the magical world again, even surpassing the Ministry of Magic as an official organization. So, is it really what Fudge says? Many Dumbledore supporters may not be able to accept this, but judging from the information we have obtained now, the facts are indeed as the Minister of Magic Fudge said. Dumbledore seems to really desire greater fame. More power, more admiration from people. For this reason, Dumbledore did not hesitate to announce the return of the mysterious man, regardless of whether it would cause turmoil and unrest in the magical world. He had never considered this, or in other words, he had considered it, but he had a perverted psychology about power and fame. Let Dumbledore have no time to care about other things, as long as he can regain control of the wizarding world. The former hero has become old and confused. In the last stage of his life, the most powerful white wizard of our time, Dumbledore, finally fell and became obsessed with power, honor and reputation. He is no longer the man worthy of all of us. Dear, the most powerful white wizard, the current headmaster of Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry, is just an old man whose brain has been filled with power. Absurd, really ridiculous. During the meal, Xia Ran heard Lu Ping shaking his head while flipping through the Daily Prophet. Hagrid shouted angrily, that despicable guy Fudge, he dared to order the newspaper to edit Professor Dumbledore like this. He clearly knew what the facts were, but he still printed such a newspaper. How despicable. This time Professor McGonagall did not ask Hagrid to keep his voice down, because she also frowned, flipped through the Daily Prophet, and then directly threw it aside without giving it a second glance. The news about the mysterious man's return was labeled by Fudge as Dumbledore's lies. Dumbledore himself was ordered by the newspaper to do everything possible to arrange the story. As long as it could discredit Dumbledore, Fudge seemed to be willing to do whatever it took. Perhaps in his opinion, when Dumbledore announced the return of the mysterious man, he was truly declaring war on him in order to seize the position of Minister of Magic. Fudge's first step in attacking his perceived competitors is to stigmatize Dumbledore, but he ignores the real hidden dangers in the wizarding world. To be honest, he is not qualified to be the Minister of Magic. Xia Ran shook his head and sighed, this pig teammates, no wonder Dumbledore pinned his hopes on Harry in the original time and space. Pig teammates like Fudge are unreliable. It seems that Dumbledore still had the foresight to form the Order of the Phoenix early. Instead of expecting the Ministry of Magic to be unable to support the wall, it is better to leave it alone and work alone, which actually has the hope of victory. However, Fudge's plan to stigmatize Dumbledore did have a certain effect. At least many students in the auditorium were whispering about it. Maybe parents' protest letters would be sent to Hogwarts tomorrow. You think Dumbledore is really old and confused? We have all seen the scene in the morning. It seems that what Dumbledore said is true. The young wizards whispered, and Harry couldn't help but said, how can they believe such outrageous words in the Daily Prophet? We were all present when Dumbledore spoke in the morning. 
who knows? Ron said while eating pig's trotters. Anyway, we are right to believe in Dumbledore. Ron, how can you say that? Hermione hummed, since the mysterious man has made a comeback, we must unite all the forces that can be united. The internal fighting and division in the magical world is exactly what the mysterious man wants. He absolutely happy to see that. Then what can you do? Ron rolled his eyes and said, the daily prophet obeys the orders of the Ministry of Magic. It does not listen to us or the principle of Hogwarts, and the Ministry of Magic the leader is that idiot fudge. Ron. Percy heard Ron's words from the side and immediately glared at him, warning him not to cause trouble to his father. After all, Arthur Weasley still worked at the Ministry of Magic, and Fudge was his boss's boss. Ron muttered a few words, but did not continue to insult Fudge. Chapter, 98 Percy, relax, you won't get Dad into trouble if you curse Fudge at Hogwarts. George Weasley smiled. Yeah, Percy, come on, say it after me, Fudge is a big idiot. Fred said with a smile. Oh, don't do this, Ginny pleaded. That's what George and Fred said, and they also knew that too much words would lead to mistakes. In public, they still couldn't make too serious arrangements with Fudge, which would easily affect their father who worked in the Ministry of Magic. Fred said as if he was suffocating, that's why we don't want to work in the Ministry of Magic. Meeting such a boss would cost me my life. The Ministry of Magic is not that easy to get into. Percy said with a snort. His dream was to work in the Ministry of Magic, climb to a senior leadership position, become a high official, and have a better future than Mr. Weasley. After all, although Mr. Weasley serves as the director of the office for the prohibition of the misuse of muggle items, he actually has only one person under his command, and he only has two, so he cannot be called a leading official of the Ministry of Magic at all. George said funny, yes, my dear Chairman Percy. Oh, no, Minister Percy. Ha! Huh. Others couldn't help laughing. Percy's face turned red and he just left the auditorium with a piece of bread. At this moment, a taller wizard came over and said, Okay, guys, don't laugh. Tomorrow happens to be a break, and we have to seize the opportunity to discuss the tactics used in the game. Slytherin's strength cannot be underestimated. It was Oliver Wood, captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team. Here. Harry was obviously surprised. Of course not here. Wood said, there are too many people in the auditorium, and it is easy to leak our tactical secrets, so you finish your food quickly, and we will go back to the common room to discuss. Boys and girls are already prepared okay. He pointed to Angelina, Alia, and Katie who were waiting on one side, the chasers of the Gryffindor Quidditch team. Harry was the seeker, Fred and George were the batters, and Wood himself was the keeper. Okay, that'll be it in a minute, Oliver, said Fred. That thing about Buckbeak. Harry looked at Ron and Hermione. Ron said confidently, Don't worry, Harry, just go ahead. Hermione and I will go to the library and we will definitely find something to help Buckbeak win the lawsuit. Besides, I can't, Hermione is here. Because in the first class of school, the hippogriff Buckbeak injured Draco Malfoy, causing Buckbeak to be sanctioned by the Ministry of Magic. Under the arguments of Dumbledore and Hagrid, after hard work, the idea of filing a lawsuit came up. Hagrid's testimony in defense of Buckbeak was definitely hopeless. Ron and Harry actually had little hope either, and they mainly relied on Hermione. Hermione smiled shyly and speechlessly. Ah! Harry suddenly cried out in pain and covered his forehead tightly. He suddenly felt the burning pain from the lightning scar on his forehead, which made him cry out involuntarily. What's wrong? Harry. Others looked at him with concern. Harry didn't want others to worry about him, and he didn't think it was a big deal. He smiled and said, I had a headache just now, but it's much better now. It's not a big deal. You should tell Dumbledore about this, Harry. Suddenly someone in the corridor patted Harry on the shoulder and said. A group of people suddenly turned their heads in astonishment. Professor Fremont. It's no need. It's just a headache. Harry didn't want to trouble Dumbledore, and he also felt that it would be embarrassing to approach Dumbledore for such a trivial matter, and it would not save his face. 
Sia Ran looked solemn and said, Harry, the pain in your scar has a much deeper meaning than you imagine. When he was about to leave the great hall, he suddenly heard Harry groaning in pain and covering his forehead. He suddenly knew that it was Voldemort's emotional fluctuations. Harry's lightning scar is almost a channel connecting Harry and Voldemort, except that Voldemort takes the dominant position. Of course, because of Harry's mother's magical protection, Voldemort would feel a burning pain when he touched Harry's soul, and he would never take the initiative to touch Harry's soul. In order to lure Harry to snatch the prophecy ball, the original time and space deliberately set up a virtual illusion to mislead Harry, leading to a battle in the Department of Mysteries, and serious death. That's because Harry was hot-headed and too impulsive. Xia Ran, are you sure it's this serious? Lu Ping asked in shock. It's more serious than you think. Xia Ran nodded and said, let's go and see Dumbledore. Harry had no choice but to get up and follow Xia Ran and Lupin to the principal's office on the eighth floor. The others still had blank expressions on their faces, except Oliver Wood, who sighed regretfully that his seeker could no longer attend the team meeting. This is a large house that has been dilapidated for a long time. It is located on a hillside. From here, you can see the entire village below. If Xia Ran is here, you may be surprised. That village is somewhat familiar. He has just been here during the summer vacation. One trip, this is Little Hangleton. Several windows in the house were sealed, the tiles on the roof were incomplete, and ivy crawled all over the house. Master, are you feeling better? If you are still hungry, drink some more. A man's voice said. Wait a moment, I just experienced a long journey, and I don't have a good appetite now. A cold voice said slowly, which was colder and biting than the cold wind blowing at night. And a big snake was wandering around in the old house. It was at least twelve feet long. The snake spat lightly and kept making hissing sounds from its mouth. Little Barty, did you see it? This is my father's house. The cold voice spoke again, Riddle House was once the most spacious and magnificent building in this town. But, now you are here look, it has become damp, desolate, and uninhabited all year round, except for this old lame muggle who has nowhere to go and has to continue to live here. Mortal life and things are too fragile to last forever. The cold voice sounded mocking. The man's voice at the beginning spoke, Master, you are the wizard who has traveled the farthest on the road to immortality in the world. Yes, you are right, little Barty, I have always believed in this. The cold voice said. Bah! What eternity, what immortality, two fools talking in their sleep. At this time, a third voice sounded in the room, which sounded like an older man. Ha, huh, how can muggles understand the mysteries of wizards? The cold voice said slowly, little Barty, put down your wand first and don't do anything. We always have to show some respect to such a courageous person, even if he is just a dirty muggle. Chapter, 99 Yes, Master. The man's voice replied. The cold voice laughed and said, Since our muggle gentleman has doubts about this, let me, the noble Lord Voldemort, clear his doubts. Master is so kind. Hey hey hey. This is the second floor of the house. The door is slightly open, the fireplace is lit, and the temperature inside the house has risen. It is no longer as cold as outside. And on one of the chairs, wrapped in swaddling clothes, was a slimy, eyeless, ugly thing. It looked like a curled up baby, but nothing in the world had ever looked less like a baby. It has no hair, and its body seems to have scales. Its skin is dark and red, like injured tender meat. Its arms and legs are thin and soft. Its face, there is no one alive or dead. The child has such a face, a flat snake face with a pair of sparkling red eyes. If Xia Ran saw this ugly thing, she would definitely blurt out immediately, Voldemort. Yes, the strange creature in the infancy is Voldemort. Now he has not been truly resurrected. The form of existence is so ugly and terrifying. Not to mention compared with the living, even the wandering ghosts are worse. A man with pale skin, slight freckles, and light yellow messy hair was naturally Barty Crouch Jr. He served Voldemort wholeheartedly and was a very satisfied servant of Voldemort. He thought that if he was resurrected, 
he would give little Barty a generous reward, which was a gift from Lord Voldemort. There was a lame old man lying on the ground. It seemed that he was a little afraid of the infant Voldemort. After all, this form of creature was too weird, but he forced himself to show a fearless attitude. There was also a house elf lying in a corner of the room, unconscious. Judging from the slight rise and fall of his chest, he was probably still alive and not dead. Weird monster. The lame old man snorted. He had lived in this house for decades. After all, he had served the Riddle family. Later, the Riddle family died for no reason. He was also suspected by the villagers and the police. However, in the end, there was no evidence linking him to the deaths of the Riddle family, which was committed by the young Voldemort Tom Riddle fifty years ago, so he was acquitted. He was a veteran, and because he had nowhere to go, he simply stayed at Riddle Mansion. Others were afraid of spending the night here because someone died in Riddle Mansion. As a former soldier, he would not feel guilty. There is nothing to be afraid of. We have seen too many dead people on the battlefield. After hearing what the lame old man said, Voldemort smiled softly and said, Muggle, you do have courage, but you will never know what it feels like to live forever. I don't know either, but that's exclusive to the owner. Barty Crouch Jr. Flattered him. Hey, hee hee. Voldemort smiled and said, Riddle House is such a long lost place. My stupid, poor father and grandparents lived here decades ago. At that time, it was so lively and gorgeous. As if it were right in front of you. Lying liar. The lame old man sneered. The Riddle family has never had descendants. The heinous murder fifty years ago has cut off the Riddle family's bloodline. Ah, muggle, old muggle, don't you understand? Voldemort said softly, I, the most powerful wizard in the magical world, well, maybe plus one, Dumbledore, I have to admit, even though he is far from me on the road to immortality. He is still super powerful, although I have always hated the Riddle family, it is true that the blood of the Riddle family flows in my body, so I killed them all with my own hands. Are you the murderer of the Riddle Mansion murder? The lame old man was shocked. How many members of the Riddle family died because of this monster who was neither human nor ghost? Of course, that's the truth, can I say no? Voldemort said slightly happily, Tom Riddle, yes, I was also called this name, he is my father, humble, stupid, pathetic, but cowardly father, but he abandoned me and my mother, so it is unforgivable. When I found this place, the Riddle family was destined to be extinct. You are a despicable murderer, a vicious criminal, and a heartless lunatic. The lame old man yelled angrily. The wail of the weak. Voldemort was tired of it, and he raised a stick, which was his wand. The lame old man suddenly felt suffocated, and his pupils instantly dilated. Avada Kedavra. A ray of green light hit the lame old man's chest. He suddenly became motionless, his eyes still widened. He died under Avada's cadavra. Nagini. Voldemort hissed. Barty Crouch Jr. Looked at Voldemort in awe and enthusiasm. He knew what it was, Parseltongue, one of the rumored symbols of Slytherin. His master is the last descendant of Slytherin, destined to unify the entire magical world. A big snake swam in through the open door. Nagini, your dinner. Voldemort put down his wand, looking a little tired. His current state was still too weak, but he just couldn't die. Master, would you like something to drink? Barty Crouch Jr. Asked in a timely manner. Voldemort replied, Okay, come on, I'm really hungry. Barty Crouch Jr. Took a bottle of milk and served Voldemort to drink it. Little Barty, I'm so lucky that you can break away from your father's control and come to me in the great forest of Albania. Voldemort said softly. No, that is my honor, master. Barty Crouch Jr. Said with admiration, it is my greatest honor to be able to help master resurrect. Ever since he was replaced from Azkaban by his mother, Mrs. Crouch, he has been controlled by Barty Crouch using the imperious curse, but in recent years, he has slowly begun to have the ability to break free from his father's control. Time, especially in the past year or so, has made him so blessed that he has been able to stay awake for a long time. However, he was guarded by the house elf Shiny, 
and he did not have a wand in his hand. He had to be patient and wait for the opportunity. He knew that he only had one chance, and his father would never give him a second chance to break free from control. Fortunately, Winky sympathized with him, which gave him a good opportunity. Finally, one night he grabbed the wand of his father Barty Crouch and killed him directly, gaining the long-lost freedom. Soon he took control of it again. Twinkle, he didn't have any murderous intention towards Twinkle. But in order to avoid being exposed, he pretended to be his father for a while. After finding out the location of his master, he excused himself to take sick leave and made Barty Crouch disappear. In this way, he found Voldemort, brought him back to England, and began planning for his resurrection. Peter Pettigrew has been captured. Master, how should we catch that boy? Little Barty asked. Through the photos in the Daily Prophet, Voldemort recognized the identity of Peter Pettigrew, planned to contact Peter Pettigrew, and work together to capture Harry Potter and take him away to meet his needs for the resurrection ceremony. It's a pity that little Barty drank the polyjuice potion and disguised himself when entering Hogwarts. He happened to bump into Sirius. Although he defeated Sirius, he had no time to contact Peter Pettigrew. Now that Peter Pettigrew has been arrested, this plan is ruined. Chapter, 100 Hide yourself for a while, there will always be a chance. Voldemort said softly. As he spoke, he glanced at the house elf lying unconscious on the ground and smiled, isn't there a better choice here? Master, what do you mean? Little Barty seemed to suddenly understand. House elves, this kind of magical creature, have always been servants of wizards. I have been negligent and made a mistake. I ignored these house elves who are not low in strength. Voldemort said with a chuckle, now we have to change our strategy. I obey your orders, master. Harry, is your scar starting to hurt? Dumbledore stared at Harry. He felt that his face was turning red. It was just a normal headache, but he made such a big noise and was directly pulled by two professors. Come to the principal's office. He wondered how Malfoy would laugh at him if he knew he was being noticed by the headmaster because of his headache, especially since he was already deeply troubled by the Dementors. Thank goodness the Dementors were taken away by Fudge. Harry quickly defended, it's just a little painful. It must be because I didn't sleep well. It doesn't matter. Harry, you can't take it lightly. Siar Ran said slowly, you yourself know that this scar of yours has a big background. I think that it has abnormal conditions, which may explain a lot of problems. Lupin and Harry both thought of Voldemort, and the lightning scar on Harry's forehead existed because of Voldemort. Dumbledore had expected this, but he still praised Sia Ran's sensitivity. Sia Ran is right, Harry, I think you should start learning acclimacy. Dumbledore said. He wanted Harry to shut down his brain freely and connect with Voldemort selectively, instead of everything being controlled by Voldemort came to take the initiative. Acclumency is a kind of magic that controls one's own brain, which can prevent others from peeking into the thoughts in one's mind, especially when facing a legilimency master. Acclumency? Harry was confused. Lupin frowned and said, Dumbledore, is it too early for Harry to learn acclumency? He is only in the third grade, and these are often senior students in the sixth or seventh grade, who find it very profound and difficult to understand. Magic spells. To tell you the truth, my acclumency is also very average. Sia Rant's acclumency skills are pretty good. She had already started in the past. In the past year or so, as her knowledge of spells and magic power have increased, her acclumency skills have also increased. She cannot be called a master level, but it's definitely not bad either. But he knew that there was a real master of acclumency in Hogwarts, and Dumbledore must have known that, that was Severa Snape, the potions professor. They are all among the top ranks. It was Snape who taught Harry acclumency in the original time and space, but the results were not satisfactory. Dumbledore rubbed his forehead, and felt that he might have acted too hastily. After all, Harry was only in the third grade, so he was still a little young. When he was in the fifth grade and almost an adult, it might be the time to learn such advanced magic. Okay, Harry, let's put the acclumency thing aside for now. Harry immediately breathed a sigh of relief. 
From Professor Lupin's tone, he knew what kind of difficult magic occlumency was. He was not Hermione, who was such a genius, who loved learning so much, and who loved Quidditch. Thinking about the upcoming first Quidditch match, Harry felt a lot more excited. He must help Gryffindor win the Quidditch Championship this school year. Several people left Dumbledore's office. Harry went straight back to the lounge, Lupin also went back to his office, and Charlotte went back to the office to get Gryffindor's sword, then brought it up again and handed it back to Dumbledore. He had absorbed the force points contained in the sword, and several days had passed. It was time to return the sword to Dumbledore. The property returns to its original owner. Sia Ran smiled, after all, I graduated from Hufflepuff, and holding Gryffindor's sword always feels very inconsistent. Dumbledore hung up his sword and said with a smile, isn't it enough that we are all members of Hogwarts? Sia Ran smiled brightly, it was just good that Dumbledore didn't notice the small damage to Gryffindor's sword. He absorbed the force points. Although it would not cause obvious damage to the original magic items, the impact did exist, but it was just weak. It was difficult to detect without careful observation. Not to mention Fudge's dirty talk about Dumbledore, there were various voices in the wizarding world talking about it. Some people expressed their belief in Dumbledore, while others were more willing to believe in the Ministry of Magic. After all, it was an official organization. Dumbledore said that he received a lot of letters of protest every day, from many wizards in the wizarding world, either firmly supporting him, or admonishing Dumbledore not to tarnish his reputation when he gets old. This is obviously a sign of trust. The person who got the Ministry of Magic's words. How can they believe the slander in the Daily Prophet? That's complete nonsense. Mrs. Weasley said angrily. She selectively forgot that she used to read the Daily Prophet every day and regarded it as home. The behavior of a close and good partner. Sia Ran smiled and said, The Daily Prophet, the boss of the Ministry of Magic, gave the order, what can they do? Besides, arranging Dumbledore may be something they feel very happy and excited about. They were in Black's old house, preparing for the first meeting since the Order of the Phoenix was restarted. Many members of the Order had already arrived. Remus Lupin, Robius Hagrid, Minerva McGonagall, the four of them came here together, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Weasley, Mundungus Fletcher, Mrs. Fig, Eris Thomas Moody, as well as the two Aurors Kingsley and Tonks. Of course, as the owner of the old black house, Sirius must be present. He was busy with Mrs. Weasley and brought several meals out of the kitchen. Mrs. Weasley's craftsmanship is still as good as ever. Sia Ran praised after eating a pastry. Humph. Moody snorted coldly. He had long gray hair, and every inch of skin on his face seemed to have been injured. The place where his nose should be raised was gone, and his eyes made people feel chilly. One of Moody's eyes is small, black, shiny, and full of divine light the other eye is large, round like a coin, and it is a bright blue. This blue eye the eye moved continuously without blinking, turning up and down, left and right, completely unrelated to the normal eye. When he sat on the chair, he clutched the crutch in his hand tightly and refused to relax for a moment. Relax, Alastor. Enjoy a hearty meal in advance to fill your stomach. I think it will promote the meeting. Lupin took a sip of butterbeer and said softly. Yeah, otherwise I'd be hungry in the middle of the meeting. Tonk said happily, and suddenly saw Moody's artificial eye turned around, she immediately smiled and ate silently. On the other hand, Mr. Weasley was talking to Sia Ran and Kingsley, Bill and Charlie originally wanted to attend this meeting. Last time they were too young to join the Order of the Phoenix. It's just that Bill was in ancient Egypt. He is working in a bank, and Charlie is also raising dragons abroad. He will definitely not be able to come back in the short term, and Dumbledore believes that they will be of great help to the Order of the Phoenix by keeping an eye on news from all sides abroad. Bill is the eldest son of the Weasley family, and Charlie is the second son. That's true, there are many dark creatures and dark wizards running around the world. Sia Ran said with a smile, if Charlie can tame a giant dragon and let us ride the dragon to fight the Death Eaters, then it will be awesome it couldn't be more majestic. Chapter, 101 In muggle novels and movies, dragon knights are always very majestic and very powerful. 
Xia Ran smiled, he must be talking about the kind of dragon knight who rides a real dragon. Ha! Huh. Kingsley said with a laugh, dragons are all extremely ill-tempered. Even a wizard like Dumbledore would probably have difficulty doing this unless he trains a dragon from a young age and makes the dragon truly recognize it. Kill yourself. Mr. Weasley said helplessly, Charlie, what you said is impossible. Charlie sometimes writes letters saying that raising dragons is actually quite dangerous. Okay, just think of it as a joke. Xia Ran shrugged and smiled. They were now in a dimly lit room, surrounded by rough stone walls. Most of the light came from a large fireplace at the other end of the room. The smoke from the pipe filled the air, like gunpowder smoke on a battlefield. The heavy iron pots and basins hanging from the dark ceiling looked even more sinister and eerie in the smoke. Because there was going to be a meeting soon, the room was filled with many chairs, and in the middle was a long wooden table. There were parchment rolls placed in front of many people on the table, as well as goblets, beer bottles, and some wise Mrs. Lai prepared the cakes and Sirius took them over. When Xia Ran looked around the room, Sirius also sat down on a chair and said with a wry smile, Isn't it good? It's quite good. It has been uninhabited for so many years, but it can still be inhabited. Xia Ran said sincerely. Although Blake's old house is dark and gloomy, there is really no problem in being able to live in it. Sirius said, in the past, because I was still wanted by the Ministry of Magic and had not shaken off the blame, I could not return to the family. After a slight pause, he continued, Actually, I don't want to come back, if it weren't for Dumbledore Leto couldn't find a better place to be the headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix. You know, other places are a bit too conspicuous. People often come in and out, and there may be people from the Ministry of Magic visiting, so this one a house is the best choice. Ha! Huh. Hagrid, I must tell you, your behavior in Nocturne Alley was great. A dirty-haired wizard laughed. He was Mundungus Fletcher, who was talking to Hagrid. What are you talking about? Hagrid took a long sip of his beer, tellingly, his glass was larger than the others, and said in a very loud voice, I know, Dunge short for Mundungus, you also know that every one of the merchants in Nocturne Alley. At this time. Beasts. Bitch. Dirty and sinful scoundrels. Bastards, freaks, ugly monsters, get out of here. How dare you desecrate the home of my ancestors? A louder roar suddenly came from the foyer. Hagrid quickly shut up and kept apologizing in a low voice, but at this time Sirius had already rushed out, followed by Charlie, Lupin, and Tonks. Outside the room they had just stayed in was a foyer, with peeling wallpaper. And the luxurious carpets that might once have been very bright and bright were also faded and looked very old, while a spiderweb shaped chandelier shimmered and shone brightly. The portraits hanging on the walls became more and more terrifying and gloomy. There are two velvet curtains covered with insect holes on the side. They have been lifted at this time. Behind them are not doors or windows, but a portrait hanging. There is indeed a window in the painting, and there is another. The old lady wearing a black hat screamed with a distorted expression. Shut up, you horrible old witch! Sirius shouted as he rushed over, struggling to pull the curtains back. The old lady's face suddenly turned pale. The evil son. The old lady's eyes widened, her body trembled, and she shouted sternly, The prodigal son, the shame of the family, the evil son I gave birth to. I told you, shut up. Sirius roared. Xia Ran and Lupin stepped forward to help him close the curtains. Only then did the old lady's roar disappear and could no longer be heard. Tonk said with regret, What a pity. I wanted to help, ah, uh, I'm sorry. As she spoke, she knocked down a giant monster's leg. Xia Ran suddenly felt a strong force coming from behind the curtain, intending to tear the curtain open and let the old lady appear in front of everyone again. Tighten up. Lupin, go and help Tonks. Xia Ran said immediately, holding on to the curtain tightly and not letting go. Sirius said with some annoyance, Tonks, please go back to the house and sit down first. I knocked this thing over and I have to put it back in its place. Tonks refused Sirius and worked with Lupin to move the huge and heavy troll leg back to its original position. Bang! At this moment, the door was opened. 
Dumbledore and Snape stepped into the house one after another. Snape closed the door and immediately saw the movements of Xia Ran and Sirius, mainly Xiao Ran. Sirius, couldn't help but smile sarcastically. Ah, you are so hardworking, isn't our hero Blake? He shuts his mother tightly behind the curtain. Shut up, snot loud. Sirius gritted his teeth. Snape smiled sarcastically, but since Dumbledore was nearby, he did not continue to speak sarcastically. Mrs. Weasley appeared at the other end of the hall and called, Dumbledore is here, do you want something to eat? The rest of us have had something to fill our bellies. No, Molly. Dumbledore said politely, walking through the hall, Severus and I had something to eat before we came here. Of course, it would be great if you could give me a beer. Mrs. Weasley poured two more beers and placed them in front of Dumbledore and Snape. A group of people all sat down in their seats. Dumbledore glanced around and said with a smile, It's great to see you all again. Although there are many companions who cannot be present, I believe they also really want to attend. Okay, Albus, don't say any more. Let's start early. Moody urged, the magic eye moving randomly. Xia Ran smiled. She was worthy of being the number two figure in the Order of the Phoenix. Moody stared at Xia Ran with his magic eyes for a while, then he spread his hands and his eyes immediately moved to the other side. Forgive me, Alastor. Dumbledore said with a smile, there is no doubt that Voldemort has returned. Snap. A house elf suddenly flashed in. He was almost naked except for a dirty rag around his waist, like a loincloth used by men in tropical countries to cover their bodies. He looks very old, and his skin seems to be several times more than what his body actually needs. Although his head is bald like all house elves, his two big bat-like ears still have there are a lot of white hairs. His eyes were bloodshot, watery and gray, and his fleshy nose was as big as a pig's. As if the elf didn't notice the people having a meeting in the room, he arched his back and dragged his feet, slowly and step by step towards the corner of the room, while he kept chanting softly in a low and hoarse voice like a bullfrog. Xia Rant's eyes flickered. This was the house elf of the black family, named Creature. He was related to an important source of force points for Xia Ran. Chapter 102 While Xia Ran looked at Creature, Creature was also talking to himself in a low voice, it smells like sewers and criminals. He's not much better, the annoying old loser, leading his subordinates here ruining my mistress's room. Oh, my poor mistress, if she knew anything, what would she say to old creature if she knew what kind of scum they let into her door? Oh, my poor mistress. What a disgrace, pure-blooded scum, bastard, werewolf, giant, liar and thief, poor old creature, what can he do? Get out, creature. Sirius said in a strong voice, pointing to the door. The house elf suddenly froze, and instead of mumbling words, he showed a very obvious but suspicious look of surprise. Xia Ran looked at the elf. Slytherin's locket was in Creature's hand and was given to him by Sirius' brother Regulus. The locket must also contain force points. Thing. Creature didn't see the dirty master just now. Creature said, he bowed to Sirius, his face was still facing the ground, but he spoke in a voice that everyone present could hear, the young master is a nasty, ungrateful bastard who broke his mother's heart. Snape seemed to scoff. My mother has no heart. Sirius said very impatiently. She relies entirely on hatred to maintain her life. Okay, creature, I said, I order you to get out immediately. Sirius, stay friendly to creature, Dumbledore said. Ah, disgusting old scum. Creature bowed again as he spoke, and responded angrily to Sirius as he slowly walked out of the room, no matter what the young master says, the young master can't even clean the soles of his mother's shoes. Not worthy. Oh, my poor mistress, what would she say if she saw Creature serving the young master? How the mistress hated him, how he broke her heart, how disappointing he was. Sirius seemed to want to mention the elf and throw him out, but since Dumbledore had just said that, he reluctantly held back. Seeing that Creature was about to leave the room, Xia Ran touched his chin and felt that this time might be a good opportunity, so he said, Sirius, please order Creature to stay in the house. Huh. Sirius was confused, 
but he gave the order again. He was Creature's master, and Creature must obey his orders. Creature, stay. The elf suddenly stopped moving. Xia Ran, what are you doing? Mr. Weasley asked confused, I don't think elves should participate in this meeting. Most of the others nodded. Dumbledore was familiar with Xia Ran and knew that he would not speak like this for no reason, so he asked, Xia Ran, did you discover something? Xia Ran nodded slightly and said softly, There are indeed some discoveries, but there is no way to confirm it yet. We need Creature's answer. He let out a little panic here, after all, he was 100% sure of the facts. Everyone looked at Xia Ran, expressing confusion and questioning. Professor Dumbledore, Professor Snape, Professor McGonagall, and Hagrid, do you all remember the diary incident last school year? Xia Ran asked first. Professor McGonagall nodded and said, Riddle's diary, a horcrux made by the mysterious man when he was young. Horcrux. Many people present heard about the existence of the diary for the first time, such as Kingsley and Sirius, and they suddenly gasped. Obviously, they understand what a horcrux is and what prerequisites are needed to make a horcrux, which is a living human life. Mundungus, Mrs. Fig, and Tonks, who didn't know about horcruxes, also learned about them after Lupin introduced them in a low voice, and their eyes widened in horror. Creature originally wanted to say a few curse words, but suddenly he heard the words Horcrux and Mysterious Man, and stood there blankly, looking at Xia Ran. Voldemort made Horcruxes, so he can live to this day instead of dying in Godric's Hollow twelve years ago. Moody tightened his grip on the crutch in his hand and turned his magic eyes crazily. Yes. Dumbledore nodded. Sirius frowned and asked, what does Voldemort's Horcrux have to do with Creature? Not only does it have a relationship with Creature, but it also has a very deep connection with Regulus. Xia Ran said softly. Sirius seemed to have lost his mind and said with a change of expression, Are you saying that Regulus helped Voldemort make Horcruxes, but was eventually silenced by Voldemort? Xia Ran suddenly couldn't help but smile bitterly, and said, What do you think, you don't believe Regulus so much, are you sure that he is the kind of dark wizard who kills innocent people indiscriminately? Sirius opened his mouth, thinking that Regulus might be. After all, Regulus once worshipped Voldemort and became a member of the Death Eaters, but he couldn't say it. According to the information I obtained from the secret investigation, Regulus is a true warrior. Xia Ran told another lie here. Anyway, no one else could confirm the so-called secret investigation on the ground. This could give him an excuse as to why he knew these secret information that almost no outsider could know. Serious expression became stunned again. After receiving everyone's curious gazes, Xia Ran spread her hands, turned to look at Creature and said, I don't know the specific details, but I think Creature must know the truth. Creature still looked at Xia Ran blankly. Creature, I order you to tell everything about Regulus. Sirius said urgently. The elf suddenly started to tremble, swaying and trembling. Creature. Sirius snapped, I order you. The elf gasped for air, his withered chest heaving rapidly, and then his eyes widened and he let out a blood-curdling scream. Master Regulus. Master Regulus. Creature made a mistake and failed to complete Master Regulus's mission. Creature failed to carry out Master Regulus's order. The elf said as he rushed towards the stone wall and hit the stone wall crazily with his big ugly head. Oh, no! cried the four women, Professor McGonagall, Mrs. Weasley, Mrs. Fig, and Tonks. Xia Ran and Mr. Weasley went over and held down Creature to prevent him from continuing to destroy himself. The room seemed to be in chaos at this moment. Sirius! Dumbledore reminded Sirius loudly. Sirius yelled, Stop! Creature, I order you to stop! Xia Ran felt the elf stiffen, and then he let go. Chapter 103 Okay, let's talk, Creature, tell us your story with Regulus. Seeing that the elf no longer hurt himself, Xia Ran stood up and sat back on the chair nearby. The elf took a few big breaths, sat up from the ground, curled up into a ball, put his wet face between his knees, and began to rock back and forth. When he spoke, his voice was low and muffled, but he could be heard quite clearly in the quiet kitchen. Master Sirius ran away, and it would be better if he left, 
because he is a bad boy, and his unruly behavior broke my mistress's heart. But Master Regulus has self-respect, and he knows that the name Black and his what does pure blood mean. Snape seemed to have a mocking smile as he listened, but he did not interrupt the elf story. The elf continued, for many years, he often talked about the Dark Lord, who wanted wizards to stop hiding and come out to rule muggles and their descendants. When Master Regulus was sixteen, he was so proud, so proud, so happy to join the Dark Lord's organization, to be able to serve. A year later, one day, Master Regulus came to visit Creature in the kitchen. Master Regulus has always liked Creature. Master Regulus said. He said. The old elf's body shook and trembled even more violently as he spoke. He said the Dark Lord wanted an elf. Xia Ran sighed secretly. After all, he had known the story of Creature and Regulus for a long time. Now that it was told by the elf himself, he still felt emotional and mixed emotions when listening to it. House Elf Everyone present looked at each other. Voldemort wants an elf. The Dark Lord has always looked down on any other creature, even if he promised them many conditions in exchange for their support. Moody's magic eyes stared at the elf. What does he want the elf to do? Sirius frowned tightly and turned to look at the others. Most of them were as confused as him, with the exception of two people, one was Dumbledore and the other was Xia Ran. Xia Ran said softly, Creature, keep talking. Oh, yes. Creature looked very painful and said, Master Regulus contributed to Creature, this is an honor, Master Regulus said, it is the honor of himself and Creature. Creature must do whatever the Dark Lord wants him to do and then go. Home. The elf shook faster, and his breathing turned into sobs. If Sirius hadn't given him an order not to allow self-mutilation, Creature would have immediately banged his head against the stone wall again to punish himself. So Creature went to the Dark Lord. The Dark Lord didn't tell Creature what he was going to do. Instead, he took Creature to a cave by the sea. It was a big cave with a big black lake in it. There is a boat. There is a small island in the center of the lake. There is a stone. Stone basin on the island, filled with magic potion. The Dark Dark Lord asked Creature to drink. The elf was trembling all over now. Creature drank, and saw many horrific scenes while drinking. Creature's internal organs were on fire. Creature called Master Regulus to save him, and called the mistress, but the Dark Lord just laughed, he forced Creature to drink all the potion. He threw a locket into an empty basin and filled the basin with potion. Xia Ran's eyes flashed, and the locket was his target. Judging from Ravenclaw's crown and Gryffindor's sword, Slytherin's locket must also contain a lot of force points. Then the Dark Lord got on the boat and left, leaving Creature on the island. The elf said intermittently. Everyone can almost imagine that scene. In a dark and deep cave, Voldemort's pale snake face disappeared at the entrance of the cave, leaving only the arrogant and wild laughter echoing. On the small island in the center of the lake inside the cave, an elf was rolling all over the ground in extreme pain. He may be in danger, but he should be able to return to Black's old house safely in the end. But how did he come back? Everyone was puzzled. Since Voldemort hit something very important to him in the cave, he probably wouldn't want to let the elf leave this can be seen from the fact that he did not take the elf with him when he walked out of the cave. How can an elf resist Voldemort's magic? Creature was in great pain and scared, but Creature was too thirsty. He climbed to the edge of the island to drink the water from the black lake. Many hands, many hands emerged from the lake, dead hands, from the water it stuck out and dragged Creature into the water. Oh my god! The four female wizards, Professor McGonagall, Mrs. Weasley, Mrs. Fig, and Tonks, couldn't help but cover their mouths, tears rippling in their eyes. Even the other wizards looked extremely heavy. Where did the bodies in the lake come from? They had been slaughtered by Voldemort. Although they knew that Voldemort was crazy and vicious, they still couldn't help but tremble when they thought of a lake full of corpses, and they could only feel the burning anger in their chests. Severus, do you know the potion in the stone basin? Dumbledore asked. Snape said slowly, there are some guesses, but I am not sure. I need to see it with my own eyes to distinguish. Creature, how did you escape? 
Lupin asked. Creature immediately glanced at Lupin with disgust, and hid back with an unusually obvious movement. He kept mumbling, oh, my god, the dirty wolf bastard talked to Creature. Creature didn't allow it. If the mistress knew what would she say? I won't allow you to say words like werewolf again. Sirius roared, but the elf had already begun to punish himself. He fell to the ground and hit the floor with his head quickly, making a violent thud. Stop him quickly, Sirius. Lupin said. Sia Ran went over and held down the elf and Sirius yelled again, Stop, I order you to stop. The elf was lying on the ground, with a big swelling on his forehead, and his eyes were even more red, swollen and bloodshot, and filled with tears. How did you escape, creature? Dumbledore asked softly. Creature raised his ugly head, looked at Dumbledore with bloodshot eyes, and said, Master Regulus said that creature should go home. Dumbledore frowned slightly, then showed a look of surprise on his face. I know, but how did you leave the lake? Sirius asked confused. Creature acted as if he didn't understand the question and continued to repeat, Master Regulus said he wanted creature to go home. I know, but... Sia Ran interrupted Sirius's question and said, it's very simple. He left the cave through apparition. But would Voldemort not have thought of this? How could he allow his secret to be known to the house elves? Lupin asked. Sia Ran said, but the magic of elves is different from the magic of wizards, right? We cannot apparate in Hogwarts because we are restricted by the protective magic of Hogwarts. House elves obviously do not have this problem. Of. There was a moment of silence, and the room fell into a deathly silence, except for the sound of the elf sobbing. Chapter, 104 Would the mysterious person make such a stupid mistake? Mr. Weasley whispered, looking a little confused. Dumbledore spoke, his voice cold, you have to know, just like Alastor said just now, Voldemort will never look at other living beings. He will definitely disdain the magic of house elves. Just like those pure-blood wizard families who treat house elves as slaves and livestock. He would never have thought that house elves have magic that even he does not possess. This is the result of the arrogance of the wizards. The highest law for a house elf is the master's order. Creature said in a chant-like tone, the master told Creature to go home, and Creature went home. There was another moment of silence, and everyone stared at the house elf, forgetting to speak. Sia Ran whispered, Voldemort paid the price for his arrogance. So, you did what Regulus ordered you to do, didn't you? Dumbledore asked gently, without disobeying orders at all. Creature nodded, then shook his head. Then what happened after you came back? You told Regulus these things, what did he say? And how did he die? Sirius asked eagerly. The elf continued. When Creature told Master Regulus these things, Master Regulus was very worried, very, very, very worried. He told Creature to hide and not leave the house. And then. Passed for a long time. One night, Master Regulus came to the cupboard and found Creature. Master Regulus looked very strange. I could tell that he was not his usual self. He must be very confused. The young master asked Creature to take him to the cave, the same cave where Creature and the Dark Lord had been. So they set off. A group of people could clearly imagine a frightened old elf, a lean young man who looked very similar to Sirius. Creature had been there once, and he knew how to reach the cave how to cross the Black Lake and which island we finally arrived at. He made you drink the potion. Mr. Weasley asked disgustedly. Creature immediately shook his head and burst into tears. There seemed to be tears in the corners of Dumbledore's eyes. He had already guessed Regulus's choice. Sia Ran was even more sad. Thunder. Master Regulus took out a locket that was exactly the same as the Dark Lord's from his pocket. Klee said intermittently, tears flowing down both sides of his long nose. He told Creature to hold it while the stone basin dried and then switched the locket around. Creature's sobs became thick and harsh, and the group had to pay close attention to understand his words. He ordered. Creature to leave and leave him alone. He told Creature to go home. Not to say anything to the mistress about what he had done, but that the first locket must be destroyed. 
Then he drank. Drank it. After taking the potion, Creature changed the locket. Creature could only watch. Watching Master Regulus being dragged underwater, and then. Oh, God. Professor McGonagall and Mrs. Weasley immediately covered their mouths, tears glistening in their eyes. Sirius sat down on the chair, his face extremely pale, and his body seemed to be trembling. So, you took the locket home and succeeded in destroying it? Dumbledore asked softly. He already knew what the locket was and what Voldemort used it to do. Creature couldn't leave any trace on it. The elf said sadly. Creature tried all the methods, all the methods, but none of them succeeded. There are so many powerful things on the box. Magic, Creature believed it could only be destroyed from the inside, but Creature couldn't open it. Creature punished himself, tried again, punished himself, and tried again. Creature never succeeded in carrying out Master Regulus's order. Creature could not destroy the locket. The mistress went crazy with grief because Master Regulus is missing, and Creature cannot tell her what happened, not because Master Regulus forbids Creature to tell his family. About what happened in the cave. Creature burst into tears. Professor McGonagall, Mrs. Weasley, Mrs. Fig, Tonks, and Hagrid all burst into tears. Hagrid even let out a loud sob. Most of the other group of wizards also looked a little uneasy. So, Creature, can you go find the locket and let us take a look? Xia Ran said in a gentle tone. Creature stood up unsteadily, as if he would fall to the ground in the next moment. Xia Ran took the opportunity to say, You hid the locket under the cupboard, right? I'll get it. As he spoke, he stood up and left the room without giving the elf a chance to refute or give anyone else a chance to intervene. Xia Ran came to Creature's cupboard. The wand he raised in his hand glowed. He used his other hand to open the cupboard door. There was a pile of old blankets inside, which should have been used by Creature to sleep. In addition, there was also a thick book called Born Noble, The Wizarding Genealogy, as well as some gleaming knickknacks. Of course, in the corner of the cupboard, the golden locket was covered with a lot of dust, but it still looked so conspicuous. Slytherin's Locket Xia Ran's eyes suddenly showed joy, and he grabbed the golden locket with one hand, and soon he discovered the changes in the system panel. Slytherin's Locket was found. Force Points, 40. Do you want to absorb it? Absorb. Xia Ran secretly thought, he came out to look for the locket first, wasn't it just to get this opportunity to obtain the force points contained in the locket? He soon felt the cool breath escaping from his body, and the force points on the system panel in front of him began to beat continuously. Rising from 40 points all the way up, he had absorbed 40 force points from the Sword of Gryffindor in front of him. Points, because they could not promote the increase of magic level, were deliberately reserved for future emergencies, and finally stopped at the number of 80 points. Force points, 80 points. Xia Ran was filled with joy and resisted the urge to immediately increase her magic level. She took the locket and returned to the meeting room. Slytherin's locket, I think it is also one of Voldemort's horcruxes, otherwise he would not have kept it so preciously, and so many innocent people died in that cave Xia Ran said placed the locket on the table. Dumbledore took the locket and looked at it with interest. Sirius suddenly stood up. Although his face was still so pale and bloodless, his expression was extremely determined. I'm going to that cave to bring Regulus back. Chapter, 105 I want to bring Regulus back. Sirius said resolutely, with a determined look on his face, I can't let him stay in that dark place after his death, suffering the consequences of black magic forever. Erosion Dumbledore put down the locket and said, You are right, Sirius, we cannot let the bones of heroes fall to hell forever, and the corpses of innocent people must also be reburied. Sirius nodded solemnly, looked at the elf aside and said, Creature, I order you to take me to that cave. Let's go there together. It's not an easy task to bury so many innocent people who died tragically. Lu Ping said while rubbing his forehead. Mr. Weasley worried, I'm afraid the elf's magic power is not enough to disapparate so many of us. Xia Ran also frowned and said, Why don't we send two people to follow Creature to the destination first, and then we will return to take the others. Then let's do it this way. 
Dumbledore agreed, Alastor, do you want to go over? Moody's magic eyes rolled and he said, it's okay to go. Creature, come here. Sirius ordered, grabbing one of Creature's palms, while Dumbledore and Moody grabbed Creature's other palm. Snapped. The elf and the three wizards disappeared in an instant, and used the apparition magic in the tightly protected Blake Old House. Regulus, I once taught that child's transfiguration class. Unexpectedly. Professor McGonagall was filled with emotion, with tears in her eyes. Lupin sighed, he is indeed a hero. Even though he was in the Death Eater camp, he still contributed to the fight against the mysterious man. Regulus is Sirius's younger brother, and as Sirius's good friend, he naturally knows Regulus, but he has never imagined that Slytherin's lean seeker, Regulus when he was a student. He studied in Slytherin House and was also the seeker of the Slytherin House Quidditch team. He was in the same position as Harry, it was surprising that a person could do such an amazing thing. Slytherin's locket is also a horcrux, Voldemort's horcrux. I think Regulus is the first wizard besides Voldemort himself to discover the secret of his horcrux. Siaran sighed, when he first read the story of Regulus, he was also filled with emotion. Snapped. 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 At this time, except for Sirius, Dumbledore, Moody, and Creature were all back. Let's go outside the house. The magic in the house still has restrictions on wizards. Dumbledore said, walked out of the room, crossed the hall, and opened the door. Many people filed out, but some people did not move, staying here waiting for others to come back, such as Mrs. Fig, Mundungus, Hagrid, Snape, and Kingsley. Creature's face looked a little pale, and he probably only had one chance to apparate with the wizard. After all, apparition and apparition are a kind of advanced magic, and the consumption of magic power is also very huge. Creature, are you okay? Xia Ran asked with concern. The elf said in a sharp voice, Sir, Creature can take you there, but you must bring Master Regulus's bones back. We will definitely do it. Lu Ping nodded solemnly. Creature operat with Xia Ran and Lupin, and followed the phantom to a cliff by the sea. Xia Ran felt the sea breeze and the smell of the waves. Now the sky is getting dark, the sunset on the horizon has already set in the west, and the cold wind is blowing his hair. He is standing on a high black rock above the sea, and the waves are rolling and foaming under his feet. He turned his head and looked back, and there was a cliff standing behind him. The steep rock wall dropped straight down, and there were jagged rocks, with a few pieces protruding like sharp weapons. And there were several large rocks, like the one he, Lupin, and Creature were standing on at the moment, which seemed to have fallen off the front of the cliff at some time in the past. Everything was bare and desolate. Except for the vast sea and rocks, there was no green at all. Not to mention the lush trees, not even a single blade of grass could be seen. With the red light of the setting sun, Xia Ran saw a crack on the cliff. The dark sea water was swirling in it. A figure with disheveled black hair on his head was swimming over. That was serious. Snapped. Snapped. There were two explosions in succession, and Dumbledore and Moody came over with others, and this tall rock suddenly seemed crowded. I think we need a boat, well, obviously there aren't any, the waters here are very dangerous, said Mr. Weasley. Let's go there too, ma'am, be careful. Dumbledore suddenly became as agile as a young man. He gently slid from the pebble into the sea water, and like Sirius in front, headed towards the rock surface. Swim through the cracks that intersect light and dark. He held the wand in his mouth, using a perfect breaststroke position. Stay strong with old age. Xia Ran sighed secretly, and followed suit like the others. It was already November, and it was now evening. The water was extremely cold. Xia Ran felt that it was very uncomfortable to swim in the sea for the first time. After his clothes were soaked with water, they became bulging and heavy, dragging him down. He took a few deep breaths and immediately smelled the pungent smell of salt and seaweed. He slowly swam towards the crack between the cliffs. Soon, the crack turned into a dimly lit dark passage, and Sirius had already entered. Dumbledore, Moody, Lupin, Mr. and Mrs. Weasley, as well as Professor McGonagall, Tonks, and Creature also entered. 
They have all entered the secret passage, and Xia Ran is at the back. The mud-covered rock walls on both sides were only three feet wide apart. Sirius in front of him seemed to have landed on the shore, raising his wand high to illuminate the way forward for everyone. After all, the light became dimmer as the dark passage went deeper. Although it is extremely cold to swim in the sea, the people present are all experienced wizards with strong will. Now that they have decided to come here, they will not retreat because of the temporary cold. A group of people stood up from the sea one after another. This was a dark cave with steps that seemed to be accessible. Xia Ran also climbed up the steps, and the water flowed down from his soaked clothes. He finally walked out of the sea, but the surrounding air was still as quiet and cold as ever, and he shivered uncontrollably. Several ladies were even worse, their faces were extremely pale. Dumbledore summoned a pile of dry firewood and cast a spell to light it. The warm firelight dissipated the coldness around him and illuminated the deeper places. However, they were all rough and hard rock cave walls. It seemed that the so-called lake and the island is all creatures' false words. Chapter 106 Xia Ran and others tapped themselves with their wands, and their soaked clothes suddenly became dry and warm, as if they had been baking in front of the fire for several hours. However, it was still cold inside the cave there were still some aftereffects from swimming in the sea just now. At least their hands and feet were still very cold at the moment, as if the chill had penetrated into their bones. They simply gathered around the fire to warm themselves up. Dumbledore and Sirius stood in the center of the cave, holding their wands high in their hands, looking carefully at the rock walls and cave ceiling. Sirius asked anxiously, why is there no entrance? Yes, this is the place. Dumbledore said. What? Sirius asked hurriedly, have you found the entrance, Dumbledore? How do you know, Dumbledore? You've never been here before. Tonks asked curiously. It has seen magic, Dumbledore replied shortly. Xia Ran obviously found that Tonks looked confused, as if asking what did you say, why can't I understand? However, he has long been aware of this place. Although he has never been to this place personally before today, he also knows what kind of protective measures Voldemort has taken to this place where his horcrux is hidden. One layer after another, it is not like Riddle's diary was disposed of almost casually. This is just the front hall, the entrance hall. Dumbledore said after a moment, we need to go inside. What is blocking us now is the trap set by Voldemort, not the obstacles set by nature. Dumbledore approached the cave wall, touched it with his left hand that was not holding the wand, and whispered something in a strange and mysterious language that no one present could understand. Although they didn't understand it, they also knew that this was Dumbledore trying to break Voldemort's magic, so they waited patiently and warmed themselves by the fire to dispel the cold chill in the cave. Now that creature has lost the power of apparition, he can only rely on Dumbledore to crack it step by step. After all, the magic left by Voldemort is extremely concealed and even more mysterious. They are still a little behind in cracking it, and they can't even touch it. Mind. Dumbledore walked twice around the cave from the right, touching the rough cave walls as much as possible, occasionally stopping to feel up and down with his fingers on a certain place. Finally, he stopped and placed his palm safely on the cave wall. Here, I think you are right. Dumbledore said softly, we have to enter from here. The entrance is very hidden. No one asked how Dumbledore knew. After all, he was the most powerful white wizard in the world, Dumbledore. Even if he only used his eyes to see and his hands to touch, he could still solve problems that were extremely confusing to others. Making ping pong 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 ping pong pong smoking is usually the characteristic of a low-level person, rather than the behavior of a master. Dumbledore is obviously a very powerful master. This is irrefutable and unquestionable. Even though Xia Ran had long known that there was a door in the cave that could lead to the place creature mentioned, that was the destination of their trip. However, he didn't know the specific location of the door. If he was asked to find it, although it was possible to find it, it would take at least several hours, unlike Dumbledore who could find it in a few minutes. Dumbledore took a few steps back from the cave wall and pointed his wand at the rock. Wow! 
Suddenly, the outline of an arch appeared there, emitting a dazzling white light, as if there was a strong light shining behind the crack. Success. Everyone's eyes lit up, but before they finished speaking, the outline of the portal had disappeared. The rock was still as hard and thick as before, and there was nothing on it. What they saw before seemed to be an illusion. Mrs. Weasley asked in shock, why did you disappear again? Xia Ran had known the conditions for opening the door, but she didn't know the specific location of the door. Now that Dumbledore has found the door, it means that the problem has been solved for him. He said slowly and softly at this moment, Dumbledore, I think you have already made a guess, but maybe you think the conditions set by Voldemort are too low level. Have you made any guesses, Xia Ran? Dumbledore turned around and looked. I don't know if it's accurate, I still have to try. Dumbledore said softly, I still think it's too vulgar. What are you talking about? Tonks asked confused, and everyone else, except Moody, was also confused. Xia Ran stood up and walked over, touched the stone cave wall, and said with a smile, Voldemort definitely doesn't want anyone other than him to break in without permission. After all, his Horcrux is hidden in it. Although it has been taken over by Lei Gu, less changed away, he left this door for him to enter and exit when necessary. In order to avoid wizards with bad intentions, just like our group, he believed that opening this door requires paying a certain price. Able to pass. The price? Sirius asked, what price? What are we going to do? If I'm not wrong, the price may be blood. Xia Ran said leisurely. Blood? Everyone was stunned. Do you think it's blood, Xia Ran? Dumbledore made no secret of his disappointment. It seemed that Voldemort did not meet the standards that Dumbledore expected. So I said this is too low level. I want my opponent to weaken me. Enter, there is nothing wrong with this principle, but providing blood is too low level. Voldemort has never been able to understand that there are many things that are much more terrifying than physical injuries. The others looked at each other, thinking the physical damage was terrible enough. I'll do it. Sirius volunteered. After all, their only purpose here was to bury his brother Regulus, so he had no choice but to stand up and make a contribution. Before anyone could say anything, Sirius swiped his wand on his arm, and blood immediately flowed out. Okay, Sirius, since you insist on it. Dumbledore stepped aside. He wanted to donate blood himself, but Sirius had already taken the lead, so there was no need for him to scratch himself. Xia Ran also stepped aside. Sirius stepped forward quickly and let the blood smear on the surface of the rock. A layer of shiny, dark red blood beads stained a corner of the rock surface. Okay, Sirius, it's almost done. Xia Ran said, gently tapping Sirius' injured arm with her wand. Healed as before. The deep wound healed instantly, and he cast a healing healing spell. The dazzling white outline of the arch appeared again on the cave wall. This time it did not disappear. The blood-stained rock in the arch suddenly disappeared, revealing a doorway, which seemed to be endless darkness, leading to hell. The entrance to Huang Quan is average. Chapter 107 Come with me. Dumbledore said and was the first to walk through the doorway. Sirius was the second to go in with an anxious look on his face, Xia Ran was the third, and the others, including Creature, followed closely behind. As he left, Moody extinguished the fire in the cave outside. Everyone entered, holding their wands high. Under the magic spell fluorescent flash, a few bright lights shone through this deep cave in fact, there was almost no light here before. And they could only rely on the wands in their hands, which were like desk lamps, to illuminate the darkness. Cave. Xia Ran looked around with interest. The scene was quite strange. They were standing on the shore of a large black lake. The lake was extremely wide and endless as far as the eye could see. It seemed as if this place was not in a cave, but on a plain wilderness. There was a large lake on the plain. In that way, because the distance is too far, the other shore in the distance cannot be seen. The cave they were in was very high, and the roof could not be seen when looking up. Even with the dark barrier, Xia Ran felt that it was at least 180 meters. In the distance, as if in the center of the lake, 
there was a hazy, green light, reflected in the dead water below. Except for the green light and the bright light from a few wands, the surroundings were completely filled with darkness that could not be broken away, and the penetrability of these bright lights was not as strong as everyone expected. The darkness here seemed to be darker than ordinary darkness. Denser and thicker. After entering here, Creature sobbed in a low voice, Master Regulus. Master Regulus, he was dragged to the bottom of the lake by countless hands in the lake. Sirius recklessly wanted to dive into the lake. He felt that he was still good at swimming and could sneak to the bottom of the lake and bring up his brother's body. Sirius, calm down, don't be stupid. Xia Ran stopped Sirius. He knew that Voldemort had cast various protective spells in the cave, and the bottom of the lake was not as peaceful as the outside world. You want to stop me, Xia Ran? Sirius asked angrily. Xia Ran said calmly, I just don't want to see you die in vain. There are countless inferi in this lake. After a pause, he continued, Of course, if you insist on doing so, you are free to go. Sirius, you really need to calm down. We are here to take away the corpses, not to get ourselves involved, Lupin said. Sirius pointed his wand at the lake and said, Then I will burn this big lake first. The flames are blazing. A string of flames burst out from the top of the wand, and then a big white thing jumped out of the lake. Before everyone could see clearly what it was, it disappeared again with a crash, splashing on the calm water. Ripples to faraway places. Everyone was slightly shocked. At the same time, the flame at the top of Sirius' wand also went out. What is that? Mrs. Weasley asked hurriedly, with a slightly unnatural expression on her face. Dumbledore said softly, I think if we don't find the key to breaking the situation here, that thing will appear again to interfere with us, or attack us. What should we do? Tonks asked. She had taken two steps back just now, but now she boldly stepped forward to take a look at the calm lake. Observe and observe first, don't act rashly. Dumbledore was observing something around the shore of the lake, and the others were also looking for ways. Their footsteps echoed on the narrow rocks by the lake. A mysterious green light flashes in the middle of the lake, giving people a very depressing and uneasy feeling. Moody was walking on the edge of the lake, his magic eye staring motionlessly into the depths of the lake. His face was particularly dark, as if he was angry and sad. Mr. Weasley asked, Did you find anything, Alastor? There are so many corpses, I can't even count them. Which Voldemort? How many people did he kill here? Moody replied in a deep voice, leaning heavily on his crutches. His magic eye has the ability to see through illusions as well as reality. Oh my god! Several people couldn't help but whisper. Although they came here for this purpose, including taking away Regulus's skeleton, they had already been mentally prepared, but when they came closer and heard Moody's words, they still felt angry. These people were all innocent lives. Just because Voldemort wanted to make horcruxes and had to kill lives to split his soul, they were all slaughtered by Voldemort. Even their bodies were not allowed to live in peace after death, and they were reduced to guarding Voldemort's horcruxes. Inferi. Xia Ran also had anger burning in her chest. Aha! At this moment, Dumbledore touched the void with one hand, grabbed something, and said, I think I found something. Others were immediately confused and didn't understand what Dumbledore meant. In their opinion, the dark lakeshore in front of Dumbledore was no different from anywhere else, but Dumbledore seemed to notice something special. He moved one hand slowly through the air, as if he wanted to find and grasp something invisible. Okay. After a few seconds, Dumbledore said happily. He closed his hands and grabbed something in the air that no one else could see. Dumbledore slowly moved towards the lake. Others watched Dumbledore nervously, except Xia Ran, who knew that Dumbledore had found something, Dumbledore still held the hand in the air, and the other he held the wand in one hand and tapped his clenched fist with the wand. Wow! Immediately, a thick green copper chain suddenly emerged from the depths of the lake and jumped towards Dumbledore's clenched fist. Dumbledore tapped the chain with his wand, and the chain began to slip through his fist like a snake, coiling into a pile on the ground, clanging against the rock wall with a loud echo. The chain pulled something up from the dark bottom of the lake. 
Everyone watched in amazement as the bow of a small boat suddenly emerged from the lake like a ghost. Like a chain, it emitted a green light and floated towards the lakeshore where everyone was standing. Barely causing a ripple. A ship? Professor McGonagall asked in surprise. Tonks asked curiously, what is the purpose of this ship? Obviously, to get to the small island in the center of the lake, you need to pass through this boat. Dumbledore said, and with a soft bang, the boat hit the lake shore, but our target is not that small island. Island, but countless innocent people in the depths of this lake. Dumbledore said, shook his head again, threw away the copper chain in his hand, and said, are the passers based on the wizard's magic power? Tom is still doing the same thing. Of course, I have to say, it does have a certain value. Mr. Weasley looked at the boat, then at the lake, and asked, how do we take away the corpses of those innocent people? I think the mysterious man must have cast some vicious magic spell on them to prevent anyone from breaking into this place without permission. How about we use the fire spell together? Tonks waved her wand and said eagerly, Sirius's fire spell alone has no effect, but with so many of us chanting the spell together, it will definitely have a very outstanding effect. Sia Ran smiled and said, It's better to use the fire curse, which is much more effective than the fire curse. The method he used to destroy Marvolo Gaunt's ring at Gaunt's old house in Little Hangleton was the fire spell, which is a very powerful black magic. So the group of people turned to look at Xia Ran with strange expressions. Chapter 108 Xia Ran, do you still know the fire curse? Professor McGonagall said in surprise, that is an evil black magic that can burn everything in the world. Xia Ran smiled and said, the fire curse doesn't need to torture people, and its attack power is particularly powerful and destructive. Sometimes it can be used. Right? He had used it once a few months ago, destroying one of Voldemort's horcruxes. The fire spell shouldn't be able to dry up the lake, and the speed is too slow. Dumbledore said softly, the fire spell is too cruel and can easily burn many corpses in the lake. This is not a scene we want to see. What should we do? Sirius asked. Sia Ran said thoughtfully, perhaps, we can attract those inferi to the shore, subdue them, get them out of the lake, and finally take them to the outside world and bury them in the ground. Attract them ashore? Asked Mrs. Weasley. Will they run to the shore? Sia Ran smiled and said, the existence of these inferi was set up by Voldemort to protect his horcruxes. As long as we make some noise, the inferi will take notice and move. Then we can tie them up. The inferi have no pain or feeling, and are extremely strong. I'm afraid the ropes won't be able to trap them. Lu Ping expressed some concern. Xia Ran said, but it must still have some uses, but the inferi are trained by black magic. Is there any magic that can remove the inferi? Let them sleep peacefully in the world of the dead. I do know a way, but it won't work in this place. Moody still stood by the lake, staring at the countless inferi in the depths of the lake. Dumbledore said softly, I know a magic, maybe I can try it. Okay. Sia Ran nodded immediately, pulled out the wand, motioned for everyone to stand back, and said, then I will start to attract the inferi to the shore. Well, what magic is most likely to cause the inferi to riot? Xia Ran thought about it for a while, and realized that the inferi was a creation of black magic. It was self-responsive and disgusted with bright and holy magic, such as the god-calling guardian curse. Although it was a magic against dementors, it was indeed pure and holy. Call the gods to protect you. Xia Ran waved her wand, and the magic power surged through her body. A little milky white light emerged from the tip of the wand, and it immediately condensed into the shape of an animal, about half a person tall. Even though this was an illusory image formed by the milky white light, she could still tell. This animal is black and white and very naive. It turns out that Xia Rant's patron saint is actually a giant panda. Dumbledore said with a smile. Although he was prepared, he still thought the patron saint was cute and cute. It's a very cute animal. I heard that it is a national treasure of China. It seems that there is one in the London Zoo, but I haven't seen it. Mrs. Weasley looked at the panda silhouette and smiled, it is indeed cute. Xia Ran waved the wand again, 
and the patron saint turned his head to look at him, blinking his eyes that were always dark circles, with a confused look on his face. Xia Ran's face darkened, and he had no choice but to point to the lake. The patron saint looked at him as if complaining, threw himself to the ground, and ran quickly with all four legs in the air, bringing up a string of milky white halos. At this time, a sudden change occurred at the bottom of the lake. A white, sticky palm stretched out from the lake, and then countless hands stretched out, as if the lake was a door, a gateway to the underworld, and these the dead who were controlled by Voldemort. After sensing the movement in the outside world, rushed over, intending to drag Xia ran into the water, especially the panda patron saint who was sprinting in midair. Xia ran quickly backed away and looked up. There were white heads and hands emerging from the dark water everywhere. There were men, women, children, and the elderly, all with sunken eyes and no focus of vision. His eyes floated towards the rock where Xia Ran and others were standing. Dark caves, pitch black lakes, and countless corpses swimming around. The patron saint looked slow, but in fact he was extremely agile. After turning around in a circle, he ran towards the shore again, followed by countless infury. They rushed ashore in a mighty manner, just like an army of hell charging, bringing everyone a very shocking visual effects and psychological shock. Stay back and wait until most of them come ashore before taking action. Moody said loudly, holding a cane in one hand and a wand in the other, always ready to recite a spell. Xia Ran also retreated to the edge of the crowd. The patron panda circled around the lake and disappeared when it arrived beside Xia Ran. Bind quickly. All petrified. Everyone chanted a spell loudly, and various lights emerged from the tip of the wand, and thick and strong ropes flew out, tying up the infury rushing at the front. Then the petrification curse hit the infury, causing the corpse was as stiff as a rock and bound by ropes. It immediately lay on the ground motionless. But the infury behind seemed to be endless, and they were still coming in a steady stream. Their withered hands grasped the slippery rocks, and their hollow, Foggy eyes stared at everyone, and their tattered clothes soaked in water were dragged behind them. Behind him, there were sunken faces with crazy and cold murderous intent, as if any life that broke into this place deserved death. I think the fire spell is still useful, but it will probably force them back into the lake, which is not our purpose. As Dumbledore waved his wand, he still spoke loudly, even over a group of people. The sound of people chanting mantras. His attainments in silent spellcasting must be extremely high. Petrify them all. Bind them quickly. Xia Ran shouted, aiming his wand forward and firing spells. In a short period of time, he had tied up more than ten infury, and the results of others were similar to his. Although creature is old, the magic power of house elves is often profound and the results are considerable. As the number one and number two figures in the Order of the Phoenix, Dumbledore and Moody certainly achieved the most results, with at least thirty or forty bodies, but there were still many infury appearing and rushing towards them. Moody waved his wand and said, Hurry, there are not many left, there are probably more than a hundred infury. All of them are petrified. Bind them quickly. None of them used lethal spells, and the only petrification spell was not an offensive spell for the infury. After all, they were the dead. After a while, hundreds of corpses were lying densely on the shore. They were all tightly tied up with thick ropes, and they were also in a state of stiffness and petrification. Regulus. Sirius suddenly shouted, tied up the last infury in front of him, and rushed forward regardless. Creature shouted, Master Regulus. Petrify them all. Bind them quickly. Moody tied up Regulus's corpse and lay down straight on the ground with a snap. Xia Ran took care of several of the infury in front of him, and at this time, almost all the others had been eliminated. All of the infury had been tied up, stiff as rocks, and unable to move. Regulus. Sirius hugged Regulus's infury, unable to hold back the tears in his eyes. The elf cried loudly, hoarse and inconsolable with pain. Xia Ran sighed quietly. Chapter, 109. Regulus, we are going home, I will take you home. Sirius' voice was filled with uncontrollable sadness and a hint of crying. He had been restraining his emotions when he learned the truth about his brother's death. 
At this point I finally couldn't control it anymore. He carried the body of Regulus on his back. This was a young man who looked very similar to Sirius. He looked to be in his twenties at most, but his life was fixed at this point in time. Oh, Master Regulus! Creature sobbed loudly. Everyone was speechless and felt sad and heavy, especially after seeing so many corpses in the cave, probably three to four hundred. How many people did Voldemort kill here in the past? Let's get out first. Dumbledore said softly, and waved his wand, and dozens of corpses immediately floated up and drifted out along the entrance. The remains of these innocent people must also be buried in the ground, and they cannot be allowed to live forever. Immersed in the corruption of dark magic, he became an assistant to Voldemort, his own murderer. Professor McGonagall said sadly, Albus, let's cremate them all and bury them on the cliff nearby. They should be nearby residents. Xia Ran also waved the magic wand, and dozens of corpses floated in the air. After the others went out, they floated out along the entrance. They came to the outermost cave after suffering a certain degree of damage inside, it seemed that they could use apparition. They carried many corpses and apparat to the top of the cliff. The sea breeze blew and the sun had already set. On November 11th it is extremely cold on the seaside in the moon. Fire is raging. Dumbledore clicked his wand, and the many corpses immediately burst into flames, and the flames shot up into the sky, illuminating the dark coastline. Sia Ran and others dug a huge hole nearby, just waiting for the ashes of a group of innocent people to be buried in it. Sirius. Lupin looked at Sirius. He put down the body of Regulus and was looking at his dead brother in pain. The elf cried until his eyes were red, his voice was hoarse, and he almost fainted. I know, Remus, I wanted to see Regulus again. But I misunderstood him at the beginning. Sirius said sadly. Sirius, I think if Regulus was spiritual, he wouldn't want to see you in such a downturn. He is a real hero, a hero who fights against the mysterious man, not a death eater. Lupin said with relief. Sirius managed to stand up, wiped away his tears, and pointed his wand at Regulus' body. Fire. Flames are blazing. The flames engulfed Regulus's body, and Sirius' grief-stricken expression gradually became resolute. Voldemort, I will resist him to the death. Let him understand the principle of blood repayment with blood. Sirius gritted his teeth. We will all fight to the death against you-know-who, Lupin said. Ho-ho. At this time, the pile of corpses on the other side had been burned, and the ashes were collected by a group of wizards. Even if it was on a cliff with strong sea breeze, there was still no trace of it floating to the sea. Dumbledore moved his wand, and the ashes sank into the pit dug by others. Let's sleep here for the rest of our lives. Sia Ran sighed, and with a wave of the wand, a large amount of soil surged up, filling up this big pit, allowing them to sleep here. Although it was not the same place they were alive, it was far better. There is no need to help his murderer protect important items in the dark cave below. Moody carved a huge rock from the side, erected it next to the pit, and inserted it into the ground. Dumbledore, you have a good literary talent, please write a few sentences. Moody said. Dumbledore touched the giant rock with his wand sentimentally, lime fell, and soon he wrote the epitaph. The victims who fought for the arrival of a beautiful and harmonious society will rest here. Sirius conjured a bottle nearby and carefully contained Regulus's ashes. He said, I will take Regulus home and let him stay in the same cemetery as his parents. Oh, let's go back. Sia ran side. Snapped. 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 They all operate back to the outside of No. 12, Grimald Place, the current headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix, which is the address of Blake's old house, and cast a series of spells such as the Fidelity Charm and the Muggle Shielding Charm. Compared with Hog, it's no worse than Watts, but the area is hundreds of times smaller. There was almost no one walking on the streets at the moment, not even a car. There must be very few people willing to go out on the cold night. A group of people pushed the door open one after another and entered. You guys are finally back, how are you? Kingsley heard the voice coming out of the room inside, but not all the people who went there. I can only say that it went smoothly, 
but. Xia Ran said, shaking her head and sighing. Kingsley also saw the urn held by Sirius at this time, and understood everything. Sirius placed the urn of Regulus in his room and decided when to bury it in the cemetery. By this time, everyone else had already taken their seats in the conference room. Creature also returned to his cupboard, finally no longer mourning the fate of Master Regulus. He was rescued from the dark lake of Inferi. He lay down and fell asleep soon after. Sirius came in last, forced a smile, and said apologetically, Sorry, I'm late. It's okay, Sirius. Dumbledore said, picking up the Slytherin locket again and looking through it. Dumbledore, have you thought of any way to destroy this Horcrux? Moody asked. Dumbledore said softly, There is a way, but it is not easy to use here. After all, it is Sirius's house. The severe fire spell that Xia Ran had used before could not be used in a house living like this. Okay, let's move on to other things. Dumbledore temporarily put down the locket, faced everyone, and said, Voldemort is back, and his first goal must be resurrection. He can easily obtain the requirements for the resurrection ceremony. But I think it's possible that he might not necessarily choose someone else. Why? Snape frowned. For Voldemort, Harry is far more important and meaningful than anyone else, including me. After all, Harry is the only one who survived the Avada Kedavra curse he cast. A wizard who caused his downfall last time. Dumbledore replied. Mr. Weasley said, in other words, we must protect Harry and not let Harry fall into the hands of Death Eaters. Don't worry, Dumbledore, we will protect Harry. Lupin said. Dumbledore seemed a little hesitant, but after thinking about it, he still didn't say the words in his heart. Xia Rant's eyes flashed and she guessed what Dumbledore was thinking. He might have known Harry's true situation at this moment. Because of Voldemort's Avada Kedavra twelve years ago, Harry became Voldemort's. A Horcrux, so as long as Harry doesn't die, even if they destroy all of Voldemort's other Horcruxes, including Voldemort himself, he can still come back to life again. As long as any of the Horcruxes are still there, Voldemort can be called immortal, and no matter what, he cannot be completely killed. Chapter, 110 Although Voldemort is back, as long as he has not been resurrected, he should not gather Death Eaters in a big way. Xia Ran said, he knows the roots of his Death Eaters and does not have enough power to overwhelm everyone. Those Death Eaters you may not be willing to follow him, or you may not want to be a guest. Are you a Death Eater? They follow Voldemort just for the sake of greater power and to bully muggles and other wizards unscrupulously. When Voldemort can no longer bring them such confidence, it is normal for them to give up. Just like the situation when Voldemort fell more than ten years ago. Sirius sneered, and he looked at Snape specifically, who seemed to have regained a lot of energy now. Snape's face remained cold and indifferent, and he only glanced at Sirius with disdain, as if he didn't bother to argue with Sirius. Sirius groaned. Everyone else ignored the dispute between the two people and pretended not to notice it as long as it didn't cause a big fuss, because it was so annoying that they would quarrel whenever they met. Kingsley frowned and said, Dumbledore, I'm afraid the situation in the Ministry of Magic is very unfavorable. You also know Fudge's attitude. He has now specially ordered the Prophet to make various remarks to smear you. This is all it's to attack your prestige and reputation in the magical world. Stupid. Moody said coldly. Yeah, stupid, but he's still the Minister of Magic, isn't he? Kingsley said with a wry smile, and we must obey his orders, at least not show any intention to refute them openly. Mr. Weasley added, Fudge was furious in the ministry. He forbade anyone to have any contact with Dumbledore, and he was a little suspicious of me, but the department I was in was not critical, so he didn't know how to do it yet. Put too much thought into me. After he finished speaking, he spread his hands with a wry smile. I'm sorry, Arthur. Dumbledore said looking a little tired. Mr. Weasley said hurriedly, it doesn't matter, I mean. I'm not complaining, I'm just. I'm complaining about fudge. The facts have been placed in front of him, but he still pretends not to see it, just like the eyes. It's like being blind. Arthur, you must never say this in the ministry, it will cause big trouble. 
Mrs. Weasley seemed startled. I know that I have been very responsible during this time in the ministry and tried not to cause any conflict so as not to attract too much attention from Fudge. Mr. Weasley said. Xia Ran said, our manpower in the ministry is indispensable, especially if Voldemort is really resurrected. Kingsley, Mr. Weasley, Tonks, you must all show an attitude against Dumbledore in order to win Fudge's trust should at least not make him suspicious of you or cause any obstacles for you. Yes, you have to do this. At this critical moment, we have to have manpower in the ministry. Dumbledore also said, anyway, as long as they don't remove me from the chocolate frog picture, no matter how they criticize me, I will it doesn't matter. Kingsley, Tonks, and Mr. Weasley looked at each other, nodded, and said, okay. There are also movements in the dark world. Those dark creatures may be preparing to take action after hearing the news that Voldemort may return. Dumbledore pointed out a key point and said, Voldemort will obviously give them things that we cannot promise. Status, such as giving freedom to goblins and supporting werewolves want an offensive behavior. Mundungus, Rubius, and Remus, you may have a harder time in the future. We will pay more attention. Mundungus, Hagrid, and Lupin replied. One of them is a sleazy person who is proficient in all kinds of deception, the other is a half-blood giant, and the third one is a half-giant. Werewolves are very suitable candidates to open up the communication channel with dark creatures. If you meet a fellow traveler who fits our ideals, you can all join the Order of the Phoenix. I welcome them all. The entire Order of the Phoenix is a big family. Dumbledore added. Dumbledore looked at the Weasleys again and said, By the way, Arthur, Molly, Bill and Charlie are all abroad. Please write to them and try to pay more attention to the situation in the wizarding world abroad. If you can win over like-minded people, as for people, that's the best thing. We will make it clear when we write. Mr. and Mrs. Weasley agreed. Okay, that's about it. If there are any changes in the future, we will continue to communicate quickly. Dumbledore said. Afterwards, everyone talked about some things and discussed some countermeasures in times of danger, then the meeting ended and everyone went back to where they came from. Dumbledore took Slytherin's locket with him. Xia Ran did not suggest using the fire curse to destroy Slytherin's locket. Hogwarts has the fangs of the basilisk, which is also a powerful thing that can easily destroy horcruxes. Remus, if you want, you can come over often and take a look. You can live here. There are many vacant houses here. Before leaving, Sirius invited Lupin and said. Lupin smiled and said, I will. After all, Hogwarts only has offices, although there are also bedrooms and bathrooms inside. Goodbye. Kingsley, the Weasleys and others used apparition to leave one after another. Dumbledore first sent Mrs. Fig to where she lived, which was actually Privet Drive, where Harry and the Dursley's neighbor, then returned to the Gate of No. 12, Grimald Place. Only a few teachers from Hogwarts are left here. Snapped. They all operate to Hogsmeade outside Hogwarts, and Sirius closed the door of Black's old house. The village of Hogsmeade is dark, and the stars and moon are hidden behind dark clouds. It seems to be a rainy day, and there may be a heavy rain at night. Let's go back to school quickly. We'll be in trouble when it rains. Xia Ran said. As soon as she finished speaking, there was a thunderstorm in the sky, thunder and lightning flashed in the sky, and then heavy rain poured down. Professor McGonagall said speechlessly, Xia Ran, you are such a crow's mouth. Xia Ran smiled sarcastically. Dumbledore conjured up several umbrellas and gave them to Sharon, Professor McGonagall, Snape, Lupin and Hagrid, and said, I really long for a cup of steaming chocolate milk and a cup of delicious butter. Beer. Professor, I have some wine that I brewed myself. Do you want to drink some? Hagrid invited him angrily. Hagrid's own food. Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Snape, Lupin, and Xia Ran looked at each other, and they all shuddered when they thought of something that could be used as a stone hammer to crush teeth directly. Extremely resolutely rejected Hagrid's kindness. Xia Ran's tooth hurts just thinking about the food Hagrid cooked by himself. Several people opened their umbrellas and quickly entered Hogwarts, and everyone returned to their offices. Before Xia Ran lay down, 
she also improved her magic level through the accumulated force points. Promote. Chapter, 111. Are you sure you want to increase your magic power to level 5 medium? Promote. Xia Ran focused her thoughts on the magic column, and immediately felt the rapid growth of magic power in her body, and the number on the system panel also changed from level 5 elementary to level 5 medium. Ha! Huh. Xia Ran breathed a sigh of relief and looked uplifted. He finally raised his magic level by one level. Last year, he was only at level 4 elementary. Now he is at level 5 intermediate. This is the inside of Hogwarts. As a magic school with a history of thousands of years, the only ones who can steadily surpass him are Principal Dumbledore and the deans of the four major colleges. It is no exaggeration to say that none of the others are as good as him. Even if Lupin is powerful enough, he is still a little behind him, which is about the same as his original level 5 elementary magic power. After all, Lupin's life has been difficult in the past. Under such circumstances, he can still maintain a level of magic power around level 5 elementary. It is already very difficult and makes people look at him with suspicion. There are several people who had enemies in their school days. James Potter is dead. Peter Pettigrew has been a mouse for more than 10 years and is now arrested and imprisoned in Azkaban prison. Lupin has a difficult life because of his identity as a werewolf and has gone through a lot. After all the vicissitudes of life, my hair has turned grey for the sake of living, so how can I still have too much energy to focus on this? Sirius had spent a full twelve years in Azkaban prison in the past, but now Severus Snape, as the potions professor at Hogwarts, has a level six or above he is also the top potions master in the magic world. In terms of strength, prestige, and other aspects, Snape is now the winner among several people, and he is also the strongest. Of course, when it comes to Harry's mother Lily Potter, Snape will always be defeated by James Potter. After all, Lily chose James, not Snape. There are ten force points left. Xia Ran whispered while looking at the force points on his system panel. He raised his magic power to level 5 medium, which cost him 70 force points, leaving only 10 force points left. As for power points, it is no longer possible to continue to increase the magic level. You can only look at improving other knowledge points or save them, which is not impossible. Transformation, potions, or herbal medicine. Xia Ran touched his chin. He decided to improve his level of transformation. It is now level 4 advanced, but he focused his thoughts on the column of transformation. At the time, he was indifferent, and he was stunned for a moment. Obviously, 10 force points were not enough to upgrade the force points from level 4 advanced to level 5 elementary. He had no choice but to change the target. In the end, he increased the points in potions and herbalism to level 4 medium, and the only level 3 flying skill, he also increased the points to level 4 medium. His current system panel situation has changed drastically. Name, Charin Fremont. Age, 27 years old. Magic, level 5 medium. Force points, 0 points. Transformation, level 4 advanced. Potion science, level 4 medium. Charms, level 5 elementary. Herbalism, level 4 intermediate. Flying, level 4 medium. Xia Ran showed a happy smile. The improvement of strength always makes people happy. He coveted the Elder Wand in Dumbledore's hand, the Invisibility Cloak in Harry's hand, and the Sorting Hat in the Principal's office even more. The Elder Wand, the Invisibility Cloak, and the Sorting Hat. If all the force points of those three special magic items are absorbed, I will become a top wizard with a level 6 magic level. It is not a delusion. Xia Ran was very excited, but he had no excuse to come into contact with those three things. The Elder Wand and the Invisibility Cloak were better. After all, they were dead objects. Even after he absorbed the Force Points, he would have a certain degree of respect for the original objects. The damage to the ground is not obvious, and it is extremely difficult for the holder to detect it, and he may even mistake it for his own illusion. The problem is that the Sorting Hat has a certain amount of wisdom, so this is very difficult to deal with. If the Sorting Hat is not sure to turn into a witless wizard hat, then it will cause a big problem, 
and there is almost no way to end it. After all, the sorting hat has become a symbol of Hogwarts to a certain extent. Xia Ran suddenly thought of the situation when Harry was in fourth grade in the original time and space. The three major magic schools in Europe jointly held the Triwizard Tournament. As a magic item to select warriors the Goblet of Fire, there is no doubt that it is 100%. It contains a lot of force points. Even because of the scale and far-reaching influence of the Triwizard Tournament in the past years, it is possible that the Goblet of Fire has more force points than the house hat. Thinking of this, Xia Ran's heart skipped a beat, secretly hoping that the Triwizard Tournament would be held as scheduled and not stop preparations because of the news of Voldemort's comeback. It's unlikely even if you think about it. After all, whether the Triwizard Tournament will be held again has actually been discussed. Only the final venue, schedule, and projects are still controversial. Besides, the Department of International Magical Exchange and Cooperation and the Department of Sports of the British Ministry of Magic have made a lot of efforts for this and have been working on it for a year. This is also allowed by fudge. How could it be possible because of a fake in the eyes of the Ministry of Magic? Stop due to news. Xia Ran thought that Fudge even wished that the scale was bigger and the momentum was stronger to show that the magic world was singing and dancing and that everything was peaceful. He would never be willing to stop holding the Triwizard Tournament to verify Dumbledore's words. The so-called news of Voldemort's resurrection and return. In Fudge's eyes, Dumbledore is now more terrifying than Voldemort. Xia Ran was refreshed and became familiar with the soaring power. Now the plot has changed a lot. Although his strength is not weak, he is definitely not top-notch. At least he has faced Voldemort or Death Eaters head-on. Master, he is still unmatched for the time being. In this case, naturally the stronger the better, when in fact the stronger the better. After the first meeting of the Order of the Phoenix, there was no further meeting. There was no useful news for the time being. We also had to pay attention to avoid the suspicion and jealousy of the Ministry of Magic. It was better for Xia Ran and other places to be limited to Hogwarts, especially for Jean. Sly, Tonks, Mr. Weasley and other Ministry of Magic employees and members of the Order of the Phoenix were even more exhausted. Fudge seemed to be suspicious of many people in the Ministry, suspecting that they had secret connections with Dumbledore. The Daily Prophet also worked tirelessly to smear Dumbledore. Now that Dumbledore's position as Chief Wizard of the Wisingamot has been revoked, it was later heard that they also wanted to take back Dumbledore's Order of Merlin. However, this is still under discussion and should not be finalized yet. One day in mid-November, Sirius received a letter, inviting Xia Ran to attend Regulus's funeral at the Black Mansion. Everything was simple, in fact, Regulus's ashes had been buried, but little Sirius didn't want to see Regulus leave in such a hurry. After staying in the Black Lake for more than ten years, he thought about it and always felt that he wanted to do something for Regulus. Xia Ran wrote a letter and agreed. The funeral date was the day before Christmas. Sirius took this opportunity to invite everyone to spend Christmas together. Chapter 112 However, Regulus's funeral and Christmas were all in late December, and it was only mid-November, so there was still almost a month left. Xia Ran borrowed many precious books from Dumbledore. He hoped that through his own efforts, he could improve the level of charms. Here, Xia Ran, are the three books you need. Dumbledore launched three large books, one Advanced Black Magic Revealed, one Metamorphosis Theory, and a book with an extremely awkward title. The study of the practical and abstract consequences of natural death, especially the reunification of spirit and matter. These are very precious books, Xia Ran, take good care of them. Dumbledore was quite reluctant to part with them. He would read these books, especially the third one, from time to time. Xia Ran smiled and said, I have never destroyed books. He took the three books and held them in his arms. By the way, your resurrection stone. Dumbledore stopped Xia Ran who was about to leave, and took out a stone from the drawer. It was the resurrection stone, one of the three sacred artifacts of death. He went home and took the resurrection stone and gave it to Dumbledore. He roughly knew what Dumbledore wanted this thing for. Dumbledore's expression looked slightly gloomy, and his blue eyes seemed to be filled with sadness. Xia Ran didn't know what to say, 
so she could only quietly take the resurrection stone and said, My condolences. When people get old, they like to do things that they have long known are meaningless. Dumbledore smiled bitterly. The undead summoned by the resurrection stone do not belong to the world of the living. They live here in great pain. This is not what they should do. A place to live. In the story of the Deathly Hallows, the second child who possessed the resurrection stone was grieved physically and mentally because of the pain of his beloved woman. And cut himself off, allowing the god of death to take away his life without any effort. Now that Voldemort is lurking in the dark, Dumbledore will certainly not commit suicide. The younger generation has not yet grown up, especially Harry Potter, whom he has high hopes for, and when the older generation of wizards faced Voldemort, without him present, they would it was difficult to match Voldemort. Even Alastair Moody, the Order of the Phoenix's second-in-command, was still no match for Voldemort. He knew that he could not die yet and had to live to support himself. Dumbledore looked at Xia Rance leaving back and his eyes flickered. It was really surprising that Xia Ran knew so many things. He didn't know how Xia Ran found out, but he was probably sure of one thing. Although he belongs to the side of the White Wizard, the character and psychological condition he has always shown are not likely to be trapped in black magic. Even though Xia Ran is indeed proficient in a lot of black magic, some of them were even given away by him. Just be sure of that. He also hopes that Xia Ran can grow up quickly and become powerful. If there can be another legendary white wizard who is not inferior to him and Voldemort, then he will have no regrets even if he dies immediately, because there is another wizard in the white wizard's world. Take it over for him and fight against Voldemort, a legendary level among dark wizards. Even though Harry Potter has a special connection with Voldemort, he also has a strong foundation. The problem is that Harry is too young. When he fully grows up, he will not even think about it for many years. Dumbledore Leto was afraid that he wouldn't be able to wait that long. I hope Xia Ran can be stronger. If she is at the level of Minerva and Severus, my pressure will be greatly reduced. Dumbledore whispered, he did not expect that Xia Ran would have the opportunity to advance to the legendary level. That is, a wizard with a magic power level of 7 or above on Xia Ran's system panel. Although Xia Ran was not bad, Dumbledore believed that he was still too far away from the legendary level of level 7. You know, the deans of the four houses of Hogwarts, Professor McGonagall, Snape, Professor Flittick, and Professor Sprout, are without exception talented wizards, even better in some aspects. Dumbledore was a step ahead, but they were still not level 7 legendary wizards. A white wizard as powerful as Moody is also not a legendary wizard. This is probably what Dumbledore expected from Xia Ran. Xia Ran would not know what Dumbledore expected of him, and even if he knew, he would not care. At most, he would laugh it off. He has a certain plan for his own path, not to mention that he also has a system panel that appears with his awakening. It can absorb the force points contained in special magic items to enhance itself. Snape is such a bastard. He actually belittled Professor Lupin like this and said he couldn't teach. Being a teacher was an unwise choice for Dumbledore. When Xia Ran was going down the stairs, she heard an angry voice coming from the corridor on one side. This voice was very familiar, and the two voices behind her were also very familiar. And Xia Ran also remembered that this period happened to be the time when Lupin transformed into a wolf. Although there was the wolfsbane potion prepared by Snape, it only suppressed the ferocious habits of the werewolf, but it could not affect him. S. Transformation Therefore, Snape took over his defense against the dark arts class as the substitute professor. I think Dumbledore's decision to choose him as potions professor was an act of lunacy. A male voice said through gritted teeth. Then a female voice raised her voice and said, Ron. This is not the lounge. Keep your voice down so that the teachers don't hear you. The three people who spoke happened to be Harry, Ron, and Hermione. Ah, Professor Fremont. The trio turned the corner and immediately saw Sia Ran walking down with three books in her arms her face was slightly embarrassed. The professor's words were heard, even though they were aimed at Snape still felt that this move was not appropriate, instead of belittling Snape openly, he should have returned to the Gryffindor common room and scolded him. Sia Ran smiled and said, 
criticizing a professor behind his back is not the behavior of a good student. He knew Snape's character, especially after Lily's death, he served as the Hogwarts professor for more than ten years. Otherwise, how could Dumbledore trust Snape? Snape knew almost all his secrets in the original time and space, and it was Snape who had the last hand to advance the progress of the Harry trio. We won't do it anymore. Harry and Ron said immediately, and then added in their hearts, I won't let you hear it again. Hermione looked at the books in Sia Rant's arms curiously and asked, Professor, what kind of books are these? She loves learning by nature, and she is itching to see books and wants to take a look and find out. Can I take a look, Professor? After you're done, I mean. The three books that Sia Ran is holding must not be read to students at this time, especially The Secret of Advanced Black Magic and the Study of the Practical and Abstract Consequences of Natural Death. Especially the study of the reunification of spirit and matter, it is easy to influence their minds and lead them to go astray. We'll wait until you grow up. Just focus on what the teacher teaches now. Xia Ran suppressed the big words on the cover, went down to the fourth floor, and entered the office. Hermione pouted on the stairs, looking annoyed. Chapter 113 Look what's wrong with the name. Professor Fremont is so stingy, huh? Hermione said angrily. Harry and Ron looked at each other and decided not to touch Hermione's troubles at this time, otherwise she would talk about it endlessly. And they couldn't talk about Hermione, after all, there are many times when doing homework requires a little help from Hermione. The two whispered to Snape for a few more words, and quickly changed the subject. Ron said, you said that Sirius is going to hold a funeral for Regulus. Who is Regulus? Harry said, Regulus is Sirius's younger brother. He died for unknown reasons more than ten years ago. Now he has found Regulus's bones, so he wants to give Regulus a funeral. Harry also received a letter from Sirius. That's it. Ron said with a thoughtful look, Are you going, Harry? It happens to be a holiday at that time. If you go, I will go with you. After a pause, he added, Sirius also sent letters to our family. Mum wrote to Percy yesterday, asking him to ask our opinion. If you don't want to go to the funeral, stay at school for Christmas and New Year and don't go home. No, there was no one at home during that time. I will definitely go. Harry nodded heavily and said, I want to ask. As you know, I have to go back to the Desleys during the summer vacation, so I want to ask if I can go to the primary school this time. Go to Sirius's house. I mean, he is my godfather, he is also my relative, and he is also my guardian. Harry, you can really ask. If Sirius agrees, you won't have to return to the Desleys anymore, Hermione said. Ron smiled and said, I thought you didn't agree, Hermione, what are you talking about? Hermione glanced at him fiercely, and Ron immediately shut his mouth. Hermione continued, I have to say that your aunt and uncle treated you very badly. It's okay. Harry smiled, faced Ron's astonished eyes, and said, They have always raised me. Although the food is not that good, I am not hungry. I was a little bit hungry before. Pocket money. Harry paused slightly before adding, Of course, if you say I like the Desleys, that's definitely impossible. Brother, you scared me. Ron punched Harry in the chest. Harry pretended to be hurt. Okay, I'll go too. Hermione said nonchalantly. You? Ron asked in shock, did you receive an invitation from Sirius? Hermione smiled and said lightly, of course, I will take Crookshanks with me. It turns out that he was influenced by Crookshanks. Ron said he understood. Who told your Ban Ban to be a murderer? Ron said dejectedly, Sirius said he wanted to give me a pet back, so why hasn't he heard anything after so many days? Do you think he has forgotten it? No, I have to go and ask him. Harry, it turns out that you are here, and Wood is looking for you like crazy. He said that he will definitely beat you up as soon as he sees you. Fred and George, the twin brothers of the Weasley family, suddenly he ran over from the side and gasped for air. Oh, yes, the first Quidditch match is coming soon, and Wood said he needs to train harder. Harry remembered this important thing. Fred said, Come on, we'll wait for you on the Quidditch pitch. 
As he said that, he and George ran downstairs. Harry quickly said, let's go back to the lounge quickly. I'll get the broom and leave. The trio immediately jogged back to the Gryffindor common room. Xia Ran stayed in the office and read books. The three books he borrowed from Dumbledore all contained profound magical knowledge. Even with his level of strength and knowledge reserve, they seemed mysterious and profound. Over the past thousands of years, there have been many talented people born in the magic world. Xia Ran lamented, even though many of them have no reputation or deeds passed down. After learning more magic knowledge and learning more powerful magic spells, his strength will automatically increase, and his pure magic power will increase. If other aspects of knowledge do not keep up in time, it will be like walking with a lame leg, even if his body is no longer strong. He is strong but not much faster, especially in the magic world where there are many magical spells. What's more, if Xia Ran reads and studies magic knowledge by himself, he will have a certain chance to improve the level of various knowledge. How could he waste so much time? He is currently mainly studying the two aspects of charms and transfiguration. He is really not interested in potions and herbalism, and his talent is not outstanding. He mainly relies on force points. As for flying, let's not mention it. There are many aspects of knowledge that he has not touched in the courses offered at Hogwarts, and he is not very interested in them, such as divination knowledge. If his magic level, including charms, transfiguration, etc., is improved in the future, subsequent improvement is too difficult, too many force points are required, he may still shift his attention to these knowledge points, as for now. Just forget it. Xia Ran shook her head and continued to read the book in her hand. Before Christmas, because Sirius's grievances were cleared and his innocence was restored, Peter Pettigrew was taken to Azkaban prison. Although Dumbledore announced the return of the mysterious man, the Ministry of Magic tried its best to discredit Dumbledore. Things happened, but overall, the students spent more than a month peacefully. This time, most students went home for Christmas, and very few students stayed in school. Harry Potter, who usually stayed in school, did not sign on the detention registration list. Are you all going? Hermione asked. They were in the Gryffindor common room. The Weasley children stood out with their red hair. Ginny nodded and said, Yes, we are all ready to go. She lowered her voice and whispered mysteriously, Have you heard? Dumbledore convened a secret organization, just under Sirius inside Blake's old house, that is the headquarters of the secret organization. Where did you hear these rumors, Ginny? Percy asked with a frown. Secret. Ginny smiled slyly. Ha, huh, I'm an adult now and I'm about to graduate. I'll just ask my parents and they'll tell me. Percy said, deliberately puffing up his chest, even in the Gryffindor common room. Inside, he pinned the student union president's badge on his chest. George waved his hands impatiently and said, Okay, okay, Percy, we know you are the president of the student union, there is no need to show off. Percy snorted. Okay, actually I heard Hagrid mention it accidentally, but when I asked him later, he just ignored my questions and didn't answer my questions directly, Ginny said. I guess he must have said you were too young to know these things. Harry asked. Ginny nodded gloomily. Harry, Ron, and Hermione looked at each other and smiled bitterly, that's what he told us too. If he doesn't want to tell it, why bother letting it slip to make us feel itchy? Ron closed the book heavily. He couldn't read a single line of the words just now. This was clearly a potions homework assignment assigned by Snape. Chapter, 114 What do you think Dumbledore's secret organization would be called? Who are its members? What are they mainly doing? Fred asked curiously. George guessed, I guess they are mainly against the big idiot Fudge. It is best to overthrow Fudge. I will definitely be the first to applaud and celebrate. George. Percy suddenly frowned. He was determined to join the Ministry of Magic and wanted to be a high official, and Fudge happened to be the Minister of Magic, the largest official in the Ministry of Magic. Ah, I forgot, Fudge is Percy's idol, and Percy dreams of becoming the Minister of Magic. George chuckled. Humph, I'm afraid you'll get Dad into trouble. Percy snorted. Ron raised his head and looked around. 
they were all excited about the upcoming Christmas vacation. No one paid attention to them, so he said, just keep your voice down. They are all Griffinders here, not the big ones. The Great Hall, Slytherin idiots might be passing by. However, a few people still did not continue to bury Fudge. Hermione reasoned, it is definitely impossible to overthrow Fudge. As long as Dumbledore is willing, he can just stand up and cheer for him. Why is there any need to run a secret organization? I think they are to resist Voldemort. The Weasley children suddenly gasped. I said you are so afraid of a name. Hermione asked dissatisfied. Many people pretended not to hear it. Resisting the mysterious man? It's possible. Percy thought seriously, I remember my mother mentioned that when the mysterious man was gaining momentum more than ten years ago, she and her father joined one of Dumbledore's organizations. There are many people we are familiar with in the organization, including Professor Lupin, Hagrid, and McGonagall, as well as Sirius, Mr. and Mrs. Potter, Mr. and Mrs. Longbottom, etc. My parents are in there too. Harry couldn't help but ask. It should be so. Percy said uncertainly, I'm not sure. After all, I didn't join that secret organization. Fred said enthusiastically, that's just right. Let's see if we can join Dumbledore's secret organization. Isn't Black House the headquarters of the secret organization? I will apply to join then. George waved his fist and said, the secret organization that resists the mysterious man sounds so exciting. Who do you think will be members of that secret organization? Ron asked. Ginny guessed, Mom and Dad must be in there, as well as Professor Lupin, Professor McGonagall, Hagrid, and Sirius. Is Professor Fremont there? We'll find out if we take a closer look after we arrive at the Black Mansion. Harry said. The few of them chatted for a while and then went to bed. They had to catch a train tomorrow and had to get up early in the morning. After all, the journey from Hogwarts platform to platform nine and three quarters in London was quite long. Stay in the car for at least a full day. They boarded the Hogwarts Express the next day and found two free boxes at the back of the train. There was no one inside for the time being. Because a small number of students stayed in school, the number of people on this train did not start during school or during holidays. So crowded. In the evening, the Hogwarts Express arrived at Platform 9 and 3 quarters. They only brought a few changes of clothes and a few books, Hermione and Percy mainly brought books, not much luggage. And the owls were all they were still in the Olary of Hogwarts, so they left the station easily, and happened to see Mr. and Mrs. Weasley waiting outside the station. Harry, Hermione, Ginny. Mrs. Weasley hugged the three of them heavily. George said strangely, Don't you see your other sons, mother? Ah, my heart. Fred put his hand on his chest, pretending to be hurt. Okay, stop messing around. Mrs. Weasley glared, and the two brothers immediately restrained themselves. Harry always felt that Mrs. Weasley was very lion-like, if he had lived experience in China, he might be you will feel that Mrs. Weasley has the demeanor of a tiger, able to control her naughty sons. We will be your father's car. Mrs. Weasley said, then looked at Hermione and asked, Dear, have you made it clear to your parents? Hermione nodded and replied, I wrote and said that my parents agreed that I would not go home for Christmas, but attend the funeral of an elder friend, they thought it was a polite question, especially when I was in school. When it came to the invitation they just asked me to send some more stuff from Hogsmeade home, they thought it was very interesting and the food tasted good. Oh, that's true. I want to visit Hogsmeade sometimes. Mrs. Weasley said, taking a few children out of the station and getting into the car. Mr. Weasley was the last one. Getting in the car, he sat in the driver's seat. Harry, Ron, Fred, George, and Percy sat in the back seat, while Mrs. Weasley, Hermione, and Ginny sat in the passenger seat. The car looked like an ordinary car. It's a car, but the space inside has been expanded by magic, and the nine of them can fit in it without feeling crowded at all. Dad, have you rebuilt a car again? Ron asked, getting into a car rebuilt by Mr. Weasley and driven to school by him and Harry, only to be destroyed by the Whomping Willow. Mrs. Weasley's face suddenly darkened. It was obvious that she remembered what happened last year. 
Mr. Weasley said hurriedly, No, this car is a ministry car, but I use it most of the time. The five boys in the back row laughed. They knew that Mr. Weasley loved muggle items this car must have been modified by Mr. Weasley himself, and all kinds of magic spells were applied to it. However, he learned from previous mistakes. This car may have been specially named after the Ministry of Magic. After all, Mr. Weasley is still the director of an office, so there is no problem in using a car, although he only has one old man under his command, and he only has two people in the entire office. Okay, sit tight. Let's get to Grimald Place early. Creature has definitely made something, in fact, Molly has also made a lot, we can eat something first, you must be hungry already. Mr. Weasley said, starting the car. Creature. Hermione asked confused. Oh, a house elf, from the Black family. Pure blood wizarding families with a long history like this always have house elves serving them. Mr. Weasley replied. Hermione's breathing seemed to be heavier, and she deliberately said in a calm tone, House elves, I have read relevant records in the book, a kind of slave of wizards, beating and scolding arbitrarily, even taking the life of elves. People mind. The elves may think this is a great behavior, of course I don't agree with the behavior of beating and scolding elves indiscriminately, it is inhumane. Mr. Weasley said, I mean. Molly, you also know right? Oh, what? Mrs. Weasley was startled, and then said, Ah, yes, that's right, Creature's biggest goal is to be beheaded and hang in the black family like his parents and grandparents. Dirty and despicable slavery. Hermione said in disgust, determined to change this situation. Chapter, 115 Seeing Hermione's heavy expression, Harry quickly changed the subject and asked, Grimald Place, where is that? His words reminded Mrs. Weasley, and she said, Oh, by the way, I forgot to show you something. He took out a piece of paper from his pocket, handed it to Hermione, and continued, Please circulate it and take a look, and memorize this address. What? Ron was still confused. You little fool, don't you even know the fidelity charm? George poked his head from the back row and saw the writing on the paper in Hermione's hand, the headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix can be found in Grimald Place, London. Found on the twelfth. What? The fidelity charm. What does Sirius need to guard against? Harry was surprised and asked. Mr. Weasley said gently, now the Black Mansion has become the headquarters of the Order of the Phoenix, Sirius is very happy about this, so in order to avoid being found by mysterious people and Death Eaters. The location of the Black Mansion the Fidelity Charm must be cast, and Dumbledore is the secret keeper. I think if Dumbledore is not willing, no one can know this address from his mouth, unless Dumbledore himself is willing to tell the address information. Okay, boys, read it quickly and remember it quickly. Mrs. Weasley said, and the piece of paper passed through the hands of the two girls, Hermione and Ginny, and then to the five boys in the back row. Soon the car arrived at Grimald Place, because it was already late December, the twelfth lunar month of winter, and the temperature was more than ten degrees below zero. It was dusk, lead clouds were hanging low, snowflakes were falling again, and the cold wind was getting colder. The blowing made several people tremble. Mrs. Weasley was the first to get out of the car and saw the bodies of several children shivering from the cold. She hurriedly said, Okay, it will be much warmer when we get in soon. What number 12? Ginny looked at the scene in front of her in shock and said, There is no number 12 at all. Everyone else looked around, and sure enough they only saw numbers 10 and 11, Grimald Place, and number 13, Grimald Place on the right. However, there was no number 12, Grimald Place recorded on the paper. Ron asked, Mom, where is? Try to remember what you just remembered, Mr. Weasley said calmly. Percy, Fred, George, Ron, Ginny, Harry, and Hermione all started to think back, but the problem was that there were still only eleven and thirteen, Grimald Place in front of them, and there was nothing in between. House no. Twelve. At this moment, the dirty exterior wall and dirty windows between no. 11 and no. 13 started to beat, and a new house actually jumped out between the two houses. Wow! Fred exclaimed. Cool! George said. 
Mrs. Weasley pushed several children forward and said, Come in quickly. Harry walked up the old steps and stared at the new door. Its black paint was tattered and scratched, and the silver door handle had been twisted into a snake shape. There was neither a keyhole nor a letterbox, so Mr. Weasley took out his wand and knocked on the door once. Harry suddenly heard a loud, metallic click from the door, which sounded like a metal chain. The door creaked open. Children, come in quickly, Mr. Weasley whispered, but be careful not to touch anything. Harry followed Hermione and Ginny into the almost completely dark hall. He seemed to be able to smell a damp and dusty smell that was mixed with sweetness. The first impression of this place was like a long-abandoned building. He turned around and looked again. Ron, Fred, George, and Percy came in behind him, and finally Mr. and Mrs. Weasley. Mr. Weasley closed the door and the room suddenly fell into chaos. In the deepest darkness. Here. He wanted to ask something. Suddenly, a ray of light lit up somewhere in the house, and all the old-fashioned gas lamps on the walls of the hall turned on, casting beams of flickering, very unstable light onto the mottled wallpaper, and illuminating it. There was a long and dark corridor covered with worn carpets. On the top of the corridor, a tree-shaped decorative lamp covered with spider webs was hung. It was flickering slightly at the moment. It was old and had turned black. Portrait paintings hung on the curved walls on both sides. Whether it is a tree-shaped decorative lamp or a large candelabra placed on a nearby rickety table, its shape is like a big poisonous snake, hiding in the dim light and preparing to move. And a door opened deep in the corridor, and Sirius appeared at the door, with a welcoming smile on his face. Harry was keenly aware that his complexion seemed to have improved a lot. Welcome, Harry, Hermione, Ginny, Ron, Percy, Fred, George, welcome, come in, dinner will be served soon. Sirius opened his arms and hugged Harry heavily, so much like your father, but your eyes are more like your mother's. Green eyes? Harry grinned. He was happy that he finally had relatives who really cared about him. I heard Professor Lupin mention it. Yes, Remus. Sirius smiled and teased Crookshanks in Hermione's arms the big ginger cat recognized Sirius and meowed in a low voice, what a very special cat. A spiritual cat. Thank you. Hermione smiled sweetly. Okay, be careful, don't wake up my mother, you won't want to see her, believe me. Sirius said, making way to the back room. What? Harry asked in shock, Sirius, your mother is still alive. Sorry. I didn't mean that, I meant. No, she is indeed dead. Sirius said, okay, no more words, you will know after you stay here for a few more days. Several people entered the room one after another. There were already many people sitting in the room, most of whom were acquaintances of Harry, such as Professor Lupin and Professor Fremont. Of course, there were also some wizards they did not know, such as the dark-skinned man. A strong man, describing a more wretched man. You guys put your things down first. You will stay here later. You can return to Hogwarts after the vacation. Sirius said, inviting a few people to sit down at the dining table. This is a kitchen. It looks exactly like the hall outside. It is also gloomy and dark. It is a cave-like room surrounded by rough stone walls. Most of the light comes from the innermost group. A huge flame and a gloomy thick smoke hung in the air, like the smoke of a battlefield. Looking past, the ferocious shaped cooking utensils and pans made of gold and iron hung from the dark ceiling. Xia Ran was sitting at the dining table, playing wizard chess with Lupin, and Ron immediately came over with interest. Chapter 116 Xia Ran glanced at Ron and said with a smile, What, Ron, do you want to play? He easily overturned the game. Xia Ran. Lu Ping shook his head and laughed. He clearly had a chance to win and could defeat Xia Ran in less than ten moves. How could he have expected that Xia Ran would overturn the chessboard? Ron seemed a little moved. I heard that you are very good at chess. I'd like to show Professor Lupin how good you are. Let's go. Xia Ran pushed the wizard chessboard over so that Ron and Lupin could play against each other. Ron. Want to play a game? Lupin said with a smile as he had nothing to do. 
Ron smiled shyly and said, Okay, let's have a round. Harry laughed and said, Professor Lupin, you have to be careful, Ron is very good at chess. Really? Lupin raised his eyebrows. Harry's words not only did not make him flinch, but instead made him more interested, and he played with Ron enthusiastically. Xia Ran took a sip of beer and looked around. Three or two people were chatting with each other and laughing. The atmosphere was very lively, without any sign of the solemnity of a funeral. He asked, isn't Dumbledore coming? Professor Dumbledore. Harry and others immediately pricked up their ears. He won't be here today. He will come back tomorrow, just in time to attend Regulus's memorial service and deliver his eulogy. Sirius replied. Regulus's funeral was actually Regulus's memorial service. After all, Regulus had been dead for more than ten years, and he died as a hero. Sirius was proud of him. Besides, more than a month had passed since the day when Regulus' ashes were brought back. Sirius had already calmed down his sadness, so this memorial service would not actually be very heavy. He believed that Regulus would be more willing to see people laughing instead of sad. By the way, Sirius, Regulus is your brother, right? Why did he? Harry asked suddenly, looking a little puzzled and curious. Sirius gave a rough description of Regulus' deeds, which made Harry and others burst into tears, especially Hermione and Ginny, who couldn't help but burst into tears. Sirius. Harry looked at his godfather worriedly. Sirius smiled heartily and said, Don't worry, it's been more than a month and I'm fine. Moreover, Regulus dedicated his life to resisting Voldemort. I can only be proud of him. Master Sirius, can we serve the food? At this moment, a shrill voice rang out. It was Creature, the house elf of the Black family. Because he brought back the bones of Regulus, his and Sirius's attitudes toward each other changed. Changed to some extent. Hermione immediately turned her gaze away, her tearful eyes full of compassion, and asked pretending not to care, Sirius, who is he? What is his name? Are you getting paid for your work? His name is Creature, Hermione, the house elf of the Black family. As for the reward? You will scare Creature. Sirius smiled. Sure enough, Creature looked at Hermione with a look of shock and fear, as if she was the most elf unwilling wizard in the world. This is much better, at least Creature didn't directly curse the mudblood. Mudblood is a term used by the wizarding world to insult muggle wizards, which is very mean. Hermione's breathing seemed to have become heavier. Seeing that something was not going well, Harry immediately interrupted, Okay, Hermione, let's eat first. I'm so hungry that I could eat a cow. Hermione looked at the sumptuous dishes being served to the table one after another. Even though she was very hungry, she still couldn't work up her appetite and whispered, Slave labor. Sirius pretended not to hear. Hermione, regarding the situation of the house elves, if you don't eat for one or two meals, you won't be able to solve any problem. Instead, it will drag your body down. Xia Ran took a piece of steak and put it in a bowl. He specifically asked Creature to make some spicy dishes, as his taste was spicy. Hermione gave Xia Ran a dissatisfied look. Xia Ran smiled and said, You should praise the house elves. After getting close to them and truly understanding their needs, you can then think of changes, instead of making useless protests here. Hermione hesitated again and again, but felt that what Professor Fremont said made sense, and besides, she was indeed hungry, so she reluctantly picked up the knife and fork and ate something to fill her stomach. A group of people gathered around the table quickly finished the food on the plate, and then they were served desserts and a few glasses of butter beer. Everyone ate happily, laughing and laughing, except he. Min didn't look so happy. Finally, the table was cleared, and there were only a few adult wizards holding wine glasses and slowly sipping. Everyone was full and slumped in their chairs. Several young wizards looked at each other, and Ron pretended not to see Fred and George's eyes, looking blank. Hermione and Ginny were already familiar with Tonks and were pestering her to change her hair. Tonks was a disguised animagus who could change the appearance of her hair at will. Harry received the twin brother's eyes, pretended not to understand, and looked back blankly. George, you speak first, Fred whispered. 
Mrs. Weasley glanced at her two sons warily and asked, What are you discussing? Nothing. Fred smiled. Xia Ran looked at the Weasley twins with a half-smile. George gritted his teeth, avoided the eyes of his mother, Mrs. Weasley, and asked directly, Professor Fremont, what are you doing during this time? Have you found a mysterious man? Did he not kill anyone this time? Also, what is the Order of the Phoenix, Dumbledore's secret society formed to fight you know who? Can we join it? He asked a lot of questions in rapid succession. The atmosphere in the room suddenly changed with George's question and the appearance of the three words mysterious man. If a few seconds ago it had been sleepily relaxing, now it was. Alarming and thrilling. There is even some tension here. The mention of the words mysterious man, even though he is not Voldemort, is enough to instantly lift people's spirits. At the request of Hermione and Ginny, the pig knows that Tonks was about to change suddenly collapsed and returned to its original shape. Lupin was about to sip a glass of delicious wine, but now he slowly lowered his tall legs. The wine glass showed a very vigilant expression. So many questions. Xia Ran rubbed her forehead as if she had a headache and said, let me think about where to start. The young wizards were suddenly filled with anticipation and quickly concentrated their energy. Xia Ran. Mrs. Weasley raised her voice and said, they are too young now. You can't tell them things they shouldn't know. She sat upright in her chair. She was still half-lying, and now she looked very alert. I think they have been able to know some less important information. They have all started to learn magic, and Voldemort has returned. We must make early plans to train young people. Xia Ran said leisurely. The name undoubtedly triggered a round of shivers. Chapter, 117 It's just a name. Since we are determined to resist Voldemort, why should we be afraid of him? Xia Ran said. A group of people pretended not to have heard this sentence. Xia Ran continued, it doesn't hurt to tell them some less important information, so as to prevent them from secretly guessing and going astray, which can easily be used by our enemies. Voldemort took advantage of Harry in the original time and space, causing them to gather a group of young wizards and break into the Department of Mysteries of the Ministry of Magic. They attracted Death Eaters and Voldemort, started a fierce battle with the Order of the Phoenix, and finally caused serious death. Therefore, at the very least, the little wizards should not be afraid of getting involved in this war. Their enemies will not show any mercy and will take advantage of young wizards, as long as they are useful, but all of them are good players. Voldemort deceived many people when he was young. But. Mrs. Weasley pursed her lips and said, they are indeed too young. Children should study hard and become useful wizards in the future. Don't get involved in this adult war. Mom, I'm an adult and I graduate in one semester, Percy interjected. Mrs. Weasley glared back, and Percy immediately closed his mouth tightly. Lupin rubbed his forehead and said slowly, Molly, listen to me. After a pause, Mrs. Weasley looked at the general coming expectantly, thinking that she had finally gained a supporter. Lu Ping looked away and said softly, I think what Xia Ran said makes sense. What does it matter if I tell them unimportant information? Mrs. Weasley's face suddenly turned red. They are too young. I am doing this for their own good. They just need to study hard. Dumbledore will protect Hogwarts. We adults can just run around and fight outside. Why involve children? Mrs. Weasley said angrily. But after they finish their studies, they will have to face various dangers. We can't let them start life and death combat experiences at that time. We must make plans in advance. Sirius said, and they are not young anymore. Percy is an adult. Fred and George are almost adults. The heads of Percy, Fred, George, Harry, and Ron were swaying back and forth among the adults, as if they were watching a football match and the players were passing the ball back and forth in the midfield. Hermione and Ginny were next to Tonks, their mouths slightly opened as they looked at the confrontation between several people in the room. Tonks stared at Lupin. Xia Ran took a sip of beer and said softly, Mrs. Weasley, I know you are doing it for their own good, but in this situation, there is no harm in letting them know more about it. You haven't forgotten Dumbledore's warning, have you, Charlie? 
Mrs. Weasley said in a particularly sharp tone, with a dangerous expression on her usually kind face, these children are all my children even Harry and Hermione. I treat them as my children, I think as responsible adults, we should be more responsible towards them instead of making decisions based on our own preferences. Harry and Hermione seemed quite touched, but at the same time they were also a little impatient. They felt that they had grown up, but they had not officially become adults yet, it was several years behind, and they were eager to know more things. Can be of greater help to the great cause of resisting Voldemort. So while they were moved, they also avoided Mrs. Weasley's eyes. I will take responsibility for Harry, I am his godfather, thank you for the reminder, Molly. Sirius said coldly. Arthur, please support me. Mrs. Weasley said, looking at her husband with a pleading look on her face. Mr. Weasley took off his glasses and wiped them. He looked a little tired. When he carefully put the glasses back on the bridge of his nose, he finally spoke. Molly, there's nothing wrong with telling the children the news properly. Yes, but this is fundamentally different from telling them information wantonly. Ran said softly, no one will tell them all the information, they are indeed too young. Mrs. Weasley looked happy, thinking that Xia Ran had changed her mind, but Xia Ran continued, but for to prevent our enemies from taking advantage of them the points where they don't know specific information are the points that the enemy can take advantage of so they can understand some basic information. And of course they will be tight-lipped about the more in-depth points. Young wizards are easily seduced. They are in the rebellious stage and often have their own ideas. Most of them are on the opposite side of the adults. In order to prevent the enemy from taking advantage of this situation and let them know what they are aware of, Xia Ran thinks it is very necessary. Harry is old enough, he can make his own decisions, Sirius said calmly. He is not James, Sirius. Mrs. Weasley said in a cold voice, You don't think of him as James, do you? Harry is still just a minor. I know this, I will not regard Harry as his father. Sirius said politely, but his expression was unusually cold. I think you don't think so sometimes. It seems that when you see Harry, you see James. Mrs. Weasley said as if she was fighting, because of your out-of-touch character, rash and wanton behavior, you've already suffered a great loss, twelve years in prison, you can't let Harry suffer again. Sirius blushed and looked at him as if he was about to jump up. He said, I won't make the same mistake a second time. Who knows? Sirius couldn't help but slap the table hard, his body trembling slightly. All right. Moody finally spoke, tapping his cane on the ground, turning his magic a, scanning the entire room, and said, Molly, you are not the only person here who cares about these children. Sirius, sit down. Mrs. Weasley's face turned green and red, and her lips trembled. Sirius slowly sat back in his chair, face as white as paper. Although the young wizards focus on their studies, as Xia Ran said, under the current situation, it is necessary to let them know more information and increase their sense of urgency. Moody said in a deep voice, besides, Xia Ran's worries are not unreasonable. If young wizards know nothing but are curious at heart, it is indeed easy for the enemy to take advantage of them. I know many such examples. Okay, good. Mrs. Weasley took a deep breath and said sharply, Harry, stay, Ginny, Hermione, Ron, Fred, George, Percy, I want you get out of the kitchen now. Now. There was an immediate commotion in the kitchen. Chapter, 118. Mom, I'm an adult, I'm about to graduate, and I'm already going to enter society. Percy shouted. We're almost adults, Mom, we can know these things. Fred and George shouted together. If Harry can be allowed to know, why can't we? We are the same age. This was Ron's cry, and Hermione nodded repeatedly. Mom, I want to hear it too. Ginny shouted. No. Mrs. Weasley roared loudly. She stood up suddenly, her eyes widened like an angry lion which made people's hearts tremble. She said sternly, I will never allow it, I absolutely forbid. Molly, you can't stop Percy. Mr. Weasley said slowly, especially tiredly, he is indeed an adult, and it is useful for him to understand these things in advance. He's still a student. But he's legally an adult. 
Mr. Weasley replied in the same tired voice. Mrs. Weasley's face immediately turned red and she stammered, Okay. Oh, okay, then you are right, Percy can stay with Harry, but Fred, George, Ron, Hermione, Ginny. You must go upstairs to sleep immediately, I have already made the bed. Mrs. Weasley, I want to stay and listen. Hermione said quickly and changed her words when she met Mrs. Weasley's gaze. I'm still a student at Hogwarts, right? Professor Fremont is here. Here, when my parents are not here, the professor can be my guardian. Professor Fremont, you will agree to my staying, right? Hermione looked at Xia Ran with burning eyes. Although Professor Lu Ping was also present, after all, Xia Ran had been a professor for longer and the relationship was still better. Especially in the secret room incident last year, Xia Ran played a very big role and had extraordinary knowledge, in fact, he was familiar with the plot. It is easier for students to trust and feel at ease. Although Hermione was touched that Mrs. Weasley thought about her, too much pampering and care from adults would bring a burden to her. Besides, she really wanted to know this relevant knowledge and information. Phoenix what is a society? What are they doing? How to fight Voldemort? Xia Ran felt Mrs. Weasley's burning eyes and smiled bitterly, Okay, Hermione, you can stay too. Hermione suddenly laughed happily. Very good. Mrs. Weasley pursed her lips and shouted, Very well. Fred, George, Ron, Ginny, go to bed. The four little wizards refused to leave quietly and made a lot of noise along the way. When they arrived in the hall, the noise finally woke up the old Mrs. Black on the wall, Sirius's mother, her deafening screams joined the farce, adding a bit of fighting atmosphere. Lupin and Sirius hurried to the portrait to regain their composure. When they came back, closed the kitchen door, and sat back on the chairs in front of the table, Sirius spoke with a calm face. Have you met my mother, Harry? Your mother? Harry was obviously surprised. Yes, my dear old mum, said Sirius, I have been trying to put her to rest for over a month, but now we think she has secured her permanent residence. She has attached to the back of the canvas the spell cannot be lifted, so I can only let her scream from time to time. But what is your mother's portrait doing there? Harry asked confused. Okay, I'll explain this later. Moody interrupted the conversation between the godfather and his godson, and said, We don't have much time, so we need to go to bed early to regain our energy. So, Percy, Harry, Hermione, three little wizards, what do you want to know? The three of them looked at each other, and then Harry asked the question that had been bothering them for more than a month. Where is Voldemort? Is he really resurrected? And, what is the Order of the Phoenix? Dumbledore's secret organization. The shiver that Voldemort caused was deliberately ignored by him. Let's talk about the Order of the Phoenix first. Xia Ran replied softly, Yes, that's right, this is the secret organization formed by Dumbledore. It was formed to fight against Voldemort. Dumbledore only reconvened it after Voldemort returned from resurrection. Fudge there is no need to worry, although his guess that Dumbledore has a secret organization is correct, if Dumbledore really wants to defeat him, there is no need for the Order of the Phoenix to take action. I think Dumbledore broke in alone. The Ministry of Magic can force Fudge to step down as Minister of Magic. Sirius and Mundungus smiled, but when they saw that no one else was smiling, they stopped smiling. As for where Voldemort is? Xia Ran said, we can't answer this question. It's also not clear whether he has truly been resurrected. However, we think. His resurrection must require something, something essential. Thing. Thing. Percy, Harry, and Hermione looked at each other, feeling confused. Hermione couldn't help but ask, what? Resurrection? Is there really such a thing as resurrection in the world? Ritual requirements, Hermione. Lupin explained, resurrection, of course, only exists in legends. At least before this, the resurrections we know of existed in ancient wizard myths, and there was no exact example. Then why? Why do you believe that Voldemort can be resurrected? Sirius smiled, according to Dumbledore, he knows that there is such a magic, right, Xia Ran? The three people's eyes turned to Xia Ran. 
Siaran nodded and said, that magic can indeed help people resurrect, but it also has ritual requirements. After a slight pause, he continued, the most important thing is that Voldemort's form of existence is between the boundary between life and death. They are not truly alive, and they are not the dead who should go to the world of the dead. Otherwise, how can a living person, or a completely dead person, talk about resurrection? How could he be in this state? Percy asked with a frown, twelve years ago, when the mysterious man came to find Harry's parents, wouldn't he normally be dead? That's an evil black magic. Xia Ran said, that kind of black magic is extremely cruel and evil. Especially as we know, Voldemort has reached an unprecedented level. His level of evil is almost unimaginable for ordinary people. Xia Ran is talking about the dark magic of Horcrux, which requires killing creatures to split the soul and make Horcrux. Splitting the soul itself is unstable. The dark wizards in ancient times could only make one Horcrux, but Voldemort made a hole it's really unimaginable to have seven Horcruxes. Of course, only Xia Ran knows the specific number of Horcruxes Voldemort has for the time being, and Dumbledore is still in the stage of convincing Professor Slughorn. Chapter, 119 Evil Black Magic What black magic? Professor Fremont, is it more evil than Avada's Kedavra and Cruciatus Curse? Percy, Harry, and Hermione asked again quickly. Ahem. At this time, Moody coughed heavily, and the meaning was obvious. Xia Ran smiled and shook her head and said, You don't need to know this. There is really no need to inform young wizards about things like Horcruxes, lest they become unable to withstand the temptation and commit wrongdoings. The three of them had no choice but to sigh regretfully. Professor Fremont was about to explain it in detail, but was interrupted by Moody. This was really regrettable, but they did not dare to refute Moody, looking at his look. I feel timid inside. Why did Voldemort stop killing? I have read magic history books about modern history. He used to enjoy killing muggles. Hermione asked again. Lupin chuckled and said, Hermione Granger is the top student at Hogwarts. She is number one in every subject. She will definitely be a prefect and president of the female student union in the future. Hermione suddenly smiled sheepishly. Hermione, you are so amazing. Tonks praised sincerely. When I was at Hogwarts, I often failed exams, especially potions. It was really hard for me. Fortunately, Professor Snape is not here. Xia Ran smiled. Snotlout actually became the potions professor at Hogwarts. I don't know what Dumbledore thought. Sirius snorted. Lupin said, Dumbledore has his own considerations, and Severus is indeed a potions master. I have never seen a more powerful potion master than him, not even our original Slughorn. Professor, I feel a little worse than Severus. Sirius snorted and did not continue to speak. Okay, back to the question just now, why didn't Voldemort start a brutal killing? Xia Ran said, this question is easy to answer, because he doesn't want to arouse other people's ideas. For the mysterious man, how to recover and resurrect is the most important thing now. Killing muggles for pleasure and killing wizards for pleasure will have to wait until he is completely resurrected, said Mr. Weasley. He showed a satisfied smile and said, especially when he was just planning to be resurrected, Dumbledore knew about this matter. He had to be extremely careful to avoid us catching his tracks and traces. What do you mean? Harry asked confused. Because Barty Crouch Jr. S. Identity as a red-haired wizard transformed using Polyjuice Potion was discovered by Xia Ran. Sirius said, we then rushed to Crouch Manor and indeed found the remains of Voldemort. Traces, this is something he never wants to see, but it happened like this. He originally didn't want anyone to know about his return, except for his most loyal Death Eaters. However, the news was known to Dumbledore at the first opportunity, and Dumbledore was the one he least wanted to alarm. People. Lupin smiled. Percy and Hermione looked surprised when they heard this, but Harry still looked confused and asked, how will this help? Are you kidding? Mundungus asked in disbelief. Everyone in the wizarding world knows that Dumbledore is the only wizard that mysterious man is afraid of. 
so Dumbledore also restarted the Order of the Phoenix as soon as possible and summoned all of us. Mr. Weasley said. Are you all members of the Order of the Phoenix? Hermione asked, looking at them all. Lupin smiled and said, Many of the people who received the information about the restart of the Order of the Phoenix are old members of the Order more than ten years ago, such as me, Moody, Arthur, Sirius, and Mundungus. However, Tang Kes is a new member, Xia Ran is also a new member, and your Professor Snape is also a new member of the Order of the Phoenix. What? Snape is also a member of the Order of the Phoenix. Harry was shocked, with a look of disgust on his face involuntarily. Percy and Hermione were also a little surprised. Sirius suddenly laughed. Xia Ran said, Harry, you still have to maintain basic respect for the teacher and call him Professor Snape. After a pause, he continued, Professor Snape will be of great help to us, because he is today's one of the most powerful potions masters in the wizarding world. If such a person sincerely changes his mind and is willing to join our camp and fight to the death against Voldemort, I personally think he is worthy of welcome. Moody said in a deep voice at this time. Then how are you going to prevent the mysterious man from being resurrected? Percy asked quickly, he very much wanted to know more relevant secret information. As mentioned before, we just need to carry out activities according to the needs of the ritual. We can always interfere with and stop the mysterious person. Lu Ping said, besides, Dumbledore is smart enough, and his shrewd ideas are usually based on predictions. Like God. What about his servants? Hermione asked, I mean the Death Eaters, aren't those servants of Voldemort? And his former allies, those giants, werewolves, and goblins. You read it from the book again? Sirius asked with a smile. Hermione nodded. Servants? Yes, little girl, you are right. Moody held his cane and said, Death Eaters are of course Voldemort servants, but servants do not necessarily mean they are loyal to Voldemort. You know, twelve years when Voldemort fell, countless Death Eaters used the excuse that they were under the Imperious Curse and betrayed other Death Eaters in exchange for their own survival and not being imprisoned in Azkaban prison. Voldemort could not have known these things. I think he might not feel too good after knowing these things. Xia Ran smiled and said, Voldemort is hostile to Dumbledore and us, but he also does not trust those Death Eaters. He knows that many Death Eaters follow him because of his power. After regaining his complete body, he regains his former glory. Before losing to Dumbledore's powerful magic, Voldemort would not call a gathering of Death Eaters, unlike us. We are gathered here for the same goal, not just because of Dumbledore's power. Even if something happens to Dumbledore, I said hypothetical, if, we will still go on unswervingly. Moody said. Vocal Channel After the death of Dumbledore in the original time and space, the Order of the Phoenix was severely suppressed by Voldemort and the Death Eaters. However, the Order of the Phoenix not only did not decline, but became more and more prosperous, with more and more members. This is enough to explain the problem. That was when Voldemort was at his peak, and even the Ministry of Magic fell into Voldemort's hands. As for the allies of the Dark Wizards you mentioned, Xia Ran said softly, until Voldemort is truly resurrected, they will obviously not join the Dark Wizards. However, if Voldemort is truly resurrected, send his Death Eaters to find them. There is no guarantee that those dark creatures will not move. Why? Don't they know how cruel and bloody Voldemort is? Harry immediately asked in confusion. Chapter, 120 Xia Ran smiled and said, Harry, Voldemort is bloody and cruel, but are those dark creatures innocent and kind? Without waiting for Harry to answer, he said to himself, No. The cruelty of dark creatures is not inferior to that of Voldemort and Death Eaters. Otherwise, why are they called dark creatures? They are all the same, Harry. When you encounter a dark wizard, you must take action immediately or run away. When you encounter a dark creature, you must also learn to draw your wand and fight. Of course, if you can run away, you should still run away as soon as possible. Way Mr. Sly said. But why did they join the Dark Wizards? Can't we win them over to our side? Harry asked again doubtfully. Lupin smiled bitterly and said, This is almost impossible. 
Seeing that Harry was still confused, he explained in detail, dark creatures, such as werewolves. At this point, he paused and continued. Vampires, dementors, etc. The mysterious man can completely promise them to walk freely in the magical world. As for who will suffer at that time, the mysterious man doesn't care at all, as long as his power becomes stronger. And many dark creatures have needs that are contrary to our ideas. What? The werewolf leader hopes to bite ordinary people or wizards every day to increase the power of the werewolves. Do you think we will agree to his request? Do you think the mysterious man will agree? Lu Ping said with a bitter smile. He stood up and said, it's definitely impossible for us to agree to such an outrageous request, but the mysterious man will agree. He never takes other people into consideration. In addition to Death Eaters, those dark creatures will also be part of his army. Sirius said, in the past few days, he has commanded a large number of members, those who were coerced or confused by him. The wizards and witches who followed him, his truly loyal Death Eaters, after all, a Dark Lord always had loyal minions, and a large number of dark creatures of various races. Voldemort never relied solely on himself and a small number of Death Eaters are here to subvert the magical world and attack the Ministry of Magic. So you're trying to stop him from gaining more followers, are you? Percy asked. As much as we can, Lupin replied. How? Hermione also asked. First of all, we have to make sure that those dark creatures are always looking forward to Voldemort's comeback, because in this way they can increase their power. Siaran said, we are almost certain that werewolves, vampires, and dementors are all such dark creatures. Dementor, why? Harry still had a vivid memory of the scene where he fainted when the Dementor approached. Dementors rely on human beings for a living. Obviously, the number of people in Azkaban prison is too small to truly meet the needs of the Dementors. They are always hungry. If Voldemort comes to the door if they go, they will definitely fall to the side of the Dark Wizard, there is no doubt about it. Xia Ran replied. So we determined how many people or dark creatures were willing to turn to you-know-who, and then put them under surveillance, Mr. Weasley said. This strategy proved to be very clever and useful. Why not? Hermione expressed her doubts, I mean, if it is really confirmed that the dark creatures are wholeheartedly surrendering to Voldemort, why not imprison them all? I believe that none of those dark creatures are innocent. It's not like we can't find any evidence. Everyone looked at each other and smiled bitterly. Because of the attitude of the Ministry of Magic, Hermione. Tonks shook her head and said sadly, look at Cornelius Fudge, how panicked he looked when he learned from Dumbledore about the mysterious man's return. You look confused. Hermione, Fudge will not change his position, he absolutely refuses to believe that all of this has happened. The three little wizards were puzzled. Why? The facts have been laid before him. Hasn't Barty Crouch disappeared without a trace? Why is he still hesitating? Is he so stupid that he can't even understand the facts? Hermione stared. He asked with wide eyes and disbelief. I'm afraid you are right, Hermione, Fudge is so stupid. Xia Ran also had no good impression of Fudge, the Minister of Magic, and said, Barty Crouch can have other explanations for his disappearance. But he we will never let Dumbledore command the Ministry of Magic, even if Dumbledore doesn't have the idea or the energy. Dumbledore? What does it have to do with Dumbledore? The three young wizards were still blank when it came to such political considerations. Oh, very good, you have come to the point of the problem. Mr. Weasley showed a twisted smile and said, Dumbledore. Fudge is afraid of Dumbledore, you all should know that, Tonk said sadly. Afraid of Dumbledore? All three little wizards shouted. Yes, Fudge is afraid of Dumbledore. He is afraid that Dumbledore will replace him. Mr. Weasley said tiredly. Fudge thinks that Dumbledore is plotting to overthrow him and become the Minister of Magic. The so-called you-know-who is making a comeback. It's all just Dumbledore's conspiracy, and he is unwilling to give up his position as Minister of Magic. He thinks Dumbledore is a traitor with evil intentions. But Dumbledore. He is clearly not interested in the position of Minister. Of course he is not interested. 
He has never expressed his intention for the position of Minister of Magic, you have to know, with Dumbledore's reputation, if he wants to be the Minister of Magic, would anyone dare to compete with him? But Fudge doesn't believe this. Mr. Weasley said bitterly, many people once recommended Dumbledore to be a minister, but he rejected them all. He just wanted to be a good headmaster. Fudge later took over the power, and he never forgot no matter how beloved Dumbledore was, he knew he couldn't compete with Dumbledore. Moody said disdainfully, Fudge is a villain. Letting him sit on the minister's throne was the worst thing. But who knew at that time how Fudge would change later? Lupin said with a wry smile. Fudge trusted Dumbledore very much in the beginning. He often wrote letters to communicate with Dumbledore and asked for Dumbledore's various opinions and views. But power is always fascinating. After Fudge tasted this wonderful taste, he could never let it go. He believed that he was the well-deserved Minister of Magic, and even more convinced that he was the smartest and most capable wizard, and Deng Blido is merely a troublemaker who covets the position of Minister for Magic. How could he think so? Is he crazy, Fudge? The three little wizards shouted angrily. Xia Ran spread her hands and said, because accepting the fact that Voldemort returns means that the Ministry of Magic will encounter a big trouble that it has never dealt with in more than ten years. Especially Fudge only came to power after the fall of Voldemort. He does not have this experience. What's more, he lacks this ability, more than ten years ago, the Ministry of Magic fought on the front line against the Dark Wizards, not Fudge, but the missing Barty Crouch, so he was unwilling to face this reality. After all, smearing Dumbledore is much easier than dealing with Voldemort. Chapter, 121 Fudge is jealous and even afraid of Dumbledore. That's the problem. Xia Ran shook her head and said, as an official institution, the Ministry of Magic still has credibility. If the Ministry of Magic openly discredits Dumbledore, in fact, the Ministry of Magic has already when we do that, and claim that Voldemort was never resurrected and is long dead, it's going to be hard for people to believe us. After all, official institutions like the Ministry of Magic are always the most trusted by people. Xia Ran sighed as she spoke, feeling that Dumbledore might as well compete for the position of Minister of the Ministry of Magic, so that they could have more autonomy in launch rounds of elimination against Voldemort. It's a pity that Dumbledore has made up his mind not to have the greatest power because of his early experiences. The most important thing is that people are even less willing to really believe in the return of Voldemort, even if what Dumbledore said is indeed true. Lupin spread his hands and said with a bitter smile, the Ministry of Magic has strictly ordered the Daily Prophet do not report any news from Dumbledore. And use various methods to smear Dumbledore, every issue of the newspaper must slander Dumbledore, so most wizarding groups still act as if they are just watching the fun. Completely unaware of anything going on in the shadows of the wizarding world today. Under such a situation, it is impossible for us to launch a large-scale dispatch to completely detonate Fudge's thunder. Sirius said helplessly, at least he is only holding back now and has not completely turned against us. But you are warning people, aren't you? Percy, Harry, and Hermione, the three little wizards, looked at Professor Fremont, Mr. Weasley, Sirius, Moody, Mundungus, Lupin and Don X, asked, You are all members of the Order of the Phoenix, aren't you fighting against the Death Eaters? You are trying to make people believe as much as possible that Voldemort has returned, aren't you? Yes, but Lupin and I, as well as Professor McGonagall, Professor Snape, and Hagrid, are all professors at Hogwarts. We cannot openly stand up and go against the Ministry of Magic. Xia Ran said helplessly. Lupin even smiled bitterly and said, for some reasons, I am not a popular dinner guest. Tonks patted Lupin, as if to say that she would invite him to be the guest of honor at the dinner. Lupin smiled gratefully at Tonks. Except for Percy, Harry, and Hermione, everyone else knows Lupin's identity and is actually a werewolf. Although I have been cleared of wrongdoing, people still think that I am dangerous due to the deep-rooted thoughts of more than ten years, of course, they may not be wrong so few people are willing to deal with me. Sirius said uneasily. And if I, Tonks, Kingsley and others speak openly, we will lose our jobs in the Ministry of Magic, and Fudge will undoubtedly fire us. Mr. Weasley said, but for for us, it is very important that someone can always lurk in the Ministry. 
I bet a thousand gold galleons that the mysterious person definitely has eyes in the ministry. Mundungus laughed and said, Arthur, I will not participate in this kind of bet that is bound to lose. This joke is not funny, Dunge. Lupin said solemnly, We are now restricted by the Ministry of Magic, but the mysterious man has no restrictions. Besides, we are in the light and the mysterious man is in the dark. This is not good for us. To say the same is very detrimental. If any of you can stand up and support Dumbledore, maybe the situation will be different and more people can believe in Dumbledore. Harry tried. As I said before, Harry, this is not a good idea. Mr. Weasley said, we all have our own tasks, and we cannot let the ministry really make up its mind to clean up on us. Dumbledore said that he can announce the news alone. Moody said, this way, most of the Ministry of Magic's attention will be focused on Dumbledore, and he will create a lot of opportunities for us. In order to let Dumbledore Leto is so embarrassed, the Ministry of Magic has racked its brains and doesn't have enough energy to pay attention to us anymore. A group of people laughed bitterly. Dumbledore has been removed from the position of Chief Magician of Wisingamot and voted out of the position of President of the International Magical Union because he is too old. Has lost his once powerful magic, and is not qualified to serve as Chief Magician again. Magician, but these are all fake. Tonks looked a little angry and said, they also want to revoke and take back Dumbledore's Merlin Order of Merlin, and they will not let go of anyone who can damage Dumbledore's prestige. Chance. But Dumbledore said he didn't care what they did as long as they didn't remove him from the chocolate frog picture. Lupin said with a smile. This is not a funny thing. Mr. Weasley said sharply. If he continues to openly defy the Ministry of Magic like this, he may spend the rest of his life in Azkaban prison, and there is nothing we can do the last thing he did was to help Dumbledore lock the door of the prison cell. If the mysterious man knew that Dumbledore had returned to the battlefield, he would be cautious but if Dumbledore was imprisoned and left the battlefield. Oh, oh my god, I can't even imagine what that would be like. Sia Ran smiled and said softly, Mr. Weasley, there is no need to worry so much. The Ministry of Magic does not dare to do this. Fudge gave the order on the first day, and Fudge had to step down the next day. The others looked at him with strange expressions. Sia Ran shrugged her shoulders and said with a smile, Fudge is of no use as the Minister of Magic. On the contrary, it is a good hand to hold him back. Instead of this, then there is no problem if we use a coup to remove him from power, right? Sia Ran, your idea is too dangerous. Sirius said and laughed, but I like it. I have long been disgusted with that idiot Fudge. I really want to give him a vicious curse. I'm afraid not. The mysterious man has returned and we in the wizarding world cannot fight within ourselves. Mr. Weasley shook his head. Mr. Weasley, now it's not a matter of us fighting among ourselves, but a matter of fudge being stupid. Siaran said, when the war is about to begin, any forces that are holding back must be eliminated. We must maintain our internal there is only one voice, unanimously speaking to the outside world. Anyway, he had the idea of knocking fudge out of office. We will discuss this matter later. We need to see Dumbledore's opinion. Moody made the final decision and stopped the discussion about bringing down Fudge. The room was quiet for a while, and everyone seemed to be thinking about Sia Rant's proposal. Is it feasible? At this moment Mrs. Weasley came to the kitchen and stood in the shadows by the door, her arms crossed and looking very annoyed. Enough. She looked at Percy, Harry, and Hermione, with a straight face, and said in a stern voice, It's very late now, I want you to go to bed immediately. Chapter, 122 Percy, Harry, and Hermione immediately avoided Mrs. Weasley's gaze and looked at the others expectantly, hoping to hear some more useful information. Look at me. Mrs. Weasley roared, her whole body trembling, as if trying to suppress her anger, You have told them enough, and now it is starting to involve coups, this kind of thing can I also tell my children. I can't let them continue to listen. Moody said solemnly, it's really time for you to go to bed, and we have to go too. As he said that, he stood up, and Tonks and Mundungus followed suit. Aren't you going to sit down for a while? Have a cup of hot chocolate. Mrs. Weasley seemed slightly surprised. No, Molly. 
Moody looked at Sirius and said, We will come over tomorrow morning for Regulus's memorial service. The three of them walked through the foyer and went directly to the outside of Black's old house. After hearing three loud explosions, the three of them disapparated and left Grimald Place. Percy, Harry, and Hermione had no choice but to follow Mrs. Weasley dejectedly and go to their respective bedrooms to sleep. Percy shared a room with twin brothers Fred and George, Harry shared a room with Ron, and Hermione shared a room with twin brothers Fred and George. Room with Ginny. Be careful when you go in. Don't disturb them. They must have fallen asleep. Mrs. Weasley warned in a low voice. Harry said in a voice that only Percy and Hermione could hear, I bet one hundred gold galleons that all of them are definitely not asleep yet, and they are all awake waiting for us to go back and tell them what we just talked about. This is a losing bet, Harry, I won't bet. Percy said quietly as well. After sending off the three children, Mrs. Weasley returned downstairs. At this time, Sia Ran, Lupin, Sirius, and Mr. Weasley seemed to be arguing about something. Sia Ran, I agree with your proposal. Sirius expressed his position and said, it's time for that idiot fudge to step down. He must be replaced by a wizard who is more courageous and capable of fighting. It doesn't matter whether you can fight or not, but you must have the courage to resist Voldemort, otherwise you will be another copy of Fudge. Sia Ran said, they were talking about how to get Fudge to step down and how to choose who would come to power. The problem. Mr. Weasley disagreed, saying, relying on Dumbledore's reputation, Fudge can indeed step down, but who can come to power now? And there can't be a big turmoil in the wizarding world, otherwise we will create it for the mysterious man. It couldn't be a better situation. Lupin was not firm in his opposition, but he did not agree with it that much. He hesitated and said, maybe it is feasible to use this method to properly force Fudge to make concessions. Siar Ran immediately shook his head and said, either you don't do this kind of thing, or you have to do it to the end. Don't pay attention to the scale, otherwise it will ruin the big thing. The most taboo thing about a coup is to be merciless. Now that they have decided to take action, they must kill the current Minister of Magic as quickly as possible and replace him with someone they are satisfied with. Of course, there are still internal disputes, the two sides disagree, and Dumbledore doesn't even know about it. Mrs. Weasley was stunned. Oh my god, do you really want a coup to defeat Fudge? Mrs. Weasley exclaimed, Dumbledore won't agree to it. Okay, let's just talk. I'll ask Dumbledore what his opinion is later. Sia Ran spread her hands and said, what if Dumbledore really agrees? Well, I admit there is no hope. Oh, you are really. Too bold, aren't you? Mrs. Weasley still felt that her heart was beating too fast. Is it the Order of the Phoenix's responsibility to fight against the Ministry of Magic? Sia Ran deflected the question. Indeed, as the leader of the Order of the Phoenix, Dumbledore was the one who really made the decision. Sia Ran's current strength and fame were not enough. Okay, where is my room? Sia Ran asked. I'll take you there. It just so happens that our rooms are next to each other. Lupin said. He had already stayed in the Black Mansion several times. Early the next morning, when it was still windy and snowy outside, people in the house had no. 12. Grimald Place got up and got down one after another. From time to time, someone came to the door through apparition, rang the doorbell and entered the house. Mongrels, werewolves, pure-blooded scum, shame, and the evil offspring I gave birth to. But every time the doorbell rang, Mrs. Black's angry curses rang out in the foyer. Oh, how many times have I told you, don't ring the doorbell, don't ring the doorbell, why can't they remember? Sirius said angrily, and went to close the curtain outside his mother's portrait again. Sirius, your mother is still as energetic as ever. Dumbledore said with a smile, shaking off the snow on his body on the steps outside the door. Following him, Professor McGonagall and Hagrid Operat. And Snape. Yes, Snape will also attend Regulus' funeral, or memorial service, this time. Not long after, Kingsley, Tonks, Moody, Mundungus and others also arrived. The foyer was dark, but many candles had been lit. The atmosphere in the room behind the corridor became more solemn, and people no longer laughed. 
Gullah's deeds touched everyone's heart. It was the first time for Harry and other young wizards to hear about Regulus's deeds, and the two little girls Hermione and Ginny were in tears and on the verge of tears. Regulus Black, he is a true warrior, a true Slytherin. On the road against dark magic and dark wizards, he does not hesitate to do anything and is willing to pay the price with his life. I want show respect to him. Dumbledore recited the eulogy, speaking in a straightforward manner, but it seemed to be eloquent, and it touched many people's hearts, because they also did not know when they would die among Voldemort and Death Eaters. In hands. The feeling of precariousness that existed when Voldemort was at his peak more than ten years ago has now returned to everyone's mind. The elf creature cried so hard that his voice was almost hoarse later on. Many people present had red eyes and sad expressions. They thought of their relatives and friends and comrades who had died, and grief suddenly surged into their hearts, making their eyes wet. At the end, loud sobs could be heard. Without looking back, Sia Ran knew it was Hagrid's voice. He was also touched. After all, he knew Regulus, but he had not awakened his memory at that time. After Regulus's memorial service, everyone had lunch together, and the atmosphere began to slowly recover again. After all, they had known that they were in danger ever since they fought against Voldemort unswervingly, especially after experiencing the first time more than ten years ago. The old people from the Wizarding War may be used to this kind of memorial service, even if they are extremely sentimental and sad every time they attend. But life goes on, and one must look forward. Voldemort is now back, and the tests they will face will only become more and more cruel, and they must strengthen their will. At this time, Sirius talked about Sia Ran's proposal last night. Chapter, 123 Let Fudge Step Down Others were immediately surprised when they heard this. Professor McGonagall said, Sirius, how could you have such an idea? It's too dangerous, it's too dangerous. Fudge is the Minister of Magic after all. Lupin, Mr. Weasley, and Mrs. Weasley looked helpless beside them. It turned out that Sirius and Sia Ran had not given up on this dangerous idea. Sia Ran said, My idea, Professor McGonagall. Your. Professor McGonagall was startled and turned her attention to Sia Ran. Sirius was always so bold and would have such dangerous thoughts. Although she did not agree, she was not particularly surprised, but Sia Ran was not like, Are you such a bold person? At this time, everyone's eyes were focused on Sia Ran with different expressions. Some were in agreement, some were shaking their heads in disapproval like Professor McGonagall, and some were pondering and looking uncertain. Dumbledore seemed to have a flash of light in his blue eyes. He looked at Sia Ran and said softly, Sia Ran, why do you think so? Frankly speaking, I actually have no intention of serving as Minister of Magic. Many people had expressions of regret upon hearing this. Hagrid and Sirius shook their heads in regret, but Moody seemed to know better and looked as usual. Sia Ran also knew about Dumbledore's past, because his wrong ideas when he was young led to the death of his sister Ariana Dumbledore. Since then, Dumbledore has completely changed his mind and no longer pursues the idea of wizards ruling muggles. Greater good but instead ran around for peace, including defeating his former partner Grindelwald. Dumbledore also recognized himself through this. He believed that he could not hold too much power, otherwise the impulses of his youth might resurface, and this was a scene he absolutely did not want to see. Voldemort is back. If he is really resurrected, maybe he has been resurrected now, then the dark wizards and dark creatures will have a backbone. And a powerful wizard who can really suppress them and lead them will appear, which will affect the order of the magic world and the peace is a very huge challenge. Xia Ranshao understood Dumbledore's weaknesses with emotion and reason. Peace was what he longed for in his life and was willing to risk his life to protect it. Xia Ran is not a wizard from the evil camp. Generally speaking, he is also in the Order camp. Moreover, he does admire Dumbledore. However, Fugue also believes that he is holding everyone back. He turns a blind eye to the facts before his eyes and is even more slanderous. Dumbledore took the initiative to create a very good situation for Voldemort, which made people very angry. He believed that Fudge no longer needed to be the Minister of Magic. If his strength and reputation were not enough, 
he might have competed for the position of minister. Of course, this is not necessarily the case. After all, he is also not interested in power. Becoming strong is what he desires to pursue. Xia Ran continued, Fudge will only hinder us. His becoming minister is the situation that Voldemort wants to see most. And what the enemy wants to see, we can just destroy it. Xia Ran, you are right. Hagrid was the first to agree and said loudly, that despicable guy Fudge, we were all deceived by his former modesty and gentleness. This kind of person should step down. The mysterious man is so powerful that he has consumed almost all our energy, and we can no longer let the Ministry of Magic restrict us. Snape had a strange look on his face and said slowly, Headmaster, what do you think? Maybe Fudge will step down. He also expressed his attitude. Dumbledore pondered for a while, but he still thought that this was not a good plan and refused, there is no need to say more about this matter. Voldemort is powerful, the Death Eaters and the Dark Creature camp are equally powerful. We in the magic world cannot have internal strife. Fudge is generally still someone who can stabilize the situation. As he spoke, he smiled bitterly and said, I really can't hold the power. Maybe I will be even scarier than Fudge by then. Everyone didn't believe what he said, but Dumbledore, as the leader, said so. Even if many of them had some ideas, they had no choice but to give up. After the memorial service, everyone took a break and chatted for a while about their respective tasks and related intelligence information, but there was not much progress. Voldemort was indeed hidden and no trace of him could be found. While the adult wizards were having a meeting, the young wizards were of course sent upstairs to clean the old black mansion. Black's old house has been uninhabited for more than ten years. The house elf creature may have had some mental problems because of Regulus incident. Anyway, he didn't clean the house very much, resulting in many places covered with cobwebs. There are also many dangerous creatures living here. Mrs. Weasley led a group of young wizards to clean the house. Mom, can we go to the kitchen and observe the meeting? Fred asked. Mrs. Weasley refused bluntly, no. You are too young. Knowing too much will do you no good. She clapped her hands again and said loudly, Okay, children, don't you want to do something for the Order of the Phoenix? Is it something? This headquarters is too dirty. If you help clean it up, it is your contribution. Oh, my God, Mom, can you bear to have your children spend Christmas here cleaning? George said sadly, covering his chest. Mrs. Weasley gave George a fierce look, and George immediately restrained himself and muttered, Well, it's really no good coming here this time. Children, you are really too young. Resisting mysterious people, fighting dark wizards and dark creatures is really not as simple as you think. Many people. Many people. Mrs. Weasley said with red eyes and tears. It seemed to be overflowing, your uncle, Fabian. Given died in the war, and the mysterious man. Since the mysterious man has returned, the second war will start soon. Maybe the clarion call for war has started. I'm afraid. She shed tears sadly. Several children quickly comforted their mother. Percy said, Mom, don't worry. After I graduate, I will become a powerful wizard and a high-ranking official in the Ministry of Magic. You will be proud of me. Really, Mum, Percy is enough, just ask less for us. George took the opportunity to say that he and Fred had never wanted to work in the Ministry of Magic, this was what Mrs. Weasley had always told them. Planning but I want to open a store of my own. Mrs. Weasley had the intention to keep a straight face and teach the twin brothers a lesson, but at this time her authority was no longer enough, and she could no longer teach the two naughty children harshly. Seeing the blank faces of Harry and Hermione, Ron explained in a low voice, Fabian and Given are our uncles. They died more than ten years ago before I was born. They seem to have died somewhere. It was in the hands of the Death Eater Dalahav, and my mother would cry when she mentioned it. We have only seen photos of our uncles. They seem to be members of the Order of the Phoenix. Ginny also whispered. At this time the door opened and someone walked in. Um, maybe I should have come in two minutes later in the evening. Xia Ran opened the door and came in, asking, Mrs. Weasley, are you okay? 
Chapter, 124 Mrs. Weasley wiped the tears on her face with her hands, her eyes were still red, and she couldn't help but smile bitterly, sorry, Sia ran, I just. Just. I'm so stupid. Dumbledore, there is mad I, what should we be afraid of? I can understand. Sia Ran expressed her understanding and nodded. When a war occurs, no one can guarantee that they will survive in the end. Even we can't guarantee that we will win this war. Sia Ran conjured a handkerchief and handed it to Mrs. Weasley, who blew her nose. Harry, Hermione, I'm so sorry, what will you think of me? Mrs. Weasley said with a trembling voice, just chatting. Nothing happened yet, just. Stop talking nonsense. Harry and Hermione said in unison. Harry especially remembered the woman's scream he heard when the Dementor approached him. He knew that it was the last sound of his mother's life. But Harry was only a one-year-old child at that time, but now he is thirteen years old. If his friends and companions die at the hands of Death Eaters, and the Weasley family, when he sees them what would he be thinking when he saw the dead body? Sad. Anger. Hatred. Harry quickly stopped his divergent thinking, not daring to allow himself to continue thinking. I'm just too. Too worried. Mrs. Weasley said with sobs, tears rolling down from her eyes again, wetting the handkerchief, everyone at home. Is in the order of the phoenix, unless we will only escape death if a miracle occurs. Fabian and the others were dead in the first place. What if the mysterious man returns completely and Arthur and I are killed? Who will come? Who will take care of us where are Ron and Ginny? There's still so little. Mrs. Weasley, that's enough. Sia Ran said decisively, this is different from last time. We have got more intelligence information, you know, including the cause of Regulus death, this time we have the opportunity to kill Voldemort completely without giving him another chance to come back. We now have a good start, knowing that Voldemort is already planning his resurrection. Mrs. Weasley let out a scream of horror when she heard Voldemort's name. Mrs. Weasley, cheer up, he is our enemy. We must call him by his name and not be afraid of him. Sia Ran said solemnly, we cannot guarantee that that person will not be harmed, but we will definitely do our best to fight against Voldemort and the Death Eaters. Before all of us adults die, you don't have to worry about the comfort of the children. Besides, do you think we will sit back and watch Ron and Ginny be lonely and hungry all day long? Mrs. Weasley forced a smile. Yeah, it's so stupid. Mrs. Weasley whispered again, wiping her eyes with a handkerchief, don't tell Arthur, I don't want him to know that I'm so stupid. By the way, Percy, come with me. Sia Ran said, he came up just to call Percy away. Me? Percy was stunned for a moment and pointed at himself. When he saw Professor Fremont nodded, he immediately looked confused. Why did Professor Fremont come to him specifically? Okay, Percy, go down with the professor, Mrs. Weasley said. Percy followed Charon downstairs confused. Okay, kids, let's work, don't be lazy. Mrs. Weasley clapped her hands and said, regaining her usual energy. Ron muttered in a low voice, I wonder who is lazy. Then he felt a burning gaze staring at him, and his heart immediately trembled. He quickly stepped forward, put on his gloves and started to prepare. Clean dirty houses. Ron never knew Mum was too much to mess with at this time, Ginny whispered. Harry and Hermione immediately smiled softly, straightened their expressions and stepped forward before Mrs. Weasley looked at her seriously. There was no one in the kitchen, except for Dumbledore and Snape. Everyone else had left the Black Mansion one after another, including Mr. Weasley and Lupin who were temporarily living here, as well as the owner of the house. Sirius followed Moody to other places to find out information. Professor Dumbledore, Professor Snape. Percy entered the kitchen and conference room. Dumbledore said gently, Sit down, Percy. Sharon, please close the door. Sia Ran closed the door and sat down on a nearby chair. Percy was a little nervous and asked, Um, Professor Dumbledore, I wonder what you want from me? Oh, that's it. Dumbledore said softly, We have a plan, but we lack a candidate who can execute it. Severus, myself, and Sia Ran all agree that you are the most suitable candidate. 
Thank you for your trust. Percy said first, then hesitantly asked, Can I ask what it is? Undercover. Snape spoke slowly, his eyes strange. After all, he himself was an undercover agent of Dumbledore, but he was lurking in the Death Eaters organization. Undercover. Percy was slightly shocked. Siaran nodded and said, Yes, there is no chance of Fudge stepping down for the time being, so we hope to place an undercover agent into the Ministry of Magic. A real undercover agent, not like Mr. Weasley, Kingsley, or Tonks, must we you have great trust in the top management of the Ministry of Magic, and we even hope that if Voldemort returns completely. You can continue to lurk in the Ministry of Magic, climb to high positions, hold very great power, and give secret help and support to the Order of the Phoenix. Percy was stunned for a moment and asked, Why did you find me? Ran looked at each other with Dumbledore and Snape, and said, Sorry, maybe it's a bit blunt, but the reason is that you desire power, which can win the trust of others. This is why they found Percy. Although Percy loves his family and friends, he also desires power and gets ahead. He has always behaved like this, and his performance can help him gain the trust of the Ministry of Magic. If you were to change it to someone else, it would definitely not work because there is no reason that can be explained. Only three of us know about this matter, including you, four. Snape said, we will not reveal your identity. Dumbledore said, Percy, you don't have to rush to give us an answer. After all, you still have one semester left to graduate. You should think about it carefully in the next semester. After you think about it, you can come directly to me, or Severus, or Sia either way. By the way, don't tell your parents about this, don't tell anyone, because the fewer people know about this, the better. Only the four of us know. Xia Ran added. Okay, I'll think about it. Percy said uneasily. He hadn't fully recovered yet, and he still looked confused until he returned upstairs. Percy, what happened? Did you get scolded? Fred said with a smirk. Percy shook his head, put on cleaning gloves, and started cleaning silently without saying a word. Xia Ran and the other three also started a discussion downstairs. Chapter 125 Do you think Percy will agree? Snape asked leisurely, with a strange smile on his face. Xia Ran spread her hands and said, I don't know, but I think he might agree. After all, Percy is a very smart wizard, and he is indeed quite capable. Of course, I can see his desire for power, which is also not good. Light. In the original time and space, Percy turned against his family because of his desire for power. He drew a clear line and treated each other like strangers. Although he finally came to his senses and joined the Order of the Phoenix to fight against Voldemort and the Death Eaters, this was enough. It shows how powerful his desire for power is. Well. Dumbledore suddenly sighed and blamed himself, such a young child shouldn't be allowed to bear such an important responsibility, but I'm afraid. If I gain power, maybe it won't be Voldemort's problem. Due to his experiences when he was young, he was determined not to hold power anymore to avoid arousing the dark side in his heart, so he stayed at Hogwarts safely for decades. Even though the Ministry of Magic repeatedly nominated him for the position of minister, he was always rejected. Dumbledore refused each one. By the way, Xia Ran, I may have to return your resurrection stone to you in a few days. Dumbledore suddenly said. The resurrection stone was in Xia Ran's hand and was lent to Dumbledore some time ago. Xia Ran waved his hand casually. Anyway, he didn't need the Deathly Hallows, the resurrection stone. Christmas is coming soon, the snow is still flying, and the temperature is as cold as ever. When Xia Ran got up in the morning, there were a lot of things piled beside the bed, all of which were Christmas gifts given to him by others. A magic book given by Dumbledore, okay. A bottle of potion from Snape, why didn't he write the name and purpose of the potion? Xia Ran looked at the vial in her hand, frowned, and didn't after recognizing what the potion here is, it seems that I have to ask Snape specifically. After all, his knowledge of potions is not advanced enough. But he was also a little surprised, because Snape actually gave him a Christmas gift, which was a big deal. Is their relationship that good? Xia Ran was confused. Of course, 
he couldn't return the things to Snape and say that I'm not familiar with you and don't need your gift. That's really funny. Although Xia Ran didn't send Snape a Christmas gift, Xia Ran still accepted the potion gift he sent. Well, at worst, I'll just make it up to him next Christmas. Xia Ran opened another thick package. Inside was a black wool sweater, which was a Christmas gift from Mrs. Weasley. He tried to put it on and it was quite warm. When he came downstairs, there were only Mrs. Weasley, Creature and Mr. Weasley, Lupin and Sirius in the kitchen. The little wizards were still sleeping and hadn't gotten up. Mrs. Weasley, thank you for the sweater. Xia Ran sat down with a piece of bread and a glass of milk. At least he didn't have to worry about his life when he lived here. Mrs. Weasley smiled and said, as long as you like it. Is black okay? I think black is more stable. Other colors are too bright for a professor. Xia Ran gave a thumbs up and praised, great. Ah. Suddenly there was a scream from upstairs. Cool. Marvelous. Two more exclamations. Several people in the kitchen looked at each other with confused expressions, except Sirius, who seemed to have a smile on his face. They're yelling again. There's really no quiet time. Mrs. Weasley muttered. Okay, Molly, it's holiday now, let them go. Mr. Weasley said while flipping through the newspaper. Boom, boom, boom. Several footsteps ran down the stairs, and Harry, Ron, and the twin brothers all got into the kitchen together, each carrying something in their hands. Firebolt. Lupin was surprised. What Harry, Fred, and George were holding happened to be the latest flying broomstick, the Firebolt. It is the fastest broomstick in the world and has a very exquisite style. It is rumored that every Quidditch club in the world has ordered such a broomstick, which is what every Quidditch player dreams of. Oh my god, Firebolt, where did you get it? Mrs. Weasley exclaimed. Harry, Fred, and George all pointed their hands at Sirius and said, a Christmas gift from Sirius. Sirius waved. Oh, Sirius, this thing is too expensive. Mrs. Weasley said. She doesn't watch Quidditch games very much, but she also knows the name of the Firebolt. It is the best and most expensive broomstick. For the Weasley family, he said that he couldn't afford such a broom. After all, their children's textbooks and magic robes were all secondhand. The Weasley family has too many children, and they only rely on Mr. Weasley's salary, so their life has always been quite tight. Sirius smiled and said, the three of them are Gryffindor's Quidditch players. Of course they must be equipped with the best broomsticks. He looked at the three of them and said, can they win the Quidditch Academy Cup this year? Don't let down the firebolt. Don't worry, man, you will definitely win the Quidditch Championship. George said confidently. Harry and Fred nodded repeatedly. They had never been so confident. By the way, Sirius, thank you for the owl. Ron thanked him. He was holding an owl cage in his hand. Inside was a thin owl that kept flying around in the cage, looking very lively. Sirius looked a little embarrassed and said, I caused you to lose a pet, so of course I have to give you a pet as compensation. Well, this owl may be a little small, but it is very active. I met it outside. No one wanted it, it was pitiful, so I bought it, I hope you like it. He added at last uncertainly. Oh, sure, man. Ron grinned. He suddenly made an unexpected move and handed the owl to the big ginger cat curled up in the corner of the table and asked, What do you think? Must be an owl. Crookshanks meowed twice. Good enough for me, Ron said happily, now it's mine. Serious, it cost you money. Mr. Weasley said. Ron's owl may not be expensive, but the firebolts in Fred and George's hands are very expensive. It's a trivial matter, Sirius said in a nonchalant tone. Sirius is the only heir to the Black family, which is one of the oldest wizarding families in the magical world. Needless to say, their family wealth is undoubtedly one of the best in the magical world. Sirius is truly a super-rich man. Ran sighed secretly, but he also had a lot of savings, and he was definitely far away from being a rich man, but he still had everything in his daily life, so he didn't have to be too frugal and budget-conscious. 
After a while, Hermione and Ginny also came down after opening their presents. The kitchen was decorated with colored lights and all kinds of wonderful fireworks, many of which were made by the Weasley twins. The Christmas tree was from Lupin. Brought back from outside. A group of people celebrated Christmas here, putting aside the threat of darkness for the time being. After all, the situation was not completely out of control yet. This is almost the most lively Christmas Xia Ran has spent in more than ten years. Chapter, 126 After Christmas, the Order of the Phoenix meeting had not yet been held, there were no useful clues worthy of holding a meeting to discuss, and Hogwarts was still on holiday. Xia Ran and others had nothing to do, so they simply cleaned up the old black mansion. This house has not been inhabited for more than ten years, and dangerous creatures live and breed in many places. But time is limited, even if they go out together, and creature helps, this time because Regulus's bones were recovered and a memorial service was held. The relationship between Sirius and him has improved greatly, the old black house has not been completely cleaned up yet, and it is already the last day of the holiday. When Xia Ran was having breakfast in the kitchen, the whole room was bustling with activity. On the contrary, he, Lupin and Sirius, Mr. Weasley had already gone to work at the Ministry of Magic, looked a little idle. Gathered around the dinner table and chatted. Man, you guys are so comfortable. Fred picked up a piece of bread from the table and wolfed it down. Fred, come here quickly and take your things away, or mom will get angry. George shouted outside. It's really troublesome. Fred muttered, rolled his eyes, pulled out his wand, and recited a spell on his luggage to make them fly over automatically. Oh, be careful. Fred. Lupin looked back and shouted immediately. Bang! Fred's luggage hit Ginny, sending her flying against the wall with a thud. Ginny had a bloody head and fainted instantly. Dirty bastard, defiling the house of my ancestors. At this moment, old Mrs. Black's curses started to sound again, but no one paid attention to her. Anyway, it was so noisy in the hall that she would always be cursed again. Wake up! Ginny, are you okay? Fred panicked and ran over quickly. Xia ran, Lupin, and Sirius also walked over quickly. At this time, Mrs. Weasley came down. When she saw this, she immediately shouted, You will make her seriously injured, you two idiots. Mom, it's Fred, George argued. Healed as before. Xia ran pointed the wand at the wound on Ginny's forehead. Blood flowed non stop. The wound that almost covered Ginny's entire forehead slowly healed, and the blood stopped flowing out. Recover quickly. Xia Ran recited another spell, the magic power on the tip of the wand flickered, and Ginny suddenly woke up. She touched the blood on her forehead. Not only did she not scream in fear, but she showed curiosity. The look comes. By the way, I forgot. Xia Ran slapped her forehead and said, Clean it up. The blood stains on Ginny's body suddenly disappeared and she looked like a normal person again. Thank you, Xia Ran, thank you. Fred said. Ginny, are you okay? Harry asked, followed by Mrs. Weasley downstairs. Ginny said nonchalantly, it's nothing, Professor Fremont has cured me. Okay, stop chatting idle, hurry up, boys and girls. Mrs. Weasley said hurriedly, the train is about to leave, and we will probably miss the train. Percy, Ron, and Hermione all came down. Fred carried his luggage and didn't dare to chant random spells anymore. Okay, let's go. Sirius said briskly. Um, Sirius, are you going too? Harry was slightly surprised. Sirius grinned and said, Harry, you need a bodyguard, and I will be your bodyguard. Okay. Harry said happily and impatiently. Although I don't think Voldemort will hide behind a trash can and wait for me to pass by, but. It's still good anyway. Stop chatting, have you brought everything? Mrs. Weasley said, unscrewing the door handle and walking out into the wind and snow. Ho ho ho. The strong wind roared by, almost blowing people away. Be careful. Mrs. Weasley could only roar loudly. A group of people filed out. The door was closed again 
and old Mrs. Black's curses were shut inside the door and could no longer be heard. I got a car and I'll drive you there. Sirius said as a car parked in Grimald Place flashed its headlights. Siaran said, let's go back to school first. With a wave of his hand and two loud bangs, he and Lupin disapparated at the door. Sirius drove a group of young wizards to platform nine and three quarters. The platform was also covered with snowflakes. The train was almost covered in snow, but it was filled with the hooting of owls, people talking and saying goodbye. Voice. Before getting in the car, Harry whispered to Sirius, Sirius, uh. Can I? I mean, I don't want to go back to the Desleys anymore. Can I? Come to Jerry during the summer vacation. Are you coming to Missouri Square? Sirius immediately smiled and said, Oh, of course, welcome, Harry, Black Mansion is your home. Harry boarded the train happily. He finally had a place worth looking forward to where he could live for a long time. The Desleys had never given him anything to look forward to. But he is destined to never live in no. 12. Grimald Place Forever, because when Voldemort attacked the house more than ten years ago, the person who cast magic was his mother Lily, and the Desley family is the only one with the same blood. The Place Sia ran and Lupin operat to Hogsmeade Village, just outside the Pig's Head Bar. Unlike the Three Broomsticks pub on the other side, the Hog's Head pub is not so bright and clean. It has only a small, dark and very dirty room with a tattered wooden sign hanging on a rusty bracket on the door. It depicts a severed wild boar head, with blood soaking through the white cloth wrapping it. Therefore, the wind and snow were too strong at the moment, the north wind was howling, and all you could see was flying snow. The pig's head sign was blown by the wind and creaked loudly. It seems that due to the weather, there are very few people in the pig head bar. There are only three or two people. One person is sitting at the edge of the bar, tightly wrapped in a thick cloak, and his whole head is wrapped in a dirty grey bandage or turban. Something, but still able to pour cup after cup of a smoking, flaming substance through a gap in the bandage on his mouth. In addition, there were two hooded figures sitting by the window. If she hadn't heard their muffled voices, Xia Ran would have thought they were two Dementors having a party. Even though the Dementors might not be happy with this kind of thing. At this time, the door of the pig head bar opened, and a figure that Xia Ran and Lu Ping were very familiar with came out. Oh, hello, Xia Ran, Remus, are you having a good new year? The familiar old man smiled gently, would you like to come in for a couple of drinks? It was their headmaster Dumbledore. Well, the environment of the pig's head bar is too bad. Maybe you don't like it. We can go to the three broomsticks. Dumbledore said with a smile. An old man's voice came from behind him, shouting, Go out and close the door. Don't block it and affect my business. Chapter, 127 Chapter, 128 Neither Xia Ran nor Lupin expressed any surprise that Dumbledore was in the pig's head bar. After all, they knew who the owner of the pig's head bar was, Aberforth Dumbledore. Not only was he also a member of the Order of the Phoenix, he was also Dumbledore. His younger brother, his biological brother, it is absolutely normal for the two brothers to reminisce about old times. The grumpy-looking old man behind the bar, who was tall and thin with a lot of long grey hair and a beard, was very dissatisfied when he saw that Dumbledore didn't go out and close the door for a long time after opening it. Look up and see the general coming. Oh, Aberforth, you are still so impatient. Dumbledore chuckled. You are disturbing my customers. Aberforth Dumbledore, the owner of the Pig's Head Pub, said viciously. The relationship between him and his brother has never been good, especially after the death of Ariana when he was young. Aberforth even broke Dumbledore's nose at Ariana's funeral. Okay, okay, it's up to you. Dumbledore said with a smile, and closed the door of the pig's head bar to block the blizzard outside. Siaran pretended to complain, Principal, we are all here, and you don't invite Professor Lu Ping and I in for a drink. Yes, Dumbledore. Lupin nodded in agreement. Ha! Huh. Dumbledore laughed and said, Next time, definitely next time, definitely next time. The three of them braved the severe cold, wind and snow, left Hogsmeade and headed straight for Hogwarts. 
How was Christmas and New Year at the Black House? Dumbledore asked as he walked. Lu Ping smiled and said, It's pretty good. I haven't had such a beautiful and warm feeling in many years. He is a werewolf who is not favored by wizards in the magical world and has no stable job, so he has a lot of gray hair at a young age and his expression is even more haggard. In the past six months, he has had a stable professor at Hogwarts. Only after working hard did my overall complexion improve significantly. Otherwise, I would still be as tired and tired as ever, worried about life. In that case, how could Lu Ping think about spending various holidays? Wolfsbane potions have appeared, and perhaps further improvement potions will appear soon. Dumbledore said comfortingly. This is true. Wolfsbane potions can suppress the ferocious and violent habits of werewolves, making the werewolves less so after their transformation. Bloodthirsty is an advancement in potion science, and it is also good news for many werewolves. With the research of potion masters, perhaps a more effective Wolfsbane potion will not be far away. I hope so. Lupin said with emotion. The Wolfsbane potion he is drinking now is all prepared by Snape. This is the top potion master in the wizarding world today. The Wolfsbane potion he prepares is better than the Wolfsbane potion sold on the market. The effect of the poison is at least 30% better. So Lupin was indeed very grateful to Snape. Xia Ran smiled and said, Professor Snape is a master of potions. Professor Lupin, why don't you ask Professor Snape to improve the Wolfsbane potion? I think Professor Snape has this level of knowledge. Lupin suddenly laughed bitterly, shook his head and said, Xia Ran, you don't know the grudge between me and Severus. I am especially grateful that he can help me prepare the Wolfsbane potion. He was talking about the enmity between him and Snape when he was a student, especially Snape's relationship with James Potter and Sirius, which was extremely bad. Of course, he and Snape were not friendly either. To be precise, he is also extremely stiff, the kind that wouldn't make people feel weird if they started fighting each other. It's okay to mention it, right? Xia Ran spread her hands and said, if Professor Snape really developed such a magical potion, then it would be a matter of course for him to win the Order of Merlin and make a lot of money. Full, more relaxed, his name can also remain in the history books of the magical world. Xia Ran blinked and smiled, what if Professor Snape is moved by this? I'll give it a try. Lupin was the first to be moved, because Snape's abilities, especially his attainments in potions, did have the possibility of improving Wolfsbane potion. Of course, Snape must have spent an unknown amount of time on this, so no one can be sure whether he had this idea. Even though Dumbledore was the principal, he also respected Snape very much, especially when Snape was willing to after risking his life as an undercover agent, perhaps the danger is not very clear and obvious now. But both Dumbledore and Snape know that danger is everywhere, and it follows them everywhere, and they don't know when it will fully erupt. Killing people, and maybe not even a scrap of ashes can be left. Although Snape's death in the original time and space was not due to Voldemort discovering his identity as a double agent. Dumbledore and Snape's previous plan, misleading Voldemort about the ownership of the Elder Wand, also directly led to Snape's death. Nep later died and was eaten by the big snake Nagini. Dumbledore's respect and regard for Snape was probably second only to Harry and Moody, and more than any other member of the Order of the Phoenix. Harry is the only person in his eyes who can truly and completely kill Voldemort, and Moody is the only member who Dumbledore believes can firmly support the overall situation of the Order of the Phoenix after his death. Snape is second only to the two of them. One can imagine that Dumbledore valued him more than he respected. Of course, it does not mean that Dumbledore thinks that other people are not worthy of respect, such as the Weasleys, Lupin, Sirius, Kingsley, Tonks, etc. They all deserve Dumbledore's respect and deeply appreciate it. He is trusted by Dumbledore, but his level of importance is undoubtedly lower than that of the first three. They are the backbone of the resistance against the Dark Wizards, there is no doubt about this but as for the key points of the war, mainly towards the victory of the White Wizards, after all. Someone has to do something that can affect the direction of the situation, and Dumbledore Leto thought that person was Snape, Harry Potter, or even himself. He and Moody were just supporting the White Wizards' banner. Xia Ran suddenly said in surprise, Look, 
Professor Snape is waiting for us on the road. They had entered Hogwarts now, and Snape was waiting for someone to arrive at the castle gate, looking as if he was looking forward to seeing someone. Snape first looked at Dumbledore, then turned to Xia Ran and asked, Professor Xia Ran, have you received the Christmas gift I sent? I got it. Thank you Professor Snape. I didn't send anything. I'm really sorry. Xia Ran said apologetically, not embarrassed to ask what the bottle of potion was in the first place. Dumbledore and Lupin looked at Snape strangely, with astonishment in their eyes. How could he give Christmas gifts to someone with such a temperament? Snape then revealed the real reason why he was waiting here. The Resurrection Stone Professor Fremont, can you lend it to me? Chapter, 129 Resurrection Stone Xia Ran was slightly stunned. After thinking about it in his mind, he suddenly realized it. Snape originally wanted to borrow the Resurrection Stone from him, so he gave him a bottle of potion as a Christmas gift, but why did he want to take the Resurrection Stone? Could it be to summon Lily's undead spirit? Resurrection Stone Lupin was shocked. He didn't expect Snape to desire the Resurrection Stone. Dumbledore had a thoughtful look on his face, and he might know the reason for Snape's move. How about it? Snape seemed a little nervous and asked, Can you lend it to me? I promise not to damage the Resurrection Stone and will return it to you in a few days. Xia Ran spread her hands and said, but the Resurrection Stone is still in the principal's hand. Dumbledore borrowed the Resurrection Stone from him and has not yet returned it to him. I really don't need the Resurrection Stone now. Dumbledore said, Xia Ran, then I will give the Resurrection Stone to Severus directly later. Xia Ran smiled and said, well, it's useless for me to ask for it anyway. Professor Snape, just remember to return it to me. I won't forget it, don't worry. Snape said while suppressing his excitement. By the way, what is the main purpose of the potion you gave me? What effect does it have? Xia Ran suddenly asked. Snape explained patiently, a potion that can calm the mind and help wizards increase their magic power. It has a very significant effect on wizards who are adults but not particularly old. Of course, it is usually the first time. It's effective, but if you use it too much, it won't have any effect, but it will be a waste of this rare medicine. Xia Ran's eyes lit up instantly when she heard it. A potion to boost magic power. Thank you, Professor Snape. Xia Ran said. You and I each take what we need, Snape said, shaking his head. Dumbledore had already walked up the stairs and said, Severus, come with me. But I think I want to remind you that the undead summoned by the Resurrection Stone do not belong to our world of the living and live here. We'll make the undead feel painful and tortured, just like the second child in fairy tales. Snape nodded silently. By the way, Professor Snape, if you have time, you might as well improve the Wolfsbane potion. Xia Ran said, I believe that with your attainments in potions, you should have the opportunity to improve the Wolfsbane potion. Wolfsbane potion. Snape turned around, looked at Xia Ran, then glanced at Lupin, showed an ugly smile, and said, What is our Mr. Werewolf's request? No. Xia Ran shook her head and said, It's just that the situation of many werewolves is indeed worrying, and they are also victims if you really improve the Wolfsbane potion, I think all aspects of praise, money and fame will follow. Come on. Well, it's just a big pie, but if you're interested. Snape looked indifferent, nodded slightly, and said, I will give it a try. Thank you, Severus. Lupin thanked him with a complicated expression. After all, there was indeed grudge between him and Snape. Dumbledore and Snape went up the stairs and disappeared around the corner. Xia Ran, thank you very much. Lu Ping thanked him again. Xia Ran smiled and said, don't thank me. Whether it can produce results in the end depends on Professor Snape. The two of them walked upstairs from the other side while chatting and laughing, and returned to their offices. After the new year, the students who left school returned to Hogwarts to start the next semester's courses. During this period, the Order of the Phoenix was also running at high speed, but there was still no information about Voldemort. It even made people doubt whether Voldemort was really alive. Has he returned to the British magical world? 
However, the Ministry of Magic smear campaign against Dumbledore remains the same. At least many of Dumbledore's titles have been removed by the Ministry of Magic, such as the Chief Magician of the Wisingdemot and the President of the International Confederation of Wizards. These positions have all been removed. Dumbledore As a result, many people's views on Dumbledore have indeed changed, and they believe that Dumbledore is indeed, as the Daily Prophet said, a scheming wizard who is keen on power and fame. Although everyone with a clear eye knows that this is a slander, after all, Dumbledore's reputation is the highest in the wizarding world. And if he had a desire for power, he would have served as the Minister of Magic decades ago and completely led the entire wizarding world. But the Ministry of Magic kept making such statements, and the Daily Prophet slandered Dumbledore in almost every issue, and even mentioned some of Dumbledore's stupid things when he was young from time to time. This indeed made many people murmur in their hearts. Could it be that? Dumbledore really hit himself? When Dumbledore was discredited and the Order of the Phoenix made almost no progress, Xia Ran mainly stayed at Hogwarts to teach and increase his knowledge in various aspects. During this period, he even found an excuse to borrow after taking the invisibility cloak in Harry's hand, absorbing fifty force points. And relying on the precious magic potion presented by Snape, Xia Ran's magic level increased by one level, reaching level five advanced. Now it is only one step away from the top level of level 6. As for Dumbledore and Voldemort, they are both legendary level wizards, at least powerful and terrifying wizards of level 7 or above. Unfortunately, that magic potion no longer had any effect. Xia Ran verified this statement with the second bottle of potion obtained from Snape. But at the same time, Xia Ran was lucky enough to improve her level of knowledge in other areas. Transfiguration, charms, potions, and herbalism, the four major subjects, had made considerable progress. Name, Charon Fremont. Age, 27 years old. Magic, level 5 advanced. Force points, 0 points. Transformation, level 5 elementary. Potion science, level 5 elementary. Charms, level 5 medium. Herbalism, level 5 elementary. Flying, level 4 medium. This is the data displayed on Xia Rant's current system panel. Since he awakened his memory and activated the system panel two years ago, his progress in the past two years has been very obvious. Now in the Order of the Phoenix, apart from the legendary white wizard Dumbledore, the only people in the Order of the Phoenix who can firmly defeat Xia Rant are Alastair Moody. The second most popular figure in the Order and the former senior Auror, and two other members of Hogwarts. Headmasters, Professor McGonagall and Snape. The three of them are all top wizards with level 6 magic power. Professor Sprout, the head of Hufflepuff House, and Professor Flittick, the head of Ravenclaw House, although they agree with Dumbledore's words and are willing to obey Dumbledore's orders, they are indeed not Phoenix's members of the society. The time soon came to June, and the little wizards were facing the time point of various examinations. The little wizards were complaining about it. There were more people in the library instantly, and the professors were not so busy for the time being. However, no one knew what happened in the underground kitchen of Hogwarts, and many house elves experienced abnormal changes. Make up for yesterday's arrears. Chapter, 130 On the basement level of Hogwarts, not far from the common room of Hufflepuff House, is the kitchen of Hogwarts. The house elves live in it and rarely appear there on weekdays only appears throughout the castle at night to clean up the castle's garbage. There are about a hundred house elves in Hogwarts, making it the place with the most house elves in the world. Winky, where are you going? An elf looked at Winky, who was about to go to Gryffindor Tower with a dull expression, and asked immediately. Another elf said, Twinkle, don't run around. Principal Dumbledore doesn't even know you came to Hogwarts. You have been expelled from Crouch Manor and want to find another job. We will help you. Yours, for us house elves, there is no place more suitable for working and dedicating our lives than Hogwarts. Tomorrow we will take you to see the headmaster. Dumbledore will definitely agree to your stay. He is always very kind and friendly. Winky is a dirty house elf. She was once a house elf at Crouch Manor, and then disappeared. Now she suddenly came to Hogwarts. 
she must have accepted Voldemort's orders or control. After all, upon closer inspection, Shining's expression was actually dull and sluggish, exactly the same as when he was under the Imperious Curse. But the house elves didn't pay attention to these things, and they didn't know that Winky was now a missing person, and her appearance must have a deeper purpose. Thank you, Winky said sharply. The first elf said, okay, you can follow, we elves are just cleaning up Gryffindor Tower. So four or five elves went to Gryffindor Tower together, and Winky blended in without being noticeable at all. After being separated from the other house elves, he suddenly stopped walking when he reached a deserted place. What's wrong, Twinkle? The other four elves looked over in confusion. The light of the waning moon shone in, lengthening the shining shadow. Her face was shrouded in the darkness of the backlight, and the elves could not see it clearly. Faint. 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 Twinkle instantly raised her slender fingers, pointed at four of her own kin, and fired the stun spell at lightning speed. The four elves were caught off guard and were all hit by the attack. They were knocked unconscious by a stun spell from Flash. Twinkle's expression was still dull, and she stepped over the bodies of the four elves who were unconscious on the ground, and arrived directly outside the Gryffindor Tower. Password, Elf. The fat lady asked sleepily, yawning. Honey grapefruit wine. Winky said without any fluctuation in her tone. She knew the entrance and exit orders for Gryffindor Tower from other house elves. Okay, let's go in. The fat lady's portrait rotated and opened, and she muttered at the same time, you little elves can obviously enter the lounge directly, but you still want me to open the door. You really don't know how to understand the desire at one or two o'clock in the morning. I am resting. Winky entered the Gryffindor common room indifferently, as if she hadn't heard the fat lady's nagging. There was no one in the lounge, and all the students had gone to bed long ago. Even though it happened to be exam time in the past two days, no one would stay up late reading, so it was also very important to keep up the energy. Winky seemed to be already familiar with the layout of Gryffindor's lounge, and walked non-stop down the aisle of the boys' dormitory. She finally stopped in front of a large door. Creak. Shining touched the door lock with a long finger, and the door opened immediately. The dormitory was dark, and snoring could be heard. Who? The sound of the door opening seemed to wake up a student in the dormitory. He half sighted up and asked, groping for the bedside. The man with a lightning scar on his forehead was none other than Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Winky said word by word. It's me, are you? Harry touched his glasses and quickly put them on his eyes. He looked up and looked over, and was stunned for a moment. Elf? Harry, who are you talking to? The conversation between Harry and Winky woke up the other people in the dormitory. Ron, Neville and others opened their eyes one after another in a daze. Snapped. There was a sudden explosion in the air, and the shining figure disappeared in an instant, and then appeared on Harry's bed, grabbing Harry's arm tightly, making him scream in pain. Ah, it hurts. What are you doing? There was another explosion, and Winky and Harry disappeared at the same time. Harry? Harry? Ron shouted, quickly getting up from the bed and rushing to Harry's bedside, but there was no one there. Harry is missing. Ron felt his hands empty and looked at the others blankly. A look of horror appeared on Neville's round face, and he said in a trembling voice, quickly. Inform the professors quickly. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Ron woke up from a dream and ran out of the dormitory wearing only his pajamas, shouting as he ran, Someone, help. Neville, Seamus, and Dean also ran out of the dormitory in a hurry. What's going on? Who's yelling? You're not letting anyone sleep in the middle of the night. Dissatisfied voices came from other dormitories. But Ron seemed to have grasped the backbone and said loudly, Percy, Harry has been captured. Capture Harry? Stop joking, Ron, this is not funny at all. This is Hogwarts, who will come to capture him? Percy sneered, but still opened the door and came out, and immediately saw a face a terrified Ron. He suddenly knew something was wrong. Were you really taken away? He couldn't help asking again. Really? 
Ron almost jumped up, all of us saw it, everyone in our dormitory. Neville, Seamus, and Dean nodded, indicating that not a word Ron said was false. At this time, more or less students from other dormitories came out, most of them with dissatisfied faces. They had exams tomorrow. They were sleeping soundly at the moment, but they were woken up abruptly. No one had a good temper. Percy immediately shouted loudly, Everyone, everyone, get up and gather in the lounge. Prefect, Prefect, keep an eye on the order of the students. I'll notify Professor Dumbledore. Someone else is calling. Wake up girls, stay in the lounge, don't run around, and don't go back to the dormitory to sleep. A voice in the crowd responded loudly. The students filed out and arrived in the common room in their pajamas, all looking surprised and a little confused. At this time, the girls also came down. Most of them were wearing jackets outside their pajamas, and their faces were confused and a bit dissatisfied. What happened? Someone was arrested. Who was arrested? And who did it? Harry is missing and was taken away. Who caught him? The little wizards were talking a lot, each putting forward their own guesses, which were all random. Some even said that trolls and goblins broke in and took Harry away. It was very outrageous. However, many people still shrank back, as if they were afraid that the person who captured Harry would come back to arrest others. Percy quickly called for the teachers. Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, and Sia Ran, all wearing only loose pajamas, crossed the passage and entered the Gryffindor lounge. The young wizards who were having a heated discussion suddenly fell silent, and all looked at the three of them. Professor. Chapter, 131. Professor, Harry. Harry has been captured. Ron stood up immediately and said, he had always looked scared and nervous. Dumbledore asked in a deep voice, have you seen clearly who it is? It seems. Ron, Neville, Seamus, and Dean looked at each other and said uncertainly. A house elf? It looks pretty small anyway, Professor, Neville added. House elf? Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, and Sia Rant's expressions all changed. Although Hogwarts has various protections and forbidden magic, they are all aimed at wizards, especially the dark magic commonly used by some dark wizards, but there is no target for the magic of house elves. Oh, by the way. Ron clapped his hands and said, that elf, it should be a house elf, left by operating. I heard a very loud explosion. No, two voice. That's right, the first time the elf moved to Harry's bed, and the second time he operated away with Harry, Neville also said. House elf. No wonder. Sia Ran turned around and walked out of the Gryffindor lounge, and asked the portrait of the fat madam, fat madam, did anyone or an elf go in just now? People pricked up their ears and listened. Yes. The fat lady admitted directly and said, an elf entered the lounge through the password. Didn't she go to clean the room? Sia Ran shook her head and said, thank you very much. He returned to the lounge and said, obviously, that elf is the one who took Harry away. The elf's magic is not subject to any restrictions at Hogwarts, and apparition can also be used at will. Headmaster, I saw a few unconscious house elves on the way here. At this time Lupin happened to come over with a few house elves. Headmaster. One of the house elves said in fear, what went wrong? We. We seem to have been knocked unconscious by Winky. Did she do something? Winky. You said the elf who knocked you unconscious was called Winky? Sia Ran asked quickly. He remembered that the house elf in Crouch Manor was named Winky. Yes, she came to Hogwarts this evening and said she wanted to find a new job and wanted to meet Principal Dumbledore. Because it was too late by then, we told her to take her to see the principal tomorrow morning. The four elves answered all at once. It's obvious. Sia Ran said in a deep voice, Barty Crouch Jr. Served Voldemort and was a loyal Death Eater. They controlled Winky and took away Harry through the special magic of the house elves. He must be four. Although Sia Ran didn't finish his words, Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall and Lupin all knew what he wanted to say. It must be for Voldemort's resurrection ceremony. Get out first. 
Dumbledore said, Percy, please go and inform other professors that Hogwarts is under martial law tonight and ask all students to stay in the common room and stop running around. Prefects are protecting good order. Elves, please go back to the kitchen first. Yes, Professor Dumbledore. Percy immediately puffed up his chest and strode out of the lounge. Snapped. Snapped. The elves operat directly back to the kitchen on the basement floor of Hogwarts Castle. Professor, what about Harry? Hermione couldn't help but asked. Dumbledore consoled him, don't worry, we won't sit idly by and do nothing. We will definitely rescue Harry. Several people left the Gryffindor common room and walked quickly down the stairs. As they walked, they talked quickly, where do you think Voldemort will be resurrected? Albus, do you think the mysterious man will ask the elf to take Harry directly to the place where he was resurrected? Professor McGonagall asked. Yes, because we will definitely discover this matter soon. He must complete the resurrection ceremony as soon as possible to truly return. Dumbledore said solemnly, even if Voldemort is resurrected, we can still deal with him. I am more afraid. It's. Several people's faces darkened. If Voldemort killed Harry directly. Hope it's not too late. Wait a minute. Sia Ran clapped her hands suddenly and said, I know where Voldemort is resurrected, if I'm not wrong. Voldemort's resurrection place in the original time and space was the cemetery outside Little Hangleton, where old Tom Riddle, Voldemort's father, was buried. If nothing unexpected happens this time, Voldemort's resurrection place should still be in Little Hangleton. Among Hangleton Cemetery. He happened to have been to Little Hangleton, so he could just disapparate on his way, just like Winky did when he took Harry away. Really? Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, and Lupin's eyes suddenly lit up. It's almost the same. Sia Ran said, let's leave Hogwarts first. I can't apparate here. Okay. Said Dumbledore, just a moment. He immediately whispered something in a strange language. Sia Ran knew that it was Dumbledore who was undoing the protection and banning magic that he had set up on the outside of the castle, so that they could disapparate directly in the school. Without having to go outside the school. Okay, Sia Ran, you can recite the spell. Maybe so many of us are a bit heavy on you. Dumbledore said and grabbed Sia Ran's left sleeve. Professor McGonagall and Lupin both reached out and grabbed it. He picked up a corner of Sia Ran's pajamas. Please draw your wands, we may be facing a fierce battle. Sia Ran took a deep breath as she spoke holding her wand tightly in her right hand, meditating on little Hangleton in her mind, and shouted loudly, Apparition! Snapped! With an unusually loud voice, he and several professors disappeared in an instant. Harry suddenly felt a sharp pain on his forehead, and he couldn't help but cry out in pain again. Master, Harry Potter is here! A man's voice said. Owner! Who is the master he is talking about? The pain in Harry's mind became more and more intense. He reluctantly raised his head and looked forward. The elf who was holding his arm firmly at this moment had loosened his grip and stepped aside. This is a cemetery, dark and gloomy, with only the glow of the bright moon shining overhead. It is overgrown with weeds and swaying in the night wind. Behind a tall yew tree on the right is the black outline of a small church, and on the left is a hill. Harry could vaguely make out an exquisite old house on the hillside. A figure was walking towards him step by step among the graves. Harry couldn't see the man's face clearly, but judging from the way he walked and the movements of his arms, it seemed that the man was holding something. Harry wanted to cast a spell, but he moved his hands and realized that he was taken directly out of Hogwarts by the house elf, and he did not have time to hold the wand in his hand. Oh no! Chapter 132 Harry's heart suddenly sank. Without the wand, he would have no ability to deal with danger. After all, there are wizards with considerable strength who can do without the wand, or legendary wizards such as Dumbledore and Voldemort. Either a hybrid giant like Hagrid, or a creature like an elf or a house elf. He wanted to move and hide behind a tombstone, but suddenly there was another sharp pain in his forehead. Ah! He covered his forehead tightly and squatted on the ground his expression was very painful, his face was twisted, 
and cold sweat broke out instantly. At this time, the man came closer, wearing a hooded cloak, covering his face. The distance between them was shrinking. Harry reluctantly raised his head, and there were still waves of burning pain on his forehead, but he still vaguely recognized what the man was holding. It seemed to be a baby. Harry Potter, we finally meet. No, we meet again. The man spoke. No, it was not the man wearing a hood and cloak. The voice was different from the one he heard at the beginning. This time, the voice was not only cold, but also made him feel chills in his heart. Was it the thing in that man's arms that spoke? Harry stared at the approaching figure. The man stopped in front of a towering marble tombstone, only six or seven feet away from Harry. At this moment, Harry and the figure looked at each other. The lightning scar on Harry's forehead seemed to be burning, and the pain became more intense, almost like nothing he had ever felt in his life. Ah! Harry screamed again, covering his face with his hands, bending his legs and falling to the ground. He couldn't see anything in front of him, and his head felt as if it was about to explode. So fragile. It was still the same cold voice. Master, do you want to start now? A man's voice asked respectfully. The cold voice replied, let's get started, I have been waiting for too long, and I am no longer willing to wait any longer. By the way, be careful, Harry Potter is mine, that a savior star. Ha, I will end Harry Potter myself. Yes, master. The man's voice said respectfully. The man in the cloak had already put down his baggage, lit his wand, walked over and grabbed Harry, he was in so much pain that he had no ability to resist. Not to mention he didn't even have a wand, and dragged Harry towards the marble tombstone. Go. Harry saw a name in the flickering light of his wand before he was pushed around and his back hit the tombstone. Tom Riddle. He seemed to understand something in an instant. He remembered what happened in the secret room more than a year ago. The mastermind behind the secret room incident at that time was a diary, but the diary contained the soul of a wizard. That wizard it was the young Voldemort, also called Tom Riddle by Dumbledore. Voldemort? Is this Voldemort's tomb? Harry was obviously worried. After all, he knew that Voldemort was plotting to resurrect. Could it be that Voldemort was hiding under this tomb? Recognize me? The cold voice seemed to smile and said slowly, but you are wrong, Harry Potter. It is not me who is sleeping under this grave, but my stupid good-for-nothing. My father abandoned my mother because she was a witch, so I taught him a lesson and he ended up lying here. Harry became increasingly nervous. Did Voldemort kill his father? Yes, he already knew this from the soul fragments in the diary, but Voldemort was really right in front of him. Although he faced Voldemort once in the first grade, it was at Hogwarts, and there were Ron and Hermione was his comrade in arms, but now he was alone, and he didn't know where he was now. Will Ron and Neville find out that he is missing? Will Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, and Professor Fremont arrive in time to rescue him? As for the other two people present besides Harry, Winky is a house elf, naturally one is Barty Crouch Jr. And the other is Voldemort. Rope binding. Barty Crouch Jr. Used magic to conjure a rope and tied Harry tightly to the tombstone from his neck to his ankles. Harry heard steady and excited breathing coming from inside the hood. He struggled hard, but it was useless. Instead, he was hit hard by Barty Crouch Jr. Ah! Harry cried in pain. Be quiet and don't make me do it. Barty Crouch Jr. said coldly. Voldemort said leisurely, Okay, okay, little Barty, give our savior and boy who lived some respect. He is my old enemy, isn't he? Ha ha. He said and sneered twice. Master, how can such a little wizard qualify to be your old enemy? Barty said, in the entire magical world, only Dumbledore can be called your enemy, and all the guys in the Ministry of Magic are vulnerable. Little Barty has a completely dismissive attitude towards the Ministry of Magic. What are you going to do? Harry asked through gritted teeth, trying not to scream again in order to avoid embarrassing himself in front of the enemy. What to do? Voldemort's voice chuckled, this is a lot, but the most important thing now. Let me be resurrected first. Barty, I'm sorry to bother you. 
It is my honor to serve the master. Little Barty said in a fanatical tone. He put away his wand and pushed a heavy object over. Harry could see clearly that it was a stone cauldron that was pushed to the edge of the grave by Barty Crouch Jr. The cauldron seemed to be filled with water, he heard a splashing sound. This stone cauldron was larger than any cauldron Harry had ever used, and could almost accommodate a grown man sitting in it. He didn't know what Barty Crouch Jr. was going to do with the stone cauldron, but he seemed to have guessed something, and the uneasiness in his heart suddenly became stronger. He suddenly heard a sound at his feet, looked down and saw a big snake snaking on the grass, circling around his tombstone. Hiss. Harry couldn't help but gasp. What a big snake it was. It was thicker than his waist and more than ten feet long. He felt that this big snake could swallow him in one bite. Little Barty used his wand to touch the bottom of the stone crucible, and a crackling flame suddenly burst out under the crucible, and at this time the big snake swam into the darkness. It's ready, master. The things in the bag seemed to be excited, and they couldn't wait to break free from the shackles or protection of the bag. Put me in. Voldemort's cold voice could not conceal his excitement. At this time, Harry's scar started to hurt, and he suddenly realized that he didn't want to see what was in the bag, and he didn't want the bag to be opened. But little Barty had already picked up the baggage he had just placed on the ground. Chapter 133 Crack. The liquid in the stone crucible seemed to heat up very quickly. Not only did the surface begin to boil, but sparks also shot out, as if it was about to burn. The steam became thicker and thicker, and the figure of little Barty tending the flames became blurry. The bundle began to tremble again, and Voldemort inside seemed impatient. Quick. Now, little Barty, the time is just right. Voldemort's cold voice reminded. At this moment, sparks flashed on the water in the crucible, as if it were studded with diamonds, and it was like a starry night sky, giving it a dreamy and blurred beauty. Yes, master. Little Barty opened the package he was holding and revealed the contents. Harry couldn't help but scream. It's like Barty Crouch Jr. Flipped over a rock to reveal a slimy, eyeless ugly thing underneath it. No, it's even scarier than that. The thing that little Barty was holding looked like a curled up baby, but the dark red skin, which seemed to be covered in scales, was even more jaw dropping. And this baby has a snake face, a flat snake face, with a pair of sparkling red eyes, shining with excitement. This thing is what Voldemort looks like now. Voldemort in this state seemed completely incapable of taking care of himself. He raised his thin arms and hugged little Barty's neck. Little Barty carefully held it in his arms his hood had fallen down, but Harry did not see any expression of disgust or disgust on Barty's face. Instead, there was one of fanatical admiration on Barty's face. His expression was as if he was holding the most precious thing in the world. This is a Death Eater who is completely loyal to Voldemort. Harry understood this immediately. Little Barty carried the thing to the edge of the stone cauldron, and for a moment Harry saw the sparks dancing on the surface of the potion illuminating the evil flat snake face. Little Barty put the thing into the crucible, and with a hissing sound, it sank. Harry even thought he heard the soft sound of Voldemort's limp body touching the bottom of the stone crucible. Let him drown. Harry thought as the pain in his scar grew almost unbearable. Please, let him drown. At this moment, Barty Jr. spoke, his voice was extremely stable, and his tone was even more enthusiastic and excited. He raised his wand, widened his eyes, and said to the stone crucible, My father's bones, accidentally donated, can regenerate your son. Click. The tomb opened at Harry's feet, and he was horrified to see a small plume of dust rise into the air in response to Barty's call, and fall gently into the crucible. The diamond-like liquid surface burst, hissing, and the liquid became even thicker. It turns a bright blue and is poisonous at a glance. Little Barty's tone became more and more fiery, and he pulled out a long dagger from his cloak. It was shining with silver and the price must be extraordinary. The flesh of your servant, given voluntarily, may bring about the rebirth of your master. He stretched out his right hand, his slightly old and wrinkled face full of excitement. He held the dagger with his left hand and swung it towards his right hand. 
Harry realized what little Barty was going to do at the last second. He immediately closed his eyes tightly, and there was only a dull groan of pain from next to the crucible, and then he heard the sound of something falling to the ground. Barty gasped in pain, followed by another disgusting plop, and something was thrown into the crucible. Harry didn't want to look, he might know what it was. But the potion turned into a dazzling fiery red at this moment, and the bright light shone into Harry's closed eyes. Little Barty's heavy breathing gradually became louder. When the hot breath of the heavy breath hit his face, Harry suddenly realized that little Barty had arrived in front of him. The blood of your enemies, forced to give, can bring your enemies back to life. Harry's eyes widened in horror. He wanted to dodge and retreat, but he couldn't move to stop him. He was tied too tightly. He struggled desperately, trying to break free from the ropes that bound him. He saw little Barty's fanatical look, saw little Barty holding the shining silver dagger and stabbing it into his arm, blood flowing along the torn the sleeves of the robe flowed down. Little Barty immediately used magic to create a small glass bottle and pressed it firmly on Harry's arm, just below the wound. A lot of blood immediately flowed into the bottle. Harry glared at little Barty with angry eyes. He ignored Harry behind him, took the small glass bottle to the crucible, and poured it all in at once. The liquid in the crucible immediately turned dazzling white, and the fiery red color faded away completely in an instant. Healed as before. Little Barty completed his task, retreated to the side of the crucible, and touched his injured arm with his wand. The blood had been stopped by him just now. At this moment, the wound healed quickly and the pain dissipated. Crackle. The crucible is about to boil, and diamond-like sparks are splashing in all directions, so bright and dazzling that everything around them turns into a black velvet color, mysterious and attractive. Hope he's drowned. Harry stared at the stone cauldron. He didn't want Voldemort's plan to succeed, especially since his own blood was used in it, and he felt sick at the thought of it. Suddenly, the sparks on the crucible went out, and a stream of white steam rose up from the crucible, covering up everything in front of Harry. He couldn't see Barty Jr. And all he could see was a vast expanse of white water vapor, like a heavy fog. Of London. It would definitely not work, he must have drowned. But what made him despair was that deep in the white mist, a black figure of a man slowly rose from the crucible. He was tall and thin, resembling a skeleton, which made Harry feel a little creepy. Give me a robe. A cold and sharp voice said. Little Barty quickly picked up the black robe he had just used to wrap the bundle, stepped forward with an extremely enthusiastic expression, and put the black robe on his master's head. The tall and thin man stepped out of the cauldron, still staring at Harry. Harry saw the face that had often appeared in his nightmares for the past three years. It was paler than the dead, with two big red eyes, a nose as flat as a snake, and two slits in the nostrils. Harry suspected that he really had respiratory system. Voldemort, the Dark Lord who single-handedly started the Wizarding War, is resurrected. Ah ha, Harry Potter, we finally meet again. He said softly, putting his surprisingly long fingers into a pocket and taking out a wand. He raised the wand in front of his eyes. With an expression of joy. Finally. I finally mastered the wand again and had a real body. Voldemort said lazily, you know. The last time we met was almost thirteen years ago, in Godric's Hollow, where I suffered the most fatal crisis in my life and almost died. Really, I almost died, but many of my preparations seemed to have a good effect, so I survived, even if I lived a humble life, I was worse than a wandering soul. Master, I. Little Barty seemed to want to say something. Voldemort waved his hand and interrupted Little Barty's words, and said, I know what efforts you have made, little Barty, Lord Voldemort has seen everything. Now that I am back, you will all receive the gifts and gifts you deserve. Glory. Lord Voldemort is kind, friendly, and considerate of his companions. Chapter, 134. Thank you, Master. Little Barty said enthusiastically. He was indeed an extremely loyal Death Eater. Okay, Harry Potter, your mother used a magic. Ah, uh, yes, I have to admit, I know that magic, but I seem to have ignored the powerful effect of that magic. I paid for it. The price was heavy, and life was worse than death. 
Voldemort said softly, really, life was worse than death, but I survived and finally got my most loyal friend, Barty Crouch Jr. Little Barty grinned happily. Yes, Little Barty, Bella, and Lestrange, they are all one of my most loyal partners. Voldemort seemed to just want to talk and vent his depressed mood for more than ten years, after I lost power, they seemed to be the only ones who made a lot of efforts to find me. Master, this is what we should do. Little Barty said. I know, yes, I know, Little Barty, Lord Voldemort is almost omniscient. Voldemort said lazily, look, the Longbottoms who are still in ST. Mungo's hospital, aren't they? Your results. The Longbottoms? Harry heard a very familiar name, Longbottom. Who are they? Neville's last name is Longbottom, could he be Neville's parents? But soon Voldemort gave the answer. Ah, I forgot, the son of Mr. and Mrs. Longbottom seems to be a classmate and good friend of our Savior Star, right? Voldemort looked at Harry and smiled. Looking at this old enemy he personally selected, Neville originally also he may be his old enemy, but Harry and Voldemort are more similar. They are both mixed blood and come from wizarding families with ancient and glorious histories. Relatively speaking, Neville, as a pure blood, is very different from Voldemort. So after hearing about Professor Sybil Trelawney's prophecy, Voldemort ended up marking Harry himself instead of Neville. The Longbottoms? Yes, I have to admit that they are a very capable wizard couple and I am deeply impressed by them. Voldemort nodded to himself and said. Little Barty couldn't help but said, but master, we once captured them, Mr. and Mrs. Longbottom. They were tortured crazy by us and used the Cruciatus curse. Harry howled like an angry lion, and glared at little Barty with eyes that could almost breathe fire. Neville was such a gentle, friendly and confused boy, but his parents were tortured crazy by Death Eaters. Ron what kind of torture did the Patton suffer? How dare they? Harry understood more and more why Dumbledore and the others wanted to fight Voldemort to the death. Look, I like the power of friendship very much. Voldemort said with a fierce light in his red eyes, I also have my own friends, right, little Barty? Master, I would be honored, if. Of course, of course you are my friend. Voldemort said softly. I'm so pleased, Tom, that you're willing to call your followers, the Death Eaters. Friends. At this moment, an old voice suddenly came. Voldemort, Barty Jr. And Harry all suddenly raised their heads and looked around. They saw several figures running quickly towards the edge of the cemetery. The first one had white hair and a white beard. He was wearing pajamas, which was quite disconcerting, but Voldemort's expression changed instantly. Dumbledore. Voldemort said every word, his tone full of fear and solemnity. Professor. Harry couldn't help shouting. He looked at the professors who had arrived in the cemetery, but his face was filled with excitement. Professor Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Professor Lupin, and Professor Fremont, for against one, Voldemort and Barty Crouch Jr. We'll definitely not be able to escape. Shut up. Little Barty punched Harry hard. Harry arched his back, his eyes almost bulging out, and he could only make an extremely painful hissing sound. The anger on Dumbledore's face seemed to flash away, and he said, Little Barty, I didn't expect that you would cruelly kill your father in the end. That old man deserves to die. Barty Jr. Sneered, also, Dumbledore, don't educate me, you are not qualified. I am no longer a student of Hogwarts, and I am not your Order of the Phoenix. A member of. Sia Ran clenched the wand in his right hand, and he looked at Voldemort not far away. This was the first time he saw Voldemort in his complete state with his own eyes. After all, Riddle's diary was just a fragment of his soul. He had just operat to Little Hangleton with Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, and Lupin. Dumbledore easily detected the movement of dark magic, so they quickly rushed to this cemetery, but soon apparently it was a step too late. Voldemort had been resurrected and had a strong body again. Looking at the dull-looking house elf Winky standing next to the tomb, Sia Ran knew that she had been negligent, otherwise Voldemort would not have had the chance to capture Harry, but this also made Voldemort's flaw bigger. 
After all, his resurrection with Harry's blood is bound to make the already close connection between him and Harry even closer. Professor McGonagall and Lupin also raised their wands and faced Barty Jr. Head on. The situation seemed to be on the verge of breaking out. But Dumbledore and Voldemort looked like they had met while out for an outing, and they wanted to have a conversation to reminisce about old times, as if this was not a tense battlefield at all. Siar Ran can only say that the skilled artist is brave if he had the most powerful magic power in the wizarding world, he would not be nervous at all, instead of staring at Voldemort and Barty Jr. Like now, for fear that they would take advantage of him. Wave your wand and cast Avada Kedavra. Only when you actually faced Voldemort did you realize how powerful he was. The evil and terrifying aura was like substance, wrapping around the entire cemetery, making you almost breathless. On Xia Ran's side, only Dumbledore can rival them. Xia Ran is eager to become stronger. Tom, as your teacher, I have an unshirkable responsibility for you to reach this point. I will personally correct this mistake and treat you as an outsider of people's lives. Dumbledore sighed, remembering that at the beginning, he used a single fire spell can deter Voldemort. Now even if he goes all out, he can't tell who will win between him and Voldemort. Although he believed that Voldemort had gone astray on the path of being a wizard, this did not prevent Voldemort from possessing the most powerful magic power in the world and the terrifying and evil knowledge of black magic. Voldemort laughed sarcastically and said, Ah, hypocrisy, what a disgusting smell. Dumbledore, you have always been so aloof, it seems that everything you do is right and others only need to accept your just make arrangements, I'm disgusted. Tom, when you make a mistake, you will know what is right and what is wrong. Dumbledore said sadly. His change came after her sister died. This was also Dumbledore's change. One of the most embarrassing things in life. Chapter, 135 Mistake Voldemort sneered and said, There has never been right or wrong in the world. As long as whoever is strong is right, then he is right, and vice versa is wrong. It's a very simple truth, Dumbledore, don't you understand? Ah, look at my memory. I forgot again, what you have always admired is, love, is that thing of any use? Ha ha. Voldemort smiled coldly, but his red eyes were fixed on Dumbledore, his pupils shining with bloodthirsty killing light. Love, I admit that I may have underestimated this power. Voldemort said, Lily Potter's magic taught me a lesson and made me understand that there are many mysterious and powerful magics in the wizarding world. Although I know a lot, it is obvious that I am still a long way from truly controlling all of this, and I have not yet reached the point where I can really slack off. This is the true thought in Voldemort's heart. He longs for power, is afraid of death, and even more desires to be powerful and invincible in the world. Otherwise, why would he travel around the world after graduation and collect all kinds of mysterious and terrifying black magic? If he had joined politics, enter the Ministry of Magic, and within a few years, there is a high probability of becoming the Minister of Magic. But Voldemort did not do this, because the Ministry of Magic is an official organization, which would restrict his research on dark magic. Ren secretly sighed, a less arrogant Voldemort would definitely be more difficult to deal with. Okay, Dumbledore, I have nothing more to say to you. Let's use the wand to decide the victory. Voldemort interrupted Dumbledore's words that he seemed to be about to say. He waved his wand suddenly and a green light came out. Suddenly it shot out and charged straight at Dumbledore. Avada Kedavra. His shouts came only later. As expected, the Dark Wizard started with Avada's Kedavra. Sia Ran secretly complained and stepped aside to avoid the position near Dumbledore, which was the attack range of Voldemort's spell. He felt that he could not withstand Voldemort's powerful black magic. God's blade is shadowless. Sia Ran used an attack spell on Barty. This is a magic spell created by Snape, but there are quite a few wizards who can use it, and the effect is good, especially when used on the enemy. Sia Ran, be careful. Lu Ping suddenly shouted loudly, raising his wand to emit a ray of light that hit Xia Ran's side, and waves of cool and cold breath came from that place. Hiss. A big snake swam out from the dark woods. The snake vomited softly. 
A pair of cold vertical pupils stared at Xia Ran. The snake's body was twisted and twisted, and its tail suddenly swung at him. Nagini. Xia Ran recognized this big snake. It was Voldemort's pet and one of his horcruxes. I heard that this big snake was a young and beautiful woman decades ago. Such a thought came to Xia Ran's mind, and he immediately threw it away. He jumped to the other side, and used his wand to shoot magic spells with his backhand, such as the Shadowless Blade, the Fire Curse, the Cruciatus Curse, and the Petrification Curse. Use. However, the Serpent Nagini's snake body is extremely hard. The reason why Neville was able to cut off Nagini's head in the original time and space, in addition to the surprise attack, also relied on the unparalleled sharpness of Gryffindor's sword. The spells he used with level 5 advanced magic power were no longer as sharp and unstoppable as those of Dumbledore and Voldemort. However, Dumbledore was currently in a fierce battle with Voldemort, and the two of them even cast spells silently most of the time. However, they cast all kinds of profound, complicated and mysterious magic spells in this way, leaving pits everywhere in the cemetery. The tombstones were torn apart, and all kinds of bones and corpses were flying around. Dumbledore intentionally led Voldemort to the woods nearby, while Voldemort somehow managed to fly high in the sky without the help of a broomstick. His black robes fluttered in the night wind, his slender fingers and flat snake face. It looks even more terrifying. Dumbledore, you are old. He waved his wand and conjured up a solid buckler, which blocked Dumbledore's attack spell and bounced it back. Dumbledore suddenly disappeared, and the next moment he appeared at the edge of a forest, casting another spell. Ah, yes, I am indeed old, and time will not forgive anyone after all. Tom, but I think I can still fight with you. Voldemort also changed his body position and suddenly returned to the ground. A large stream of ferocious flames suddenly appeared from the tip of the wand, rushing towards Dumbledore like a blanket. He used the fire curse. Dumbledore, I am immortal, you will not be my opponent after all. Voldemort laughed loudly, and flew into the sky without using any external objects, overlooking Dumbledore who was surrounded by fierce fire. Several green rays of light shot out from the tip of the wand. The water is as clear as a spring. Dumbledore's clear water curse was like summoning a big river, and it was as if seven or eight fire trucks were vigorously spraying water. Even though the fire curse burned nothing, it was still blocked by the surging water. Stayed on the way out. Tom, birth, aging, sickness and death are natural laws, and no one will be an exception. As Dumbledore's figure changed, the fire curse appeared again. With a wave of his wand, dozens of large trees around him seemed to come alive. The branches flapped wildly, forcing Voldemort to retreat to the open space on the other side. When Xia Ran was dealing with the big snake Nagini, she took the time to look at the battle here, and her heart was filled with shock. The battle between these two legendary wizards was completely unlike a duel that could happen between wizards. Flying around the world and spreading magic spells across a wide range, just like gods in ancient legends. He is indeed a level 7 legendary wizard. Xia Ran was amazed, but he did not forget his situation. The big snake Nagini had a hard body and was extremely powerful. Its teeth contained very strong toxins. Moreover, because of its special type, it was almost immune to many magics. Situation, perhaps not immune to Dumbledore's spell. It was very difficult for Xia Ran to deal with it. Fortunately, he already had level 5 advanced magic, level 5 intermediate spells, and level 5 elementary transfiguration. He was able to withstand Orochi Najib. N.I. As the headmaster of Gryffindor House, Professor McGonagall has a level 6 magic level. At this moment, he and Barty Crouch Jr. were firing magic spells at each other, and Lupin took the opportunity to rescue Harry who was tied to the tombstone. Remus, take Harry back first. Professor McGonagall said loudly, and ordered a boulder to turn into a tiger and pounce on Barty Jr. But Barty Jr. hit the Avada Kedavra and smashed it to pieces. Okay, I'll be here soon. Lupin also knew that the situation was critical. Harry was too young and too weak. He didn't have a wand at this time. Letting him stay here would only harm him. 
he might be killed if he wasn't careful. Will his life be taken away by a magic spell from somewhere? He first operat back to Hogwarts with Harry, and then brought other professors here. Voldemort, Barty Crouch Jr. And the big snake couldn't escape. Lupin operat with Harry. Chapter, 136 Master, the werewolf left, taking Harry Potter with him. While fighting with Professor McGonagall, little Barty noticed Lupin's movements and said loudly. You stupid old woman. Avada Kedavra. The tip of Barty Jr. S1 shot out a green light, which passed through the 20 or 30 meters between the two people and hit Professor McGonagall directly. Avada Kedavra, as the strongest spell among the three unforgivable curses, has the ability of a law of cause and effect. The person hit will inevitably die. Perhaps the only exception in history is Harry Potter, but that mainly relies on Lily. The powerful magic cast by Potter. Although Professor McGonagall is old, she is still very agile in her movements. She immediately dodged aside and waved her wand to change the image of the surrounding trees and rocks, like a swarm of ligers and tigers. The roar was so loud that even the small children in the distance where the villagers of Hangleton were all awakened. All petrified. On the other side, Sia Rant's magic hit the big snake Nagini, and the snake scales made a clanking sound, shattered and fell, and the snake blood eroded and polluted the soil. The big snake's eyes flashed with anger. Although it did not suffer much trauma, it was already in pain. The snake's body twisted wildly and bit Sia Ran with a sudden bite. Its bloody mouth was bigger than Sia Ran's head. There are many obstacles. Protect yourself with armor. It's impregnable. Sia Ran recited three protective spells in succession, and moved his steps back. The magic hindered the speed of the big snake Nagini, as if it hit an invisible wall. With a bang, the big snake hit the ground. SS ever, then from where it. The big snake's vertical eyes were cold and devoid of any other emotions at all. Like the most cold-blooded and cruel animal, it stared at Sia Ran closely, looking for his flaw in order to kill him with a fatal blow. Fire is raging. Sia Ran recited the fire spell, and a large stream of red flames erupted from the tip of the wand, burning the grass and trees, and then attacked the big snake Nagini, intending to burn the big snake to death. Sia Ran even secretly chanted the fire curse after the fire curse. The red flames suddenly swelled and the color changed slightly. The color became deeper and more ferocious, just like the fierce fire from hell. Came to the human world just to burn all living things. The cold and cruel vertical pupils of the big snake Nagini finally changed, and a hint of fear appeared. Although the fire curse is an evil black magic, Sia Ran has never been afraid of these things. As long as it can be used in battle, no matter what kind of magic it is, she will use it. However, Sia Ran also has his own bottom line. It is too unreasonable and he must kill innocent lives to meet the requirements of magic. He will never perform this kind of black magic, even if he knows the spells of this kind of magic, such as the method of making horcruxes. Sia Ran. Suddenly, a cold voice sounded in Sia Ran's ears. Sia Ran's heart suddenly pounded, and she immediately pulled away without having time to think about it. Avada Kedavra. A bright green light swept across a distance of several hundred meters and headed straight for Sia Ran. Sia Ran hid behind a big rock in embarrassment and just escaped the death curse. Voldemort's black robe floated, and he flew high in the sky without the help of a broomstick or other external objects, passing through most of the cemetery, and came to the place where Sia Ran and Nagini fought. He waved his hand to break Sia Ran's fire curse. She knows these black magic better than Sia Ran. Call out. The big snake Nagini's body bounced slightly, jumped up, and got into Voldemort's wizard robe. Sia Ran, how do you feel about the fire curse? Come and try it yourself. Voldemort said softly, lowering his wand a little, and fierce fire spewed out from all over the sky, burning the earth and stones, the bones and bones in the tomb. The tombstone outside was burned to ashes in an instant. The water is as clear as a spring. Sia Ran escaped from the shelter of the big stone. He knew that Voldemort's magic power was unfathomable and his magic skills were extremely superior. 
he could only save his life by retreating while fighting and waiting for Dumbledore to arrive. Because among the people present, the only one who could confront Voldemort head-on was Dumbledore, the most powerful white wizard of our time. The water he summoned was already quite large. After all, it had level 5 high-level magic power. There was no problem filling a pond. However, in front of the fierce fire unleashed by Voldemort, it was like a cup of trace spring water, only emitting a small amount of water. With a few pops of sound, it was completely evaporated. So strong. Xia Ran's expression changed, and she turned to using the fire curse to break the curse. However, this was a spell used by Voldemort himself. With his current level of magic, how could he break Voldemort's magic? Tom. Dumbledore broke the trap cast by Voldemort on him and rushed over as quickly as possible. He also cast the clear water spring curse, but this time what came out was river-like water. Even though the fire was fierce no matter how ferocious it is, it still cannot completely evaporate this large amount of water in a short period of time. Voldemort seemed to be about to say something sarcastic, his expression suddenly changed. As he waved his wand, the fire became more fierce, and the green light of Avada Kedavra shot out in all directions like rain. Taking advantage of the moment when Dumbledore and others were on guard, he moved to Barty Jr. S. sighed in an instant. He grabbed Barty Jr. S. collar with his left hand and aimed the wand at Professor McGonagall in his right hand. Professor McGonagall's expression suddenly changed. Avada Kedavra. Cut out the heart and bones. Xia Ran stepped aside when Dumbledore was helping him to block Voldemort. At this time, seeing Professor McGonagall in danger, she immediately used two unforgivable curses, the Avada Kedavra and the Cruciatus Curse. Faced with the unreasonable Avada Kedavra, Voldemort, no matter how powerful his magic power is, still needs to retreat or use some object to block it, instead of forcefully intercepting it. He pulled little Barty back, dodges Xia Ran's green light magic, and finally looked at Dumbledore and Xia Ran, his eyes were cold and his murderous intent was not concealed at all. Bang bang. He cast the apparition spell and left the little Hangleton Cemetery, and little Barty and the big snake Nagini were taken away by him. Snapped. There was another explosion, and several figures in pajamas appeared in the field. It was Lupin who arrived with several professors from Hogwarts. Where is the Dark Lord? Dumbledore, Minerva, and Sharon, are you okay? Are you not injured? Professor Flitwick is small, but when he picks up the wand, he is very intimidating. Snape and Professor Sprout also drew their wands and carefully looked around. Sia Ran helped Professor McGonagall come over, Professor McGonagall was hit with a curse by Barty Jr. His face was very pale at the moment, and his body was shaking slightly uncontrollably, he said. Professor McGonagall is injured. Oh, my God, Minerva. Professor Sprout quickly took Professor McGonagall's wand and gave it to Professor McGonagall. Revitalization. Professor McGonagall's face improved slightly. Chapter, 137. Minerva, how do you feel? Snape asked, taking out a bottle of potion from his pocket and saying, I brought this here specially to restore vitality. Drink it first. Professor McGonagall's hands were still trembling and she was unable to take the potion bottle. Professor Sprout hurriedly opened the cap of the potion bottle, fed Professor McGonagall, and rubbed her back. Minerva, are you feeling better? At this time, Dumbledore had solved the terrifying fire that was cast by Voldemort himself and burned the cemetery and the woods, otherwise it might have spread to the villages on the side, and came over and asked with concern. It's okay. After Professor McGonagall drank Snape's potion, she finally calmed down and no longer trembled so much. Thanks to Severus' potion, and Xia Xia at the last moment. Ran helped me block the Dark Lord. Oh my god, the Dark Lord. Did he really appear? Professor Sprout covered his mouth. Yes, Pomona, he just operat away. Dumbledore replied, his expression was extremely solemn. Dumbledore, Sharon. Are you not injured? Professor Flittick asked. Xia Ran shook her head and sighed, no injuries, but we still worry too much. After all, the Black Wizard starts with Avada Kedavra, 
so we often have to fall into a passive situation. Dark magic needs to be used when necessary. Snape said calmly. He had an in-depth study of dark magic. Alas, the mysterious man was finally resurrected. Lupin sighed. Dumbledore rubbed his forehead and said, there is no way around it. After all, Voldemort can always find his enemies, but Harry is special. Looking at Dumbledore, Xia Ran felt that he might be happier because Voldemort used Harry's blood to resurrect, which deepened the close connection between the two. This was the sound of people shouting from the side yard of the woods, and it seemed that the villagers of Little Hangleton had finally arrived. Okay, let's leave here first and return to Hogwarts. We must inform Cornelius, the entire magical world, and the muggle world, Dumbledore said. By the way, take this house elf away with us. Xia Ran said. The house elf Winky fainted at the edge of the woods nearby. He quickly walked over and caught Winky. Snapped. 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 Several people operat one after another and returned to Hogwarts. When the villagers of Little Hangleton came up, they only saw white ruins burned by fire. Hogwarts, the magic school is destined not to be peaceful tonight. Originally, Harry was taken away by the house elf in the school dormitory, which surprised the students and teachers. Then Lupin came back and brought Harry back, even louder claiming that Voldemort has been resurrected, Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, and Professor Fremont are fighting to the death against Voldemort and his henchmen. All the students and teachers were shocked and looked at each other, wondering whether they should believe what Professor Lu Ping said. Snapped. Xia Ran and the others operat back to Hogwarts. The moment Dumbledore returned to school, he pointed his wand in the sky and said some strange words. He was rearranging the protective magic of Hogwarts. In front of the auditorium, there were only a few teachers standing waiting, and Harry was the only student among them. Except for Harry, all the other students were safely in the common rooms of their respective houses under the supervision of the prefects and some professors, but they were quite restless. Dumbledore, you. Hey, Minerva, you. The professors came up to meet him, and immediately noticed Professor McGonagall's unusual expression, and all of them felt nervous. Fortunately, the potion taught by Snape is no longer a serious problem. Professor McGonagall waved her hand weakly and said, Dumbledore said, Poppy the name of Madame Pomfrey, the school nurse, I hope you can take Minerva to the school hospital for a detailed examination. I hope she has no sequelae. Yes. Madame Pomfrey looked solemn and worried, supporting Professor McGonagall and quickly left the Great Hall. Professor, what happened? The mysterious man. Hagrid asked, holding an umbrella in his hand, which was actually his wand. Lu Ping smiled bitterly and said, Resurrection, the mysterious man has finally returned. Everyone's expressions changed, they instantly became solemn, and their brows all furrowed tightly. His magic is very powerful, not inferior to Dumbledore. Xia Ran sighed, anyway, Professor McGonagall and I, as well as Barty Crouch Jr. Who was present at the time, are far from Voldemort or Dumbledore. Leto's opponent. He said as he put down the house elf Winky he was holding in his arms. Several people did not express surprise. After all, Voldemort, the Dark Lord and the Mysterious Man, did not get his reputation for nothing. It mainly relied on his strong strength. As long as Voldemort returns, people will be afraid and even unwilling to accept and believe it. The reason is also because of the terrifying magic power and terrible black magic knowledge that ranks first in the wizarding world. Is this the elf who took Harry away? Ms. Hua Chi, the flying course professor, looked at Xia Ran's twinkle on the ground. Harry nodded and said, that's her. She seems to be called Winky. She is the house elf of Crouch Manor. She just wanted to take me there to resurrect Voldemort and use my blood. He stretched out an arm, and there was still blood on it. The wound had been treated, and judging from his expression, it seemed to be fine. The eyes of several teachers suddenly showed a hint of disgust. Okay, Xia Ran, please take Winky to the campus hospital first, and ask Poppy to treat this unfortunate house elf. Dumbledore said, Harry, you'd better go and let Poppy take a look. Let's sleep one night in the campus hospital. But Professor. 
Harry couldn't help but retorted. But he was interrupted by Dumbledore, who waved his hand and said, Harry, you are indeed too young to participate in what will happen next. Harry, let's go. Xia Ran picked up the unconscious Shining again and went to the school hospital as well. Harry followed Sharon dejectedly. Xia Ran said, Harry, if you want to really do your part. Professor, I am willing to try my best. I am willing to fight against Voldemort. He killed my parents and killed so many innocent people. Harry said excitedly. Listen to me, Harry. Xia Ran said, you are young. I am already thirteen years old and will soon turn fourteen. Harry wanted to say that he is not too young anymore. Each of you should not say that you are too young to participate in the great cause of fighting against Voldemort. Yeah, almost fourteen, but are you an adult, Harry? Harry was speechless. Although the wizarding world was better than the muggle world, he still had to be seventeen to reach adulthood. Xia Ran softened her tone and said, You have to know, Harry, we are fighting the Dark Lord. Even if he himself is extremely powerful, only Dumbledore among all of us can confront him head on, still he is not alone. He has an equally evil and powerful team of Death Eaters. Even creatures such as goblins, giants, vampires, and werewolves may join Voldemort's camp. Do you think you are strong enough to deal with these dangers? Don't be impulsive and take your time. Think back and answer me, I don't want to hear a false answer. Chapter, 138 Harry didn't know how to answer Sia Rant's question. He said from the bottom of his heart that he understood that he was indeed not strong enough to participate in this war. How much magic could a third-year wizard know? How many magic spells do you know about attack, defense, treatment, etc.? But Harry didn't want to be rejected by Professor Fremont, because he was eager to participate in this war and fight against Voldemort and his followers. This war will not only last for a short period of time. According to the situation of the last war, Xia Ran still has one sentence left to say. The Second Wizard War in the original time and space only lasted for three years. It took exactly three years from the end of the Goblet of Fire incident in Harry's fourth grade to the final battle at the end of seventh grade to end with Voldemort's demise. I don't know how long this time will last. In a word, the war cannot end in a short time. Harry, you, including Percy, Ron, and Hermione, are all new forces in the wizarding world. It is not your role to step up now. At that time, when you graduate, you will be able to truly deal with those vicious Death Eaters, as well as countless dark creatures, such as giants and vampires. Xia Ran said. Harry nodded silently. He was determined to study hard. Well, at least in charms, combat, and defense against the dark arts classes. He felt that he still couldn't be as proficient in all subjects as Hermione. During the conversation, the two of them had arrived at the campus hospital. The lights in the ward were bright but were going out. Professor McGonagall was lying on the bed, seemingly asleep. I gave Minerva something to calm her nerves. She has fallen asleep. Please keep your voice down. Madame Pomfrey whispered, what's the problem? Oh, yes, this unconscious elf. Xia Ran followed Madame Pomfrey's instructions and first placed Twinkle on a bed, which was for humans. The elf lay on it like a three or five year old child. Mrs. Pomfrey, this elf is called Winky. He was cast by Voldemort or someone else under the Imperious Curse, and now he is unconscious. Is there anything you can do? Xia Ran said softly. Madame Pomfrey trembled slightly, as if because she heard the three words Voldemort, she carefully checked the elf's physical condition, breathed out and said, fortunately, there is nothing serious, it's just the soul-stealing thing. Generally speaking, the after-effects of the curse will last for a period of time, but this also depends on the situation. The elf's magic resistance is better than that of our wizards, but the person who cast the spell on her is a wizard with very powerful magic power. I'm afraid she will have to lie down for three days. It will take two days to wake up. Poor elf. Madame Pomfrey finally shook her head pityingly. That's good. Xia Ran said with relief, by the way, Harry, come here and show Madame Pomfrey how the situation is. His blood was drawn by the Death Eaters. Professor, I'm fine. 
Really, I'm fine. Look. Harry said quickly, raising his hands to indicate that their injuries were healed and there was no need to be admitted to the hospital. Okay, kid, come here and lie down. I'll check whether you're okay or not. Madam Pomfrey said. Harry had no choice but to go over and lie down on the hospital bed. Professor, I have an exam tomorrow. Harry couldn't help but say. Madam Pomfrey said noncommittally, it's just an exam, your body is more important. Besides, with such a big thing happening, whether the exam will continue tomorrow is a question. Harry had nothing to say and could only accept his fate and let Madame Pomfrey check. Creek. At this time, the door to the campus hospital opened, and Lupin and Hagrid walked in one after another. Is he okay, Madame Pomfrey? Hagrid asked in his usual loud voice. Madame Pomfrey glared at Hagrid dissatisfiedly and said, Keep your voice down, the patients are already asleep. Hagrid made an apologetic gesture. He's fine but it's better to stay in the hospital for one night. Madame Pomfrey said after checking. Seeing that Harry opened his mouth to retort, she added, it's the same wherever you sleep, and such a big thing happened tonight. I'm afraid you can sleep more peacefully here. Harry thought the same thing. If he returned to the Gryffindor common room, there would definitely be countless classmates asking him what happened, and he might not be able to sleep all night. With this thought, he lay on the hospital bed with peace of mind, and sleepiness came over him in an instant. It was already very late, not to mention that he had experienced so many things, and another bottle of blood was taken out to be used as the material for Voldemort's resurrection. Even though I regained my vitality later, sleepiness still came like a tide. But at this time, he wanted to hear the conversation between several professors, so he suppressed his sleepiness. Does Dumbledore have any plans, Professor Lupin? Madame Pomfrey asked softly. Lupin replied, he said he would rush to the Ministry of Magic as soon as possible to talk to Fudge about this matter face to face, Fudge would go to his house even if he was not at the Ministry of Magic, Fudge can no longer be an ostrich. He thinks the mystery is people have never returned, so won't the mysterious man return? Obviously, judging from the current results, the mysterious man has been completely resurrected and returned. Our Ministry of Magic must inform the entire magical world to remind all wizards to be more vigilant. It is very likely that everyone who was there more than 10 or 20 years ago is in danger. The situation will happen again. Lupin sighed. He came from that era. At that time, he was a member of the Order of the Phoenix and fought against the Death Eaters. He knew what it was like to live in a precarious situation. The Death Eaters might come and kill him the next day. Or when news of the death of a relative or friend comes, it is a torturous day. It was when Xia Ran was attending Hogwarts that she received the news that her parents had died at the hands of Death Eaters. Everyone present, except Harry, had experienced the first wizarding war, so they all looked solemn and worried when they heard this. After all, no one wants to wake up and receive news that a relative or friend is dead, or when they go home, they see a dark mark floating over the manor that often means that Death Eaters have attacked the place. There must be casualties, that feeling is enough to make you collapse. Last time the mysterious man fell, we won the victory. The same is true this time. We will definitely win the war. Hagrid clenched his fists and said with confidence, Dumbledore is still there, he is the mysterious man. The only wizard to be afraid of, the only wizard who can confront the mysterious man head on. Yes, Dumbledore. A few people relaxed slightly. What they talked about later, Harry could no longer hear clearly. He was in a daze, distracted, empty, and fell into a deeper sleep. Chapter, 139 After Harry fell asleep, Madame Pomfrey returned to her room and urged several people to leave quickly so as not to disturb the patient's rest. Xia Ran, Lupin and Hagrid went to the outside of the Great Hall, leaving only Harry. Knapp was still waiting here, and the other professors had gone back to their rooms to sleep. After all, it was very late, and no matter how tense the situation was, life had to go on as usual. Snape glanced at Lupin and snorted coldly. He was an old enemy in his student days. Even though he later became an Alliance colleague, he was still disgusted when he met him. The same was true for Sirius. Only Lupin was slightly better. 
The look on his face was that he was not surprised. Perhaps he had become accustomed to this kind of treatment over the past ten years. Do you think Dumbledore's visit to the Ministry of Magic to meet with Fudge will achieve any results? Lupin asked. Xia Ran shook her head and said, I'm looking at Xian. In the original time and space, Voldemort was truly resurrected and returned, accompanied by the death of Cedric Diggory, but Cornelius Fudge still turned a blind eye. Xia Ran felt that violence was needed to deal with people like Fudge. Reasoning alone wouldn't make sense. Or, if verbal reasoning didn't make sense, physical reasoning would. He doesn't believe it and is stubborn. That's easy, just give him a beating. When his life is threatened, people like Fudge can change his tune in the next second. But Dumbledore is not this kind of person, and Fudge is confident. At this moment, Dumbledore would come, his expression solemn, and even more likely to be mixed with a trace of anger. Xia Ran could tell at a glance that Dumbledore's trip was not going well. Professor Dumbledore, how is the situation? Hagrid took a step forward and asked. Dumbledore shook his head slightly and sighed, Fudge is still stubborn and thinks that I am announcing the news of Voldemort's return just to become the Minister of Magic. That bastard. Hagrid punched his palm with his fist, his face looking very annoyed. We can only speak out in newspapers from all sides to alert the wizarding world and notify the wizards we can contact. We hope they won't think we are joking. Dumbledore sighed. What about tomorrow's exam? Continue. Snape asked. Dumbledore thought for a while and replied, Go on, Voldemort has just returned from resurrection and will not come to Hogwarts. The students should try their best to protect him. By the way, Remus, you may want to inform Sirius. In two days, I am going to hold a meeting of the Order of the Phoenix at Grimald Place. We must discuss follow-up countermeasures and arrangements. Dumbledore looked again said to Lupin. Lupin nodded. Xia Ran, how is the elf doing? Dumbledore asked. Xia Ran replied, I'm afraid I'll be comatose for two days after being hit by the Imperious Curse, but other than that, I have no other problems. You all should go and rest first. I will also write to contact well-known wizards in the magical world, hoping that they can come forward. Oh, Connolly. Dumbledore said and sighed. Hogwarts held exams as usual the next day, which made many students cry and howl. They thought that after yesterday's incident, the last two exams today could be cancelled. Hey, why are they so arrogant? They don't consider the endurance of our students. It's good to have a few days to slow down. Ron said while drinking milk listlessly. Harry had been discharged from the hospital and sat back at the Gryffindor table. He nodded in agreement, I think exams are useless, as long as we really learn the knowledge ourselves. Hermione snorted. Hey, Percy, what's wrong with you? You were dumped by someone, that Ravenclaw prefect. George asked with a smile. Percy had a distracted expression on his face. He didn't look like he was taking an exam. Percy waved his hand casually, ignoring his two naughty younger brothers. This made everyone around him stare. Usually, Percy would give a warning in the name of the president of the boys' student union. What happened today? Is it so quiet? Hey, Percy, are you stupid? Fred asked carelessly. Percy still ignored it and finished his breakfast hastily before packing up and heading to the examination room. A group of people at the table looked at each other. However, Percy found Xia ran after finishing the exam. What's the matter, Percy? How was the exam? I heard that you want to enter the Ministry of Magic. The requirements for exam results are a bit high. Xia Ran smiled, sat behind her desk and put down the pen. He was writing just now. A little something. Percy seemed a little embarrassed, and closed the door of Xia Ran's office with his backhand, and said hesitantly, Oh, that's it, Professor Fremont. At Christmas time, you, you, Professor Dumbledore and C. Professor Knapp didn't he intend to let me enter the Ministry of Magic as an undercover agent? I think. Well, I think. I may have this idea. Xia Ran stopped her smile and said in a deep voice, Have you really thought about it clearly, Percy? Being an undercover agent is not an easy task. 
If you want to gain Fudge's trust and stand in a high position in the Ministry of Magic, you must separate yourself from us. Or even turn against your family, to win Fudge's trust, do you think you can endure so much criticism and strange looks? Percy gritted his teeth, nodded and said, Professor Fremont, I have thought clearly. Yesterday Harry was captured and the mysterious man returned from the resurrection. I think we need one person to really break into the Ministry of Magic, not more or more. Those who are more or less will always be suspected, and my father and others were even severely suspected. Xia Ran stared at Percy. Undercover work is never an easy job. Even if the Undercover Ministry of Magic is not as dangerous as Snape's Undercover Death Eater organization, always walking on the edge of the cliff, the requirements for Percy are very high and the test is very high. Big. Okay, you come with me to see Dumbledore and Professor Snape, he may be able to teach you something. Xia Ran said, Snape is a perfect undercover, and the magic that an undercover should be proficient in, a clemency, Snape is a true master, even more powerful than Dumbledore. The principal's office on the eighth floor. Percy, are you sure? Dumbledore came around from behind the table. Percy said firmly, Professor, I have decided that I am willing to do my part for the Order of the Phoenix to fight Voldemort. Okay, Percy, you. Dumbledore seemed to want to say something, but finally paused and did not say anything. Instead, he looked at Snape and said, Severus, most of the back months, you try to find time to train Percy, you know, a clemency. Okay. Snape said with a smile on his gloomy face, I will train him well. Percy couldn't help but shudder. Percy, after you joined the Ministry of Magic, you found time to cut off from us, the kind of irreconcilable one. The person you will contact in the future will be one of the three of us. It is best for others not to know your identity. Dumbledore warned. Percy nodded, and from now on, he was going to take another path. Ran said, don't contact us unless necessary in the future, so as not to reveal your secret identity, especially in this situation where Voldemort is hiding in secret. Snape's expression suddenly changed. Chapter 140 Severus Dumbledore's eyes changed slightly. Snape was silent and nodded slightly. Percy looked confused, but Xia Ran reacted immediately, especially Snape's slight shaking of his left hand, which was the location of his dark mark. Did Voldemort summon his Death Eaters? Xia Ran secretly thought. Snape used to be a Death Eater, and later negotiated with Dumbledore to continue to hide among the Death Eaters as a spy. If Voldemort summoned as a Death Eater, Snape would definitely feel it, after all, he still had the dark mark on his body, and he had to rush to the place where Voldemort held the meeting. However, what was slightly beyond Xia Rant's expectation was that shortly after Voldemort was resurrected in the original time and space, he summoned the Death Eaters through Wormtail's dark mark. This time, he failed to pass through Barty Crouch Jr. S. Dark Mark The mark informed all Death Eaters that their Dark Lord was back. Instead, it was only now that the Dark Mark was activated to inform all Death Eaters or former Death Eaters that their leader was back. Severus Dumbledore looked at Snape worriedly and said, You know what I am going to tell you to do. If you are okay with it. If you are ready. No problem. Snape replied, but his face was obviously paler and gloomier than usual, and his cold black eyes shone with a strange light. Well, good luck to you, said Dumbledore, with a worried look on his face as he watched Snape leave the headmaster's office through the spiral staircase. Xia Ran watched Snape leave with emotion in her eyes. Percy was still confused and said, Professor, then I. You may have to wait for a while, but Professor Snape will concentrate on teaching you. I hope you will study well with Professor Snape. He knows a lot of knowledge. Dumbledore said softly, There is no one else except the four of us in this matter. Don't tell anyone except yourself, including Arthur and Molly. Um, okay. Okay, Percy replied. Okay, let's go down. I think all students should know a fact. I must tell them. Dumbledore said and walked out of the principal's office first. Let's go. Sharon said, and Percy followed Dumbledore to the Great Hall. At this time, the auditorium was almost full of people. All the exams were completed. 
the students laughed wildly and seemed particularly relaxed. The professors were worried about other things, not to mention that this was not a bad thing. The exams were completed. Well, and another major event happened in the wizarding world, Voldemort was truly resurrected and made a comeback. Let them have fun and relax for a while. It doesn't matter, so let the students go. The professors looked solemn and lowered their voices to whisper from time to time. Xia Ran sat down in her seat. On one side, Professor Lupin was still discussing with Professor Flittick in a low voice, with worried expressions on their faces. On the other side was Professor Trelawney. Her frown also said a lot. Dumbledore. Vicious accusation. Professor Trelawney seemed to be mumbling something, but Xia Ran didn't hear it clearly. What's wrong, Professor Trelawney? So Xia Ran asked directly. Oh, it's nothing. Professor Trelawney said in an airy voice, while tugging on her shawl and the many strings of shining beads. She seemed to be unable to hold it in any more, and couldn't help but whisper, Dumbledore Leto, that person. I admit that he is the strongest white wizard today and is respected by many people, but can't he respect me? Oh, I understand, he must think that I did not inherit my great-grandmother's legacy talent, these rumors have been spread for years by people who are jealous of me. Um, really? Xia Ran smiled awkwardly. Speaking of which, he believed Professor Trelawney's predictions. After all, she did make many predictions in the original time and space. Dumbledore doesn't believe in divination. I've always known this. When I was interviewed at the Pig's Head Bar, you know, Xia Ran, I didn't have a job at that time and my funds were tight. Of course I wouldn't recommend the Pig's Head Bar to anyone else. Go, there are bedbugs, I can tell, he doesn't like divination. Professor Trelawney still muttered in a low voice, but he was still very polite and came to visit me in the hotel in person, maybe now he is too lazy to pretend like this anymore. The third I never pays attention to things in the human world. That is not an area worthy of our energy. Professor Trelawney said with mock disdain. Xia Ran knew what happened when Professor Trelawney was interviewing for the divination class. In the Pig's Head Bar, a hotel owned by Dumbledore's brother Aberforth, Professor Trelawney made the most famous move in the wizarding world at that time. The prophecy, the prophecy about Harry and Voldemort, was overheard by Snape, which also led to the subsequent deaths of the Potters and Snape's change of heart and willingness to be an undercover agent. It can be said that that prophecy was the beginning of the current situation in the magic world. Dumbledore didn't want me to leave Hogwarts. I wanted to go home during the holidays, but Dumbledore rejected him directly. I originally just informed him and didn't ask for his opinion. He how could? Professor Trelawney whispered angrily. On this point, Xia Ran was on Dumbledore's side. The famous prophecy was made by Professor Trelawney and informed to Dumbledore. This was a fact that even Voldemort knew. What Voldemort once knew from Snape was only the first half of the prophecy, so after Voldemort fell last time, he knew that he had made a mistake, and he had been eager to hear the complete prophecy. In the original time and space, he even went into hibernation for a year for this purpose, and in turn used the bond between Harry and him to mislead Harry. Sneak into the Department of Mysteries of the Ministry of Magic, and help him steal the prophecy ball. The prophecy ball can only be taken out of the Department of Mysteries by those who are related to the prophecy. But that was Professor Trelawney's helpless move because he never left Hogwarts. After all, there were only two people who knew the prophecy, Snape only overheard half of the prophecy, one was the one who made the prophecy. People, Professor Trelawney, one is the person who listens to the prophecy, Dumbledore, and the prophecy ball that records the prophecy. He didn't want to deal with Dumbledore directly so early, and he couldn't get into Hogwarts for the time being. So if he wanted to know the complete prophecy, the only way left was to use the prophecy ball in the Department of Mysteries of the Ministry of Magic. But if Professor Trelawney takes the initiative to leave Hogwarts, Voldemort will never let go of such a golden opportunity. Professor Trelawney will encounter countless dangers, and she will probably not be able to come back. Dumbledore's disapproval of her leaving school was actually due to Professor Sybil Trelawney's consideration, and not due to distrust of prophecies or discrimination against divination. Chapter, 141 Xia Ran said softly, 
Dumbledore has his own considerations. Professor Trelawney, I think it's best for you not to leave Hogwarts, especially now that the mysterious man is back. I know. Professor Trelawney seemed a little restless. Tell me, Sharon, will the Dark Lord break into Hogwarts? Professor Trelawney asked secretly. Siaran glanced at the divination professor in surprise and asked, Why do you ask that? Well. You may not know that I made a prophecy about that child. Professor Trelawney pointed to Harry at the Gryffindor table, and the Dark Lord, to be honest, there's nothing shameful about it, who's not afraid of the Dark Lord. I'm a little worried. Siaran knew the prophecy and said, as long as Dumbledore doesn't die and doesn't leave Hogwarts, the mysterious man will certainly not be able to break into Hogwarts. After all, Dumbledore is the only contemporary person who can compete with the mysterious man. A head-to-head -head confrontation with the legendary wizard. Xia Ran said with some regret. In the magic world, what matters in the end is strength. Without the strength that tops the magic world, how could Dumbledore have such prestige now? Without the top level of magic power and magical knowledge, how could Voldemort be followed by so many dark wizards and feared by so many wizards? Although he already possesses level 5 advanced magic power and has considerable magical knowledge, he is still far behind the two legendary wizards. I think it's because of this that Dumbledore doesn't agree with you leaving Hogwarts. Xia Ran added at the end. In fact, this is the fact. Professor Trelawney seemed to feel a little better and suddenly said, Hey, the owl is here. At this time, countless owls flew into the auditorium, delivering the latest issue of the Daily Prophet. Xia Ran also opened a newspaper and read it. Liar, Albus Dumbledore. Liar, Harry Potter. This is the title of the new issue of Daily Prophet. Xia Ran frowned slightly after reading it, but she had already expected it. After all, Dumbledore had explained Fudge's attitude last night and this morning and refused to believe that Voldemort had returned. Facts, then he ordered the Daily Prophet. It is also very normal to slander Dumbledore. But this time, Harry was still involved, which made Xia ran a little unexpected. According to reliable current reports and an official from the Ministry of Magic who did not want to reveal his name, in the early hours of this morning, our famous Dumbledore once again approached the Ministry of Magic. Hoping that the Ministry of Magic would meet Dumbledore's personal request, to inform the magic news of the return of the mysterious man from the world. But we all know that the mysterious man has died long ago. He died more than ten years ago, leaving only a lightning scar on Harry Potter's forehead. How can a dead person come back? Did Dumbledore hope that you know who would return to reboost his personal prestige? Professor Lu Ping on the side read softly, his expression full of anger. Damn fudge. He cursed under his breath. You haven't finished reading it yet. There are also things related to Harry later. Xia Ran said, and he finished scanning the newspaper hastily. Lupin skipped over Dumbledore's page and looked back. According to the information from the Ministry of Magic official, the news about the mysterious man's resurrection seems to have come from Harry Potter, yes, our famous savior star, dot. He seems to like this title very much, and he often calls himself the De Savior Star, in school to win the sympathy of many little witches. For details, please refer to page 4, Is Harry Potter a talker or a romantic prince? I saw it with my own eyes. Yes, that's right, our Savior witnessed and participated in the mysterious man's resurrection ceremony, and finally returned to Hogwarts and scathed. It ended with a sarcastic expression. If he really was a mysterious person, would he be so kind? Oh, Harry Potter, thank you for your help in resurrecting me. To thank you, I will give you a thousand gold galleons and personally send you back to Hogwarts. I hope we have a good life. Friendship. Is this something that a mysterious person can do? I believe that each of us has a deep understanding of how terrifying and terrifying that person who cannot even be named was. I believe that each of us has a deep understanding of it. Let me ask, a person who has just completed his third grade studies how could the little wizard escape from the mysterious man? Is it true that as I said before, the mysterious man personally escorted Harry Potter back to Hogwarts? Ministry of Magic officials revealed that this was all to cater to Dumbledore's wishes. Harry Potter, the big talker, 
please allow me to call him, knew how to cater to the teacher's preferences. In order to gain Dumbledore's favor, he favored, he invited the house elves to perform a play to completely confirm Dumbledore's information, or rumors. According to a respected wizard, our savior Harry Potter has always been in cahoots with the house elves, so he was not surprised at all that he could invite the house elves to perform with him. Sia Ran thinks that this wizard is probably Lucius Malfoy. Each of us is full of wisdom, at least not stupid, I believe that each of us can tell whether the words of Albus Dumbledore and Harry Potter are true. Rumors stop with the wise, they still hope that we will be frightened by the news about the mysterious person, and that we will surrender to them and obey their orders. This is an absolutely impossible wishful thinking. Absurd. Lupin slapped the newspaper on the table, isn't it stupid? Anyone who believes it is a fool. Sia Ran smiled and said, fortunately, I didn't completely accuse Dumbledore of evil, saying that he is the third generation Dark Lord. Ha! Lupin sneered, I think Fudge has this idea, but he doesn't dare to really push Dumbledore too far. He knows that we are tolerant like this to deal with Voldemort, but if he does this. Judging from the look on Lupin's face, he wished Fudge would do this. After all, he was Sirius's best friend and he still had the rebellious gene in his heart. Sia Ran always believed that at this moment, Fudge would step down directly and replace an order member with the position of Minister of Magic. Even if there would be controversy, it would still be better than Fudge's behavior of constantly holding back. However, Dumbledore did not agree with his proposal, so he had no choice but to give up. After all, Dumbledore still had to come forward in person for this kind of thing. Liar Dumbledore. Is the Daily Prophet kidding? Are you talking about the big talker Harry Potter? We don't know what kind of person he is. This is just a rumor. Someone was filled with indignation. But who knows this? No one has seen it with their own eyes. What if it is really just? You know. Some people also expressed doubts. The teachers and students in the auditorium were talking a lot. It was not until Dumbledore stood up and knocked on the tableware that the sound spread throughout the auditorium, interrupting everyone's discussions. Everyone's eyes were focused on Dumbledore. Chapter, 142 Another year, it's over. Dumbledore said, looking at everyone. The auditorium had fallen silent, and everyone's eyes were on Dumbledore. Xia Ran also put down his knife and fork, but he was thinking about other things. The next year in the original time and space was Harry's fourth year, of course, it is still the same now, with the Triwizard Tournament. This was a grand event in the European magic world in ancient times. The three major magic schools in Britain, Germany and France, Hogwarts, Durmstrang and Bosbatons, will gather in a certain place to hold a grand event. The contestants are students from the three major magic schools. These people are called warriors and are the objects of admiration and admiration by their classmates. The way to select warriors is the Goblet of Fire, which is a symbol of the major event of the Triwizard Tournament. Needless to say, Xia Ran can be 100% sure that the Goblet of Fire must contain a lot of force points. If I could touch the Goblet of Fire once. Xia Ran's thoughts were distracted, but he was not sure that now that Voldemort had been resurrected a year earlier, would the Triwizard Tournament be held as scheduled? According to the current temper of the Ministry of Magic. There is no doubt that the Quidditch World Cup during this summer vacation and the Triwizard Tournament in the next school year will continue to be held to illustrate the peace and prosperity of the magical world. Although Dumbledore's prestige is high, although powerful, he is only the principal of a magic school after all, not the Minister of the Ministry of Magic, the top leader of this official organization. Probably it can still be held as scheduled, right? Dumbledore was still speaking, these are very difficult times. He stopped talking and looked at the Gryffindor table. Harry knew that Dumbledore was looking at him, because he and the principal looked at each other, and he had a premonition of what the principal was going to say next. We all know that last night, Harry Potter was taken away by a house elf. That elf was controlled by others and used the Imperius curse. Many classmates may know this spell. Dumbledore said, a black magic spell specifically used to control other people. It is listed as one of the three unforgivable curses by the Ministry of Magic. And that person is the one we all know. 
Everyone stared at Dumbledore blankly. Harry Potter was taken away by the elves ordered by Voldemort. Dumbledore decisively dropped a bomb, which is also true. There was a nervous murmur in the auditorium, and everyone stared at Dumbledore in horror and disbelief. Only a small group of people seemed calm. All the teachers, professors, and a small number of Gryffindor students such as Harry, Ron, and Hermione looked at the others and murmured quietly but gradually fell silent. Sia Ran was listening to Dumbledore's speech while thinking about his own affairs and plans for the future. The Ministry of Magic doesn't want me to tell you this. Just like the newspaper you got, this news has been labeled as heresy by the Ministry of Magic. Dumbledore continued, some students, including their parents, may be suspicious of me. They were shocked by what I did, either because they couldn't believe that Voldemort was really back, or because they thought I shouldn't make this public and tell everyone so as not to cause panic in the wizarding world. After all, people like you the little wizards are still too young, however, I believe it is always better to tell the truth than to lie. If we try to say that Harry was taken away as an accident of his own making, or blame it on me the assignment is too foolish, and it is also an insult to my own intelligence. Everyone knew that Dumbledore was referring to the Ministry of Magic. However, the Ministry of Magic seems to have merit, because many students are really scared and shocked. After all, Dumbledore really publicly announced that Voldemort was resurrected. That is the Dark Lord that almost everyone fears. Of course, many Slytherin students seemed a little excited. For example, Harry saw Draco Malfoy whispering to his two followers, Crab and Goyle. Harry instantly felt a burst of anger welling up in his heart, and he even forced himself to turn his gaze to Dumbledore. In light of what is happening now, in light of Voldemort's return from the dead, connections and understanding within the wizarding world are more important than ever. Said Dumbledore. Dumbledore looked at the Hufflepuff table, then at Ravenclaw, and finally at Gryffindor and Slytherin. Most of the Gryffindor students were excited and proud, puffing up their chests, and Slytherin. Lynn's students were just the opposite. Many young wizards were even a little scared, as if they thought Dumbledore would say some harsh words. Everyone in this hall. Dumbledore said, his eyes finally resting on the Slytherin classmates, as long as you are willing to unite, you are welcome at any time. Let me say it again to all of you, in view of Voldemort's resurrection, we will only be strong if we are united. If we are divided, we will be vulnerable, Voldemort's methods of creating conflict and hostility are very clever. Only by showing the same unbreakable friendship and trust can we fight against him to the end. As long as we have the same goal, open minds, and differences in habits and language will not be an obstacle to our friendship. I believe, and I sometimes wish I was mistaken, I believe that we are all going to face dark and difficult times. Some of you in this hall have suffered at the hands of Lord Voldemort, and many of your families they were all torn apart. Please remember those who died because of Voldemort, those innocent, friendly people, whether wizards or muggles, they may have just seen Voldemort, or even done nothing, and were killed by Voldemort and suffered hardships. Imaginary Doom Please always remember those who tragically lost their lives. After the exam, without waiting for the results to come out, the students took the Hogwarts Express and all left Hogwarts in one trip. Harry had tried to propose going to Twelve, Grimald Place during the summer vacation to live with his godfather Sirius, but in the end he was unable to do so due to Dumbledore's objections. Harry, you must go back to your aunt and uncle's house. You must go back there until you are an adult. Dumbledore said in an irrefutable tone. Harry finally had to board the Hogwarts Express in despair. Thinking about the changes in the magical world in the next two or three months, he will know nothing about it. And may not even receive a letter, it will be difficult for the Dursley family to allow him to maintain contact with the magical world, Aha Living became more and more depressed. However, the professors had no time to take care of this child's temper. At noon the day after seeing off the Hogwarts students, members of the Order of the Phoenix once again gathered at No. 12, Grimald Place. Chapter, 143. As soon as Xia Ran rang the doorbell, Lupin opened the door for him, stepped into Black's old house, and heard the sound of arguing coming from the kitchen. Dumbledore, I must. Sirius' voice sounded a little annoyed. I know, Sirius, I know what you are going to say, 
but I also have to tell you that Harry must go back to his aunt and uncle's house every year before he reaches adulthood. This is because of a blood connection. Sirius, although you are Harry's godfather and care about Harry very much, after all, you do not have the same blood as Lily. Dumbledore's voice was calm and calm. Lupin spread his hands and said with a wry smile, Harry wanted to come here during the summer vacation, but Dumbledore refused. Sirius was very angry when he knew the news. Sirius is reckless. Harry should really go back to his aunt and uncle's house. Sia Ran said. When Voldemort found the Potter family more than ten years ago because of Professor Trelawney's prophecy, Lily Potter the magic she cast could protect her child. Harry Potter, but only if Harry stayed in a place he could call home and share the same bloodline as Lily and Harry. Naturally, it can only be the home of Harry's aunt and uncle. After all, his aunt is his mother's biological sister, Harry's aunt Petunia Desley, and his cousin Dudley Desley. They all share the same blood as Harry and his mother Lily Potter, which is the source of the magic that Lily Potter casts. However, very few people know this. So far, only Dumbledore, Snape, and Sia Ran know about it. Sia Ran only learned about this because he knew the plot of the Harry Potter world. Dumbledore and Snape didn't even know he knew this. Harry may be able to come to Twelve, Grimald Place at the end of the summer vacation, or go to the Burrow or somewhere else, but he must go back to the Desleys to ensure that Lily Potter's magic is still effective necessary means. Especially now that Voldemort has been completely resurrected and the danger Harry faces has surged to its peak in an instant. But. Dumbledore, Harry is willing. I am also happy for Harry to come here. I am his godfather and I have the responsibility. Sirius continued to talk. Dumbledore said calmly, I know, Sirius, you are Harry's godfather and Harry's relative, but after all, Harry's aunt has the same blood as Harry. This is an irrefutable fact. But don't you know? They treated Harry very badly, very, very badly. Sirius shouted loudly, if the Desleys were very nice to Harry, even if they were just average, then I wouldn't be so angry. But it's obvious that the Desleys don't treat Harry as their own family member, and have a very bad attitude. This is Harry's home, a place where he can be happy, free and comfortable. After he reaches the age of seventeen, of course he can come here and live here forever, but he must return to the Desleys before he reaches the age of majority. Dumbledore finally ended the topic and said, Okay, this is there is no need to continue to struggle with the matter. Harry will at least have enough food and clothing there, and there will still be no problems in his life, otherwise he would not recognize it as his home. Sirius seemed to want to say something more, but Dumbledore had already sat down on his seat, and most of the others had also taken their seats. Sia Ran was the latest to arrive. Mrs. Weasley and the elf creature brought several bottles of butterbeer, each with a glass in front of them. The elf creature followed and exited the kitchen, while Mrs. Weasley sat down next to her husband. Okay, let's have a meeting, Dumbledore said. Sitting at the long table were more than a dozen adult wizards, including Dumbledore, the leader of the Order of the Phoenix, and Alastair Moody. The second in command, as well as Mr. and Mrs. Weasley, Sirius, Lupin, Kingsley, Don Max, Mundungus, Professor McGonagall, Snape and others, including Sia Ran. There were also many members of the Order who were not present. Albus. Moody glanced at Dumbledore. Voldemort. Has indeed been resurrected. Dumbledore said solemnly. After his resurrection, Minerva, Sharon, and Remus, together with Voldemort and his loyal followers, the Death Eaters, Barty Crouch Jr. And a big snake had a fierce fight, but they eventually escaped, without much success. Everyone had known the news for a long time, so they all acted very calmly. He has just been resurrected and can he fight with you? Kingsley frowned. Yes, his resurrection was successful, Dumbledore said. He used Harry's blood, and his relationship with Harry is somewhat special. Special? Sirius asked, what's the situation? We'll talk about this later, Dumbledore said. Shacklebolt, what's the current situation at the Ministry of Magic? Kingsley Shacklebolt replied, Fudge has strictly ordered the Ministry to discuss any information about the mysterious man, and no one is allowed to stand up to support you. 
Anyone who supports you will be directly expelled from the Ministry of Magic by Fudge. He's crazy. Hagrid slammed the table and said angrily. Yes, you are right, Hagrid, he is indeed crazy. Kingsley shrugged. We must be careful in the Ministry now and not show any tendency to support Dumbledore, otherwise we don't know who will report. We can't confirm everyone's details and thoughts, not to mention that the Ministry of Magic is already there are countless Death Eaters, Arthur Weasley said tiredly. Thank you for your hard work. Dumbledore also smiled bitterly, I didn't expect Fudge to be so afraid of me. Sirius wanted to say something, looked at Xia Ran, and finally gave up. But it's not without gain. At least Scrimgeer has been reporting to Fudge, hoping to recruit more Aurors to deal with the upcoming crisis. Fudge is still considering it. I'm going to add fuel to the fire and get Fudge to agree. Scrimgeer's request, said Kingsley. Xia Ran knew that this person was now the director of the Auror Office of the Ministry of Magic. When Fudge stepped down in the original time and space, it was Scrimgeer who took over the post of Minister of Magic. Although he had a dispute with Dumbledore, he was still fighting against Voldemort. In terms of a big stance, the two of them are completely consistent, but the way they choose and the means they use to win confidently are different. But Scrimgeer was eventually captured by Voldemort and forced to question Harry Potter's whereabouts. In the end, Scrimgeer did not leak the secret until his death. From a certain perspective, Scrimgeer was worthy of trust. Xia Ran thought of the Quidditch World Cup incident during the summer vacation in the original time and space again, so she asked, by the way, what is the opinion of the Ministry of Magic on the Quidditch World Cup? Kingsley, Tonks, and Arthur all looked at each other with helpless smiles. Chapter, 144 Hey, Xia Ran, don't you know Fudge's attitude? Tonks said depressedly, in Fudge's view, the Quidditch World Cup must of course be held as usual, so that it can show that everything in the magical world is peaceful and peaceful. And no mysterious person comes back. Xia Ran shook her head and said, Fudge is playing with fire. It's easy to go wrong, especially with so many wizards from all over the world gathered together. If Voldemort is causing trouble in secret, who will be responsible when something goes wrong? Fudge will definitely be the first to shirk responsibility. Looking for a scapegoat to take the blame. But he is now the Minister of Magic. Mr. Weasley said helplessly, also, Ludo Bagman. He is the director of the sports department of the Ministry of Magic, and he is also the direct leader of the Quidditch World Cup. Too much effort has been put into promoting the World Cup to be held here, and he will never allow the World Cup to stop. In other words, the senior officials of the Ministry of Magic basically believe that the Quidditch World Cup should continue to be held. Xia Ran said. That's more or less the case. Kingsley shrugged and said, even Scrimgeer would not object to the Quidditch World Cup being held. You know, it will bring a lot of revenue to the Ministry of Magic. Have they fallen into the eyes of money? Sirius said dissatisfiedly, for this reason, they ignored and ignored the dangers lurking in the dark. Lupin smiled bitterly and said, well, Sirius, you have to know that there are still many people in this world who worry about money. He himself is one of them. Although this year has been much easier because he has become a professor at Hogwarts, he still vividly remembers the difficult life of the previous ten years. It seems like we have to enter the Quidditch World Cup to do some protection, just in case. Professor McGonagall said. She actually wanted to take a look at the Quidditch World Cup. After all, she liked Quidditch very much. Dicky, this sport. Dumbledore thought for a moment and said, then let's do it, Kingsley, Tonks, Arthur, Remus, Sirius, Sharon, and Minerva, when the Quidditch World Cup is held. You enter the venue as spectators, and try to work in groups of two or three to avoid Death Eaters actually appearing. Okay. Several people responded. By the way, Dumbledore, Bill and Charlie may all come back this time, and they also want to join the Order of the Phoenix. Mr. Weasley said. Dumbledore smiled and said, Of course, you are welcome at any time. Only with more like-minded people can we deal with Voldemort better. Charlie is coming back. Hagrid was also overjoyed and said, I want to ask him how he feels about raising dragons in Romania. Those are all cute creatures. I like them very much. 
and Norbert has been away from me for two years. Too much. Hagrid had a look full of emotion and nostalgia, while Norbert was a dragon he once raised. He won it in a bet with a wizard in the hog's head bar, and was later picked up by Charlie Weasley and brought to Romania to be raised. Snape suddenly said, By the way, Dumbledore, what about the Triwizard Tournament? Bosbatons and Durmstrang are still determined to continue holding this event. Dumbledore said with a headache. Triwizard Tournament. A group of people were shocked. Sirius quickly said, Triwizard Tournament. Dumbledore, you mean Triwizard Tournament? That ancient event? Yes. This time it was Kingsley who answered. As far as I know, the Department of Magical Sports and Sports in the Ministry, in addition to preparing for the Quidditch World Cup, is mainly responsible for promoting the restoration of the Triwizard Tournament. Of course, yes, there is also the Department of International Magical Cooperation, which also plays a big role in this. Originally, we have agreed to hold the Triwizard Tournament at Hogwarts, but now that something like this has happened, we are not willing to have the teachers and students of Bosbatons and Durmstrang come all the way. There may be some serious problems, and the mysterious man probably won't let go of such an opportunity. Professor McGonagall said gloomily. Seeing the surprised expressions of Xia Ran, Lu Ping and Hagrid, Lu Ping and Hagrid had no understanding at all, so they looked surprised. Although Xia Ran knew that the Triwizard Tournament would be held in the next school year, he did not expect that the discussions were almost complete by now. He thought it would remain on paper and would be decided during the summer vacation. Dumbledore specifically explained, only the deans of the four houses and I know about this matter, and other teachers were not notified until the matter was completely determined. The Triwizard Tournament is held once every five years. Although it was stopped due to too many deaths, it is really exciting to hold it again after several centuries. If I were still studying at Hogwarts, I would have how great. Sirius sighed, with a very envious look on his face, it would be great if I could become a Hogwarts warrior. Stop it, Sirius, we don't want to continue holding the Triwizard Tournament. Professor McGonagall said annoyed. Why not hold it? Sirius said, is it possible for Voldemort to come to Hogwarts to take action? Don't be kidding, Dumbledore is here, he will never break into Hogwarts. And he still has the fact that he has not publicly announced his return shows that he actually has other plans and is happy to see the fight between the Ministry of Magic represented by Fudge and us. He will never easily stand in front of the stage and provide the best evidence for our claims. Ignorance. Snape said with a cold smile. What did you say, Snotlout? Sirius suddenly became furious and stood up. Okay, stop arguing and sit down. Dumbledore said, his head hurt even more, Sirius, sit down Severus, please be quiet for a while. Sirius stared at Snape and slowly sat on the chair. Snape had a sneer on his face, but he didn't speak again. No one else spoke. Everyone knew about the entanglement between the two and it couldn't be resolved, even Dumbledore couldn't resolve it, so they were unwilling to wade into this muddy water. Xia Ran said thoughtfully, in other words, the relevant parties of the Triwizard Tournament, Bosbatons and Durmstrang agree. The Department of International Magical Cooperation and the Department of Magical Sports of the Ministry of Magic also agree, and even we Hua Hua agree. Gwartz agreed with his position at the beginning, but now he has changed his position. In general, we are the only ones at Hogwarts who oppose it now. That's why it's so difficult. Professor McGonagall said, because we all agreed at the beginning, and now we suddenly disagree. The reason is naturally that the mysterious man has been resurrected, but. She smiled bitterly and said, others no one wants to believe it. Alas, we can only take it one step at a time. Dumbledore sighed. The Triwizard Tournament will continue to be held, but by then we must strengthen the defense force of Hogwarts. Chapter, 145 As Dumbledore spoke, he looked at several members of the Order of the Phoenix in the kitchen conference room and said, Sirius, Mundungus, and Alastor, I may ask you to stay at Hogwarts when the time comes. Nearby, in the name of watching the Triwizard Tournament. Kingsley, if the Ministry of Magic can send some people. Kingsley nodded immediately and said, I know, Dumbledore, I will try my best to fight for fudge. Amelia will agree to my request, 
she believes in our message and is willing to believe that the mysterious man has returned. If she comes forward, it is impossible for Fudge to disagree. After all, the Aura Office is a subordinate department of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement commanded by Amelia, and she is the direct leader. After a pause, Kingsley continued, however, maybe the number of Aurors that Fudge will finally agree to is not too many, at most three or five. It would be a pleasure to have me, said Dumbledore. Amelia Bones is the director of the Magical Law Enforcement Department of the Ministry of Magic and Sia Rant's former boss. She is a wizard with a very sense of justice and courage. She is also from Hufflepuff like Sia Ran. By the way, news about Voldemort. After the meeting of the Order of the Phoenix, Sia Ran returned to Fremont Manor. He was thinking about how to improve his magic power. The situation was now turbulent and Voldemort had returned. Naturally, the higher the level of magic power, the safer it would be. If his the magic power was stronger than Voldemort's, so what else did he need to be afraid of? Unfortunately, it is too difficult to improve the level of magic. Many people are stuck at level 3 for their entire lives, and even level 4 is not available. Xia Ran can have level 5 advanced magic, which is better than 99% of those in the magic world. There are many wizards who can compete with him, or better than him. In the entire magic world, whether white wizards or black wizards, there are never more than 50 in total. This is still an exaggeration. However, this afternoon Xia Ran received a message from Sirius through the fireplace flu network, and she felt angry. Have you read today's Daily Prophet, Xia Ran? Sirius asked with a particularly gloomy look as his head appeared in the green fireworks. Xia Ran came over and asked, No, what's wrong? Because the Daily Prophet has been completely controlled by the Ministry of Magic and has become a mouthpiece of the Ministry of Magic, he almost doesn't read the Daily Prophet now. Reading a lot of false news actually affects his mood. I have a copy here, take a look. Sirius threw out a copy of the latest Daily Prophet and said viciously and dissatisfiedly, Fudge is such an idiot. If he dares to stand in front of me, I will definitely give him a hard blow as soon as possible and make him kneel down and surrender, let him understand what it means to keep a secret. Xia Ran was surprised. He knew that Sirius was disgusted with Fudge. Almost all members of the Order of the Phoenix were disgusted with Fudge and turned a blind eye to the facts that were happening. Anyone who came to him would be disgusted and disgusted. But this is the first time to this extent. He was a little curious about what the Daily Prophet said. Shocked. Hogwarts blatantly hires ferocious werewolves as professors. Is this a distortion of morality? Or is it the loss of humanity? Xia Ran understood everything after just reading the title. It turned out that it was Fudge who signaled the Daily Prophet to make Lupin's identity completely public. How could a werewolf be treated well in the magical world? In particular, Lupin is a professor who teaches and educates people. He often comes into contact with young wizards who go to school. Even if Dumbledore, other professors, and some students stand up to support Lupin and say that he is a competent professor, many students' parents do not think so. Many parents cannot rest assured that a werewolf serves as their child's teacher. Even though many people know that the werewolf Lupin is harmless, he is not a truly vicious werewolf like the werewolf leader Fenrir Greyback. It's no wonder other people are involved. Lupin's head appeared next to Sirius, and he smiled bitterly, I understand the concerns of those parents. If my child's teacher was a werewolf, I might not be worried, so I understand them. There is always a way. We already have wolfsbane potion, right? It can suppress the ferocious habits of werewolves after transformation. Professor Snape is also researching more effective potions. Xia Ran said with relief. That snot-nosed guy. Humph. Sirius snorted disdainfully. Xia Ran said, Professor Snape is the truly top potions master in today's magic world. He told me earlier that he may have some ideas, but there have been too many things during this period, which has delayed the research. Really? I'll have to thank Severus again next time we meet. Lupin chuckled. Too many things. He didn't take it to heart at all. It was just an excuse. Sirius said disdainfully. Xia Ran can testify to this. 
Snape is indeed very busy. He not only has to deal with the Death Eater gathering held by Voldemort, but also discusses with Dumbledore how to trick Voldemort, this is something they thought only they knew. But Sia Ran knew Snape's identity as a spy and had guessed a lot from his whereabouts. In addition, Snape also had to train and teach Percy. He really couldn't spare any extra time in the past two months. Do research. Sirius had indeed wronged Snape. Professor Snape may have some results in two months if he has time. Sia Ran said for Snape. I hope. Loop inside, I'm going to live here temporarily with Sirius. I don't have anywhere to go, and I have to find another job. Alas, being a werewolf is sometimes. I can't say it's discriminatory. After all, werewolves are indeed dangerous, and they are uncontrollable dangers. How? Seeing Xia Rant's confused face, Lu Ping explained, I have resigned to Dumbledore. I can't make it difficult for him, especially when Fudge is vigorously smearing Dumbledore. I can't give Fudge an excuse. You can accuse Dumbledore. Xia Ran sighed slightly in her heart. The werewolf would transform every full moon and become a ferocious wolf. When it encounters people, it will bite and attack. This is indeed a time bomb. But to be honest, most of the werewolves in the magical world did not want to become werewolves. Almost all of them became werewolves like Lupin, who was bitten by another werewolf. As a result, they were ostracized by the magical world and had to seek life in the dark shadows. Sometimes a werewolf hides his identity and gets a good job, but the transformation once a month cannot be stopped. Over time, clues will always be discovered, and then he can only resign and leave, just like Lupin now as has been done many times before. But are werewolves like Lupin bad people? The answer is obviously no. There are many such werewolves. They themselves are victims in the end, they become the objects of contempt and rejection by the magic world. They need to control themselves and not hurt others. Xia Ran hopes that Snape's potion research will produce results as soon as possible. Chapter 146 I will find time to ask Professor Snape later to see how the research on pharmaceuticals in this area is progressing. What if there is any breakthrough progress during this period? Xia Ran chuckled. Although his relationship with Snape could only be regarded as acceptable, Snape borrowed the Resurrection Stone a few months ago and took three or four months to return it to him. This led to how much Snape was willing to give him. To save face, not to mention that studying this kind of potion would be very beneficial to the people. For Snape himself, it was also a matter of fame and fortune, but he was not willing to waste time on it. When Lupin was a student, he almost killed Snape when he transformed into a wolf, it was Sirius who deliberately guided Snape, causing Snape to get into the Shrieking Shack when Lupin transformed. That was the place Dumbledore used specifically to transform Lupin into a werewolf, luckily Harry's father, James Potter, rescued Snape in time, which was a great shame for Snape. After all, James Potter is Snape's love rival, and both of them are suitors of Lily Evans. Of course, Xia Ran guessed that it was also for this reason that when Sirius was wrongly accused of betraying the Potter family by Peter Pettigrew more than ten years ago, no one expressed any surprise or disbelief. Who is Sirius? Is he actually such a person who can be said to act wantonly? After all, Sirius's plan when he was a student was actually to borrow Lupin's knife to kill Snape. Instead, James Potter noticed something was wrong in time. As for what Lupin was thinking, no one knows, but at least he did not express much doubt more than ten years ago. Perhaps he also believed that there was indeed a possibility that Sirius would defect to Voldemort. The same is true for Dumbledore and others. You know, after Lupin was bitten by the werewolf leader Fenrir Greyback when he was a child and turned into a werewolf, he became a little inferior or sensitive. It is conceivable that Dumbledore was willing to accept him to study at Hogwarts. Lupin was so grateful and willing to die for Dumbledore, but if he caused a murder in school, what would Dumbledore and other professors and teachers think? Earlier, the young Voldemort released a basilisk, killing Myrtle in the bathroom, and eventually it was Hagrid who was framed as a pet spider raised by Hagrid. Even so, Hagrid was still blamed by Hogg. Watts was expelled. If it weren't for Dumbledore's protection, and Hagrid indeed had no possibility or motive to kill someone, 
at the time, people thought the perpetrator was a spider, he would probably be imprisoned in Azkaban prison. If Sirius's plan succeeds, then Lupin will kill Snape himself. He will be expelled from Hogwarts and imprisoned in Azkaban prison. This is 100% certain. In the end, Lupin was still friends with Sirius. Sia Ran guessed that it was mainly James Potter who played a role in preventing this incident from actually happening and easing Lupin's mood. However, these things can only be guessed secretly. There is no need to speak out openly to destroy the atmosphere of unity in the Order of the Phoenix, especially when Lupin himself has long since stopped pursuing them. Thank you, Sia Ran. Lupin thanked him sincerely, I think other werewolves would be grateful if they knew about it. Well, the exception is Greyback. His dream is to bite people all over the world and let everyone people turn into werewolves. That crazy fool. Sirius cursed under his breath. Sia Ran raised her eyebrows immediately and said, What's wrong? Sirius seemed to have some changes in his attitude towards the werewolf leader Fenrir Greyback. Lupin smiled bitterly and said, We met Greyback a few days ago and had a fighting conflict with him. Sirius was almost bitten by Greyback. He was also injured by me. Don't think about causing trouble in the past few months. Sirius said. Alas, the creatures in the dark world are now active. Perhaps many of them have received the news about the mysterious man's comeback, or even seen the mysterious man with his own eyes and made various promises to them. Lu Ping sighed helplessly. Many creatures in the dark world also yearn to walk in the magical world openly and further fulfill their dreams for example, the werewolf leader Fenrir Greyback bit the wizard child to increase the power of the werewolves. In addition, goblins pursue freedom that they have never had for centuries, and various dark creature races such as vampires and giants all have their pursuits and desires. These pursuits are absolutely unacceptable to human wizards in the magical world, Voldemort doesn't care about these. He only cares about whether he can rule the magical world and enjoy eternal life, so he makes unscrupulous promises, this basically means it is impossible for these dark creatures to side with the Order of the Phoenix. It should be noted that human wizards in ancient times spent countless efforts and sacrificed many lives to make human beings the leader of the magical world. And used the wizard statute of secrecy to distinguish the magical world from the muggle world. How could future generations continue to do so? Give up the achievements of the forefathers. Sia Ran has long suspected that the wizard secrecy stored in the Ministry of Magic must originally contain force points, but he has no chance to come into contact with that thing. Sirius' head disappeared into the green fire for a few breaths, and then reappeared and said, No more chatting, creature said someone knocked on the door and woke up my mother. There is something going on later. Communicate again. Pay attention to the Ministry of Magic's detection methods. Lupin also warned, and immediately disappeared into the fire, the green fire turned red again. Sia Ran pondered for a while, grabbed a handful of flow powder from the box next to the fireplace, and sprinkled it into the blazing red fireplace. With a pop, the flames turned green again. Spiders and Alley. The fireworks engulfed Sia Ran in an instant. He seemed to be spinning in the drum of a washing machine, feeling a little uncomfortable both physically and mentally. When he could see things again, he had appeared in a small living room. It felt like a dark cell with soft walls. Several walls were covered with books, most of which were old. Black or brown leather cover. A candlelit lamp hung from the ceiling, casting a dim circle of light in which a frayed and fluffy sofa, an old armchair, and a rickety table were crowded together. This place has a desolate and deserted atmosphere, as if no one usually lives there. Xia Ran, what are you doing here? What's the matter? Snape was holding up his wand and pointing it at a man who looked relatively pale and chanting a spell, that was Percy Weasley. This is Snape's home. Chapter, 147 Xia Ran didn't answer and asked, How is your training going? Not bad. Snape nodded slightly, withdrew his wand and motioned for Xia Ran to sit on the sofa. Xia Ran sat down unceremoniously and took the glass that Snape brought from a tray, which was filled with mellow-tasting wine. Professor Fremont. Percy sat down on the ground, gasping for air, breathing rapidly, and his face was particularly pale. He didn't even look at Professor Snape at this time. 
It seems that Percy adapted very quickly. Xia Ran raised her eyebrows. Percy Weasley was willing to join the Ministry of Magic as an undercover agent, and deliberately broke with the Order of the Phoenix and his family. In order to keep it secret, Percy Weasley he must learn acclumency, otherwise if he meets a master who is proficient in legilimency, he may be very prone to problems. Voldemort himself is a top legilimency master. As for the magical attainments of acclumency, Snape was even better than Dumbledore, not to mention that he was an undercover agent and was proficient in the art of undercover, so Snape took the time to train Percy. Acclumency is a profound magic that can seal the brain to resist the invasion and influence of magic. It is a magic that every undercover agent must master. As for legilimency magic, some wizards who are proficient in this magic can use this magic to learn many useful or useless things from other people's minds and obtain their emotions and memories. Snape is an acclumency master, and almost no one in the wizarding world is better at this magic than him. Although Xia Ran also knew acclumency and legilimency magic and had certain attainments, it was not worth mentioning compared to Snape. Stop talking, Professor Fremont, it's too painful. Percy said with a bitter smile, learning acclumency is really very uncomfortable. Having those memories read wantonly by others. Humph. Snape snorted slightly and said, I did not read your memory. I am not interested in your memory at all. The sooner you learn acclumency, the sooner I will be freed. Percy suddenly smiled. By the way, Xia Ran, what are you doing here? Snape looked at Xia Ran and asked, You came here specifically to inspect. Xia Ran waved her hand and said with a smile, How can you? Professor Snape's ability is better than mine, not to mention I'm not the leader of the Order of the Phoenix, that's Dumbledore's position, why am I here to inspect? Then you come here. It's mainly about the Wolfsbane potion. Xia Ran said straight to the point, Do you know the latest news today? It was published in the Daily Prophet. A slight smile appeared on Snape's lips, and he said, Lupin's identity as a werewolf was revealed. It will happen sooner or later. No one else is to blame. He was happy to hear about it. The position of Professor of Defense against the Dark Arts is really cursed by a mysterious person. Every professor can't hold the position for more than one year. Even a man as knowledgeable as Professor Lupin cannot escape the power of this curse. Percy sighed. Like most students at Hogwarts, he recognized Professor Lupin very much, especially after experiencing Professor Quirrell and Professor Lockhart. It is rare to find a defense against the dark arts professor as dedicated and capable as Professor Lupin. What you said about Wolfsbane Potion is somewhat vague, but Wolfsbane Potion itself is a very complete potion. It is easier said than done to improve it. Snape said. Completely solved the problem of werewolf transformation. Xia Ran tried. Snape said flatly, that is absolutely impossible. The transformation of werewolves is mainly due to the fact that they were bitten by the original werewolf and have werewolf genes flowing in their bodies. This is a fact that no medicine can and cannot change. He paused for a moment before continuing, at most, it can be like the wolfsbane potion, which can suppress the ferocious habits of the werewolf after he transforms. Can we go one step further and directly let the werewolf retain the memory and sanity of his human form after transforming into a werewolf? Xia Ran asked expectantly. You said it's easy, but it's not that simple. Snape said coldly, werewolves and werewolves, in wolf form or human form, have different habits. They can even be said to be two species of life. When not transforming, a werewolf is no different from an ordinary human being. There is no difference at all and there will be no difference. But if it transforms into a wolf, it will be ferocious and violent, and any reason and memory in the human form will be lost. Then it disappeared, and there may not even be any memory left in my mind, only the instinct of a wolf is still there. I'm not talking about human instinct, but wolf instinct. Snape said specifically. You mean? Xia Ran said thoughtfully, werewolves, if they have different shapes, are even two different lives. That's right. Snape nodded and said, Wolfsbane Potion can suppress the ferocious habits of the wolf form. It has been a great invention of potions for thousands of years. 
If we want to go one step further and completely bridge the gap between the human form and the wolf form, there is almost no hope, and maybe in a few hundred or a thousand years, there may be a little hope. He is not optimistic about it anyway, because he himself is the authority in the magic world today. Human Form Wolf Form Xia Ran thought, the human form can retain reason and memory, but the wolf form has lost reason and memory, but has a strong body. If the two can truly merge into one, maybe we can truly be called a werewolf. What you said makes sense, but how can you maintain the strength and strong body of the wolf form in the human form, or how can you still have a clear memory and reason in the wolf form? Snape shook his head and said, I didn't think of any good way anyway. I can only try to improve the effect of the wolfsbane potion. Xia Ran rubbed her forehead and felt a headache. This request was very simple and clear, but the actual operation was unclear at all. A werewolf bites a normal person, and then the normal person will have the shape of a werewolf. It is obvious that the genes have been changed. Xia Ran said slowly while thinking, I wonder if we can find out the genetic template, and or an altered DNA sequence. Snape said angrily, Have you read too many muggle books? I admit that genes and DNA do exist, but if you want to change. How to change? And how can you ensure that the direction of the change is good? What if it becomes what's worse? Like actually becoming a wild wolf and never being human again. Surgery on the genetic level is taboo for everyone. It is the domain of the gods. Ha! Huh. Xia Ran exclaimed, glanced at Snape in surprise, and said, I didn't expect Professor Snape to research the science and technology of the muggle world. Xia Ran wanted to say, you wouldn't backhand a diploma from the Department of Biology of Cambridge University and slap it on my face, would you? Chapter 148 Looking at the potions professor at Hogwarts, Xia Ran looked slightly strange. What's that look in your face? Snape frowned and said dissatisfiedly, I'm not an old-timer who clings to the past. Of course I understand the changes in the muggle world. He himself is a half-blood wizard, and has the title of half-blood prince, his mother is a wizard and his father is a muggle. It can be said that he has lived in the muggle world since he was a child. How could he not expose to a lot of things from the muggle world? What's more, Snape was deeply obsessed with potions and had an excellent talent. He would inevitably encounter many problems during the research process. Among them, many subject knowledge from the muggle world played a certain role in his research. Triggering Effect Although Snape's senses for muggles were not that good. Xia Ran smiled, nodded, and said, That makes sense, Professor Snape. Knowledge about the muggle world is indeed quite useful. He comes from a 21st century with advanced technology. How could he despise the muggle world just because he has mastered magic like many wizards in this world? After all, no one in the wizarding world can deal with nuclear bombs. When the muggle world faces the wizarding world, it is by no means helpless and can only be slaughtered. Otherwise, is the wizard statute of secrecy really just a simple matter? Just to separate the wizarding world from the muggle world? If one party occupies a dominant position, how can it eventually evolve into such a balanced situation? Who doesn't crave more resources and higher status? It can only be said that both sides have many concerns, which is why today's situation of basically non-interference was formed. The pure-blood supremacy theory advocated by Voldemort, perhaps just a cover for him, really completely brainwashed the wizarding world, turned against the muggle world, and started a war. In the beginning, it may have relied on the mystery and mobility of magic. It can catch all the countries in the muggle world by surprise, but what happens after the muggle world reacts? There are so many people in the muggle world, and there are also many muggle-born wizards. The most important thing is that the weapons in the muggle world are not only as lethal as the spells in the magical world, but are even more terrifying and terrifying. Once the nuclear warhead is released, the world will be at peace. That is a terrifying weapon that can destroy a city and completely change the ecosystem of a region. Almost everyone knows the dangers of nuclear radiation. Xia Ran felt that the defensive magic in the wizarding world, such as Hogwarts, the Ministry of Magic, Bosbatons, and Woodstrong, and other important institutional locations, would definitely not be able to withstand the explosion of a nuclear warhead. 
However, matters in the magical world do not need to involve the Muggle world. Just as conflicts and contradictions between countries in the Muggle world will hardly affect the magical world, otherwise the wizard statute of secrecy would really become a useless article. Paper. Xia Ran coveted this thing very much. He knew that the wizard secrecy law must have contained a lot of force points. Gene change is too difficult, and the consequences are unpredictable. I don't recommend trying this. Snape said, pouring himself another glass of beer and filling up Xia Rant's glass. He immediately added, but it's okay to try it first. If anything unexpected happens, I will naturally stop in time. Xia Ran chuckled and said, a white mouse experiment. In fact, I really want to know, if a werewolf bites small animals instead of directly eating them, will these animals change like wizards? I'm quite curious too, Snape said softly. Percy listened, dumbfounded. He opened his mouth wide, as if he was wondering if he had heard wrong just now. Professor Snape and Professor Fremont actually discussed the academic knowledge of the muggle world. He shook his head, just like a pug that had just emerged from the river shaking off water drops on its body. He seemed to want to get rid of this very inconsistent scene in front of him. If Dad were here, he would listen with great interest and ask the two professors from time to time, even though Dad might not understand anything. Percy thought to himself. After chatting for half an hour, Percy just took the time to take a good rest, Xia Ran said goodbye and left. Fortunately, Snape's residence was remote, and he didn't have a good relationship with most people, so almost no one came to Spider Tail. Guests in the lane, whether members of the Order of the Phoenix or members of the Death Eater organization. Xia Ran and Percy's identities were not leaked, which even further exposed Snape's identity. Of course, Snape is now a double agent, and they have nothing to do here, except that it will cause confusion as to when Sharon Fremont and Percy Weasley will be with Severus Snape. Is the relationship between Pooh and Pooh so good? Take care. Xia Ran said and returned to Fremont Manor. Percy nodded solemnly. A lot of time had passed during the summer vacation, and he had less and less time to study with Professor Snape. Okay, don't think about anything else, let's continue practicing acclimacy. Snape said, taking out the wand from his pocket again and aiming it at Percy. Percy's expression froze and he hurriedly said, Wait a moment, Professor Snape, let me. Ah. Snape directly used legitimacy magic. Percy Weasley, remember this, the enemy will not prepare you. Time passes day by day, and the Quidditch World Cup is getting closer and closer, but Voldemort and his Death Eaters are still silent, as if Voldemort's resurrection has never happened. Which makes the members of the Order of the Phoenix they had no choice but to be secretly vigilant, but Fudge and others were overjoyed and worked even harder to smear Dumbledore. Of course, it also discredited Harry Potter by the way. After all, he was the star of salvation in Dumbledore's eyes. And Percy has entered the Ministry of Magic, which is still the same Department of International Magical Exchange and Cooperation, but this time his director is no longer Barty Crouch. After all, this power-hungry wizard has been replaced by his son. He was killed, and another respected old wizard took over the position of director of the International Magic Exchange and Cooperation Department. Intentionally or unintentionally, Percy began to alienate the relationship with the Weasley family, and they had quarrels from time to time. Making preliminary preparations for him to truly move out of the burrow and break into the core of the Ministry of Magic. Mrs. Weasley was very worried about this, especially after Percy had a fierce quarrel with Mr. Weasley. She even told several other children at home not to talk nonsense, let alone let them mention magic too much. Ministry work matters. In this regard, Sharon and Snape gave Percy a lot of advice. I have decided to move out in the next few days, at most until after the Quidditch World Cup. Percy said. Xia Ran shook her head and said, Okay, now it's mainly up to you to make your own decisions. It's best for us to have less and less contact in the future. If we contact you more often, we will be exposed. Be careful. Snape cherished his words like gold. Thus began Percy's preparations for the final big argument. But before that, Xia Ran received news that Dumbledore hoped that he could take Harry to the burrow. Chapter, 149 That's it. 
Okay, I'll pick him up tomorrow and the day after tomorrow. Xia Ran touched her chin and accepted the task assigned by Dumbledore. Hoo hoo. The big golden red bird phoenix fox flapped its wings, chirped twice happily, turned into a ball of flame and disappeared into Sharon's Fremont Manor. The phoenix is often used by Dumbledore for communication, and it can be called one of the best communication tools in the new era. Xia Ran, Xia Ran. Then a voice called from his fireplace. As he passed by, he happened to see Mr. Weasley's head and upper half of his body floating in a turquoise flame. Charon, Dumbledore asked you to pick up Harry? Mr. Weasley asked. Xia Ran nodded and said, Yes, Phoenix just came to deliver the letter. There is no need to hide this. Well, you know, I got some tickets for the World Cup, and Ron wanted Harry and Hermione to go there together, they are the best classmates, and Hermione will be coming to the borough in two days. Hahali Ben, we were going to pick him up in person, but Dumbledore said he wanted you to pick him up. Mr. Weasley said sheepishly, so, I hope. Charon, you know. Although the borough. Probably no better than Blake's old house. Xia Ran smiled and said, Don't worry, I will bring him to the burrow intact. I will tell Sirius personally, Thank you very much, Xia Ran. Mr. Weasley said. During the Quidditch World Cup, Sirius and the others are a defensive force and will also rush to the World Cup. In fact, it may be safer for Harry to follow you. Xia Ran said, Who knows what Voldemort is planning secretly? I don't think Voldemort will remain indifferent to the World Cup a place where tens of thousands of wizards gather. On the contrary, I hope he will be indifferent. Mr. Weasley said with a bitter smile, this is better. After all, there are so many people at the World Cup. What if? He shuddered. If Voldemort really had any plans, the Quidditch World Cup would have a huge impact. After all, wizards attending the event were from all over the world, from all over the world. After Mr. Weasley cancelled the flu fan communication, Xia Ran first wrote a letter and sent it to No. 4, Privet Street, where it was collected by Harry Potter. It's always good to give advance notice for this kind of door-to-door -door visit. Xia Ran thought again, but this is a letter from the magical world. Maybe Harry will be scolded by his aunt and uncle again. So Xia Ran decided to use the post office to send letters, not an owl post office, but a post office in the Muggle world, delivering letters through normal channels. Four days later, Xia Ran disapparated to London, took a car to Surrey County in southwest London, and walked to Privet Street, which is also the address of the Desley family. Boy, don't let me see. The owl. The weird person. I want you to tell them to dress appropriately, those people really can't say that. He heard the roar coming from the house at No. 4. Privet Drive Outside the Door Vernon The other woman's voice trembled slightly, as if she was reminding her of something, and the previous man's roar suddenly weakened in volume. It seemed that Harry's life was still the same. Xia Ran thought to herself and rang the doorbell. Coming. A tall, burly, fat man with no neck and a big beard opened the door. He saw Xia Ran standing outside the door and was stunned. He seemed to have never seen such a normal wizard. Hello, Mr. Vernon Desley. I am Sharon Fremont, Harry's professor. Sharon smiled and stretched out her right hand. Vernon Desley shook it blankly. He raised his hand and looked at his expression, as if he was very surprised that Xia Ran knew their etiquette. Professor. Harry wore a pair of glasses and carried a large suitcase in his hand. He packed all the things he needed for school soon after receiving Xia Rant's letter. Harry was slightly relieved. Fortunately, it was Professor Fremont. He knew that Professor Fremont was also a half-blood wizard, so he was not surprised that he knew muggle etiquette and clothing. If it were Mr. Weasley. He thought Uncle Vernon might be in for a shock. A thin blonde woman and a fat man were sitting on the sofa in the living room. They were Harry's relatives, Aunt Petunia and Dudley Desley. Aunt Petunia crossed her arms, pursed her lips, and frowned tightly. Her eyes seemed to be looking at Xia Ran to see what was different about this normal wizard. Dudley had had contact with wizards before, and as a result, a curled pigtail grew out of the back of his trousers. 
Aunt Petunia and Uncle Vernon had to spend a lot of money to send him to a private hospital in London to have the tail cut off. Dudley had just recovered from the fright, so it was no wonder that he was so nervous now. He kept touching his butt with his hands and tried his best to hide behind his mother, but this move was doomed. It was in vain because he was too fat. Are you a professor at that school? Uncle Vernon still looked at Xia Ran with suspicion, as if he was a liar. Xia Ran smiled and said, If it's fake, do you need me to do a little magic to verify it? He took out the wand from his pocket. Hiss. Uncle Vernon immediately took a breath of cold air and quickly backed away from Xia Ran, as if he was worried that Xia Ran would recite a spell for him, and Dudley's reaction was even greater, almost all of a sudden. Hiding behind Aunt Petunia. Aunt Petunia, on the other hand, managed to maintain a calm posture, even though she looked equally terrified. Okay, just kidding. Xia Ran took back her wand, came to the Desley's living room and sat down, and said, Can I have a glass of water? I've been thirsty since I took the car all the way here. Judging from the looks on the Desley's faces, they seemed to doubt whether they knew what a car was. Xia Ran was speechless and prepared to pour a glass of water by herself. Uh, Professor, let me do it. Harry said quickly, poured a glass of water for Xia Ran, and said, Professor, when will we? Don't worry, Harry. Xia Ran smiled, and a narrow-minded thought suddenly appeared in his heart. He looked at Aunt Petunia and said with a smile, Harry's aunt. I have heard of your name. He shook Aunt Petunia's hand. Aunt Petunia looked confused, obviously not understanding why she was known to the professor of this magic school. Harry, Uncle Vernon and Dudley were equally surprised, confused and stunned. I just went to Spider End Alley a few days ago and met Severus. You should still have an impression, Petunia. Xia Ran said softly. These words were like dropping a bomb. Aunt Petunia's expression changed in an instant and became extremely pale. Harry, his uncle and table were even more confused. I don't. Understand. Aunt Petunia stammered, you pick up Harry and leave we. Professor, Spider's End, and Snape, they. Harry asked immediately. Aunt Petunia didn't seem to know anything about the magical world as she said. Petunia. Vernon looked at his wife. Dudley looked around, as if he still didn't understand what was happening. Chapter, 150 Aunt Petunia, do you know Snape? Harry asked Aunt Petunia urgently. He was eager to know what was going on behind the scenes. Aunt Petunia hated magic so much that even after he went to Hogwarts, she treated him as if Hogwarts didn't exist. How did she actually know about Snape? Did he know it from his mother, or? No. Aunt Petunia shook her head first, then hesitated and said, Don't ask, your professor is here to pick you up, just leave quickly. But Aunt. Harry wanted to continue asking. Okay, boy, didn't you hear what your aunt said? She told you to leave quickly. Uncle Vernon said viciously, although he was also very confused in his heart. Xia Ran drank all the water in the glass and said with a smile, Mrs. Desley, this is not a big deal. Your sister went to Hogwarts. You can't say that you don't know anything about the magical world. Understand? This is unrealistic. I remember Lily was not such a withdrawn person. Do you know Lily? Aunt Petunia was suddenly startled and looked at Xia Ran with wide eyes. My parents know the Potters and have met them several times. Xia Ran shrugged her shoulders and said with a smile. His deceased parents were also members of the Order of the Phoenix, so of course he would know the Potters, who were also members of the Order. Aunt Petunia's fingers were tangled together. It seemed that Xia Rant's visit had awakened the dust-laden memories in her mind, and those emotions of happiness, unwillingness, anger, envy, and jealousy came up one by one. When she was a child, she did know severest Snape. They were neighbors, and Lily and Snape also knew each other in the same way. However, Petunia did not have the qualifications to become a wizard. After Lily received the letter from Hogwarts, she secretly sent a letter to Hogwarts in private, hoping that Dumbledore would admit her to Hogwarts, but Dumbledore declined. It happened that Snape revealed this matter, which resulted in Petunia being greatly humiliated by Snape. 
Moreover, Lily also happened to see her letter. Petunia lost her face and was ridiculed, so she became gotta start hating magic. Later, because of magic, the Evans couple treated their younger daughter Lily Evans differently and inevitably neglected their eldest daughter. Although the Evans couple liked both daughters equally, magic was a novelty after all. No one can suppress their curiosity about things, this also makes Penny alienate her sister, either envious or jealous. Especially after the death of Mr. and Mrs. Evans, the relationship between the two sisters was, to be honest, really average. However, after Harry was sent to Privet Drive, she still did not refuse this responsibility. After all, he was her sister's child and adopted him. Although Harry's treatment was far less than that of Dudley, he still he grew up normally and even called this place home in his heart, otherwise the magic that Lily cast before she died would not be effective. Mr. and Mrs. Potter Vernon Desley frowned and said, that crazy boy. I remember. He seems to be living on relief. Mr. Potter does not receive relief, and he is not crazy, but you two have nothing in common. Sia Ran spread her hands and said, the circles of life are different, that's all. You don't adapt to the magical world, and most wizards don't adapt either. The muggle world, especially pure blood wizards. Uncle, do you know my dad? Harry asked. He regretted asking the question later. How could Uncle Vernon not know his dad? He even remembered that his uncle had mentioned it when he was belittling his father when he was a child, and that his father had attended his uncle's and aunt's wedding. Nonsense. Uncle Vernon glared at Harry, then waved his hand and said, Boy, don't interrupt. Pure blood. You. What? Vernon Desley seemed to be recalling Sia Rant's name. Sharon, Sharon Fremont. Pure blood, what do you mean by pure blood? Do wizards still have mixed blood? Vernon Desley smiled sarcastically. There are differences in status between wizards. For example, Harry is a mixed-race wizard. Sia Ran said. Aunt Petunia said uneasily, Um, aren't you leaving? Professor Fremont. Professor, aren't you here to pick up Harry? Just leave as soon as you pick him up. She urged Sia Ran, hoping that Sia Ran would lead Harry away from Privet Drive as soon as possible. Okay. Sia Ran said after looking at Penny who was feeling embarrassed, I just hope that you guys will be a little nicer to Harry. After all, he is your sister's child, isn't he? Aunt Petunia's eyes suddenly widened. What nonsense are you talking about? Vernon Desley blushed and said, Are we treating him badly? He turned to look at Harry and said viciously, Boy, you are planning your aunt and uncle like this. We fed you, clothed you, and raised you without expecting anything in return. Is this how you discredit us? He made a move to pounce and catch Harry. Harry quickly and nimbly dragged his suitcase and owl cage to the door. It's just my personal request. What kind of attitude you will have depends on your own thoughts. By the way, I can provide some help if necessary. Sia Ran smiled, I am Hog after all. Professor Watts. Let's go, Harry. Sia Ran said and smiled politely and exited the Desley's living room. The three people in the room seemed to be in a daze, and they didn't come back to their senses for a long time. Harry, grab my arm. Sia Ran stretched out the crook of her left arm. Harry's eyes lit up and he said, Professor, do you want to take me to apparate? Hurry up while there is no one on the road at noon. It will be bad if muggles see you. Sia Ran said, By the way, hold on to your luggage and the owl. Harry quickly grabbed the handle of the suitcase and the owl cage, and grabbed Sia Ran's elbow with the other hand. Suddenly his eyes blurred, and he felt like he was in a whirlpool. The next second Joan then appeared in a familiar place again. The burrow. Harry looked at the burrow not far away with joy. This was one of his three favorite places, the other two being Hogwarts and Black Mansion. Harry. Mom, Harry is here, and Professor Fremont. A red-haired girl at the door of the burrow ran back into the house. Harry, let's go in. Sharon said, walking towards the burrow. Oh, Harry you have lost weight. Eat more today. Mrs. Weasley ran out of the kitchen, hugged Harry tightly, then looked at Sia Ran and said, 
thank you, Xia Ran. Of course, why don't you stay and have something to eat together? Arthur also hopes to come back and chat with you, and wants you to help persuade Percy. By the way, Bill and Charlie are back, but they are still driving in the backyard at this time. Goblin. Ginny, go get your brothers. She gave Ginny one final command. Ginny left the kitchen with a blushing face, and Harry pretended that he hadn't seen her. Sit wherever you want, as if you were at home, no need to be restrained. Mrs. Weasley said, returning to the kitchen, the food will be ready soon, just wait a moment. There's no rush, Mrs. Weasley, although I'm here just waiting for a good meal. Xia Ran smiled. At this time, several young people came into the backyard of the burrow. Chapter, 151 Xia Ran, Long Time No See A young man with a long ponytail stretched out his hand and shook Xia Ran's hand. He also wore an earring with something like a small fan hanging on it. Unlike other Weasleys, he just looks so cool. Bill, long time no see, how is your job at Gringotts Egypt? Xia Ran asked with a smile. This young man is Bill Weasley, the eldest son of the Weasley family. The position of curse breaker. Fortunately, it's quite interesting, especially when encountering various evil curses. Bill smiled. He also has a character that pursues interesting things. Xia Ran, how is your job as a professor? I didn't expect you to become a professor at Hogwarts in the end. A short and stocky man asked, he was Charlie Weasley. Charlie is the second son of the Weasley family. He was once the Quidditch captain of Gryffindor. Now he is raising a dragon in Romania. He has a broad face like a good gentleman, weathered, and covered with freckles. He looks almost a turn brown and black, and looked bigger than his brother Bill. Charlie's arms were muscular, and there was a large fire burn scar on one arm. He was shorter than his brother, but also fatter and stronger, probably because he raised dragons outside. Xia Ran smiled and said, Great. As you know, Dumbledore rarely interferes with the professor's teaching arrangements, as long as he doesn't have any problems, but such a group of little wizards can easily deal with it. Bill and Charlie laughed. Professor. The brown-haired girl said dissatisfiedly. Her two front teeth were relatively large. She was the academic champion of this year's Hogwarts Hermione Granger. Huh, just kidding. Xia Ran chuckled, except for a small number of professors, the majority of whom are defense against the dark arts professors, most of the teachers are very dedicated. I wonder who our defense against the dark arts professor is this year. George asked. I really hope Professor Lupin continues to teach. Fred said. But he is a werewolf. Ron said, and when he saw a few people looking at him, he quickly said, of course I like Professor Lupin to be our defense against the dark arts professor, but many students don't think so. Especially Slytherin students will definitely complain. That's why Professor Lupin took the initiative to resign to Dumbledore, Ginny said. Damn fudge. Fred cursed softly. Professor Fremont, do you have any news? Harry asked. He also liked Professor Lupin's teachings, especially with the contrast between Professor Quirrell and Professor Lockhart, so he was very interested in Lupin's teachings. I feel very sorry for Professor Ping's resignation. Xia Ran chuckled and said, You will know when the time comes, and it will definitely be beyond your expectations. Seeing the frowns on several people's faces, she smiled and said, You will definitely recognize that teacher by then. He already knew from Dumbledore that Moody had agreed to Dumbledore's invitation to be the defense against the dark arts professor for the new semester. It is said that Dumbledore also resolutely dismissed the wizard's fudge had arranged from the Ministry of Magic for this reason. Xia Ran was thinking, a wizard arranged by the Ministry of Magic. Also teaching defense against the dark arts. Couldn't it be the Umbridge who was in Harry's fifth grade in the original time and space? Of course, now that Dumbledore has firmly rejected him, no one will dispute Moody's appointment. Is it true that he was the strongest or in the past? I asked for leave to come back to watch the Quidditch World Cup, and by the way, I participated in the protection work of this World Cup. I applied to Dumbledore, and he agreed. Bill said, the same goes for Charlie, 
but after the Quidditch World Cup, we will still they have to go back to the countries where they work. Your father and I hope that you will all be transferred back to England. Egypt and Romania are too far away. Mrs. Weasley's voice came from the kitchen. I'm not going to be transferred back. I like raising dragons. Charlie shook his head and said, and Dumbledore also needs wizards to stay abroad and pay close attention to what's going on in the magical world abroad. I don't think the mysterious man will be willing to stay here all the time. In the British wizarding world. I think so too, Bill said softly, but I'm still going to apply for a transfer back to Gringotts in Diagon Alley. I really hope this transfer order can be issued as soon as possible. Ran said, the mysterious man has not revealed any whereabouts for the time being, no matter what his secret plan is, but it is obvious that the mysterious man is not planning to show up in the short term. He may have a plan to harm both us and the Ministry of Magic, and he will finally come out to get a big advantage. Bill guessed. Maybe. Ran knew what Voldemort might be doing now, trying to steal the prophecy ball from the Department of Mysteries of the Ministry of Magic. Dumbledore, Snape and others also knew about this, so there was no need for him it would be unnecessary to bring it up again. But Bill and Charlie had just returned from abroad and were not sure about this. He is looking for something, but... Ran said, shrugged her shoulders and said, let's talk about it during the meeting. You will know then. Harry, Ron, Hermione, Ginny, Fred and George sighed with regret. They wanted to hear more information. Then let's not talk about it. Charlie said with a smile, knowing that there is no need to let the little wizards who are still studying know this kind of thing. Oh, Arthur, what's wrong? Percy. Mrs. Weasley's voice seemed a little anxious, and then there were footsteps in the kitchen, and Mrs. Weasley seemed to have left the kitchen. A group of people in the living room also came outside. At the door of the burrow, Mr. Weasley and Percy both had gloomy or angry expressions on their faces. The atmosphere between them was very stiff and not a word was said. Mrs. Weasley looked anxious and asked hurriedly, what's wrong? Okay, let's go back to the room and sit down first. Let's eat and eat. You have to go to work in the afternoon. Don't eat. Percy said angrily, and walked directly past everyone into the house without saying hello, as if he didn't see anyone else. Xia Ran and Percy looked at each other. Percy's eyes remained unchanged, as if he hadn't noticed, but Xia Ran knew that Percy had made up his mind to cut off from the Weasley family now in order to completely penetrate into the core of the Ministry of Magic. This was what they had discussed in Spider Tail Alley a few days ago. Xia Ran could only give him a careful look. The only good thing was that Percy was undercover from the Ministry of Magic, not the undercover Death Eater organization like Snape. Percy, Percy. Mrs. Weasley shouted. Stop calling him. Mr. Weasley shouted, if he wants to leave, let him go. Let me see what he will become after entering the Ministry of Magic. If he is willing to be Fudge's lackey, let him go. I act as if I never had this son. The sound of packing luggage could be heard upstairs in the burrow. Oh, Arthur, what's going on? What's going on? Mrs. Weasley asked confused. Chapter, 152 Mrs. Weasley went upstairs. Mr. Weasley sat down on a chair angrily, his brows furrowed, and it was obvious that he was particularly angry. Harry and Hermione had never seen him so angry. Several Weasley children, Bill, Charlie, Fred, George, Ron, and Ginny, all showed dissatisfaction with Percy. They more or less guessed the reason for the dispute between their father and Percy. Reason. After all, Percy has been quarreling with his family more than once in this period of time. Sia Ran also knew the reason and the inside story, but she was determined not to tell it openly. This was also to protect Percy. What's the matter, Dad? What did Percy say again? Bill asked, pouring a glass of water for Mr. Weasley. Leave him alone, Dad he will understand the bad behavior of the Ministry of Magic after a while. Charlie also advised. I'm sorry, Sia Ran, for letting you see the joke, and Harry and Hermione. Mr. Weasley smiled reluctantly. Sia Ran looked puzzled, he knew the real story, and asked, Mr. Weasley, what are you and Percy? Humph. 
Mr. Weasley was extremely angry when he mentioned Percy Weasley and said in a deep voice, let him go. Let him do whatever he wants. It's enough to give birth to him and raise him. Whatever he wants to do in the future, then it's all his business. He still surrendered to the Ministry of Magic for his ambition. Twin brothers George and Fred asked in disbelief. Mr. Weasley said nothing and nodded silently. What? Harry and Hermione looked a little unbelievable. Ginny meowed like an angry cat. Sia Ran secretly sighed that Percy's situation as an undercover agent was indeed better than Snape's, but the pressure he faced from his family and the inner torture he faced were even worse than Snape's. Oh, Percy, Percy, mother has something to say to you. At this time, Percy and Mrs. Weasley came out of the house. Percy dragged a large suitcase and an owl cage with an expression on his face. He was so gloomy and terrifying that he turned a blind eye to the people at the door and walked outside. Stop. Where are you going? Bill grabbed Percy's arm. Didn't you hear mummy trying to talk to you, Percy? The twin said angrily. Percy suddenly stopped and turned his head. His face looked extremely scary, showing an expression that was unfamiliar to everyone. He said, I have nothing to say to you. From now on, I will part ways with you. Each went his own way, as if he had never known each other before. What nonsense are you talking about? Bill was also angry. He pulled Percy over and sat at the table, saying, What's going on? What are you thinking? Your ambition is so big. Could it be that the news of the mysterious man's return is? Is it fake? Percy sat on the chair, looked at Mrs. Weasley, glanced around, and saw the anxious, angry, and worried looks of everyone in the room. Finally, he fixed his eyes on his father and said, I I have said it, I have said it many times before, I want to enter the Ministry of Magic. No one will allow you to enter the Ministry of Magic. Charlie said angrily, Dad works in the Ministry of Magic. Kingsley and Tonks also work in the Ministry of Magic. If you want to enter the Ministry of Magic, this is what you have always wanted to do. Your hopes and wishes, none of us will stop you. Ha! Percy laughed contemptuously. George got angry and said, what's your expression? Oh, Percy, you want to enter the Ministry of Magic? It doesn't matter, we all support you, and as your family, we will support you. Mrs. Weasley said, wiping away tears. Hermione and Ginny, two little girls, comforted Mrs. Weasley. Don't you understand yet? Percy glanced contemptuously and said, It's because of you that I can't enter a better department, hold a higher position, and become a truly top official in the Ministry of Magic. What nonsense are you talking about? Bill frowned. As a graduate, you have just entered the Ministry of Magic. What important position can you hold? What kind of top official can you be? That will be at least ten or twenty years later. Percy sneered, Is that really the case? What do you mean? Ron asked angrily. Isn't my meaning clear enough? Percy said with a cold smile, because of you. He pointed at everyone in the Weasley family and continued, Do you really understand what the Ministry of Magic stands for? Won't you come out? No, you have seen it, but you are unwilling to comply. The Ministry of Magic requires all employees to sever ties with Dumbledore, but what about you? But you have a very important connection with Dumbledore, or the Order of the Phoenix a member of. Please, with a family like you, how can I really get into the heart of the Ministry of Magic? Do I have to be like my father, an ordinary employee all my life, and have to save and save even daily expenses? I've had enough of life without money. Percy yelled. Quiet, it's so quiet in the burrow, you can almost hear a pin drop. Several Weasley children, Bill, Charlie, Fred, George, Ron, Ginny, including Harry and Hermione, all looked at Percy with disbelief, as if this was the first time they had met each other today. Same as Percy. How dare he? How could he? Mrs. Weasley wiped her tears sadly and burst into tears. Mr. Weasley pursed his lips tightly and trembled slightly, as if he had a lot to say, but in the end he didn't say a word. Xia Ran sighed secretly in her heart. It was the most difficult moment to break up with her family like this, especially when Percy didn't really think so. 
Maybe he did have similar thoughts sometimes, but they were forgotten in the blink of an eye and never really took it to heart. It is so sad to say this kind of words. He wondered if Percy was bleeding inside. Percy still said coldly, the mysterious man has returned. So what if it's real or fake? Has it affected us? We are pure blood wizards and are not within the scope of the mysterious man's cleaning. What are we afraid of? He deliberately avoided Hermione when he spoke. After all, he had a very good relationship with Hermione when he was at Hogwarts. This was a friendship between top students. Dad, if you want to become a real core official of the Ministry of Magic, you can't do it without following the minister's footsteps and ideas. Percy sneered and said, Dumbledore. He is so powerful, why doesn't he hold the position of Minister of Magic? Who knows what he is thinking in his heart? What have you gained by following Dumbledore, Dad? Money? Honor? Or status? Percy said with a cold smile and said, No. You didn't get anything. We don't follow Dumbledore for these reasons, we follow Dumbledore for the same ideas and ideas. Mr. Weasley said angrily. But what if you follow the Ministry of Magic, Dad? Money, honor and status are not easy to come by. Percy smiled and said, we have different ideas. From now on, we will no longer have a father-son relationship, and I will cut off all contact with you. Contact us. Chapter, 153 Really impressive. Percy's decisive words came out in a barrage, without giving others a chance to argue. He stood up in a hurry. This time, no one stopped him when he left the burrow. Mr. Weasley's face was pale, his lips were trembling, and he could not speak a word. Percy's steps suddenly paused slightly, and Mrs. Weasley's eyes suddenly lit up, and she continued, Percy, have you changed your mind? Come in quickly, let's eat and rest for a while. You and your father will be back in the afternoon. Must go to work. Percy shook his head and said coldly, I just want to say. If any of you have had enough of this life of no money, you can come to London to find me, and I will be willing to provide you with a little help. That's it for now, just take care of yourself. Percy dragged his suitcase and owl cage away, and with a snap, he operated out of the burrow. Get out of here. None of us are going to find you. You idiot. Fred, George and Ron shouted. Mrs. Weasley burst into tears and was extremely sad. Mom, stop crying. It's not worth crying for such an idiot. Ginny comforted her mother, her words still full of anger and dissatisfaction with Percy. Stop talking about him. Said Mr. Weasley. From now on, we will act as if this person does not exist. No one should mention him again. Bill and Charlie looked at each other, shook their heads silently, then went to the kitchen to bring out the food and pastries that Mrs. Weasley had prepared before, and said, everyone is hungry, right? Eat quickly. Yeah, yeah, I'm hungry. George said loudly and deliberately, picking up a piece of steak and eating it deliciously. Sharon, let's eat some together to make you laugh. Bill said, Harry and Hermione, you can eat too, don't be polite. A group of people ate in silence, no one spoke. Halfway through the meal, Mrs. Weasley put down her knife and fork, took her wand and walked out of the room. Bill followed Mrs. Weasley, and soon there was a loud disembodiment sound outside. Not long after, Mrs. Weasley came back crying. Bill spread his hands and said softly, Percy refused to meet us. Mom is so sad. The children cleared the table and went back to their houses. In this atmosphere, no one wanted to stay outside any longer. Xia Ran also said goodbye and left. Sorry, Xia Ran. Mr. Weasley said with a forced smile. If there's anything I can do to help. Xia Ran said, smiled apologetically, and operat back to Fremont Manor. Well. Xia Ran sighed and entered her own manor. This time Percy and the Weasley family broke up. If they wanted to reconcile again and return to the harmony of the family, they didn't know how many years would pass. As long as Voldemort is not destroyed, he will not be able to remain undercover. The burrow, because Bill and Charlie came back, and they occupied Fred and George's room. Fred and George shared a room with Ron and Harry, 
and the two little girls Hermione and Ginny one room. Originally, Percy had a room by himself. Now that he was gone, Fred and George could stay in Percy's room, but no one mentioned it. The room was very quiet, with sunlight streaming in from the window. Several people were lying on the bed, seemingly taking a nap. I still can't stand it. How could Percy say such vicious words? Is his brain broken? Ron sat up from the bed with a cry. Brother, maybe you finally said the right thing. Fred said harshly, Percy's brain is broken. No one in their right mind would say something like that. George smiled weirdly. Harry didn't know whether he should say anything or not. He didn't fall asleep either. He was always thinking about the quarrel that just happened. How could Percy? Even though Harry thought Percy was the most difficult to get along with among the Weasley children, he still didn't expect that Percy would have such terrible thoughts. Harry, what do you think? Ron looked at Harry and said, I know you're not asleep. Do you think Percy is a fool or an idiot? Or a fool and an idiot? Fred whispered. What a fool. Harry said softly, he speaks clearly and clearly, but his ideas are completely wrong. So he is a big fool. The Quidditch World Cup will be in a few days. Let us use the cheerful atmosphere of the World Cup to wash away this unhappy incident. George said, lying down again. Harry forced a smile. He thought how happy he would be if he had parents like Mr. and Mrs. Weasley. How could Percy say such a thing? He was also full of dissatisfaction and anger towards Percy. Ever since Percy's breakup that day, the atmosphere at the borough had been a bit tense, and other people in the Order of the Phoenix had also heard about it, and they all expressed their indignation towards Percy. However, Percy seems to be rising rapidly in the Ministry of Magic. I don't know if it's because Fudge commended him for his behavior of drawing a line with Dumbledore, or for some other reason. And Sia Rand received an invitation from Mr. Weasley, because Mr. Weasley originally bought tickets for the whole family, only Mrs. Weasley was not interested in it, so she had one less ticket. Now she still doesn't want to watch Kwaisho. During the Quidditch World Cup, I often shed tears at home, after Percy broke up, he got an extra ticket, and he invited Sia Ran to watch the Quidditch World Cup with him. Sia Ran didn't have the task of guarding the Quidditch World Cup like Sirius, Lupin, Moody, Mundungus, Kingsley, Tonks and others, so he agreed, as long as he had nothing to do during this period. What's more, if something happens, he can provide some help at the scene. Among the members of the Order of the Phoenix, there are many wizards who buy tickets to watch the Quidditch World Cup to satisfy their desire to watch the game and to increase their defensive power. Professor McGonagall is the most typical example. Sia Ran had never been to the venue where the Quidditch World Cup was held. He had no local images in his mind and could not apparate there. He had to apparate to the burrow first. There was a door key in the mountains and forests surrounding the burrow. The sky was still dark, as if it was only five o'clock in the morning. The bright moon hung high in the sky, but the scorching sun had not yet risen. Sia ran. Mrs. Weasley opened the door of the burrow and said, You came so early. Do you want to have something to eat? Arthur, Sia Ran is here. In the kitchen, Mr. Weasley was reading a newspaper. He said, Sit down, Sia Ran, have something to eat. When you get to the venue, you have to cook it yourself. If Molly doesn't come, my cooking skills are not good. Thank you. Sia Ran said, took a sip of milk, and had some bread and sandwiches in front of her. You guys talk for a while first, and I'll go up and wake up the children. Mrs. Weasley said, walking up the stairs. Bill and Charlie have to rush there at noon. They know that place and can apparate there. Mr. Weasley explained, I have been to that place and can apparate, but because I have to take a few we have a child, so we can only set off so many hours early. Sia Ran chuckled and said, I haven't been there. If you want to sleep a little longer, Mr. Weasley, I'll just take a few kids there. You can come back later. Huh. Forget it, we're already up anyway. Mr. Weasley smiled, seemingly forgetting about Percy. Sia Ran smiled. At this time, several children came down the stairs, all looking sleepy and not awake, yawning and stretching. Ha! Huh. Professor Fremont has arrived. 
Chapter, 154 Professor Fremont The Weasley children, as well as Harry and Hermione all rubbed their eyes, and in their sleepy state, they saw Xia Ran eating. After you wash up, let's have something to eat. Traveling with a port key is not a pleasant experience, especially if it's your first time. Xia Ran chuckled. Do you feel uncomfortable? Harry trembled, his sleepiness obviously receding. Mr. Weasley smiled and said, You professors are joking, but it will indeed be a little uncomfortable if you experience port key travel for the first time. Even Hermione flinched this time. Okay, don't scare the children. Mrs. Weasley scolded, it's just a little uncomfortable. It's much better with experience the second time. It's not uncomfortable at all. Okay, eat quickly, children, it's getting late. It's getting late. Fred, George, and Ron looked at Mrs. Weasley with disbelief. Ginny pointed to the dim sky outside the window and the half-waning crescent moon, and couldn't help but said, Mom, there is still time. It's so early. Yeah, Mum, Bill and Charlie aren't up yet, Ron muttered. But they can go directly by operating, but you can't. Mrs. Weasley said lovingly, so you have to walk to the place where the port key is dropped, which is not close. She was stirring the contents of a large pot on the stove while Mr. Weasley sat at the table, checking a large ticket made of parchment. Xia Ran finished the bread in several bites and drank all the milk. Mrs. Weasley asked, Xia Ran, do you want some more? Of course Xia Ran was disrespectful. Mrs. Weasley scooped a large spoonful of porridge into his bowl. The aroma was tangy and appetizing. Fred shouted, We can also go there together through apparition. Just let Bill and Charlie take us, or Professor Fremont. I've never been there. Xia Ran smiled. They are not very proficient in apparition. It doesn't matter if they use it by themselves. They can bring people with them to apparate. They can't do that yet. Mr. Weasley said, besides, I think apparition is sometimes not a good idea. Travel plans. They are still sleeping soundly, but we have to get up so early and have to hurry. George said angrily. Because you are underage, have never learned the apparition magic, and have not passed the exam to get the apparition certificate. Mrs. Weasley said back to him. Ginny said with a smile, Charlie failed the test the first time. He appeared five miles south of his original target and landed on the head of a poor old lady who was shopping. Oh, Merlin, finally. Fortunately, there wasn't any big trouble. Yeah, but he passed on the second try, said Mr. Weasley, collecting the ticket and putting it in the pocket of his jeans. He wore a top that looked like a golf shirt and a pair of old jeans. The pants were a little too big for him, so he tied them up with a wide cowhide belt. It seems that in Mr. Weasley's opinion, this can be closer to muggle attire. By the way, are we going to walk far? Hermione asked, sipping her porridge. No, no, that's too far. Mr. Weasley said with a smile, we only need to walk a short distance. You know, you want to bring a large number of wizards, at least tens of thousands, together without causing any trouble. Attention muggles, this is a very difficult thing. We have to be very cautious and choose the best time to go on the road, in such a grand occasion as the Quidditch World Cup. George! Mrs. Weasley suddenly shouted, startling everyone. What's the matter, Mum? George asked, pretending that nothing happened, but this would not fool anyone, especially Mrs. Weasley, who knew the twin brothers very well. What's in your pocket? Nothing. Don't tell lies to me. Mrs. Weasley pointed her wand at George's pocket and said, Come here. She used the fly charm. Suddenly some colorful baubles jumped out of George's pocket. George quickly reached out to grab them, but couldn't catch any of them. Like lively elves, they jumped into Mrs. Weasley's open palm. Above. Tell you to destroy these things. How many times have I told you? Mrs. Weasley said angrily, raising the thing in her hand. It was undoubtedly another prank product made by the twin brothers. Xia Ran heard that they had been busy working on this all summer vacation and had received orders from other people. However, the order was finally discovered by Mrs. Weasley, 
who burned it to ashes and ordered the two brothers to study hard and not do it. These are unprofessional things. This was the case in the original time and space. The two brothers eventually even opened a joke toy store in Diagon Alley, and the business was extremely prosperous. They made money every day and became successful businessmen and entrepreneurs. However, Mrs. Weasley finally reluctantly agreed to the two brothers' request to open a shop instead of going to the Ministry of Magic to work regularly. Of course, she is still at the stage of dissatisfaction. Tell you to throw away these things. Come on, empty your pockets. Come on, you two. No. Shouted Fred and George. Do you want me to do it myself? Mrs. Weasley's eyes were like a tiger's. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is undoubtedly an uncomfortable scene for the twin brothers. In order to make up for the tragedy of their last order being burned, they finally seized the opportunity this time and wanted to smuggle out many prank products from home by participating in the Quidditch World Cup. As a result, they were Mrs. Weasley found out. Mrs. Weasley's flying hex was so intense that prank products swished out from all sorts of unexpected places, including the lining of George's jacket and the cuffs of Fred's jeans. It took us half a year to develop these things. Fred shouted aggrievedly when he saw his mother throwing the things aside and preparing to destroy them directly with a magic spell. It's great to spend half a year on this. Mrs. Weasley said sharply, no wonder you didn't get a good grade in your O.W. L.S. Exam. The O.W. L.S. Exam is an ordinary wizard level exam, an exam that all fifth year students at Hogwarts have to go through. The borough just received the two brothers' report cards a few days ago. To be honest, it was a bit unbearable to witness. We have our own pursuits, don't we? Fred shouted. You can have your own pursuits, but they can't be this unlearned and unskilled thing. Mrs. Weasley said sternly. Ignorant. George shouted angrily, we already have our own customers, and you burned all our orders. Do you want us to be like Percy to be satisfied? Mrs. Weasley's body immediately trembled, as if she couldn't help but tremble. Mr. Weasley's face was also a little pale, his expression was stiff, and his lips were trembling slightly. The atmosphere in the room became silent for a moment, until Sia Ran spoke up to break the quiet atmosphere. Chapter 155 George Fred Sia Ran said sternly, Okay, stop talking. Eat quickly, we will set off after eating. George and Fred also knew that they had said something wrong, but they still could not forgive Mrs. Weasley's behavior. After all, it was the result of their whole summer. The twin brothers buried their heads and drank their porridge in silence without saying a word. Mrs. Weasley's face turned pale, and she did not follow up with any words of admonishment. In short, when Sia Ran and his party left the borough, the atmosphere was not very friendly. Mrs. Weasley still kept a straight face as she kissed Mr. Weasley on the cheek, but the twins took an even more sour attitude, slinging their rucksacks onto their backs and walking out without a word to their mother. Goodbye, and have a good time. Mrs. Weasley said loudly, and finally she shouted at the twin brother's leaving figure, Behave yourself. But the two brothers neither looked back nor answered. I'll send Bill and Charlie on their way at noon, Mrs. Weasley said to Mr. Weasley. Sia Ran, please take care of the children. She looked at Sia Ran and said. Sia Ran smiled and said, It's nothing, I was their professor. Okay, Mrs. Weasley, goodbye, we are leaving now. With that said, Sharon, Mr. Weasley, Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Ginny walked through the dark courtyard, walked out of the burrow, and set off following Fred and George. Although it was late summer and early autumn, the air in the early morning still seemed a bit cold, and the moon still hung high in the sky, casting its cool moonlight. What was Harry thinking about the Quidditch World Cup? How many wizards will arrive? What extraordinary abilities do those Quidditch players who have reached the finals have? Mr. Weasley, Professor Fremont, you just said, what kind of thing is a port key? How to use it? Harry asked curiously. Port key, that's a very inconspicuous thing. Mr. Weasley replied, the function of this thing is to transport wizards from one place to another within a specified time. 
If necessary, if so, it can even transport a large number of people at once. Because of the Quidditch World Cup, the Ministry has placed more than 200 door keys across the UK. The closest one to us is on the top of Stoke Mountain, and we are now where to go. Mr. Weasley pointed ahead, where a large shadow rose behind the village of Otteristi. Catchpole, on the outskirts of which the borough lay. What kind of thing will the port key be? A wooden door? A cave? Or something else? Harry asked curiously. There are all kinds of things. Xia Ran chuckled, of course, the first point of the door key is that the item must be something that looks inconspicuous, so that muggles will not pick them up because of their excitement. It's just thrown around randomly. They will mistake it for trash that has been thrown away carelessly. While they were talking, the group of people had already walked along the dark and damp path in the direction of the village. There was silence everywhere, and they could only hear their own footsteps and the footsteps of others. As they passed through the village, the sky gradually became brighter, the dark night gradually receded, and the morning sun was dimly visible on the horizon. However, the hands and feet of several children seemed to be frozen, and Mr. Weasley kept looking at his watch to confirm the time. Xia Ran walked silently. No one spoke, especially when climbing Stoke Mountain. The dark, sticky grass blades caused a lot of trouble for several people. They often slipped when they stepped on them, and they had no extra energy to speak. After walking for a while, everyone finally stepped on the flat ground. Hermione was the last one to reach the top of the mountain. One of her hands was tightly holding the skirt of her clothes. Hoo hoo. Mr. Weasley took a deep breath, took off his glasses and wiped them with his jersey, and said, Yes, we arrived on time, with ten minutes left. We are not late and missed the allotted time. Now we need to look for the door key, the flying curse does not work on the door key, they are not big, they are all inconspicuous gadgets. Let's go look for them together. Xia Ran said. Everyone spread out and searched separately. However, they had only been searching for less than two minutes when they heard a shout piercing the silent night sky. Xia Ran knew who that person was, or who those two people were, and it was also reflected in the original time and space. Here, Arthur. Come here, son, we found it. On the other side of the mountaintop, two tall figures stood out against the starry night sky. Amos. Said Mr. Weasley, laughing and striding towards the man who called him, followed by the others. Mr. Weasley shook hands with a red-faced wizard with a short brown beard, who held something in his other hand that looked like a moldy old boot. Oh, Xia Ran, are you there? The red-faced wizard said, and shook hands with Xia Ran. Xia Ran had worked in the Ministry of Magic for nearly eight years. This person was almost a colleague of his, so they knew each other. Amos, long time no see, how are you doing? Xia Ran asked with a smile, greeting. Fortunately, everything is fine. It's just that those magical animals have been more active recently and the workload is heavier. The red-faced wizard smiled. Come on, let me introduce you all. This is Amos Diggory. Mr. Weasley said. He works in the Department for the Regulation and Control of Magical Creatures at the Ministry of Magic. This is his son Cedric Diggory. Gory, I think you all know each other, right? You are all classmates at Hogwarts. Cedric Diggory, a student of Hufflepuff at Hogwarts, is about 17 years old. He is a very handsome boy. At Hogwarts, he was also the Quidditch of Hufflepuff House. The captain and seeker of the strange team, he also led Hufflepuff to defeat Gryffindor last year. In the original time and space, Cedric was still a warrior at Hogwarts that year, participated in the Triwizard Tournament, and was one of the final winners. Harry was thrown into the Goblet of Fire by Barty Crouch Jr. Who was disguised as Moody, using magic to confuse the Goblet of Fire, causing the Goblet of Fire to think that there were four schools participating, so Harry did not exist the school's warrior, but Cedric is the true warrior of Hogwarts. Hello, Professor Fremont, Cedric said, turning to look at his classmates and smiling, Hi, hello. Ron, Harry, Hermione, Ginny, everyone said hi, but Fred and George didn't say anything, just nodded. 
several others knew it because the Hufflepuff Quidditch team led by Cedric defeated the Gryffindor Quidditch team last year. A few more pleasantries followed, and Mr. Amos Diggory was surprised again on Harry's account, Harry was already used to this, and defeated Harry Potter for his son. I feel extremely proud. This embarrassed both Harry and Cedric. The time is almost up. Sia Ran said quickly, interrupting Mr. Amos Diggory's proud words and letting others get out of this embarrassing situation. Do you know who we are waiting for? Apart from the Weasley family and the Diggory family, are there any other wizarding families nearby? Chapter 156 No, the love goods were there a week ago, and the faucets didn't get tickets, said Mr. Diggory. As far as I know, there's no one else in the area, right, Arthur? As far as I know, there should be none, Mr. Weasley replied. Okay, then there is less than a minute left, let us all take our places. Sia Ran said. Harry and Hermione suddenly looked confused. You all need to touch the door key, just like this, just hold out a finger, there are too many of us, everyone squeezes in and tries to let everyone touch the door key. Sia Ran explained road. Since everyone was carrying large bulging backpacks, the ten of them managed to gather around the old boot that Amos Diggory was holding. This scene looks a little weird. Ten people, men and women, old and young, including three adults, gathered tightly in a circle, holding on to a tattered old boot in the dim light, quietly waiting for something, a cold blast. The breeze blew in the early morning, and no one said anything, but if a muggle happened to walk by at this time, what a weird scene it would be. 3. Mr. Weasley lowered his eyes, glanced at his pocket watch, and muttered in a low voice, 2. 1. Soon after, Sia Ran suddenly felt something pushing hard behind him, or some rope in front of him pulling him tightly. In an instant, his feet lifted off the ground and he flew up. His vision was hazy and he couldn't see anything, but he could feel Ginny and Cedric beside him, their shoulders bumping against his from time to time. Moreover, the old boot seemed to have a magical power, indeed there was a magic power, pulling him tightly. And the fingers touching the old boot seemed to be stuck, and he could not get rid of it at all, although Xia Ran had no idea of getting rid of it. After all, this was a port key journey, and there was no place to complain if something went wrong. At this time, his eyes suddenly lit up, and he saw countless tents in the distance, colorful and green, like mountains with bright summer flowers. He also saw Fred, George, Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Ginny fall to the ground, and the port key also fell to the ground. Sia Ran, Mr. Weasley, Mr. Diggory, and Cedric were barely still standing, but their hair was disheveled and askew due to the wind. 5 and 7, from Stoat Mountain. A relatively deep voice said. Sia Ran raised his eyes and saw that this was a swamp area that was filled with hazy fog and looked extremely desolate. In front of the group of people, stood two tired and gloomy wizards. One of them was holding a large piece of gold. Table, the other holding a thick roll of parchment and a quill. Both men were dressed like muggles, what they thought muggles looked like, the man with the gold watch wore a tweed suit and a pair of thigh-high rubber galoshes his colleague. The man with the parchment and quill, mixed a Scottish custom skirt with a South American cloak. Good morning, Basil, said Mr. Weasley, picking up the old boot and handing it to the kilted wizard. The man threw the old boots directly into a large box next to him, which contained used door keys. Sia Ran also saw an old newspaper, an empty can and a football full of holes. Hello, Arthur. Mr. Basil said tiredly, not on duty. Well, good luck, good luck. We were here all night yesterday, but you'd better get out of the way, Five o'clock a large group of people will be coming from the Black Forest in a moment. Wait a minute, let me find out where your camp is. Weasley. Weasley. Mr. Basil searched for it on the parchment list and said, Go about a quarter of a mile, and the first field in front is. The camp administrator is Mr. Roberts. Sia Ran, let me look for your camp. As a former member of the Ministry of Magic, Sia Ran and Basil also knew each other, although they were not very familiar with him. Sia Ran smiled and said, No need to look for it, Basil. I can come to the Quidditch World Cup because of Mr. Weasley's favor. I am with them. I see, said Basil, 
Mr. Diggory, you're not coming with us, are you? No, I booked the tickets myself. It's a big bag of gold galleons. It's really heartbreaking, but the Quidditch World Cup is always worth it, said Mr. Diggory. Okay, Mr. Diggory. Well, you are in the second field, looking for Mr. Payne. Mr. Basil said. Thank you, Basil. The group walked through the desolate swamp area. Thick fog obscured their vision and almost nothing could be seen. After walking for about twenty minutes, a door gradually appeared in front of everyone, and then a small stone house. Behind the stone house, hundreds of strange-shaped tents were erected, and they went up the gentle slope of the large field. It extended to the depths of a dark forest on the horizon. Sharon and Mr. Weasley said goodbye to Diggory and his son and walked towards the door of the stone house. There was a man standing at the door, looking back at the tents. He was the only real muggle in this large area. To be honest, Xia Ran couldn't figure out why the Ministry of Magic would arrange for a muggle to be the camp administrator here. Can't muggles see the strangeness in the many wizards coming and going? Wouldn't it be much more convenient to find a random wizard in the Ministry of Magic to fill this position? There is no need to cast the forgetting spell at any time. It can only be said that the planners of the Ministry of Magic have something in their minds. The man heard the footsteps of Xia Ran and his group, and immediately turned his head to look at them. Good morning, sir, are you Mr. Roberts? Xia Ran greeted. Good morning. Mr. Weasley looked even more energetic. Good morning. That's right, I'm Roberts. Mr. Roberts asked, Who are you? Weasley, the two tents were booked two days ago, are they available? Mr. Weasley said. Yes, Mr. Roberts said, looking at a list posted on the door. You have a place by the woods where you can stay for only one night, right? Yes, Mr. Weasley replied. Well, can you pay it now? Mr. Roberts said. Ah, uh, Okay, no problem. Mr. Weasley said. He took a few steps back and left the small stone house, motioning for Harry to come to him and help him count the money. The currency used in the wizarding world is not consistent with the muggle world. Seeing this, Xia Ran shook her head even more at the Ministry of Magic's decision to use muggles as administrators. Don't they know about the wizarding statute of secrecy? Or do they know and don't mind at all? However, this is a grand event in the wizarding world, the Quidditch World Cup. Why should we use muggle currency to pay fees? Shouldn't it be wizard currency? Xia Ran felt that there might be something he didn't understand, but he was too lazy to think about it. It had nothing to do with him anyway, and he was no longer an employee of the Ministry of Magic. Chapter 157 While Xia Ran was shaking her head inwardly, Harry had already helped Mr. Weasley identify the muggle currency in his hand, counted the fees that needed to be paid, and handed it to the camp manager, Mr. Roberts. Are you a foreigner? Mr. Roberts took the banknote and glanced at Mr. Weasley suspiciously. He noticed that Mr. Weasley couldn't recognize the banknote just now. Foreigner. Mr. Weasley seemed surprised. You're not the only one who can't figure out the money, said Mr. Roberts, looking carefully at Mr. Weasley. Just ten minutes ago, two people tried to pay me the size of a hubcap. Here are the gold coins. Oh, really? Mr. Weasley looked a little embarrassed. Mr. Roberts fumbled for change in a tin can, ready to change. There have never been so many people. Never. Mr. Roberts said suddenly, turning his eyes again to look at the mist-filled venue with a puzzled expression. Hundreds of people have reserved tents, and people keep coming. But I haven't heard any news about any big event being held here. Is something wrong? Mr. Weasley asked uneasily, reaching out to take the change, but Mr. Roberts didn't give it to him. Yes. Mr. Roberts said thoughtfully, there are people from everywhere, you know. Countless foreigners. No, there are many weirdos, I don't know which country they are from, do you understand, sir? There's a guy walking around in a pleated skirt and a South American cape, and I really doubt. Can't you? Mr. Weasley asked eagerly. Well, it's not that it's not possible, but it's like. I don't know exactly. In short. Mr. Roberts frowned and said, they seem to know each other and are attending a large party. 
But why should the party be held in a place like this? At this moment, a wizard in bloomers suddenly fell from the sky and landed at the door of Mr. Roberts' stone house. Forgotten. He pointed his wand at Mr. Roberts and muttered, using the forgetting charm. In the blink of an eye, Mr. Roberts' doubtful eyes disappeared, his brows relaxed, and his face showed a dazed and indifferent expression. Xia Ran knew that that was exactly what happened and a person's memory was changed. I'll give you a plan of the camp, Mr. Roberts said calmly, and some change for you. Thank you very much, said Mr. Weasley. The wizard and bloomers accompanied them towards the gate of the camp. He looked very tired, his chin was unshaven and livid, and there were purple shadows under his eyes. When Mr. Roberts couldn't hear them, the wizard whispered to Sharon and Mr. Weasley, he gave me a lot of trouble. In order to keep him in a good mood and not doubt this or that, I do it every day. The oblivion charm would have to be recited a dozen times. Ludo Bagman would only be doing a disservice, walking around talking loudly about bludgers and the wraith, completely ignoring the ministry's injunction to beware of muggles and ensure safety. God, I really wish this would end soon. See you later, Arthur and Sia ran. After he finished complaining, he disappeared and disappeared. Why does the Ministry of Magic use muggles as administrators? Xia Ran asked. Who knows? Maybe for some reason, said Mr. Weasley. Xia Ran frowned slightly. I thought Mr. Bagman was the director of the sports department of the Ministry of Magic. He should know not to talk about bludgers around muggles, right? Ginny said in surprise. Yeah, that's right. Mr. Weasley smiled, Ludo has always been a little insensitive and careless about safety issues, but you can't find a more passionate person to be in charge of sports. The leader of the sports department. You have to know that he originally played Quidditch for England, and he is the best batsman in the history of the Vimborn Hornets. While talking, the group passed through the gate and walked into the camp. They walked slowly on the mist-shrouded field, passing between two long rows of tents. Most of the tents looked nothing special. It was obvious that their owners had put a lot of thought into making them as beautiful as possible. They are just like muggle tents, but many tents are self-defeating. They accidentally go too far and add chimneys, weather vanes and other superfluous features, making them somewhat nondescript. And there were several tents that were obviously enchanted at first glance, so it was no wonder that Mr. Roberts became suspicious. In the center of the venue, there is a tent that is particularly conspicuous. It is very lavishly made of a large number of strips of silk, and it is like a small palace. There are also several live peacocks tied at the entrance. After walking a little further, they saw another tent set up as high as a four-story building with several turrets beside it. On the other side, there is a tent with a garden in front of the door. There is a bird bath, a sundial, and a fountain. Although the sparrow is small, it has all the internal organs. It's always like this, Mr. Weasley said with a smile, when people get together, they can't help but want to show off. Ah, here we are, look, this is our tent. The group of people came to the edge of the woods at the end of the field. There was an open space with a small sign on the ground that read, Wesley. Apparently, they spelled Weasley wrong, or got it wrong. Mr. Weasley seemed a little embarrassed but he didn't care about it for a moment and said happily, this place couldn't be better. The golf course is on the other side of the woods, and it couldn't be any closer. People took their backpacks off their shoulders and dropped them on the ground. Okay. Mr. Weasley said excitedly, strictly speaking, no magic is allowed, there are ministry regulations, because there are too many people here, then we have to put up the tent ourselves. It shouldn't be too difficult. I think muggles do this. They don't have magic. I've always thought. By the way, Harry and Hermione, you should have experience, right? Do you think we should wear to start? Mr. Weasley in particular seemed to be in high spirits. Harry and Hermione looked a little embarrassed. Hermione couldn't help but said, Mr. Weasley, I have never set up a tent before. My parents did it before. Harry also had a look of helplessness on his face. During the holidays, the Desleys would not take him out. They would rather leave him with the neighbor's old lady, Mrs. Fig. Harry didn't know yet that Mrs. Fig was the one Dumbledore arranged to protect Harry at Privet Drive. 
that's it. Mr. Weasley said regretfully, and then became excited again, it doesn't matter, we just have to find our way slowly. We still have plenty of time. I know better. Come on, help me. Xia Ran smiled. He had used a muggle tent to travel before, but that was all a lifetime ago. Okay, Xia Ran, let me help you. Do you want this? Mr. Weasley took out a pole with great interest. No, Mr. Weasley, leave that one alone first and come one by one. Xia Ran said quickly, Harry, Hermione, come and help. He had to call Harry and Hermione, because the tent was completely built by hand, and Harry and Hermione were a little more familiar with it. Although the Weasley family were full of enthusiasm, it really made things worse. Mr. Weasley thought he had to use it every time. When it came to the tack hammer, I was extremely excited. In the end, after a lot of effort, they finally set up two two-person tents that were barely passable. Xia Ran took a few steps back and admired the masterpieces of the others. She breathed out and sweat rolled down her forehead. This was too strenuous. Chapter 158 Fortunately, I have been busy for almost an hour and finally successfully set it up. Xia Ran sighed, it was not easy. Everyone took a few steps back to admire the fruits of their own hands. Harry thought to himself that no one who looked at these tents would guess that they were built by wizards. However, the problem was that once Bill and Charlie arrived, there would be ten people in total. How could two tents like this be used? Maybe it can fit ten people. Hermione also discovered this problem, and she looked at Charlie and Mr. Weasley with doubtful eyes. Xia Ran smiled slightly and said, you'll find out when you get in. At this time, Mr. Weasley got on all fours and got into the first tent. It might get a little crowded, shouted Mr. Weasley, but I think everyone can squeeze in and have a look. Harry, Hermione, Ron, Ginny and the twin brothers Fred and George all got in. Xia Ran heard the exclamations coming from the tent outside, and he immediately smiled. Xia Ran bent down and got under the tent curtain. What he walked into was an old-fashioned three-bedroom apartment with a bathroom and kitchen. This tent is impressively cast with a traceless expansion spell, which is a kind of space magic that can expand the space inside an object by chanting a spell and casting a spell. For example, this tent looks like it can only accommodate two or three people, but in the end it doesn't. It became a three-bedroom apartment. The invisible stretch charm is very useful in many cases, but the Ministry of Magic also controls this spell very strictly, and the use of the invisible stretch charm for private purposes is strictly prohibited. Of course, the production of tents and other items like this is licensed by the Ministry of Magic. Well, the car that Mr. Weasley once modified also used the traceless stretching charm, but it was not licensed by the Ministry of Magic, so it was actually illegal. That's why Mrs. Weasley said that if Mr. Weasley if he leads a team to search his home, he will definitely take him to Azkaban prison. But the only strange thing is that the layout of the tent room is more suitable for the elderly, and there is even a pungent cat smell in the air. Well, the smell is a bit strong, but it's only temporary. We can go back tomorrow. Mr. Weasley said awkwardly, then looked at the four bunk beds in the bedroom, shook his head and sighed, I borrowed it from Perkins in the office, poor old guy, he had a bad back and can't camp anymore. Xia Ran picked up a dusty kettle from the side, opened the lid and looked inside, and said, we need some water. On the map that Muggle gave us, there is a water tap marked on it. Ron said, taking out the map and looking at it carefully, on the other side of the field, who wants to come with me to fetch water? He looked at the other people in the tent. Okay, then you, Harry and Hermione will go get us some water, and then. Xia Ran handed the kettle in her hand to Ron. Well, the rest of us need to pick up some. Get firewood and prepare for life, it will be noon soon. But we have a stove, why? Ron asked. However, his question was interrupted by Mr. Weasley. Mr. Weasley said happily and eagerly, Ron, don't forget the safety regulations for muggles. Real muggles always stay in the wild when camping. I've seen people lighting fires outdoors, but I've never experienced it myself, so it's just right. Okay. Ron said helplessly. He knew his father's love for muggles. 
This could be seen from the pile of muggle items in the burrow's warehouse. Let's go visit the girls' tent. Mr. Weasley suggested. They exited the three-bedroom tent and got into another tent. They found that this tent was only slightly smaller than the boys' tent. A little bit, but it doesn't smell like cat at all. Instead, it smells fresher, giving people a relaxed and happy feeling. Afterwards, the trio of Harry, Ron, and Hermione set out across the camp to fetch water, carrying the kettle and the two stewpots handed to them by Mr. Weasley. Sia Ran and Mr. Weasley, as well as the three brothers Fred, George, and Ginny, entered the woods nearby and began to collect firewood. At this time, not long after the sun had risen, the mist gradually dissipated, and Sia Ran saw tents in all directions, as far as the eye could see. So many people. He couldn't help but sigh. This is the Quidditch World Cup, Sia Ran, one of the most important events in the wizarding world in the world. Mr. Weasley said with a smile, having picked up a bundle of dry firewood and hugged it in his arms. Quidditch World Cup, I really hope I can participate in this kind of event one day. Ginny said with bright eyes. George laughed and said, Little girl, you are still early, and there are very few female players in the teams that can enter the Quidditch World Cup, let alone teams like the Irish team and Bulgaria that have reached the World Cup finals. When Sia Ran and the others arrived, the Quidditch World Cup had already reached the finals, and the two Quidditch teams participating in the finals were the Irish national team and the Bulgarian national team. Just watch, George, I'm going to surprise you, and I hope your jaw won't drop to the floor by then. Ginny said calmly. I'm waiting to watch your game, sister. George said with a smile. At this time, several people had arrived on a hillside in the woods. Ah, is there something wrong with my eyes? Why did everything in that place turn green? Fred rubbed his eyes. In the camping area further away, all the tents were covered with a thick layer of clover. From where Sia Ran and the others stood, it looked like countless strange green hills had emerged from the ground. The logo of the Irish national team, the clover. Mr. Weasley said, I also support the Irish national team. Of course, Crumb of the Bulgarian national team is also a genius, a truly top Quidditch genius. I think the people in the ministry must be unhappy. Sia Ran smiled. Ha, huh, that's for sure. Mr. Weasley laughed and said, but at this moment, it's already the finals, what's the big deal about decorating your own tent? We should always allow Ireland national team supporters to express their support boldly. And you see, the Bulgarians also have their tents fully hung. Mr. Weasley said, pointing to another camp. Sia Ran looked over and saw that the tents in the camp were filled with flags. The Bulgarian flag white, green, and red fluttered in the breeze. However, there are no plants covering the tents here. Each tent has the same poster on it. It shows a very gloomy face with thick black eyebrows. Sia Ran used a telescope to see clearly. He he handed it to Ginny again, of course, the wizard's pictures are all movable, they are not dead things, but this person's picture is very gloomy, and his face only blinks and frowns. Crumb. Ginny shouted excitedly, Victor Crumb, the Bulgarian seeker, one of the most powerful seekers in the world. And he is still very young. Well, my dear sister, it's time to give me the telescope to take a look at, Fred said lazily. It's on the shelves. I hope everyone supports genuine subscription. There will be more updates in the next few days. Jin Liang Duok Siedian. Chapter, 159 Here you go. Ginny angrily pushed the telescope into Fred's arms. But his look is too gloomy. Xia Ran shook his head. Countless Klum blinked and frowned, and the people in Bulgaria could bear it. There really is no limit to chasing stars. Gloomy. George smiled, Professor Fremont, who cares what Crumb looks like. He is amazing. As long as he can ensure that his level does not decline, and because he is particularly young, he can at least maintain there are still more than ten years of peak golden period. If he can lead the Bulgarian national team to win the Quidditch World Cup again, the Bulgarians will really worship him like a god. Oh, what a pity, Crumb is not from our country. Fred said sadly, the England national team didn't even get out of the group line. 
It's so embarrassing. When they heard about this, Ginny and George also looked like they were sighing. Okay, kids, don't just chat. The sun has risen. Quickly collect some firewood and go back. I think Ron, Harry, and Hermione should have returned from fetching water soon. Weasley said Mr. They each carried a bundle of firewood back to the camp. When passing by the surrounding tents, Sia Ran found that many adult wizards had just gotten up at this time, yawned and came out of the tents, and started to make breakfast. Some were looking around furtively. When they saw that there were no Ministry of Magic employees around, they immediately lit the fire with their wands some were still striking matches with doubtful expressions on their faces, as if they thought it would definitely not work. Seeing the way they were using matches, Xia Ran almost couldn't help laughing. He tightened his cheeks and hurried over. In the camp, wizards came from all over the world. There were male African wizards sitting there chatting and laughing loudly from time to time. There was something like a hair roasting in the purple bonfire. There was another group of middle-aged American witches who were talking in a low voice. A shiny banner hung high between their tents, Salem Witch Academy. That's a magic school in another country. Sia Ran also saw some yellow people speaking various prophecies. When he passed by an ancient tomb-shaped tent, he heard familiar voices coming from the tent. He stopped briefly and then left again. After all, he didn't know the wizard in this tent at all. When they passed a square tent, a familiar figure of a witch suddenly emerged from the tent. She was wearing a wizard hat and a pair of glasses on the bridge of her nose. Her eyes were no longer as serious as before. It was Minerva McGonagall, the transfiguration professor at Hogwarts. Professor Fremont, Arthur, when did you come? Professor McGonagall said hello. She has always liked Quidditch games. When she was in school, she would attend almost every Quidditch game, such as of course she couldn't miss the Quidditch World Cup finals. Professor McGonagall, Fred, George, and Ginny called. Sia Ran smiled and said, I just came here not long ago, I just arrived this morning. Professor McGonagall nodded, looked around, and lowered her voice, You guys come over here after lunch, Sia Ran, you and Arthur, Bill and Charlie, then Sirius, Remus, Alastor and the others will be there. Sia Ran and Mr. Weasley nodded immediately. They had not forgotten how dangerous things were lurking in the dark. The Quidditch World Cup was not a time to completely relax. They then returned to their tent, and the trio of Ron, Harry, and Hermione had not yet returned from fetching water. Okay, let's start making a fire. I have matches here. Mr. Weasley took out a box of matches from his pocket and said enthusiastically, Can this gadget really light a fire? He took out a match and eagerly slid it on one side of the matchbox. Ouch! Mr. Weasley struck a match, screamed immediately, and threw it away. Sia Ran held her forehead and said, Mr. Weasley, don't throw it away after lighting it. As he spoke, he took a match and lightly struck it on one side of the matchbox. With a snap, the match ignited immediately. He placed the lit match under the firewood pile, and the dry firewood and weeds ignited immediately. Got up. How amazing! exclaimed Mr. Weasley. Sia Ranchin said that if muggles saw the wizard's actions, they would think it was magical. After they lit the fire, they waited for a long time before Ron, Harry, and Hermione came back, all carrying water. Why have you been there for so long? George couldn't help complaining. I met a few familiar people. Ron replied, putting down the water, what's for lunch? I'm a little hungry. Then it took you so long. Fred rolled his eyes. By this time, the fire was already quite strong, so they started cooking rice, frying eggs, and cooking sausages. The aroma immediately filled the air, and the stomachs of several children were growling. Wait a little longer, it will be ready soon. Sia Ran said, flipping the other side of the eggs to avoid burning them. Mr. Weasley looked at his watch and said, why haven't Bill and Charlie arrived yet? It's okay, we can still eat more if they don't come. Anyway, they must have eaten enough at home before coming, Ron said. Who said we were full? At this time, two figures in the woods walked over quickly, it was Bill and Charlie. Operat just now, Dad. 
Charlie said loudly, Ah, great, there is delicious food. I'm so hungry. Didn't your mother give you anything to eat? Mr. Weasley said, taking out a plate and filling it with Xia Rant's baked eggs. Bill smiled bitterly, she said we got up too late and had nothing to eat, so she asked us to come over and make something to eat. Then you come here and eat it directly. Ron rolled his eyes and said. Okay, brother, step aside and make a place for the second brother. Charlie said, and a group of people crowded together and sat down together. However, while they were grilling sausages and eggs and eating. There were many ministry officials coming and going from time to time on the road nearby, their tent was located next to a road leading to the stadium, those officials enthusiastically greeted way Mr. Sly greeted Xia Ran. Mr. Weasley and Sharon kept making introductions, mainly for Harry and Hermione. The Weasley children were very familiar with the people in the ministry and could not arouse their interest. That's Cuthbert Mockridge, the director of the Goblin Liaison Office. This is Gilbert Wimper, who works on the Experimental Spells Committee. Ah, you mean those horns on his head? It was an accident while experimenting with a spell, but it was nothing serious. It had been going on for a while, and they seemed to want to see what the subsequent effects of these horns would be. Hello, Arnie. Arnold Peacegood is a memory canceller and a member of the team that reverses accidental magical events. That's Bode and Crocker, they are the silent people. The silent people? What are the silent people? What do they mainly do? Harry and Hermione asked curiously. Xia Ran replied, they are from the Department of Mysteries, top secret. I don't know what they are doing, but the Department of Mysteries is the most mysterious department of the Ministry of Magic. What they do may be quite meaningful. Chapter, 160 After waiting for the officials from the Ministry of Magic to pass by, most people began to live and cook in front of their tents. Xia Ran whispered, By the way, Bill and Charlie, we will go to the other side of the camp together later to discuss something. He was talking about what happened with Professor McGonagall earlier. Okay. Brothers Bill and Charlie nodded. They have also joined the Order of the Phoenix. After all, they are both adult wizards who have graduated for many years, and their magic values are not weak. Fred and George immediately raised their hands and said, We're going together. Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Ginny also moved. Nonsense. Mr. Weasley reprimanded and said, You can just go to school and study in peace. These matters are not something you can interfere with now. Seeing Fred and George, he wanted to open his mouth to argue again, and continued, Wait for you. Let's talk about it when we become adults. Several people had no choice but to hang their heads in depression and compete with the grilled sausages in their hands. Dad, Xia Ran, who do you think that person is? Charlie said suddenly. Xia Ran turned around and looked over, only to see a man striding towards him. He was very eye catching. He said hello to other wizards from time to time on the way. He smiled broadly and seemed to be very popular. Ha! Huh. Mr. Weasley said with a smile, the most important person at the moment, Ludo Bagman. Several children also hurriedly looked over and saw a majestic man striding over. He was wearing a long Quidditch robe with a wide yellow and black stripe, and a splash of ink on his chest. Holding a huge wasp, it seems that his former strong physique has begun to decline. The robe stretched tightly over his big belly. Just imagine that when he played Quidditch for England, his belly must not have gained weight. Ludo Bagman's nose was flat, as if it had been broken by a bludger in a Quidditch match, but his round blue eyes and short blonde hair, and his red face made him look like an overly large boy. Hoo ho! Ludo Bagman shouted happily. He walked like a naughty child, jumping up and down, as if there were springs under his feet. It was obvious that he was in a state of extreme excitement. Arthur, old man. Oh, Xia Ran is here too. I heard that you went to Hogwarts to become a professor. Congratulations. Bagman came to the side of the bonfire and said breathlessly, What a beautiful weather. Ah. Look, there are blue skies and white clouds, right? The weather is really great. Where can you find such weather? There must be no clouds at night. The preparations for the entire Quidditch World Cup are in good order. 
I basically have nothing to do. He is the director of the Department of Physical Education and Sports at the Ministry of Magic. Excuse me. Director, give way. Suddenly a group of haggard-looking Ministry of Magic officials hurried past. There were signs in the distance that someone was playing with magic fire, and purple flames jumped up. More than twenty people feet tall. Ah! Bagman quickly moved to the side of the road. The Ministry of Magic officials passing by finally seemed to cast resentful glances at him. He shook hands with Xia Ran and Mr. Weasley. Ah, yes. Mr. Weasley said with a smile, these are some of my children. Bagman looked at Harry and Hermione suspiciously. They are not redheads. Arthur, let me ask you. Could it be? Of course, of course they are not. Mr. Weasley introduced, these red-haired ones are my children, Fred. Ah, uh, no, George, I'm sorry, that's Fred. He had the wrong twin. And Bill, Charlie, Ron, my daughter Ginny, this is Ron's friend, Hermione Granger, and Harry Potter. Harry Potter. Bagman suddenly exclaimed, and his eyes immediately glanced at the scar on Harry's forehead. Harry had a look of helplessness. Although he was used to this, he still felt helpless every time he encountered it. After all, people paid attention to his lightning scar, which would also cause trouble to him. Mr. Weasley continued, Come, let me introduce you all. This is Ludo Bagman. You know who he is. It is thanks to him that we got such a good ticket. Bagman smiled broadly and waved his hand, as if to say it was nothing. Want to place a bet on the game, Arthur? Xia ran, which team do you think will win? Who will score the first goal? Bagman asked eagerly, jingling the pockets of his yellow and black robe. I've convinced Roddy Ponting to bet me that Bulgaria will score the first goal, I gave him very high odds because I considering Ireland's number three forward is the best I've seen in years, little Agatha Timms put up half her eel farm stock on a bet that the game would last a week. It turned out that he was looking for gambling friends. Oh, okay then. Mr. Weasley seemed to be taken aback and said slowly, let me think about it. Well, I'll bet Ireland to win for a gold galleons, okay? One gold galleon? Ludo Bagman was obviously a little disappointed, but he quickly regained his interest, very good, very good, willing to place a bet. Xia Ran, do you want to place a bet? He looked at Xia Ran expectantly. Xia Ran had no intention of gambling, and he knew that Ludo Bagman was a big gambler. He disappeared in the original time and space because he could not pay off his debts, and avoided the angry creditors for a period of time. No, I'm not interested in this. Xia Ran said without interest. Okay, okay. Bagman had no choice but to regretfully accept one of Mr. Weasley's gold galleons. Is there anyone else willing to bet? They're too young to gamble, said Mr. Weasley. Molly wouldn't want to. We put down thirty-seven gold galleons, fifteen silver sickles, and three copper nuts. Fred immediately interrupted his father and said, and he and George quickly took out their money, bet on Ireland to win. But Victor Crumb will catch the snitch. Oh, and by the way, we'll also have a fake wand. Fake wand? Bagman took the fake wand from Fred's hand. The wand squeaked loudly and turned into a little rubber. Mr. Bagman laughed, his childlike face full of tears. Excited. That's great. That's great. I haven't seen such a realistic fake thing in many years. I'll buy it for five gold galleons. Children, Mr. Weasley said in a low voice, I don't want you to gamble, and Molly would not want to see you gambling, this is all your savings. Don't be a spoiler, Arthur. Ludo Bagman said gruffly, rattling the money in his pockets with excitement, they have grown up and know what they want. Do you think Ireland will win, but Clum can catch the snitch? No way, kids, no way. Well, I'm going to give you great odds. And add that funny dick to the mix. The fake wand was exchanged for five gold galleons, so shall we. At this time Xia Ran spoke. Chapter, 161 Xia Ran coughed lightly and said, Fred, George, are you betting too much? Gambling should be done in moderation. 
There is no need to spend all your savings on it. He knows the outcome of this Quidditch World Cup, if nothing unexpected happens, after all, Voldemort is completely resurrected this time, and there is no guarantee that something unexpected will happen during the World Cup. Sirius, Lupin, Moody, etc. Therefore, people are on call at any time. He, Mr. Weasley, Bill, Charlie, and Professor McGonagall are also members of the Order of the Phoenix within the scope of being on call, but he is not interested in gambling, so he is unwilling to participate in Bog. Man's Bet Moreover, according to the original process of time and space, Ludo Bagman was completely defeated in the end, and even losing almost no money was not enough. He even had to disappear for a period of time. From Xia Ran's point of view, it was acceptable for Mr. Weasley to gamble for fun, but the twin brothers were too impulsive and erroneous in considering all their savings. But if they were not allowed to participate in the bet directly, Xia Ran was not the parents or elders of the twin brothers, not to mention that what their father, Mr. Weasley, had just said was refuted, so he decided to persuade the Weasley family in a subtle way. Twin brothers. It doesn't matter, we are confident. We have been studying this for a long time this summer. George said with a smile. Okay, Fred Weasley, George Weasley. Ludo Bagman quickly took out a notebook and quill from the pocket of his yellow and black robe, and scrawled the names of the twin brothers, as if he was afraid that they would regret it. Mr. Weasley looked on helplessly. Xia Ran also shook her head and simply said no more. Anyway, the twin brothers were still at Hogwarts and had not yet graduated to find jobs on their own, so the Weasleys would not be cut off from their pocket money supply. In daily life at Hogwarts, house elves are busy in the kitchen, and all kinds of food, snacks and drinks do not cost the teachers and students a penny. If it doesn't work, just spend money to buy a lesson. It's done. George took the small strip of parchment handed to him by Bagman and stuffed it into the front of his robe. Bagman turned back to Mr. Weasley with great joy. Can you do me a favor, Arthur? I've been looking for Jerome Patton. My equal in Bulgaria is giving us advice, but I don't understand a word he says. Jerome Tom will solve this problem. Although he is not as good at speaking 150 languages as Barty Crouch was before, he can still speak about 40 or 50 languages. Barty Crouch was the former director of the Department of International Magical Exchange and Cooperation of the Ministry of Magic. He later died at the hands of his son, Barty Crouch Jr. And his body was not found. The Ministry of Magic promoted another person with background. A meritorious wizard came to power and served as the director of the Department of International Magical Exchange and Cooperation. His name was Jerome Barton, and Percy was now working under Barton. So Mr. Weasley's expression became subtle and he said, I'll try, but I haven't seen Jerome Barton today either. Please give me a grilled sausage. Thank you, Sia Ran. Bagman sat down on the grass next to them and said while eating the sausage handed over by Sia Ran, it seems that one of your children is here under Barton, right? I saw his red hair, and I think except for your Weasley family, the red-haired wizards from other families are not so conspicuous. Uh, yes, yes. Mr. Weasley said a little uneasily. Family scandals should not be made public. He couldn't just say that Percy and I had severed our relationship, right? Bagman said carelessly, what's his name? He seems quite capable. I heard Barton talk about him, and he had many compliments. Really? Mr. Weasley forced a smile. Bagman suddenly looked around, lowered his voice and said, Arthur, I have to say something about you. With the current situation in the Ministry of Magic, I think it's best for you to distance yourself from Dumbledore. You know, you are pure blood, you should not be limited to such a small department. You can go to larger departments and platforms to develop. This time Mr. Weasley just smiled without comment and did not answer. Okay, it's up to you. Bagman said casually. At this time Bill handed Bagman a cup of tea. Xia Ran, how is your career as a professor? How do you feel about teaching children? He suddenly looked at Xia Ran and asked with a smile, I was really taken aback when I heard that you resigned to apply for the Hogwarts professorship. I'm surprised, I didn't expect you to actually become the combat professor at Hogwarts. It's okay. 
Xia Ran smiled, it's two completely different feelings from working in the Ministry of Magic. Alas. Bagman sighed, his round eyes widened a little, showing a regretful expression, I'm so sorry that I'm too old, otherwise I would really have to enter Hogwarts to listen to you. Lecture. Ha, huh, do you see what I'm capable of? Xia Ran laughed. There were two sudden snaps on the ground, and the two wizards operat and appeared beside their campfire. Ha, just as I was talking about you, here you are. Jerome. Bagman laughed. This middle-aged male wizard formed a very sharp contrast with Ludo Bagman, who was sitting lazily on the grass wearing the old robes of the hornets. Jerome Barton is a man in his fifties or sixties. His waist is slightly stooped, but his face is very serious and unsmiling. At first glance, he looks like a very strict and self-disciplined person. However, the Weasleys all looked unnatural and felt extremely awkward. Because next to Jerome Barton there is a tough-looking wizard, who seems to be imitating Jerome Barton. With the same unsmiling expression and the same serious expression, turning a blind eye to the Weasley family who are standing in front of him. He is none other than Percy Weasley. After looking at Jerome Barton, the newly appointed director of the Department of International Magical Exchange and Cooperation, and making a vague look at Percy, Xia Ran focused on the barbecue food again. He was not full yet. Several members of the Weasley family also pretended to be busy with their own affairs. Harry and Hermione looked at each other and pretended not to see Percy. Sit down and rest, Jerome. Bagman said happily, patting the grass beside him. No, thank you, Ludo. Jerome said, with a hint of impatience in his voice, I've been looking for you everywhere, and the Bulgarians insisted that we add twelve more seats to the top box. Oh, it turns out that's what they want. Bagman suddenly said, I thought that guy wanted to borrow a pair of tweezers from me. His accent was too strong. He shook his head as he spoke. Chapter, 162 Hello Xia Ran. Jerome greeted Xia Ran first, and Xia Ran responded. Jerome then cast his serious gaze on Mr. Weasley and said, By the way, I have always wanted to tell you something, Arthur. Ali Bashir raised a provocation and he wanted to talk to you. Talk about your ban on flying carpets. Mr. Weasley immediately sighed heavily. I sent him an owl last week to talk specifically about this. I've told him a hundred times that carpets are classified as muggle artifacts on the prohibited magical items register, but he will do you listen. Mr. Weasley said with a wry smile. He is the director of the Office for the Suppression of Misuse of Muggle Artifacts in the Ministry of Magic. I doubt he will. Jerome said still seriously. He can't wait to export flying carpets here. He seems to think that Britain will be his next market. Huh, is he kidding? Bagman laughed. Flying carpets are good, but how can they replace flying broomsticks? This is something that will never happen, right? Alibaba believes there is a niche in the family transportation market, Jerome said. Okay, let's not talk about the Bulgarians. How about it, are you busy enough, Jerome? Bagman's tone seemed very relaxed and cheerful. Very busy. Jerome said in a stiff tone, it is not an easy task to organize and arrange door keys on five continents, Ludo. I take it you are all keen for this to be over soon? Mr. Weasley asked. Ludo Bagman seemed taken aback. Would you rather? Oh, no, I have never been so happy. However, there is no hope ahead, right, Jerome? Well, there are still many activities to be organized, right, Xia Ran? Bagman laughed chuckled. Jerome immediately raised his eyebrows at Bagman. We promise not to announce it to the public until all the details, of course, Xia Ran is a professor at Hogwarts, he is an insider, our complete, Ludo. Oh, details. Bagman waved his hand disapprovingly, as if to ward off a swarm of mosquitoes, they signed, right? There is no room for regret, even if Dumbledore. You know, Gerald hmm. But I'm willing to bet you that these kids are going to find out about this soon. I mean, this is going to happen at Hogwarts. Ludo, you should know that we need to meet those Bulgarians. Jerome said seriously, interrupting Bagman, by the way, Percy, don't say hello to your family. 
He finally looked at Percy, who had been staying quietly beside him. No, Mr. Barton, I have nothing to do with them anymore. Percy said stiffly, still not turning to look at the Weasley family. The Weasley children, Bill, Charlie, Fred, George, Ron, Ginny, Harry and Hermione all showed angry looks. Mr. Weasley looked solemn and said nothing. Oh, really? Jerome seemed to be slightly startled, but then he didn't care anymore, but stared at Ludo Bagman, waiting for him to get up from the ground. Ludo struggled to his feet and drank the tea in one gulp, the gold galleons clinking happily in his pocket. I just said how could Sia ran. See you later, you are on the top box with me, I am the commentator of the game. Bagman blinked and waved goodbye, while Jerome Barton just said calmly Percy nodded without any expression. Following the three of them, they operat and disappeared. That idiot. George lowered his voice. He didn't name him, but everyone knew he was talking about Percy. George. Mr. Weasley shouted sternly, glaring at George. George turned his head away, but seemed to be still mumbling something. What's going on at Hogwarts now, Dad? Ron changed the subject and asked curiously, what did they just say? You'll find out soon enough, Mr. Weasley said with a smile. Fred looked at Sia Ran and asked hurriedly, Professor Fremont, Mr. Barton said you also know that it is still held at Hogwarts. What is that? What kind of competition? Sia Ran smiled slightly. What Jerome, Bagman and Mr. Weasley were talking about was the restart of the Triwizard Tournament after hundreds of years. Due to Voldemort's resurrection and return, Dumbledore originally intended not to hold the event anymore. Unfortunately, he had previously agreed to the event on behalf of Hogwarts and signed all the papers. The Ministry of Magic did not want to waste years of efforts in vain. The other two magic schools, both Bosbatons and Durmstrang expressed their willingness to continue participating in this intensive event. There was no other way. Hogwarts had no choice but to continue participating in the Triwizard Tournament. Dumbledore had made special arrangements for this matter. By then, many members of the Order of the Phoenix might have to live in Hogsmeade Village. Strengthening Hogwarts Watts's garrison to prevent a surprise Death Eater attack. It's a top secret and you don't want to tell us, is it? Ginny made a bitter look on her face. Huh, it's not top secret. Sia Ran smiled, but you don't have to worry, Dumbledore will notify all students when school starts. Then Mr. Bagman said that Dumbledore doesn't seem satisfied, right? Harry said hesitantly. Does Dumbledore disagree with this? Hermione frowned. Don't agree. Sia Ran shrugged and said, he originally agreed, but didn't you hear that he had already signed it? It's just that something unexpected happened later, which caused Dumbledore to change his mind. Accident. Several people were suddenly confused. Hermione couldn't help but lost her voice and said, Mysterious man. It's because of Mysterious man. That's right. Mr. Weasley nodded and said, The Mysterious man has returned. Dumbledore is worried about problems, so he is unwilling to continue the event, but. He smiled bitterly twice and continued, It turns out that he the words have been signed, and it's too late to regret it. Dad, should we go there? Charlie said suddenly and looked at the time. Oh, yes, it's time to go over for the meeting. Mr. Weasley said, after eating the last bit of food, he gave Fred and George a few words. After all, Bill and Charlie were also going over for the meeting. Fortunately, the children already grown up. Sia Ran patted his butt and stood up. He, Mr. Weasley, Bill, and Charlie quickly walked along the side of the camp. Outside Professor McGonagall's tent, they also saw a witch with bright red hair, it was Tonks. Tonks seemed to be talking to Lupin, with a happy expression on her face, but Lupin looked more helpless and haggard. When she saw Sia Ran and the four of them coming over, it was like seeing a savior. Arthur, Sia Ran, you are finally here. And Bill and Charlie, when did you come back? Chapter, 163 Sia Ran smiled and said, Professor Lupin, how was your chat with Tonks? Lupin looked distressed and depressed, and said angrily, Stop joking. Also, I have resigned from Hogwarts and am no longer a professor. 
Tonks happily greeted Xia Ran and the other four. Hello, Tonks, is everyone here yet? Mr. Weasley asked. Lu Ping nodded and said, everyone has arrived. Arthur. Xia Ran. A corner of the tent suddenly opened, and a wizard leaned out half of his body. His hair was messy, and his face looked like it had been chopped with a knife and axe. Every inch of the skin was scarred, his mouth was crooked, and his nose was there was also a section missing and flattened, and his eyes were even more frightening. One of his eyes is small, black, and shiny, while the other eye is very large, round like a coin, and is a distinct bright blue. The blue eye moved without blinking, turning this way and that, looking this way and that. This man is none other than Mad Eye Alastair Moody. The number two figure in the Order of the Phoenix and the number one general in the Order after Dumbledore. Others, even Sia Ran, Professor McGonagall, and Professor Snape, can't compare to Mad Eye Moody in terms of magic power and fighting skills. Snape even had some fear of Moody in the original time and space. Of course, the same is true now. Moody's blue magic eye stared at Xia Ran, then looked at Bill and Charlie, and said, Come in. Xia Ran opened the curtain of the tent and entered. This tent was much better than the tent borrowed by Mr. Weasley. It was a large tent with four bedrooms it also had bathrooms, kitchens, toilets, etc. And the living room was also huge. Nearly forty square meters, with three sofas in one corner, a coffee table and a bookshelf, giving it a casual feel. Moody walked to a bench and sat down. He seemed not used to sitting on the soft sofa. Professor McGonagall, Sirius, and Mundungus were sitting on three sofas respectively. Professor McGonagall had a book in her hand and was flipping through it. Tonk sat down next to her. Lu Ping sat on Sirius's sofa, and Xia Ran and the four of them also randomly found a free spot to sit down. Very good, everyone is here. Moody nodded with satisfaction and said, Tonight is the period when the Quidditch World Cup is held. Among us. Minerva, Sharon, Arthur, Bill and Charlie. He pointed to the people mentioned in his words in turn and continued, You will enter the venue and watch the World Cup. At the same time, you must pay attention to any abnormal movements from all sides. Alaster, I'm afraid this is a bit difficult. Xia Ran said helplessly, in an occasion like the World Cup, tens of thousands of wizards and many fanatical Quidditch enthusiasts gather together. No matter what extraordinary things they do, I think it's possible. Especially if that team loses the game. Charlie also said, the supporters of that team are probably going crazy. Of course, the supporters of the winning team are probably going crazy too. He was once a Quidditch player and served as the captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team. After graduation, although he raised dragons in Romania and did not continue his Quidditch career, he still often listened to Quidditch-related news. Chi Radio Channel also knows the destructive power of fanatical fans. We can only take one step at a time and see one step at a time. Professor McGonagall sighed, and the venue is so big, after all, it can accommodate nearly 100,000 wizards, there are only a few of us, so we can only try our best to observe the situation around us. Okay, that's it. Anyway, you are all experienced wizards who will act according to the situation, so there is no need for me to say more. Moody continued, Sirius, Lupin, Tonks, Monty and I Dungs is standing outside, just like those officials from the Ministry of Magic, performing security duties. Sirius looked slightly regretful. In fact, he really wanted to see this Quidditch World Cup. Then everyone discussed how to deal with various situations, and what color signals would be emitted under certain circumstances, so that others could immediately know what the current situation was. Immediately, the four of Xia Ran left the tent and returned to the Weasley family's tent. They took a nap to recharge their batteries. Something might happen in the evening. It would be best if nothing happened and everything was business as usual. As the afternoon went by, a sense of excitement spread over the camp like a palpable cloud, as the start time of the Quidditch World Cup finals got closer and closer. At dusk even the silent summer air seemed to tremble with anticipation, the last vestiges of disguise disappearing as night fell like a curtain over thousands of eagerly awaiting wizards. The Ministry of Magic seemed to be succumbing to the inevitable, no longer fighting against people, 
no longer requiring people to memorize the secret code, and allowing obvious signs of magic to appear everywhere. Every few steps, operat vendors descended from the sky, either carrying trays or pushing trolleys filled with all kinds of weird stuff. There are glowing rose-shaped badges, green for Ireland, red for Bulgaria, that scream out the names of the players there are green high hats decorated with shamrocks dancing in the wind. Which are the Irish support team there is also a Bulgarian ribbon, and the lion printed on it can really roar. In addition, there are many eye-catching gadgets, such as the national flags of the two countries. Which will automatically play their respective national anthems when waved there are also small models of firebolts that can really fly there are also collectible statues of famous players. Those small statues can walk around in the palm of your hand, looking proud of themselves. Xia Ran bought himself a green sports badge. If he remembered correctly, the final winner of this Quidditch World Cup was the Irish team. Bill, Charlie and Ginny also bought green Ireland badges, and Mr. Weasley held up an Irish flag. Ron wore a shamrock hat and a green badge, but he also had a small statue of Victor Crumb of the Bulgarian team. The miniature crumb kept frowning at the statue above him. With the Ireland team badge and what looked like binoculars in his hand. Harry and Hermione also had binoculars in their hands, as well as a competition manual, and also bought Irish team badges and hats. Fred and George had no souvenirs and gave Bagman all their savings to gamble. It's about to begin. Sia Ran looked into the distance expectantly. At this time, a deep and deep gong sound came from somewhere far away in the woods. Immediately, thousands of red and green lanterns bloomed on the trees, illuminating the road to the arena. Okay, kids, let's set off. Mr. Weasley said excitedly, leading the way. Chapter 164 Mr. Weasley led the way. Everyone clutched their purchases and walked quickly into the woods along the path illuminated by lanterns. They could hear thousands of people walking around, and various sounds came and went. Excited shouts, enthusiastic laughter, and high-pitched singing resounded through the forest. In the current environment and atmosphere, this kind of fanatical excitement is very contagious. Xia Ran and the others couldn't help laughing, with excited expressions on their faces. They walked in the woods for about twenty minutes, laughing and joking loudly as they slowly followed the crowd out of the woods. At this time, they found themselves in the shadow of a huge stadium. Xia Ran stopped along with the others and looked up. She could only see part of the magnificent golden wall surrounding the arena, because the venue was so big that it could seat 100,000 wizards. Harry and Hermione also had surprised looks on their faces. It can accommodate a 100,000 spectators. Mr. Weasley introduced specifically. 500 staff from the Ministry of Magic have been busy working on this place for a whole year, and every inch of the land here has been cast with a muggle expulsion spell. This throughout the year, whenever muggles approach this place unintentionally, they will suddenly remember urgent matters and walk away in a hurry. Oh, God bless them. He led everyone to the nearest entrance, after all, there must be more than one entrance to such a large stadium where there were already many wizards from various countries shouting and speaking with different accents. First Class Tickets The Ministry of Magic Wizard at the entrance looked at their tickets and said, Top Box. Go all the way upstairs, Arthur, to the top. The stairs leading to the stadium were covered with purple-red carpets. Xia Ran and the crowd climbed up the stairs together. Slowly, the crowds of people walked into the stands on the left and right respectively. However, Xia Ran and the others still needed to keep going up, and finally reached the top of the stairs. They found themselves in a small box at the highest point of the stadium, facing the golden gold post. There are about twenty purple and gold-plated seats in the small box, divided into two rows. Children, let's sit down. Mr. Weasley said, and the group of people sat in the front row one after another. Xia Ran looked down, and the scene was very shocking. More than 100,000 wizards are taking their seats one after another. Those seats surround the oval stadium and are arranged upward in a staircase. Everything here is shrouded in a mysterious golden light, which seems to come from the stadium itself. From Xia Rance and the others' vantage point, the arena looked as flat and smooth as velvet. There were three pitching rings on both sides of the arena, 50 feet high. 
To their right, they were almost level with the top box. At the spot was a huge blackboard, with golden words constantly flashing on it, as if an invisible giant hand was writing on the blackboard, and then erasing them all. But when Xia Ran took a closer look, she realized that those flashing golden words turned out to be advertisements. Such an advertisement must be very expensive. Xia Ran whispered. Mr. Weasley smiled and said, Xia Ran, this is an advertising screen for 100,000 people. There are countless wizards in the world, and there is no second event except the Quidditch World Cup that can bring together 100,000 wizards at the same time. Competitions or activities can do this, and merchants and vendors must of course strive to announce their products to wizards around the world. Xia Ran glanced around and saw advertisements for various items popping up one after another. Cornflour, the broomstick for the whole family, safe. Dependable. With built-in anti-theft buzz alarm. Skull's all-purpose miracle stain remover, removes stains with ease. Fenya brand wizard uniform, London, Paris, Hogsmeade. Xia Ran withdrew her gaze and looked back. Apart from their group of people, no one else had come in and sat down in the box, not even the house elf who occupied the seat in the original space and time, the house elf of Crouch Manor. Winky, gone is Winky, and Winky seems to be working at Hogwarts now. Winky was brought to Hogwarts by Xia Ran from the cemetery where Voldemort was resurrected, and was managed by the school nurse Mrs. Pomfrey. Because Winky was under the imperious curse of Barty Crouch Jr. No one would pursue her. Responsibility When Winky had nowhere to go and was confused, Dumbledore offered her an olive branch, hoping that Winky would work in the kitchen at Hogwarts and was willing to pay her. She agreed, but she was determined not to be paid by Dumbledore. This is also the position of the house elves at Hogwarts. They can help you work, but they cannot pay us. Among the house elves, perhaps the only one who knew about their salary and benefits was Dobby. He was originally a house elf at Malfoy Manor, but was later rescued by Harry, and Xia Ran helped him along the way. Awesome. Man. Ron took out his panoramic telescope and began to adjust it. He looked at the crowd on the other side of the stadium. I can look at the wizard again. Again. At this time, Hermione opened a book with a tasseled velvet cover, and Xia Ran caught a glimpse of it being a competition manual. There will be performances by the two teams' mascots before the game. Hermione read aloud. Xia Ran suddenly laughed and said, That is always worth seeing. You know, every country in the Quidditch World Cup, it must be a participating country, will bring some rare animals from their own country. It's very interesting to do a show here. Really? Hermione's eyes lit up and she looked very interested, as if she couldn't wait to see the mascot's performance later. In the next half hour or so, the top-level box where they were seated gradually became filled with people. Mr. Weasley and Xia Ran kept shaking hands with people, mainly Mr. Weasley. Although Xia Ran knew them both, after all, they were no longer employees of the Ministry of Magic. But professors at Hogwarts, those people most of them are senior officials and leaders of various departments of the Ministry of Magic, and they have strong power. However, with the arrival of Cornelius Fudge, the atmosphere in the box changed slightly. Fudge turned a blind eye to Xia Ran and others in the first row, and only nodded casually to Mr. Weasley. Because of the announcement of Voldemort's return, Fudge and Dumbledore had a complete falling out, and also ordered the Daily Prophet to smear Harry. Therefore, Harry, the person involved, was present, and Xia Ran, who in his opinion clearly belonged to Dumbledore, was present. The wizard of the Blitto camp, if the situation did not allow it, after all, so many people were watching. And the Bulgarian minister of magic and the cameras of major newspapers were pointed at this top-level box from time to time, he would have wanted to give instructions to his men drive Xia Ran and Harry Potter out. If he really does this, Xia Ran will not be merciful, because he is the minister of the Ministry of Magic, so he does not dare to take action, and he is the minister of the Ministry of Magic, so he does not dare to take action. The box was thrown into the center of the venue, and a few curses were recited to give Fudge a bloody lesson. Chapter, 165 Xia Ran A witch walked into the box. She was Xia Ran's former boss, named Amelia Bones. 
She served as the director of the Department of Magical Law Enforcement, including the Auror Office, the Office for the Prohibition of the Abuse of Magic, and the Office for the Prohibition of the Abuse of Muggles. Departments such as the Items Office fall under the jurisdiction of the Magical Law Enforcement Division. The Department of Magical Law Enforcement is the largest department of the Ministry of Magic. Ms. Bones is also a wizard who hates black magic. One of her family members died in the First Wizarding War. The original time and space process, Amelia Bones, was even attacked shortly after Voldemort returned. Kill. Amelia, long time no see. Sia Ran stood up and shook hands with Ms. Bones, I didn't expect you to also like to watch Quidditch matches. No, I don't like it. Ms. Bones gave the opposite answer, hello, Arthur. It's just that I think I should come to the Quidditch World Cup, maybe. She stopped talking at this point, but it was obvious that Sia Ran understood what she meant. Compared to the current Minister of Magic Fudge, she believed in Dumbledore, the principal of Hogwarts, which meant that she believed that Voldemort had returned. Perhaps because of this, Ms. Bones came to Quidditch uncharacteristically. The match scene of the World Cup. Okay, Amelia, sit down, the game is about to start. Fudge said with a calm face. The minister of the Bulgarian Ministry of Magic, wearing a gorgeous black velvet robe with gold trim, looked like he couldn't understand a word of English, he actually spoke English. But he pretended to hide it in the original time and space, and it was not revealed until the end, so he was teased he asked Fudge, but his expression was more playful. Ms. Bones sat calmly in her seat, staring at the empty stadium in front of her, her eyes scanning in various directions from time to time, as if observing whether there was any dangerous situation. Ah, Malfoy is here, sit down quickly. Suddenly Fudge spoke. A group of people in the front row immediately turned their heads. Three wizards squeezed into the three still empty seats in the second row behind Mr. Weasley. They were Lucius Malfoy, Narcissa Malfoy and Draco Malfoy. When Mr. Malfoy saw Sia Ran and Harry, his expression suddenly became gloomy. He has not forgotten how his house elf escaped from his home. And Harry didn't have a good face, because he and Draco Malfoy had been bitter enemies since they first went to Hogwarts. Draco Malfoy is a pale-skinned boy with a pointed face and flaxen hair who looks very much like his father. His mother, Narcissa, also had light skin and yellow hair. She was not ugly to begin with, but she always put on a look of disgust, as if she smelled something bad. The Malfoy family and the Weasley family have never dealt with them. They each glanced at each other and looked away as if they hadn't seen it. Ah, uh, fudge. Mr. Malfoy stretched out his hand and said as he passed by the Minister of Magic, Hello, I don't think you have met my wife Narcissa yet. And our son Draco? Hello, hello, Lucius. Fudge's gloomy face showed a smile, and he bowed slightly to Mrs. Malfoy, Please allow me to introduce you to Mr. Oberlansk, okay? O'Brien Mr. Berensk, he's the Bulgarian Minister of Magic, but it doesn't matter, he doesn't understand what I'm saying anyway. Let me see who else, Amelia, the one you only know, and Arthur, Arthur Weasley, do you know him? At this moment, the atmosphere in the box became tense again. Mr. Weasley and Mr. Malfoy had to look at each other. Harry, Ron, and Hermione still remembered the last time they met. It was at Flourish and Blot's bookstore in Diagon Alley, and they fought. Got a fight. Mr. Malfoy's cold gray eyes glanced past Mr. Weasley back and forth across the rows of seats. Oh my god, Arthur, Mr. Malfoy said softly, what did you sell to get a seat in the top box? You must have more than this, right? Fudge continued, Lucius just recently donated a large amount of money to St. Mungo's Hospital for Magical Maladies and Maladies. Arthur, he is the honored guest I invited. Oh, great, said Mr. Weasley with a forced smile. Okay, Mr. Malfoy, sit down in your seat, don't stand anywhere. Ms. Bones suddenly said. Malfoy had no choice but to continue taunting Mr. Weasley, so he glanced at Hermione with a cold gaze, his eyes showing undisguised disgust and disdain. He is a believer in the theory of pure blood supremacy. Muggle wizards such as Hermione are of course the target of his ridicule, and he even thinks that muggle wizards are inferior. Hermione blushed slightly, but looked into Lucius Malfoy's eyes without flinching. 
Seeing this, Xia Ran turned around, glanced at Lucius Malfoy briefly, and said, Lucius Malfoy, do you have something to say? No. Mr. Malfoy whispered, but smiled mockingly. Xia Ran frowned immediately, but on this occasion, it was impossible for him to take out his wand and give him a hard blow. Then what are you looking at? If I don't sit down at your seat, if. Xia Ran smiled slightly and said. I might have to defend myself. The expression on Mr. Malfoy's face immediately froze, but he had already known Xia Ran's strength from other channels, and he could compete with the top wizards, which was beyond his reach. He snorted coldly and walked to his seat. Draco glared disdainfully at Harry, Ron and Hermione, deliberately ignoring Sharon, and sat down between his parents. Nasty guy. Ron muttered, and he, Harry, and Hermione turned their attention to the arena again. Then Ludo Bagman burst into the box. Is everyone ready? He asked, his round face shining like a giant ball of cheese. Minister, can we start? Start as you say, Ludo, Fudge said kindly. Ludo pulled out his wand, pointed at his throat and said, resonant. Then his words were like thunder, resounding throughout the packed stadium. His voice echoed throughout the stadium, reaching every corner of the stands. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome. Welcome to watch the 422nd Quidditch World Cup. The audience immediately burst into cheers and applause. Thousands of flags were waved at the same time, accompanied by the chaotic national anthem. The scene was lively. On the blackboard opposite the top balcony, the last line of advertisements has been erased, and now it reads, Bulgaria, 0, Ireland, 0. That's the display board showing the scores of the two teams on the field. Outside the venue, a group of wizards glanced at the magnificent golden facade with envy. One of the wizards with disheveled hair couldn't help but sigh, the Quidditch World Cup finals are being held inside, but we can only listen to the noise outside. Well. Okay, serious, stop complaining, cheer up, and let's divide our respective patrol areas. Another voice said. Chapter, 166. Okay, mad I, I'm just sighing. After all, the Quidditch World Cup is right in front of you, but you can only hear the voices of the commentators and the cheers and applause of the audience, but you can't see it with your own eyes. It's always a it's a pity, isn't it? Sirius spread his hands. Moody's blue magic eyes rolled, without comment, and said in a deep voice, cheer up. This is not the time to regret. Sirius shrugged. Should we divide into several teams and patrol separately? Lupin asked. You can arrange it, Mad Eye. The director also said that we can obey your orders. You are the aura hero, after all, aren't you? Kingsley said with a smile. He also brought an aura team with him. It looked like more than ten people. Most wizards have bought tickets to watch the World Cup, and a small number of wizards on duty are also inside this huge stadium. These aurors were all brought back from vacation during emergencies. Looking at the circle of wizards and witches around him, Moody nodded and said, It is necessary to separate. We are divided into two teams, Kingsley, and your Auror team, patrol from the left. We others patrolled from the right. By the way, sending a red signal means encountering an enemy a blue signal means everything is normal a yellow signal means there is something unusual and requires further investigation. Get your wands out, don't keep them in your pockets. Moody gave a final sweep and everyone took out their wands, their expressions solemn. Kingsley led his team of aurors onto the road under the magnificent golden wall. They all held their wands tightly and were always paying attention to the movements around them. However, the noise in the venue was too loud, which affected their judgment and keen perception. All the aurors couldn't help but frown, but they could only overcome it. See you later. Tonks followed the auror team. She was originally a member of the Auror Office of the Ministry of Magic. Lu Ping's eyebrows moved slightly, but he still looked away. Okay, let's stop procrastinating, be careful and focus. Moody said, using crutches and started walking along the right side. Sirius, Lupin, and Mundungus looked at each other and followed Moody's footsteps. Their eyes were like hawks, scanning the woods where light and dark lights alternated. At this moment, 
there was a deafening sound in the venue. Xia Ran estimated the time and guessed that Moody and the others should have started patrolling the area around the venue. Among the 100,000 wizards in the venue, there were many white wizards from the Order of the Phoenix camp and many dark wizards from the Death Eaters camp. The Malfoy family behind him are still Death Eaters, but they have not completely fallen, and there are still opportunities for rescue. Ludo Bagman, director of the Department of Physical Education and Sports at the Ministry of Magic and commentator for the Quidditch World Cup final, has begun introducing the mascots of the two countries. Okay, without further ado, please allow me to introduce. The mascot of the Bulgarian national team. Bagman's voice was extremely loud, and it spread throughout this super stadium that can accommodate 100,000 people. On the right side of the stands was a neat bright red square formation, and loud cheers suddenly erupted. Mascot show. I wonder what they brought. Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Ginny all looked very curious. Even the adult wizards in the top box, except for a few officials from the Bulgarian Ministry of Magic, all looked curious. However, Sia Ran is an exception. He knows what the mascot of the Bulgarian national team is. Ha! Huh. Vila! Mr. Weasley suddenly took off his glasses and wiped them hastily on his robe. What is a Vila? Harry asked loudly, having to shout as loud as he could because the noise in the arena was so loud. What a strong charm ability! Sia Ran exclaimed, and saw a hundred Vila sliding towards the arena. They were all women, of course they had to be women, their skin was as bright and soft as the moon, and there even if there is no wind, their hair is flying behind their heads. Each of them is the most beautiful woman in the world. And this charming ability reached its peak in an instant when Vila started dancing. The male wizards around Sia Ran looked obsessed, as if they had seen the most beautiful thing in the world. As long as they could keep seeing the Vila, it seemed that they would be allowed to pay any price. Only the witches and wizards looked dissatisfied and frowned. Professor Fremont, are you not affected? Sia Ran heard a voice that seemed to come from a distant place, it was Hermione speaking. Sia Ran shook his head, like a pug trying to shake off water droplets on his body, as if this would get rid of his obsession with Vila. However, after all, his magic power is strong, reaching level 5 advanced level. He has also experienced reincarnation, and his willpower is stronger than other wizards. Therefore, although he is also affected by Vila, it is still within a controllable range. Not as ugly as other wizards. It's okay, it's okay. Xia Ran rubbed her forehead and said. Vila's ability to charm is innate and innate, almost as good as a love potion. No wonder the wand made of Vila hair is special. Xia Ran no longer stared directly at the dancing Vila in the arena. She would wait until his magic power became stronger again. Ha, huh, these people are really. Ginny pouted, looked at Harry Potter, and even made a move to dance. It looked like he wanted to jump directly from the box into the stadium, and compete with those Vila dance together. Several witches in the second row also looked dissatisfied. Finally, the Vila stopped dancing, the music stopped, and they retreated to the edge of the field. But the stadium was filled with angry roars. People didn't want the Vila to leave they wanted to continue watching the Vila dance and enjoy the ultimate joy, pure joy. Nothing in the world mattered, as long as they could keep watching. Just Vila. Harry, what are you doing? Hermione asked. Harry blinked blankly as he stood with one leg propped up against the wall of the box. Next to him, Ron even made a gesture as if he was about to dive from the springboard, and stayed there motionless. The other wizards who came back to their senses also looked slightly embarrassed, deliberately not looking at the faces of other people around them, as if they didn't know. Many wizards even took off their Irish team badges, Ron was one of them. Mr. Weasley took it and smiled, you will need this later after the Irish team's performance. Ha! Huh. Ha! Huh. Ron snorted, still staring at the Vilas with his mouth open, and they were already lined up in a corner of the field. Hermione made a loud smacking sound, stretched out her hand to pull Harry back to his seat, and said, Oh! Why are you doing this? Chapter 167 After the Vila, the mascot of the Bulgarian national team, came on stage to dance, it was the turn of the mascot of the Irish national team. Now! 
Ludo Bagman's voice rang like a bell, please raise your wand in the air. Welcome the mascot of the Irish national team. Sia Ran looked up and heard a whooshing sound, and a huge green and gold thing flew into the stadium, like a big comet. The comet flew around the stadium, and then split into two smaller comets, which rushed towards a set of goal posts. An arched rainbow suddenly appeared across the entire stadium, connecting the two big shining balls. Stand up! So beautiful! The crowd immediately erupted in various exclamations, as if they were watching a grand fireworks display. At this time, the rainbow suddenly disappeared again, and the big shining balls connected with each other, and then merged to form a huge, shining clover. Just like the Irish team's emblem, the clover rose high into the sky. It began to circle and dance at the top of the stands. The sound of something falling. People looked up and saw a golden rain falling in the venue. Marvelous! Countless people roared, clovers hovered overhead, and huge gold coins continued to fall on their heads and seats. Xia Ran looked at the clover. In fact, it was not a magical creation, but consisted of countless little people wearing red vests and mustaches. Each little person was holding a golden or green lamp. Small lights. It's the leprechaun. Said Mr. Weasley to cheers. While people were cheering, they were still scrambling for gold coins, or even got under the seats to pick up gold coins. Xia Ran didn't move. He was not short of money, and he knew that these leprechaun gold coins would not last long and it would be useless to pick them up. However, if Harry and Ron are willing to pick it up, it's up to them. Anyway, as long as they are happy enough, it is impossible to spend the leprechaun gold coins in a short time. The most important thing is that the vendors will definitely not accept such gold. The beauty offensive and the money offensive are both good ways to boost support. Xia Ran muttered. After a while, the noisy intensity gradually subsided, and the giant clover disappeared. The leprechauns slowly fell to the opposite side of the villa on the field, sat down with their legs crossed, and prepared to watch the game that was about to officially start. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please warmly welcome. The Bulgarian Quidditch national team. Let me introduce to you, Dimitrov. Ludo Bagman's voice was loud. A figure in red clothes riding on a broomstick flew into the arena from an entrance below. He flew so fast that it was difficult to see clearly. He won wild cheers from supporters of the Bulgarian national team. Ivanova. A second figure in bright red robes flew out. Zograv. Levski. Volkanov. Volkov. Next is. Victor Krum. The audience suddenly burst into loud cheers, louder than any previous member of the Bulgarian national team who came on stage. It's him. It's him. Ron shouted from the side, following Crum with his telescope, and Harry quickly pointed his telescope at Crum. The most powerful young genius. A genius born to play Quidditch. Charlie Weasley said in admiration. Yeah, he's basically the best seeker in the world now. Bill Weasley applauded. The Quidditch game requires a total of seven people, with several positions, one seeker, three chasers, two beaters and one goalkeeper. Sia Ran tapped the wand and conjured a telescope, and saw that Victor Crum was dark and thin, with grayish-yellow skin, a big aquiline nose, and two thick black eyebrows. Like a very huge eagle, it makes people believe that he is only 18 years old. Now, let us welcome the Irish Quidditch national team. Bagman shouted equally loudly, the ones who are coming out are Connolly. Ryan. Troy. Mallet. Moran. Quigley. Also. There's Lin Chi. Seven blurry green figures flew towards the arena and flew around the arena. There are female players in the Irish team, and they are all among the best in the world at their respective positions. Moran, for example, is one of the best chasers in the world. And our referee today, who flew all the way from Egypt and is the deeply supported president of the International Quidditch Federation. Hassan Mustafa. A short, lean wizard wearing a pure golden robe that matched the color of the stadium strode into the arena. This is also a bald wizard, but the beard is very thick, 
and there is a silver whistle sticking out from under his beard. He has a large wooden box under one arm and himself under the other arm. Broomstick Hassan Mustafa first stepped on his broomstick, and then kicked the wooden box away. Call out! Call out! Call out! Call out! Four balls suddenly jumped into the sky, the bright red quaffle, the two black bludgers, and the very small golden snitch with a pair of wings. In just a flash, the golden snitch disappeared. And only when one team seeker finds the golden snitch will the Quidditch match come to an end. It's no wonder that there are so many Quidditch matches lasting four or five days. Who told the seeker to never find the golden snitch? Team members on both sides are riding broomsticks, looking solemn and ready to go. Hassan Mustafa looked around, took a deep breath, blew his whistle, and followed the balls into the air. The 422nd Quidditch World Cup Finals has officially begun. The atmosphere in the stadium was extremely heated instantly. Supporters of the two teams cheered for their own teams, and many neutral wizards also applauded and cheered. Even wizards like Xia Ran, who knew only a little about Quidditch, felt excited and heated. As you can imagine, know how other people feel. Ah, the game has officially started. Bagman suddenly screamed, they're off. This is Mallet. Troy. Moran, the Irish team has the ball, Dimitrov. Pass to Mallet again. Right. Troy. Levski. Moran. What a wonderful game. The commentator's speaking speed was obviously not enough to explain clearly the situation on the field, because the players of the two teams were so fast that it was unbelievable. To be honest, Bagman's ability to accurately name the key figures in such a short period of time had already attracted Sia Rant's attention. He even had time to shake his head and follow the figures of the team members flying around. Sia Ran didn't know the various tactical formations of Quidditch matches, but he could feel an exciting atmosphere that filled the entire stadium and flowed through everyone's veins. Suddenly, Troy scores a goal. Bagman roared with a loud voice, and the whole audience burst into cheers. The cheers were so thunderous that the stadium seemed to be shaking, 10 o'clock, the Irish team leads. Chapter, 168 Beautiful Even a layman like Sia Ran couldn't help but applaud when he saw that goal. What? Harry shouted loudly, his eyes buried behind a pair of panoramic telescopes, but the quaffle was taken away by Levski. His telescope can see the scene more clearly, and there is also an explanation of the tactical formation, but there is a delay, because the players are too fast. Harry just turned the slow button on the right side of the panoramic telescope the scenes he saw were all scenes that had already happened, which almost slowed down the normal progress of the game in the stadium by two or three seconds. Harry, if you don't watch it at normal speed, you're going to miss this wonderful scene. Hermione said loudly as she clapped her hands. She jumped up and down excitedly and kept waving her arms because of the Irish team's performance. Troy flew around the field after scoring the goal. Sia Ran smiled and said, Harry, the most exciting scenes must be watched at normal speed. At this time, the little leprechauns watching the game on the sidelines rose into the air again, forming the huge sparkling clover again. The villas on the opposite side of the field had particularly gloomy faces. Damn it! Harry was very angry with himself and quickly adjusted the speed button back to the normal speed. The game was still in progress. Although Sia Ran didn't know much about Quidditch, he could still see how powerful the Irish team's chasers were. The best in the world. Charlie Weasley shouted from the side, the three chasers of the Irish team, Troy, Mallet, and Moran, they are all the best chasers in the world. Sia Ran nodded silently. The Irish team's chasers cooperated extremely well and were very coordinated, as if they were one person. While flying in the sky, they also made many strange moves, which looked weird but were useful. They got rid of the members of the Bulgarian national team and avoided the bludgers hit hard by the Bulgarian players. Troy. Mallet. Moran. The green rose-shaped badge on his chest was screaming the names of several Irish chasers. Within ten minutes, the Irish team scored two more goals, rewriting the score to 30-0. The supporters of the Irish team in green cheered like an ocean. 
Bulgaria still failed to score a point. The game became more intense and cruel as Bulgaria's batsmen Volkov and Volkanov used their strength to knock bludgers into Ireland's chasers and prevent them from using some of their best moves. Good offensive. The Irish team's chasers had to disperse. Finally, Bulgaria's chaser Ivanova finally broke through the Irish team's blockade, and finally evaded the Irish team's goalkeeper Ryan under the gaze of a hundred thousand wizards. Scored the first goal for the Bulgarian national team. Hurry up and plug your ears with your fingers. Sia ran quickly reminded loudly, because the villa on the edge of the field had already started dancing to celebrate. The others immediately closed their eyes tightly, even Ron. They wanted to focus all their attention on this wonderful game and were not willing to be distracted by Vila, even though every Vila was very good. Beautiful and pretty. Okay. Xia Ran was more resistant. After a few seconds, she saw that the Vila had stopped dancing, so she reminded everyone again. At this moment, the quaffle is already in the hands of the Bulgarian team. Dimitrov. Levski. Dimitrov. Moran. The Irish intercepted the quaffle, oh, my God. Said Bagman in his booming voice. Have they discovered the golden snitch? Bagman's voice was particularly excited. Everyone in the field waited with bated breath, watching the two seekers, Victor Crum of the Bulgarian team and Lindsay of the Irish team, they fell quickly among the chasers, the speed was too fast. It was fast, as if the gravity from the ground was ten times stronger than usual in an instant. Sia Ran found no trace of the Golden Snitch, but recalling the Quidditch World Cup in the original time and space, she couldn't help but shake her head. They're going to fall to the ground. Hermione exclaimed, covering her mouth. No. Clum can't, but Lin Chi can. Sia Ran said. Sure enough, at the last second, Crum stopped his dive, rose again, and flew away in a circle, while Lin Chi fell heavily to the ground. With a bang, the whole stadium seemed to shake. There was a sigh of relief from the Irish audience. Fool! Complained Mr. Weasley, Crum is faking. Wonski's fake move, involving the dangerous seeker. Create a period of time for yourself that is not affected by any opponent's players. Charlie said, Crum lied to Lindsay just to be like this now. Interfering with the time to find the golden snitch, you see. Clum's eyes were almost unblinking. He took advantage of the time when Lin Chi fell to the ground and began to fly freely in the air, scanning all corners of the arena in order to find the golden snitch. The game is suspended. Bagman shouted at this time. The well-trained on-field doctors rushed to the field to check Aiden Lindsay's injury. I hope he is not seriously injured, oh, God bless. Ludo Bagman is a loyal supporter of the Irish team. He's fine. He just used too much force just now and was deceived by Clum's fake move. Bill comforted Ginny. Ginny moved to the side of the box with a look of horror on her face. Lin Chi's face was full of it. Blood. Of course, this is exactly what Crum wants to achieve. I hope Lin Chi is fine, otherwise. Charlie said worriedly. Xia Ran said, it should be fine. Not to mention that at this time, no matter what, you have to persevere, Aiden Lin Chi will not be willing to be substituted. Finally, Lin Chi stood up under the treatment of several wizard doctors, and then soared into the sky amidst the loud cheers of supporters in green clothes. Lindsay's recovery seemed to give the Irish team members more confidence. When referee Hassan Mustafa blew the whistle again, the Irish team's chasers quickly organized an offensive. Their skills he is so superb that he can be called the strongest in the world. After another 20 minutes of intense competition, the Irish team scored 10 goals in succession. They now lead 130-10 by a large margin. After a while, Crum may find the golden snitch first, giving Bulgaria a chance to win. Even if the team adds 150 points, it still cannot make up for the score gap between the Bulgarian and Irish teams. The Irish team's chasers are so strong. When faced with such a powerful chaser, even the seeker who is supposed to be a sea-fixing needle has its role greatly reduced. Unless the golden snitch can be found from the beginning, the chasers will not be given time to score goals. Otherwise even if the opponent's seeker finds the golden snitch, 
he still cannot save the team's defeat. Such a chaser can truly establish a winning streak. Troy. Mallet. Moran. The best chaser in the world. And Mallet and Moran are both female Quidditch players. Chapter, 169. The members of the Bulgarian team are already anxious. Sia ran side. Because they were too far behind, the score was now 130 to 10. Less than an hour after the start of the game, the Bulgarian team was already 120 points behind the Irish team. After a while, I'm afraid it will go above 150 points. A golden snitch is worth 150 points. When the time comes, even if the Bulgarian team seeker Victor Krum catches the golden snitch, it will still be difficult to save the defeat. The Irish team is almost truly victorious. The Bulgarian players have begun to use all means to hinder the Irish team's chasers, especially the two women Mallet and Moran, who are their first choice targets. Oh my god! The witches in the box suddenly exclaimed in low voices, all showing undisguised disgust. Too bad. Bulgaria violated the rules of fair competition. When the Irish team's chaser Mallet rushed towards the goal post again with the quaffle under his arm, Bulgaria's goalkeeper Zograf flew out and faced her directly. Everything happened so fast that no one saw it. As soon as the ball cleared, referee Hassan Mustafa blew a long, harsh whistle. There were angry shouts from the Irish audience. Mustafa scolded the Bulgarian goalkeeper for hitting someone, it seems that Mallet is barely okay, I hope she is okay, the elbow movement was too big. Bagman said to the noisy and turbulent audience, Ah, yes, Ireland team free throw. Mallet frowned, and Moran took the free throw opportunity. The leprechauns, the Irish team's mascots, rose angrily into the air like a group of shiny bumblebees. Now that they heard the referee's decision, they quickly formed the words ha. 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 Together, with all their might. The power of ridicule. The Vilas across the field jumped up, shook their hair angrily, and started dancing again. Oh, spare us. Charlie sighed, immediately blocked his ears with his fingers, and looked away, not paying attention to that place. The other wizards also made the same move in unison. Sia Ran narrowed her eyes slightly and looked at the referee Hassan Mustafa who had no time to plug his ears. He was confused by the vila and landed in front of the dancing vila. His behavior was very strange, bending and stretching his limbs. Showing off his muscles and stroking his beard excitedly. At this time, most people had seen the referee's abnormal actions, and bursts of laughter came from the stadium. Oh, that won't work. Ludo Bagman said, but judging from his tone, he found this very interesting. Who's close enough to go up and give our referee a slap in the face to wake him up? A doctor on the field plugged his ears with his fingers, rushed into the field, and kicked Mustafa's calf several times. Mustafa seemed to have finally come to his senses, facing the laughter of the entire audience. He looked particularly embarrassed and had no choice but to yell at the Vilas to cover up his embarrassment and his rude behavior just now. The Vilas stopped dancing and looked very unconvinced. Mustafa felt that he was even more shameless, and stretched out his hand to signal the Vila to leave. I was also wrong. Bagman's voice was very strange, as if he was suppressing a laugh. Our referee actually wanted to send the Bulgarian team's mascot home. Oh, I have never seen such a situation before. Haven't seen that well, the game could get a little more uncivilized. He was right. Bulgaria's batsmen Volkov and Volkanov landed on either side of Mustafa and began arguing angrily with him, gesturing towards the leprechauns. The leprechaun happily formed Hey! 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 But Musta, livid and indifferent to the Bulgarian players' protests, raised a finger in the air to signal the two batsmen to take off again. When they refused, Mustafa whistled twice. Two free throws for Ireland. Bagman yelled as the Bulgarian crowd roared angrily. Volkov and Volkanov better get on the broomsticks or they'll have to take another free throw. Gave the Irish team a chance to score in vain. Okay, they rode on. Three free throw opportunities were taken by Moran, who scored two free throws. The score reached 150-10, and the cheers of the supporters of the Irish team became louder. 
what they just did was very unwise. Charlie couldn't help but ramble. He was a former Quidditch player and the captain of the Gryffindor Quidditch team. He was very skilled. If he hadn't raised a dragon, he would have which Quidditch club will you join to play? Sia Ran smiled and said, who told their mascot to be sent off by the referee? The referee is so bad. He puts his fault on Bulgaria's mascot Vila. Hermione said dissatisfied. Who calls him the chairman of Quidditch and the referee of this game? Sia Ran shrugged. The Irish team's chasers are really amazing. Harry couldn't help but praise repeatedly, it's great to have such chasers. Now it's up to Crum. He is Bulgaria's last chance to make a comeback. In Sia Rant's eyes, both Crum and Lin Chi were scanning the sky and the earth, waiting to discover the golden snitch before the other party did. Troy got the ball. It was intercepted, Ivanova, no, Moran. Bagman's voice was loud. The game has now reached a level of ferocious confrontation. It is no longer a Quidditch match, but a boxing match. The batters on both sides have shown no mercy, especially Bulgaria's Volkov and Voka. NOV, they don't care whether the sticks in their hands hit the ball or the person. Anyway, they just swing wildly and beat them wildly, and just pay attention to avoid teammates wearing the same color clothes. When Moran rushed towards the goal post with the quaffle, Dimitrov rushed towards her, knocking her so hard that she almost fell off the broomstick, which was 40 or 50 meters high. Sky. Foul. The supporters of the Irish team shouted in unison. They stood up in unison at this moment, forming a huge green wave. Foul. Ludo Bagman also repeated these two words, Dimirov hit Moran, yes, that's right, a foul. An obvious foul. Ah, the referee blew the whistle, a free throw. The leprechauns all rose into the air, this time forming a giant hand, and made a very rude gesture towards the villa across the field. When the villa saw this, they were already upset because their team was lagging behind. They completely lost control. They all flew up as well. Instead of dancing, they crossed the field directly and began to fire one by one like flames. A handful of things were thrown at the leprechauns. Everyone can see that the villa are not beautiful at all now. Their faces have elongated and turned into pointed bird heads with sharp beaks. A pair of long wings covered with scales are rising from popped up on their shoulders. It seems that this is their true form. Many people sighed with regret. Understood, kids. Mr. Weasley raised his voice, barely covering the noise of the crowd below, so you can never just pursue appearances. Chapter, 170 Wizards from the Ministry of Magic intervened. Sia Ran said, and saw wizard officials from the ministry rushing into the arena one after another, trying to separate the villa and the leprechaun, but with little success. The competition in the sky has already reached an even more intense level. The quaffle was like a bullet, being passed around by the players almost unseen by the audience. Even the commentator Ludo Bagman only had time to name the players, but could not comment on the game. Explain the situation accurately. It's not that Ludo Bagman couldn't understand, or that he lacked spoken language when explaining, it was just that the situation was changing rapidly and there was no time to speak. Levski. Dimitrov, no, Moran, Troy, Mallet, Moran. It's Moran again, she scored again. Bagman shouted. However, the cheers of the Irish team supporters were almost obscured by the abnormal noises from other places. The screams of the villa, the popping sound of the ministry officials' wands, and the angry roars of the Bulgarians. The entire game has been over. It became a mess. It's so confusing. Mr. Weasley shook his head repeatedly. Sia Ran chuckled and said, the Bulgarians have no chance, and the game is basically lost. They have to give them a place to vent their anger. The game is back on. Bagman said at the same time. Levski has the quaffle now. Oh my god, Crum. At this moment, Quigley, the Irish team's batter, used all his strength to hit a flying bludger towards Crum. Crum was unable to dodge and was hit head-on by the bludger. Superior. Deafening complaints suddenly came from the Bulgarian audience. 
Even many Irish team spectators were complaining, there were many Crum supporters, Crum's nose seemed to be broken and blood was everywhere. All but referee Hassan Mustafa did not blow the whistle. But we can't blame him. Avila threw a fire at our referee and lit the tail of his broom. At this time, he was flying dozens of meters in the sky. Even though most of the people in the top box were supporters of the Irish team, they still hoped that others would discover Crum's injury as soon as possible and stop the game. Crum is the most exciting player on the field. Pause. If this continues, something will happen to Crum. I wonder if he can really see ahead. Charlie yelled. The blood had almost covered Crum's face, making it difficult for him to see far. Hassan Mustafa probably forgot about the game, but there's no way to blame him, Bill said. Sia Ran suddenly turned his eyes. Harry followed his gaze and was stunned for a moment. Then he couldn't help shouting, look at Lin Chi. I saw the Irish team seeker suddenly swooping down, his eyes fixed on a certain place in front of him. Sia Ran was sure that this was definitely not a fake move by Ronsky, this time it was real. He saw the golden snitch. Sia Ran shouted, Aiden Lindsay, if he catches the golden snitch, the game will be over. At this time, almost half of the audience noticed Aiden Lindsay's actions and immediately realized what was going on. The Irish supporters rose to their feet, creating a green wave and screaming loudly for their seeker. But Crum followed closely behind him. He had no time to deal with his injuries, and blood splashed in the air. Could he really see the situation in front of him? Sia Ran expressed doubts about this. Crum's flying skills were so good, Sia Ran thought they were at least level 6, or even level 7. Even if there was blood blocking his vision, he still caught up with Aiden very quickly. Lin Chi, the two of them were now in a parallel state, diving towards the ground again. They're going to fall to the floor. Hermione screamed. No. Shouted Ron. No. Lin Chi will do it. Harry shouted. Sure enough, Lin Chi fell heavily to the ground for the second time. Even though there was a loud noise in the venue at this moment, it was still possible to hear the loud noise, and everyone seemed to feel the seat under their buttocks shaking. But almost all the audience stood up. The Vila and the Leprechauns no longer cared about fighting, and they all gathered around him like swarms of swarms. Where is the golden snitch? Where is the golden snitch? Which of the two caught the golden snitch? Charlie Weasley shouted, he just wanted to fly over and see with his own eyes. He caught it. Crumb, he caught the golden snitch. The game is over. Harry saw the situation over there clearly through the telescope and shouted immediately. Sia Ran also squinted his eyes and looked over, and saw spots of nosebleeds flashing on Crumb's bright red robe. He rose lightly into the air, raised a fist high, and a bright golden light appeared between his fingers. That's the glow of the golden snitch. Crumb caught the golden snitch. The score on the scoreboard suddenly jumped significantly, Bulgaria, 160, Ireland, 170. However, the audience seemed to be still confused and did not realize what was going on. Then, people slowly came to their senses, like a jumbo jet accelerating, and the Irish team supporters were talking the sound got louder and louder, the cheers got louder and louder, and finally broke out into countless shouts of extreme joy. Bulgaria supporters could only hang their heads in despair. The Irish team won the game. In the 422nd Quidditch World Cup, the Irish team won the World Cup. Ludo Bagman, who likes the Irish team, couldn't help shouting, Crum caught the golden snitch at the last moment, but the Irish team won and won the championship by 10 points. This was a situation that none of us expected. Well, not everyone. In short, the Irish team is the champion. Let's congratulate Team Ireland. World Champions The cheers and applause in the Irish team's auditorium became even louder and louder. People like Sia Ran and others in the top box were also applauding to congratulate the Irish team on winning the World Cup. Why did he want to catch the golden snitch? As long as he doesn't let Lin Chi catch him, even if he catches the golden snitch, Bulgaria still can't win the championship. Although Ginny jumped up and down excitedly, she couldn't help but cheers, but still feeling confused. Yeah, 
he ended the game when the Irish team was 160 points ahead. It was really stupid. He could wait a little longer. If they got within 150 points, that's when he caught the golden snitch. Best time. Ron also shouted loudly. Ciaran also stood up and applauded, saying, but Crum knows that the Bulgarian team can never catch up. The Irish team's chasers, Moran, Mallet, Troy, they are all great. The best in the world chaser. If you continue to wait, the score gap will only get wider and wider. He just wanted to end the game based on his own situation, Charlie said. It was a really dramatic ending. Crum caught the snitch, but Ireland won the game. People will talk about this game for many years. Xia Ran nodded and said. Chapter, 171. This ending is indeed too dramatic. Xia Ran applauded, the Bulgarian seeker finally lost to the Irish team's chaser. But he's very brave, isn't he? Hermione leaned forward and watched Crum land on the ground. A large group of doctors on the field whistled to drive away the leprechauns and Vila who were still struggling together, asking them to make a way for Crum. But he looks so miserable. It's just no big problem, said Mr. Weasley. Sia Ran looked down and saw the little leprechauns, the Irish team's mascots, walking ecstatically across the field, cheering loudly that they had won the world championship. Crumb's face became even more gloomy. He waved his hand and refused to let the doctor clean his wound. He simply wiped the blood. His teammates also landed next to him, shaking their heads and looking dejected. Look. Not far away, the players of the Irish team landed, dancing with joy, and their mascot threw countless gold coins to them, as if it was a golden rain. Green flags were waved throughout the stadium and Ireland's national anthem blared from all directions, with many Ireland supporters singing along and singing loudly. The Vila returned to their original beautiful appearance, but all of them looked sad and downcast. If you ask me, we still fought very bravely, even if we lost in the end. A heavy voice said in the top box. Sia Ran turned around and saw that it was the minister of the Ministry of Magic of Bulgaria who was speaking. You speak English? Fudge said coldly, and then said in a very annoyed tone, but you made me sign here all day long. Hey, that's fun. The Bulgarian minister shrugged and said indifferently. Sia Ran smiled slightly and turned away. Now, the members of the Irish team are walking around the field accompanied by their mascots, and the Quidditch World Cup trophy has been sent to the top box. Ludo Bagman continued to say in his loud voice. A dazzling bright light suddenly illuminated the top box, allowing all the spectators in the stands to see what was going on inside the box. Sia Ran pointed her magic wand at her eyes and muttered a spell in a low voice. Suddenly, she felt that the bright light was no longer dazzling and returned to the normal intensity that the human eye could accept. He saw two panting wizards carrying a large gold cup into the box, which was the Quidditch World Championship trophy. When Cornelius Fudge received the trophy, he still looked very unhappy, because he had been gesticulating all day in vain, like a monkey, just to make the Bulgarians understand what he said. Let us applaud warmly and welcome the Bulgarian players to the stage despite their defeat. Bagman shouted. The seven defeated Bulgarian players went upstairs and entered the box. The audience below applauded and cheered, even the supporters of the Irish team were no exception. Bulgaria is indeed a respectable opponent, to express their appreciation. The lenses of countless panoramic telescopes flashed towards the top balcony, almost blinding people's eyes. One by one, the Bulgarian team members walked into the two rows of seats in the box and took turns shaking hands with their ministers and fudge. Bagman shouted out everyone's name, and the audience burst into cheers, especially the Bulgarian seeker way. But when Dole Crum came, the cheers were especially loud. Crum still looked embarrassed, with two dark circles under his eyes standing out on his blood-stained face. He still held the golden snitch tightly in his hand, with only a glimmer of golden light showing through. Sia Ran noticed, many people noticed, that once he landed on the ground, his movements did not look as coordinated as they did in the sky. His legs were a bit splayed out, and his shoulders were obviously bent forward. But when Bagman revealed Crumb's name, the entire stadium, no matter which team supporters they were, 
gave him extremely warm and deafening cheers. Next on the stage were the members of the Irish team, who were the champions of this Quidditch World Cup. Seeker Aidan Lindsay looked dazed, his eyes were scattered, and he looked extremely confused, but when Troy and Quigley raised the trophy high, the audience burst into thunderous applause and cheers, Lin Chi also grinned. Finally, the Irish team left the box, mounted their broomsticks and firebolts again, and began flying around the field to greet the cheers of the audience. At this moment, Ludo Bagman pointed his wand at his throat and whispered, Whisper. It's the counter curse of loud voice. This game is so exciting and dramatic. It will be talked about for many years until the next Quidditch World Cup. Bagman said with a slightly hoarse voice, as if the long term commentator job was still there. It had an impact on him, in the end, it was Bulgaria's Victor Crum who caught the golden snitch. Who would have thought? It's a pity that the game didn't last longer. It would have been best if it could have lasted three to five hours. It couldn't be better. Ah, uh, by the way, yes, I should give you. Well, how many gold coins? Fred and George had rolled over the backs of their chairs and were standing in front of Ludo Bagman. The twin brothers smiled happily and held out their open palms. They won this bet. Not long after, Xia Ran and the others left the top-level box and walked out of the Quidditch World Cup match. An unknown number of wizards also came out, with different expressions. Don't tell your mother about your gambling. Mr. Weasley said as he walked away, looking at the twin brothers. Don't worry, Dad. Fred said happily, we have many grand plans for this money, and we don't want it to be confiscated by Mom. Mr. Weasley seemed to hesitate for a moment, probably wanting to ask what their grand plan was, but then he thought about it and seemed to think it was better not to ask. Xia Ran looked around and didn't see Lupin or Sirius, but nothing happened during the game. Maybe Voldemort didn't have any conspiracy against this Quidditch World Cup. There should be nothing wrong. Bill said softly. Okay, let's go back first. There are too many people here. Xia Ran said as she turned to look at the tide of people returning to the camp from the stadium. Soon, the crowd surrounded them, and as they walked back along the lantern-lit passage, rough singing came from the night sky, and the leprechauns kept flying above everyone's heads. They were flying around, waving the lanterns in their hands, and laughing. Finally, they finally reached the tent. Because the surroundings were too noisy, Mr. Weasley suggested that everyone drink a glass of chocolate milk before entering the tent. Arthur, can you give us a drink? I haven't watched such a wonderful game, so I still need a glass of chocolate milk. A familiar man's voice sounded. Xia Ran and the others turned around and saw that Mad Eye Moody, Lupin, Sirius, and Mundungus walked out of the shadows of the woods, hid their wands, and arrived at the Weasley family's tent. Edge. Chapter, 172. Siaran asked in a low voice, Is nothing wrong? No. Lu Ping shook his head and said, A few of us were in a group. We happened to be near here. Nothing happened. There were too many people celebrating, so we just came over and had a drink. Huh, we also support the Irish team. Sirius smiled and took a cup of hot chocolate milk, thanks, Bill. Sirius. When Harry saw his godfather, he stood up and hugged him heavily. Mundungus looked regretful and said, Oh, it's such a shame that I couldn't see the Irish team win the championship with my own eyes. He gave Moody a reproachful look. After Moody sat down, the blue magic eye continued to move, looking at everyone passing by. He said, don't be careless. Night may be a good time for them to take action. At this moment, a group of people had begun to discuss the game just now. Regarding the issue of collision fouls, Mr. Weasley and Charlie had a heated argument, while Sirius and Mundungus sighed repeatedly. They really wanted to see the Quidditch World Cup with their own eyes, but it was very frustrating to think that they were patrolling outside the stadium when the game started. Xia Ran asked Moody about a magic spell. Mad Eye Moody can be called a legendary aura. His magic power has reached level 6, which is indeed one or two levels stronger than the current Xia Ran. From the other side of the camp, loud singing and strange crashing sounds were heard, echoing in the night sky for a long time. It's so lucky that I'm not on duty. Mr. Weasley muttered. 
If I were to ask the Irish to stop celebrating their victory, it would be unimaginable and it would cost lives. Sia Ran smiled and said, You won the game, World Cup champion. He suddenly stopped talking and looked up at the camp on the other side. Vaguely, he felt that something was wrong. Moody E stared straight in that direction and said, You also noticed it, Sia Ran. What's wrong? Mr. Weasley asked doubtfully and looked up, but found nothing. Lu Ping narrowed his eyes slightly and said, There's something wrong. The night is so dark in that place. A group of people looked over and saw that the direction Xia Ran and Moody were looking at seemed to be blackened, and almost no light could be seen. However, the place just now was still brightly lit, and countless supporters of the Irish team were celebrating. Victory. Hold your wand, something may have happened. Xia Ran said, taking out the wand from her arms, a few children are here, Bill and Charlie stay and watch them, the rest of us go over and take a look. No. Fred and George said eagerly, let's go there together. No. Mr. Weasley flatly refused and said, you can't go over, Charlie, you stay and look after your brothers and sisters, Bill, you. Ah. A cry for help came from where they were looking, and then several silvery white lights lit up, and were soon swallowed up by darkness. At this moment, the sounds in the camp changed, and everyone noticed the abnormal situation in that direction. The crowd began to commotion, and some people began to run in panic, just to stay away from that dark area. Xia Ran recognized the silver-white object that lit up just now. He couldn't help but said in shock, that's the patron saint. Dementors attacked the World Cup camp. Dementors. Everyone else was shocked, and Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Ginny looked at each other with lingering fear. The scene when the Dementors searched the Hogwarts Express and guarded the Hogwarts Castle last year, they still feel. Unforgettable. It feels like falling into an ice cellar, with your soul almost frozen. Just thinking about it makes you want to give up. Why did the Dementors who guarded Azkaban prison end up at the Quidditch World Cup camp? Lupin asked in confusion. Bill said, I'm afraid the prisoner escaped, a large-scale prison break. Several people suddenly realized, yes, what does the Quidditch World Cup have to do with Voldemort? He took this opportunity to help his Death Eaters escape from prison, and escaping from Azkaban prison was the most likely thing to happen. But Dementors are different from wizards and cannot be bribed. How could? Mr. Weasley couldn't help but say. Xia Ran sneered and said, how can an Azkaban prison compare to the Quidditch World Cup where a hundred thousand wizards gather? You know, Dementors live on the happiness of wizards, and those prisoners have long been tortured it's almost done. The festive atmosphere of the Irish is the Dementors' favorite delicious food. Sirius also said. Several people suddenly realized that this might be the place where Voldemort promised to hunt Dementors. Let's go there quickly. If someone is kissed by a Dementor. Xia Ran said and shook her head, hoping that such a thing has not happened yet. Everyone's expressions were solemn. The Dementor's kiss was a fatal attack, swallowing up the wizard's soul. From then on, he was as dumb as a living dead. Charlie, take care of your brothers and sisters. Mr. Weasley instructed, and Charlie nodded. Although he was determined to follow everyone to the dark area, drive away the Dementors, and save the besieged wizards, Fred. George, as well as Harry, Ron, Hermione, and Ginny, had low magic power and had no ability to resist when facing the Dementors. He could not leave. This time, brothers Fred and George didn't ask to go together. After all, they had come into contact with Dementors and knew how powerful they were. They couldn't deal with them. Follow me. Charlie said, leading a few minor wizards away, trying to stay as far away from the dark area as possible. Xia Ran and the rest of the group held magic wands and headed towards the dark area. Along the way, countless wizards looked horrified and ran towards the woods farther away from the dark area in order to avoid the spreading dark area. Xia Ran crossed the crowd and quickly arrived at the edge of the dark zone, in fact, the dark zone was spreading rapidly, no slower than his speed. The two sides charged at each other, the tip of his wand lit up, and just at a glance, couldn't help but take a breath of cold air. So many Dementors. He said in shock. 
I saw countless tall figures in black cloaks floating all over the sky. The faces of all the Dementors were completely hidden under their hoods. Countless hands stretched out from under the cloaks, gray and white, and shining eerily, as if it was covered with viscous liquid, and there were many spots like death spots, just like a corpse rotting in the water after death. The Dementors floated in the air, taking a long and slow breath, making a gurgling sound in their throats, as if they had sucked in more than just the surrounding air. A biting chill swept through Xia Ran, just like the twelfth lunar month of winter. Standing in the ice and snow wearing only a single coat, he almost felt like he was out of breath. The cold penetrated into his body and began to invade him. Chest, heart and even brain and soul. Calling the gods to protect you. Xia Ran read loudly, and pointed out his wand. A milky white light jumped out of his wand, and he got down on all fours, carrying a large silvery white glow, and rushed towards the attacking soul hunting soul. The strange group also dispelled the infinite chill in his body. Chapter 173 Xia Ran used the patron saint spell to summon his own patron saint, which first dispelled the bone chilling chill that had invaded his body. Then Xia Ran turned his wand and the patron saint began to attack the Dementors. Call the gods to protect you. Moody, Sirius, Lupin, Mundungus, Mr. Weasley, and Bill all recited the Patronus charm one after another, and their respected Patronus appeared in a void, cooperating to attack the group of Dementors. Although their patron saints are not weak, especially Xia Ran and Moody, the two patron saints took away seven or eight Dementors, but the number of Dementors is too many, at least four to five hundred Dementors. It is really difficult for just a few patron saints to completely stop and drive away these Dementors. There are naturally a large number of wizards in the camp, but not many know how to use the Patronus charm. There are very few wizards who can use the Patronus charm under the coercion of such a large group of Dementors, maybe even a hundred. None left. There are also wizards in several other places chanting spells, recalling the happy past despite the coldness of hundreds of Dementors, and must successfully summon the patron saint, which is not easy at all. It may be okay for many wizards to face one or two Dementors, but four to five hundred Dementors. Forget it and run away as soon as possible to avoid the kiss of the Dementors. Where are the wizards from the Ministry of Magic? Why haven't they arrived yet? Xia Ran frowned. It would be difficult for them alone to stop the progress of this group of Dementors for a long time. There were several sudden explosions, and a group of wizard officials from the Ministry of Magic descended from the sky. They all looked solemn and recited the Patronus charm in unison, but not everyone successfully performed magic. Damn it, what's going on? Cornelius Fudge cursed, get back. Guard your Azkaban prison. His magic power is not weak, and he is also one of the wizards who successfully summoned the patron saint. The Dementors did not respond to Fudge. It seemed that the former big boss was no longer recognized by them, especially when facing the tens of thousands of firefly-like wizards in the woods not far away. The Dementors' urge to eat became stronger. Xia Ran and his group looked at Fudge coldly, and controlled the patron saint to start going deep into the group of Dementors. After all, there were wizards within the area covered by the dark zone just now. We found someone. Lu Ping suddenly shouted, many people, more than a dozen of them, are unconscious. We must take them out of the attack range of the Dementors. We rush in, remember to cover us. Moody shouted, Xia Ran, let's go. Xia Ran's thoughts moved slightly, and his patron saint ran back and circled around him. He followed Mad Eye Moody into the dark area. Moody had his own reasons for asking Xia Ran to go with him. After all, among the large group of wizards at the scene, Xia Ran was the most powerful besides him. Xia Ran would not refuse. Although it was more dangerous to go deep into the dark area, he was still sure of saving his life. The top priority now was to rescue the unconscious wizards. He just hoped that they had not been kissed by the Dementors. After all, there were so many people present, and the Dementors might not have the patience to kiss them one by one. Now we can only hope for this. Sirius, Lupin, Mundungus, Mr. Weasley, and Bill all controlled their patron saints to help Moody and Sharon clear the way, trying to push back the Dementors on the way. Amelia Bone said in a deep voice, 
those who can summon the patron saint stay where they are, and those who cannot successfully use the patron saint spell retreat and go to maintain order in the camp. Immediately a group of wizards retreated. See clearly the direction Moody and Xia Ran are heading, and which direction all the patron saints are moving closer to. Ms. Amelia Bones ordered. So nearly ten wizards patron saints moved closer to Xia Ran and the two. The Dementors had no choice but to retreat to both sides, as if they wanted to bypass this group of wizards and throw themselves into the woods behind. That is the place they dream of and desperately want to wreak havoc on. Fudge's face was livid, his lips moved slightly, but he did not refute Ms. Bones's order. However, looking at his eyes, it seemed that he wished Xia Ran and the two of them were lost deep in the dark zone created by the Dementors. Xia Ran was walking deep in the dark zone. Although there was a silver-white glow around him, which was like the light radiating from the depths of his soul, giving him a sense of warmth, the icy coldness naturally carried by the Dementors around him still seemed to be freezing. His body and mind are ordinary. He remained silent, and as he breathed, the chill in his body was dissipated by the fluorescent light. He tightened his wand and followed Moody to the group of unconscious wizards. Carry it out. Moody said solemnly. Xia Ran nodded, carrying a not too old wizard on his back, and turned around. A silver white passage appeared in front of him, with various patron saints flying on both sides to resist the dementors. Hurry up. Moody said, carrying a wizard on his back and speeding outside. Xia Ran followed closely, and his Patronus ran in the air, slapping away several Dementors who were trying to suck Xia Ran away. The two quickly returned to their original place, put down the unconscious wizard, pointed their wands, and said, Resuscitate quickly. But what made everyone's heart sink was that the wizard did not wake up, but only twitched his body. Xia Ran's expression changed slightly, no way. Revitalization. Resuscitate quickly. Xia Ran used several healing spells together, but the wizard still didn't wake up, and the situation seemed to be very clear. Everyone's expressions darkened. At this moment, a loud shout came from the camp on the other side. The voice was old but full of anger. That's. Lupin suddenly turned his head, with joy on his face, Dumbledore. He's here. Ha. Huh. Everyone breathed a sigh of relief, only Fudge's face turned livid, after all, Dumbledore is the most powerful white wizard in the world and a powerful wizard of legendary level. His arrival will have a calming effect on people's hearts. Even if he is not an official leader of the Ministry of Magic. A silver-white light curtain swept over, as if the rising sun had driven away all the darkness and haze in the world. That blurry light and shadow carried a ray of light like the sun, and instantly drove away hundreds of soul catchers. Strange. The power of the level 7 legendary wizard is so terrifying. Xia Ran waved his wand, and the patron saint turned into a ball of light and disappeared into the tip of his wand. And many of the patron saints in the sky also disappeared. I saw a tall old wizard with silver hair and beard striding towards Xia Ran and the others. His expression was very solemn, and there was endless anger in his eyebrows. It was Albus Dumbledore. Dumbledore waved the Elder Wand, and his Patronus chased the Dementors away, away from where people were. Dumbledore. Xia Ran stood up and said, take a look at the situation of these people first. Is there anything you can do? Chapter, 174. Xia Ran used multiple healing spells on the unconscious wizard, but they still had no obvious effect. He felt that the wizard had probably been kissed by a Dementor and had his soul sucked, which was no different from death. However, maybe things could turn around. After all, if the wizard fell into a deep slumber, his magic would not wake him up. It's not impossible. Dumbledore looked solemnly and looked around. There were unconscious people lying in many places, men and women, old and young. They were all innocent people who had been attacked by Dementors and had their happy memories swallowed up. The anger in his heart could no longer be concealed. Dumbledore, these people must be sent to St. Mungo's Hospital of Magic immediately. Every one of them can be treated, Xia Ran said. Dumbledore nodded, squatted down, pointed his wand lightly at the sleeping wizard, and said, Resume quickly. The light at the tip of the wand disappeared briefly, but
but the wizard still did not wake up, and his body only twitched slightly. Xia Ran secretly sighed, it seemed that this man's soul had been sucked by the Dementors. Dumbledore. Fudge's face was livid. When he saw Dumbledore, his eyes seemed to be seeing an enemy, and he turned a blind eye to the people who were being attacked on the ground. Alastor, Minerva, please see if you can wake these people up as soon as possible. I have notified ST. Mungo's hospital. They will be here soon. Dumbledore said and stood up. Looked directly at Fudge, not hiding his anger and disappointment, Connolly, you made a huge mistake. You were blinded by power. Humph. Fudge snorted, I am the Minister of Magic, I don't need you to lecture me, Dumbledore. But it seemed that Dumbledore's actions reminded him. Fudge turned his head, looked at the wizard officials from the Ministry of Magic behind him, and ordered, treat these wounded with all your strength, and be sure to save every one of them. Wizard officials from the Ministry of Magic, including Mr. Weasley, Orr Kingsley, Tonks, as well as Moody, Professor McGonagall, Lupin. Sirius, Mundungus, Bill and others from the Order of the Phoenix, they all went out to treat the wounded who had been attacked by Dementors. Siar Ran reluctantly gave up on the sleeping wizard who carried him out of the Dementor circle, took a regretful look, and sighed. Let's see if ST. Mungos can do anything. He sighed. Lupin also sighed, the Dementors. They were guarding Azkaban prison, so why did they riot? And they also came to the Quidditch World Cup camp. He was confused. Let's take a look at tomorrow's news. There will always be an explanation, but I don't know if it is the truth. Xia Ran shrugged and said, and went to resuscitate other innocent, innocent people. The conversation between Dumbledore and Fudge continued. You saw, Connolly, the Dementors have rioted. For what reason, I believe you know very well. Dumbledore said, Voldemort. Fudge said irritably, I know the reason. It's just that the prisoners in Azkaban are all prisoners, and they don't have any happy thoughts, so the Dementors are hungry and thirsty, I can understand, they have asked many times before. I've reacted to this, breaking into the Quidditch World Cup camp, I can understand it. Dumbledore looked at Fudge sadly. Is this all you saw behind the Dementor riot? Or is this all you want to see? Fudge was still talking, as if he was convincing Dumbledore, and also seemed to be convincing himself, saying, I will teach the Dementors a lesson and make them calm down. Such bad things will definitely not happen in the future. Are you going to continue to use Dementors? Dumbledore said sadly. After Voldemort returned, Dementors were no longer trustworthy. He promised them permission to hunt and eat freely, which we will never allow. Dementors will never turn to us, they are natural allies of the Dark Wizards. I can control them. Fudge was very confident in himself, and then frowned, the mysterious man is dead. He died more than ten years ago. Don't talk about resurrection all day long, Dumbledore, I am tired of hearing this. He looked completely bored. Dumbledore shook his head, still hoping to convince Fudge. After all, as he said, he was the Minister of Magic and the Supreme Leader of the official organization of the British wizarding community. Stupid. Xia Ran whispered, hearing the conversation between Dumbledore and Fudge. The middle-aged man who had just woken up looked confused. He looked at himself and saw that he had just been attacked by Dementors. How could he be so stupid? Otherwise, you say I am weak. Well, okay, it feels just as uncomfortable. I'm not talking about you. Xia Ran waved her hand, stood up and went to the next unconscious wizard. Resuscitate quickly. Revitalization. Lu Ping was not far from Xia Ran. To be precise, the two were right next to each other. He heard Xia Ran's whisper and knew who Xia Ran was talking about. He couldn't help but smile bitterly, Dumbledore has his difficulties, no matter what well, Fudge is always the minister for magic. That's why I said stupid. Xia Ran snorted. Lupin was speechless. The number of casualties due to the Dementor riot tonight must be in the thousands. Xia Ran said angrily, even if it cannot be avoided, we can try to minimize the number of casualties. Lupin looked gloomy. Indeed, if the Ministry of Magic stopped hosting this World Cup, 
or gave up the right to host it, and handed it over to other countries to host it, would there be such a heavy casualty accident caused by a Dementor attack? You must know that Voldemort's target has always been the British wizarding world. Even in his heyday, the entire Europe had to be subdued by the wizarding world, but Voldemort's main activities were still concentrated in Britain, and other countries were actually not very dangerous. If you go to other continents, the danger is almost gone. Now that Voldemort is back, all grand events and important events must be put aside. The top priority now is how to defeat the Dark Wizard forces. This is by no means a free and easy thing. The Dark Wizards will never stop leading various attacks just because the magic world is singing and dancing. They will even intensify, and various attacks will occur one after another. This Dementor riot may be just the beginning. Okay, don't say any more. Let's rescue these wounded first, and we'll talk about other things later. Mr. Weasley said. Xia Ran and Lu Ping stopped talking and began to devote themselves to healing work. Although they were not specialized healing wizards, they still had a good grasp of many simple healing magics. Among the comatose people, some were in good health or with high magic power and strong resistance. After waking up, they took a short rest and ate a piece of chocolate, and then basically recovered. Some people looked very weak, pale as paper, and in a daze, even after eating energy replenishing chocolate. They could only wait for doctors from ST. Mungo's hospital to arrive and take them to ST. Mungo's hospital for follow up treatment. The last small group of people had their souls sucked by the dementors and were completely unable to awaken them, or in other words, they were so stupid that they no longer responded to the outside world. While Xia Ran and the others sighed, they could only wait for the team of doctors from ST. Mungo's hospital to arrive as soon as possible. Chapter 175. It didn't take long for the doctor from ST. Mungo's hospital to apparate over. After witnessing the scene, he could only sigh. ST. Mungo's doctors took away the wounded who were in a daze, as well as the dead who could not be revived at all. The conversation between Dumbledore and Fudge also ended in a dispute. Fudge left with a livid face and a group of wizard officials from the Ministry of Magic. Amelia Bones, Ludo Bagman, Jerome Barton, Kingsley and others said hello to Dumbledore before leaving. Mr. Weasley left without him. I'm still on vacation, Fudge has no control over me, and Amelia is my immediate boss. Mr. Weasley said, looking at the back of his third son Percy as he followed the others away, his expression slightly grim. Sentimental. That's it for today. Nothing will happen in the future. We'll have another meeting in a few days. Dumbledore said, and with a snap, he operat away. Xia Ran and the other members of the Order of the Phoenix looked at each other, their faces solemn, and they looked worried. After saying good night to each other, Sharon, Mr. Weasley, and Bill separated from Moody, Lupin, Sirius, Mundungus, and Professor McGonagall. I hope nothing happened to the children. It was so chaotic just now. Mr. Weasley said worriedly. Xia Ran comforted, Don't worry, Charlie is here, nothing will happen. Indeed, as Xia Ran said, when they returned to the tent, Charlie, Fred, George, Ron, Harry, Hermione, and Ginny had already returned first, and they were all fine. Several children except Charlie seemed a little frightened. Dad, are you okay? Charlie asked. Mr. Weasley waved his hand and said, It's okay, it's just. Alas. Thinking of the innocent people whose souls were sucked by the Dementors, he couldn't help but sigh. What's wrong? Several children, including Charlie, looked confused. Bill sighed and talked about the situation just now. What? The soul was eaten by Dementors. Several people were immediately shocked. Harry couldn't help but said, How is it possible? Aren't the Dementors controlled by the Ministry of Magic? Why? Bill smiled bitterly and said, As a dark creature, how can Dementors really obey the orders of the Ministry of Magic? Especially at this moment, the mysterious man has been back for several months. Harry and the others understood what Bill meant. You mean, the Dementors are controlled by a mysterious man? Ron said in disbelief, does the Ministry of Magic have no means at all? Mr. Weasley said tiredly, 
Fudge can't give the Dementors too good conditions, but the mysterious man can, and that's enough. Seeing that Harry, Ron and others still looked confused, Xia Ran explained, Dementors feed on human happiness. How many people can there be in Azkaban prison? They are all extremely vicious prisoners. It doesn't matter whether they have any too happy memories, and if they come to the outside world, billions of people will become their food source. After saying that, Xia Ran shrugged again and said, of course, this is too alarmist. If we really go to this step, the confidentiality regulations and the package of wizard regulations will have no effect. Dementors they can only be killed and eliminated by wizards. But it is true that the outside world is a richer hunting ground for dementors. Why weren't the Dementors eliminated? Hermione asked puzzledly. Since the Dementors are such a threat, and the Dementors are not creatures like dragons and unicorns anyway, it shouldn't matter if they are eliminated, right? Who knows? Xia Ran spread her hands and said, maybe it is a race of life after all. It would be too cruel to eliminate it directly. While several children were still confused and surprised, Mr. Weasley clapped his hands and said, Okay, children, too many things happen today. Let's go to bed early and leave here early tomorrow morning. If Molly hears she must have been worried to death after hearing these things. We took the time to sleep for a few hours, then got the door key and went back early to reassure her. Xia Ran lay down on the bunk bed. When he closed his eyes, the faces of the victims reappeared in front of him. They were dumbfounded and in a trance. They had no reaction to any movement from the outside world, as if they had lost their souls. They have indeed lost their souls. He knew that he was already very sleepy. After all, it was late at night and he was exhausted after so many things in the night, but he just couldn't fall asleep and even felt very awake. If you persist, Fudge will step down. Xia Ran took a deep breath and stopped thinking about these things. It seemed that it was no longer helpful. However, he had an idea, but it had to be supported by Dumbledore, and he decided to bring it up at the next meeting at the Order's headquarters. He finally fell asleep. After only sleeping for a few hours, Xia Ran woke up. He was not the first to wake up. Mr. Weasley was already dressed. The two woke up the others, and the two girls crawled out of the girls' tent. Mr. Weasley used magic to close up the tents and put them into backpacks, and then the group left the camp as quickly as possible. On the way, I saw Mr. Roberts standing at the door of his small stone house. Mr. Roberts looked equally strange, in a daze, but his brows were furrowed, as if he was thinking about something. The Ministry of Magic must have cast a forgetting spell on him. So that he could forget what happened last night. After all, Dementors are not something muggles should know about. Mr. Weasley whispered. Is he going to be okay? Hermione asked worriedly. Xia Ran said softly, he will be fine. But sometimes, when a person's memory has been modified, it is inevitable that he will be a little confused, but it is only temporary and he will recover after a while. As they approached the place where the port key was kept, they heard many people making an anxious noise. A large number of wizards surrounded Basil, the port key keeper, and they were all clamoring to leave the camp as soon as possible. Many people were frightened by the Dementor's attack on the camp last night. Mr. Weasley and Basil discussed it in a few words, and then everyone stood in the queue and finally received an old tire just as the sun was rising, which they could rely on to return to Stoat Mountain. Although Xia Ran can apparate, he would find it unbearable when there are too many people. After all, apparition and apparition consume very much magic power. In the faint breeze of the early morning, the group passed through the village of Otteristi. Catchpole and walked along the wet path towards the burrow. They rarely spoke along the way because everyone was extremely tired and full of stomach problems hungry again, they had set off straight away when they woke up. Without eating anything at all, and were looking forward to returning to the burrow for a good meal. Xia Ran just went along with the past. When they turned the last corner, the burrow appeared in front of them, and there was a shout from the end of the path. Oh, thank God, you are finally back. Thank God. Chapter, 176 Xia Ran opened her eyes and saw Mrs. Weasley, who was pale and nervous. She was holding a rolled-up copy of the Daily Prophet in her hand. 
she was still wearing the slippers she wore in the bedroom. At this moment, she saw a group of people. When I came back, I finally seemed more relaxed. Arthur. I'm so worried, so worried. I'm afraid of you. The newspaper said that the World Cup camp was attacked by dementors. When I saw the news, I was just. Oh, thank God, you are all back safely. She hugged Mr. Weasley's neck, and the Daily Prophet slipped from her weak hands to the ground. Xia Ran lowered her head and saw that the title was, Horrifying Scenes at the Quidditch World Cup. There are also flashy black and white photos of dementors gathering to create large areas of darkness. You are all fine, great. Mrs. Weasley was still in shock, murmuring, letting go of Mr. Weasley, and looking at the others one by one with a pair of red eyes, you are all alive, nothing happened to anyone. Oh, son. To everyone's surprise, she grabbed Fred and George and hugged them hard. She seemed to use too much force, and the twin brothers' heads slammed together with a thud. Ouch. Mom, you are going to strangle us to death. The twins protested loudly. I was yelling at you before you left. Mrs. Weasley couldn't help crying as her tears fell. I've been thinking about this. If you unfortunately encounter a dementor, and the last thing I said to you was that your O.W. L.S. test scores were not satisfactory. Oh my God. Fred. George. Okay, okay, Molly, we are all safe and sound. Mr. Weasley comforted him, deciding not to mention the innocent victims he pulled out a pair of twins from her arms and led the she walked toward the house. By the way, Bill, pick up that newspaper, I want to see what it says. Mr. Weasley said in a low voice. Xia Ran, come in quickly, I'll let you see the joke. Mrs. Weasley wiped away her tears and said sheepishly. Xia Ran smiled slightly and said, how could it be? I will continue to trouble you, Mrs. Weasley, I'm here to eat again. Welcome, welcome. Sharon, you are always welcome to the burrow. Mrs. Weasley said. You guys sit down first, things will be ready soon. Children, make a cup of tea for Dad and the Professor. Mrs. Weasley looked at the children and said, turned and walked into the kitchen. Xia Ran followed the others and squeezed into the small kitchen. Hermione first made Mrs. Weasley a cup of strong tea, oh, thank you, Hermione. Mrs. Weasley said movedly, Hermione didn't she smiled sheepishly, and then she poured Mr. Weasley and Sharon a cup of tea, which was not that strong, but Mr. Weasley insisted on pouring a little Ogden aged fire whiskey into his teacup. Bill came in at this moment with the newspaper. Bill, what did the newspaper say? What lies did Fudge tell the Daily Prophet to tell? Xia Ran said while sipping tea. Bill immediately laughed and said, Xia Ran, you didn't even look at it, so you said it was a lie. He opened the newspaper, glanced at it a few times, frowned tightly, and hummed, but I have to say, you are right, Xia Ran. He handed the newspaper to Mr. Weasley. Mr. Weasley hurriedly browsed the first page of the newspaper, Xia Ran peered in and looked around, and several children stood behind Mr. Weasley and looked over his shoulder. In the 422nd Quidditch World Cup, the Irish team won the championship. Victor Crumb caught the golden snitch. Moran and Mallet performed well and deserved to be the world's strongest chasers. News related to the World Cup was at the bottom of the first page, occupying less than one-sixth of a small space. It was not at all what the Quidditch World Cup should have been. Most of the first page was devoted to last night's Dementor attack. Xia Ran looked up. Shocked. Dementors appear at the World Cup camp. The World Cup is over, and when people, mainly supporters of the Irish team, are celebrating, the Dementors who were supposed to be on the prison island of Azkaban suddenly appear at the World Cup camp and cause a very unusual situation. Huge casualties. It is reported that more than 4,000 people were attacked by Dementors, more than 700 of them were seriously injured, and 35 people suffered from the Dementors sucking their souls. Oh, my God. Hermione and Ginny immediately covered their mouths, how could. Harry also looked embarrassed and asked, Mr. Weasley, Professor, are so many people really. Dead? Xia Ran looked solemn, but shook her head and replied, probably not that many. Should it? 
George even asked, does that mean someone was indeed kissed by a Dementor? Xia Ran nodded and sighed. Oh my god. Several children looked sad. Originally, those people came to watch the Quidditch World Cup, but in the end they lost their souls and lives in the Quidditch World Cup camp. If their families could get got this sad news. According to this newspaper's understanding, Dumbledore showed up at a critical moment. Why couldn't he show up earlier? Is it to increase his reputation? After all, gratitude in desperate moments is more real and intense. The Ministry of Magic is panicking and has lost control of the Dementors. Our minister also had a fierce quarrel with Albus Dumbledore. For this reason, we boldly guess that maybe this matter is both parties had known about it for a long time. But in the end the situation got out of control, and both Fudge and Dumbledore wanted to shirk their own responsibilities and let others take the blame. The facts are unknown, but this incident has brought shame to the country and sadness to the people. Who will be responsible for this? Fudge. Or. Dumbledore. Mr. Weasley read a paragraph from the newspaper and said angrily, that's nonsense. Are there no limits to getting attention? Who wrote this? Ah, Rita Skeeter, no wonder. Dumbledore also arrived at the World Cup camp last night. Several children were surprised. Bill nodded and said, yes, otherwise it may take a while to drive away the Dementors, and we don't know how many innocent people will be killed. He sighed in tone. Dumbledore was very angry about this and had a big fight with Fudge, Mr. Weasley said. It seems that some things must be put on the agenda. I have to bring it up again at the next meeting. Xia Ran said softly. Mr. Weasley glanced at Xia Ran uneasily and guessed what his proposal would be. Okay, Xia Ran. Well, I won't comment too much. Mr. Weasley looked embarrassed he was, after all, an official of the Ministry of Magic. Chapter, 177 Xia Ran said, the price paid by so many people is already heavy enough. I know, but. Well, we'll talk about it later. Mr. Weasley said uneasily. Dad, what are you and the professor talking about? Ron couldn't help asking. Mrs. Weasley shouted, adults speak, children don't interrupt. She also guessed what point Xia Ran was going to put forward at the next meeting, and it was really best for children not to get involved in this kind of thing. Xia Ran suddenly frowned and said, what I want to know is that the Dementors rioted collectively and invaded the Quidditch World Cup camp. Why is there no news about Azkaban prison? Are the prisoners just peaceful like this? This is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for them. Let me take a look. Mr. Weasley said, unfolding the newspaper and flipping through it, shaking his head, no, except for mentioning the Azkaban prison when telling the news about the Dementor riots, there is nothing there was a reference to Azkaban prison. Charlie looked solemn and said, as Xia Ran said, will the prisoners and dark wizards in the prison ignore the Dementors who have left the prison and not do any unnecessary actions? For example. Jailbreak. It seems that Fudge ordered the Daily Prophet to conceal relevant information again. Xia Ran rubbed her forehead and said. Confused. Mr. Weasley slapped him hard, startling several children, how can such a thing be concealed and not reported? Those are extremely vicious criminals, dark wizards with bloody hands. Fugui's brain is in trouble is there water? He looked furious. In order to reduce the harm of the Dementor incident as much as possible, it seems that Fudge has resorted to any means. Even things that happened under his rule will be treated as if they have never happened. Xia Ran sneered, the dark wizards ran out, have reunited under the mysterious man, everyone in the magical world is bound to be in danger. Fudge has to step down because of his stupid behavior in the past few months, and he will definitely not allow this to happen. But a dark wizard would kill innocent people? Harry asked in disbelief. Do you think Fudge will care? Bill said coldly, he will always only care about the power in his hands. As long as he can guarantee his position as Minister of Magic, I think he might even be able to surrender to the mysterious man. Is he crazy? Hermione asked. Xia Ran said coldly, yes, Hermione, you are right, Fudge has gone crazy for the power in his hands. No. Mr. Weasley said suddenly, 
I have to go back to the office to confirm the situation in Azkaban. I hope there is nothing. Sigh. He said with a sigh. Arthur, but you are still on vacation. Mrs. Weasley was slightly surprised and said, and this matter has nothing to do with your department. It is the task of the Aurors and the Department of Fantastic Beasts. Without you, they it can be handled well, right? I have to go back, Molly. Mr. Weasley said. It's best to return to work at this time. I believe Dumbledore will agree with my decision here. Well, I will go upstairs and change my just put on your robe and leave. Eat something before leaving. You must be hungry. Mrs. Weasley said, you haven't worked overtime since the day you know who lost power. I'll eat while walking later. Mr. Weasley walked up the stairs in three steps at a time. Mrs. Weasley glanced at her husband's back worriedly, looked away, and said, Sia ran, and the children, let's eat something, don't get hungry. She brought a few eggs and sausages up, and gave each person a everyone has a glass of milk. After Sia ran had breakfast, Mr. Weasley came downstairs to leave the burrow, and the two of them went out together. Be careful, Mr. Weasley, don't reveal your position too much, even if Fudge may have already guessed. Sia Ran said. Well, I will ask Kingsley and Tonks first. Mr. Weasley nodded and disapparated with a snap. Sia Ran followed the apparition back to her Fremont Manor. Fuji. Ha. Sia Ran smiled coldly. In the following days, the Dementor attacks began to cool down rapidly. As for the situation in Azkaban prison, no one mentioned it, not even a word was mentioned in the Daily Prophet. This is obviously abnormal. Such a bad incident happened on such an important occasion, and the associated effects were extremely serious. As a result, the newspaper only published it for two days and then stopped publishing. Anyone with a discerning eye knows who is behind this. Apart from the Minister of Magic, Cornelius Fudge, who can put such pressure on the Daily Prophet, but just because there was no report in the newspapers, it doesn't mean that there was no news circulating privately. After all, the situation in Azkaban prison spread in a small area, and spread rapidly. Finally, almost the entire magical world knew about it. For this reason, people in the magical world were panicked, and trading places such as Diagon Alley in Hogsmeade Village, everything suddenly became deserted. Even if people had needs, they would come in a hurry, buy what they needed and then leave quickly. Rumor has it that dozens of dark wizards escaped from Azkaban prison. More and more people are beginning to believe Dumbledore's words. Although the Daily Prophet is still continuing to smear Dumbledore, what is the reality? Such a big bad incident has happened, and the Ministry of Magic has continuously they couldn't come up with any countermeasures or methods. They only knew how to smear Dumbledore and blame Dumbledore. Almost everyone was extremely disappointed with the Ministry of Magic. However, Dumbledore's voice could not be heard by people in the wizarding world. After all, newspapers were controlled by the Ministry of Magic. Fortunately, there was still a newspaper called The Quibbler that openly stood up to support Dumbledore and reported on the Azkaban prison break. And the Dementor attack on the World Cup camp, which seemed to make Fudge very angry, and strictly banned the quiet and did not allow the newspaper to continue to operate. But at this time, there are so many wizards who are willing to buy the quibbler. Almost all wizards in the British wizarding world have ordered the quibbler. It is said that Mr. Lovegood, the editor-in-chief of the quibbler, is still troubled because it appears in their newspaper. The amount of space devoted to the harassment rogues and other creatures whose existence is unknown is inevitably reduced. Yes, I admit that I am annoyed. Mr. Lovegood said to Sia Ran, but to a certain extent, it is indeed a good thing, isn't it? After all, the sales volume has increased several times. This is located in the borough. Sia Ran was invited to be a guest and accepted an exclusive interview with the Quibbler magazine. Hello, Mr. Lovegood. Sia Ran shook hands with the white-haired wizard. He is Xenophilius Lovegood, the editor-in-chief of the Quibbler magazine. He looks a bit like each other, with marshmallow-like white hair hanging on his shoulders, the tassel on his hat hanging straight in front of his nose. And wearing a the egg yellow robe is dazzling in color, and a gold chain hangs around his neck, with a strange symbol shining on it, much like a triangular eye. 
Ran knew what it was, the symbol of the Deathly Hallows. The Resurrection Stone was in his hand, and he also knew the whereabouts of the Elder Wand and the Invisibility Cloak. Chapter, 178 Actually, I wanted to interview Albus Dumbledore. You know, he is the protagonist after all. Xenophilius Lovegood regretted, but unfortunately, he did not agree to my invitation for an interview. And Professor Fremont, as my daughter's teacher, you were also a member of the scene at that time, but you are not an official of the Ministry of Magic, so I can only invite you for an exclusive interview. He said with great regret, he could definitely dig out a lot of news from Dumbledore. Then, I'm really sorry. Xia Ran laughed. Okay, no more chatting, let's get started. Mr. Lovegood looked at the Weasleys beside him and said, Arthur and Molly, it should be okay to borrow your yard. It's okay, we just happen to be listening. Mr. Weasley smiled. He was an employee of the Ministry of Magic and could not express his opinion on this matter. Several Weasley children, as well as Harry and Hermione, were all in the courtyard of the borough. They had just been driving away the goblins, and now the goblins were still laughing and laughing outside the yard, and now they all surrounded them. Come here, I have never experienced this kind of exclusive interview report, although the subject of the exclusive interview is Professor Fremont. Luna, come here quickly and take a picture for us first. Mr. Lovegood waved to the goblin and shouted. A girl who looked a little weird ran over. She had unkempt, dirty, waist-length blonde hair, very light eyebrows, and two bulging eyes, which gave her a kind of surprised expression. As a professor at Hogwarts, Xia Ran naturally knew this crazy girl Luna Lovegood. As for Harry and others who were watching, only Ginny got acquainted with her because she was in the same grade as Luna. Everyone else didn't recognize Luna yet, but their eyes looked strange. Hermione and Mrs. Weasley frowned more frequently. Because Luna's outfit is so weird. She had a crazy energy all over her body. Perhaps just to be on the safe side, she actually inserted the wand behind her left ear, and then wore a necklace made of butterbeer corks. Luna looked at it. It seems more pleasant. The two little girls, Ginny and Luna, greeted each other. Hello, Professor, Luna said cheerfully. Xia Ran chuckled and said, Hello, Luna. Luna had a camera hung around her neck, but she did not start taking pictures immediately. Instead, she raised a finger and said, Dad, look. A goblin actually bit me just now. That's great. Mr. Lovegood seemed to have forgotten about the interview. With a happy look on his face, he grabbed Luna's outstretched finger, carefully looked at the bleeding spot, and said, Luna, my dear. If you feel any talent emerging today, perhaps a sudden urge to sing opera or recite in the language of mermaids, don't suppress it. It may be a talent gifted to you by the sappers. What? Fred and George looked at each other as they listened, as if they suspected there was something wrong with their ears. Ron crossed his arms and snorted loudly from his nose. You can laugh all you want. Luna said calmly as she picked up the camera. But my father has done a lot of research on engineer magic. Excuse me, sapper. Bill asked politely. Mr. Lovegood replied, Gnomes, they are very cute. Few wizards understand how much useful things we can learn from clever little goblins. Oh, by the way, their correct name is, Garden Engineers. Charlie shrugged and said, Our goblins know a lot of great curse words, but I guess Fred and George taught them that. Hey, my dear brother, don't talk nonsense. George said immediately. We will not allow you to slander your good brother's reputation. Fred also said. Mrs. Weasley's eyes seemed to sweep over the twin brothers, so sharp that the twins couldn't help but tremble. Ginny burst out laughing, barely holding back under Mrs. Weasley's disapproving gaze. Luna, don't you need some medicine? Xia Ran asked. He knew Luna and her father's weird temperament, I can't say it's weird, I can only say that their father and daughter are very different from ordinary people, and they view the world very differently. The angle was very tricky, so he wouldn't be as surprised as the others. Oh, it's okay. Luna said, sucking her fingers like a baby, looking at Xia ran up and down, not shying away from him at all because he was a professor, Professor, I'm really surprised that you would agree to Dad's invitation for an interview. 
I thought you were not interested in any of this and were indifferent to fame and fortune. After all, this matter is too big. Xia Ran said softly. Luna, take a picture. Arthur, Molly, do you want to get into the frame together? Mr. Lovegood urged. Mr. and Mrs. Weasley looked at each other, shook their heads and said, No, if people from the Ministry of Magic see it, Arthur will be easily punished. After all, Mr. Weasley is still an official of the Ministry of Magic. Under the strict concealment order of the leading minister, wizard officials in the ministry are not allowed to talk about the Dementor attack and the situation in Azkaban prison. If he goes on camera, the influence of the quibbler is very bad. He might even be fired directly by Fudge. Naturally, Mr. and Mrs. Weasley didn't want to take the risk. Xia Ran doesn't care because he belongs to Hogwarts and is not under the jurisdiction of the Ministry of Magic. Besides, Xia Ran is very confident. Is he afraid of Fudge? If Fudge wasn't the Minister of Magic and held a high position, Xia Ran wouldn't have given Fudge a few curses to teach him a lesson. Now, we have to make some more plans. Bang! Okay, Luna said happily, putting down the camera. Ahem, Mr. Lovegood, let's get started. Xia Ran said with a slight cough. Mr. Lovegood took out a quill pen from his arms, opened a notebook, and turned to the latest blank page. Xia Ran vaguely saw many strange animal images on it. The Daily Prophet said that everything is business as usual in Azkaban prison. Professor Fremont, what do you think of this? Mr. Lovegood asked. Xia Ran sneered and said, Fudge's lie. Almost all of us know it, of course, a very small number of wizards are willing to believe that the Ministry of Magic just pretends that I didn't say it, let me ask. As a prison guard, the Dementors if we all run away together, will everything be business as usual in Azkaban prison? If you think about it, you will know that this is impossible. What is that, Azkaban? The wizarding prison of the wizarding world. There are some extremely vicious dark wizards in prison there, and they are all insane. I believe many people in the wizarding world have suffered from them. As a result, the Ministry of Magic issued a statement, Azkaban prison is very good, and all those prisoners are still incarcerated. On the prison island. Does Fudge think we are stupid? If a dark wizard doesn't seize this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity, he will just stay in prison and wait to die. Does Fudge think dark wizards are idiots, or do we the rest of us? Chapter 179. Xia Ran said it very rudely. But looking at the expressions of everyone on the sidelines, they all nodded in agreement, except Mr. Weasley who was a little helpless. So Professor Fremont, do you think Fudge's response and the Ministry of Magic's approach are wrong? Mr. Lovegood's quills were flying. Do I still think so? Xia Ran sneered, I'll bet, a thousand gold galleons, that more than 80% of the wizards in the magic world are interested in Cornelius Fudge and the Ministry of Magic under his leadership has very strong opinions. Dangerous creatures like Dementors can easily appear in the Quidditch World Cup camp, so where will they appear next? Diagon Alley. Hogwarts. Hogsmeade. Orest. Mungo's. Hospital. That's right. Mr. Lovegood nodded and said, that's what I think. Fudge is a wizard with strong ambitions, oh, of course, I'm not saying this is wrong, Fudge has always been planning take over Gringotts and control the flow of money in the magical world. Sorry. Bill said in surprise, you mean Fudge wants to control Gringotts wizarding bank? Bill is a curse breaker at Gringotts, Mrs. Weasley added. Bill Weasley, the excellent wizard, I know you, Shaggy, sorry, that was your nickname in the Daily Prophet. Mr. Lovegood said. Bill frowned and said, I know, it's all the fault of that terrible woman, Rita Skeeter. Seriously, son, your hair is too long. Rita Skeeter never does good deeds and only catches the wind, but I think she is right about this. Mrs. Weasley stroked her hand in a friendly manner. His own magic wand, as long as you let me do something with your hair, it will be completely solved with just one touch, and you will have no worries at all. Mom, I don't know how to cut it. Bill said helplessly. Ever since he came home, Mrs. Weasley had been forcing him to cut his hair. Ginny supported Bill and said, Mom, you are so out of date. 
Dumbledore's hair is longer than this. Mr. Lovegood, why do you think so? Billion changed the subject, by the way, I am the curse breaker of Gringotts in Egypt, but I am planning to apply to be transferred back to Gringotts in England. Fudge has this an idea. You know, apart from us curse breakers, Gringotts mainly has goblins making the decisions. Will they agree to Fudge's request? So Fudge is the goblin killer. Luna said in a dreamy and ethereal tone. What? Everyone was shocked and then confused. Fudge was a goblin killer. Why had they never heard of such rumors? Xia Ran secretly smiled. The strange tempers and words of the love goods could always shock people, whether they were acquaintances or strangers. Of course, the whole thing about Fudge Goblin Killer is a lie. After all, he is the minister of the Ministry of Magic. How can he do such a thing of killing the lives of other races? However, the consequences of many of Fudge's behavioral decisions are no better than if he had done it himself. For example, the Quidditch World Cup camp was attacked by a group of Dementors. If he had taken Dumbledore's warning to heart, I don't say that this incident will definitely be prevented from happening, but at least there won't be as many casualties as there are now. There are only about 30 wizards whose souls have disappeared, and hundreds of other wizards whose souls have been traumatized. During this time, the medical staff at St. Mungo's Hospital of Witchcraft and Wizardry worked overtime every day and hated Fudge to death. An insider from the Ministry of Magic said that Fudge was always discussing how to deal with goblins, and was also loudly showing off how he killed some poor goblins. Threw them into the water and drowned them, pushed them from tall buildings and fell to their death, and fell down. Some were poisoned to death, some were baked into pies, and it is said that Fudge even ate a few. Mr. Lovegood said calmly. Inside the Ministry of Magic. Mr. Weasley was a little uneasy. Can you tell who it is? Sorry, I shouldn't ask, but I think. Fudge hasn't reached this stage yet, right? Really? Mr. Lovegood raised his eyebrows and said, if you knew all the bad things Fudge had done, would you still think so? Of course, many people think that the quibbler is talking nonsense, but every article we publish has a scientific basis and has been carefully studied and considered. Mr. Lovegood said proudly, I dare say that the Daily Prophet is not as dedicated as the quibbler. Harry, Ron, and Ginny had strange expressions and seemed to be suppressing their laughter. Hermione and Mrs. Weasley frowned and wanted to say something to refute Mr. Lovegood's remarks, but gave up after thinking about it. Uh, Mr. Lovegood, let's get back to the interview. Xia Ran said helplessly. Oh, yes. Mr. Lovegood said as he woke up from his dream, Professor Fremont, what kind of wizard do you think Dumbledore is? Will he be a good wizard leader in the magical world? Please forgive me, Fudge is not the leader of the wizarding world in my opinion, Dumbledore is. I agree with you on this point. Mr. Weasley nodded immediately. Xia Ran pondered for a moment and said, Dumbledore is the most powerful white wizard in the contemporary era. Whether he wants it or not, he is a flag in the magical world and a flag against dark wizards. He is also the only person who is feared by the mysterious man. Fudge can't compare to this alone. The leader of the wizarding world is not necessarily the strongest, but he can't fall out of the top five, right? Fudge. He can't even get into the top fifty. Xia Ran smiled and said, Fudge is the most failed minister of magic. It seems that the final conclusion has been reached. Later, Mr. Lovegood talked with Xia Ran about other topics, such as the topic of molesting flies. Mr. Lovegood always believed that molesting flies existed. Professor, the mole fly must be 100% real. It is an invisible little creature that floats into people's heads and confuses their brains. Fudge is probably poisoned by the mole fly. Lovegood Mr. De stands by his statement. Xia Ran smiled bitterly and said, maybe, harassing flies. It is indeed possible that it really exists. After all, harassing flies is something that cannot be falsified. Okay, Luna, say goodbye to your friends. It's time for us to go back. Mr. Lovegood stood up and shook hands with Xia Ran. Mr. Weasley invited, let's go after dinner, Xenophilius. Your family doesn't live far anyway. 
The Lovegood family and the Weasley family both lived on the outskirts of Esti. Catchpole village, but in different directions. Mrs. Weasley was already busy in the kitchen at this time. She stuck her head out and shouted, and Sia ran, you can stay and eat too. Sia ran smiled and said, Mrs. Weasley, I won't be polite. You invited me and I agreed. Welcome, Sharon. Mr. Weasley said, children, hello Luna. Sharon, Xenophilius, let's go in and chat. Bill, make us a pot of tea. Charlie, go help your mother. Chapter, 180 When they left the burrow, it was already dark. Sia Ran said goodbye to the Weasley family and the love goods, and used apparition to leave. The next day, the Quibbler published as usual, publishing this conversation. A sensation in the magic world. Shock. Even though people have already speculated on what Sia Ran said, some well-informed people know the basics and specific circumstances, but they still don't have the courage and courage to stand up and refute the Ministry of Magic. And Sia Ran is teaching the combat class at Hogwarts, and people are talking about it. Could it be that? Hogwarts and the Ministry of Magic have completely broken off. This is a huge event. All eyes were on the Ministry of Magic, anticipating Fudge's reaction. Fudge was furious and reportedly reprimanded many wizarding officials within the Ministry of Magic, and ordered the Daily Prophet to respond to this smear incident. He himself came directly to the stage and also reprimanded Xia Ran for his behavior, saying that he had destroyed the peace of the magic world and made people panic, so that no one could work with peace of mind. Sharon, you used to be an official of the Ministry of Magic. After working under Dumbledore for two years, have you forgotten the purpose of the Ministry of Magic? Peace and tranquility in the wizarding world are hard won. We will never allow any people destroy. No one is an exception. Fudge said. Sia Ran saw the news in the newspaper and just smiled. Peace. Can there be peace after Voldemort returns? What do the more than thirty people who died count? The so-called small price for peace. Sia Ran didn't even bother to refute. And because of this sudden interview report, Fudge had to put down what he was doing, he had planned to join others in impeaching Dumbledore and make Dumbledore step down as the principal of Hogwarts. Lucius Malfoy put a lot of effort into this matter, he devoted all his energy to how to reverse the unfavorable situation and the huge pressure of public opinion. For this reason, he was so anxious that he often got angry. The wizards in the Ministry of Magic were easily reluctant to meet Fudge. Fudge wants to block the Quibbler, but the problem is that the Quibbler is purely a private magazine, and the Ministry of Magic's orders have no control over the Quibbler. During this time, countless people in the wizarding world have, are all ordering the quibbler. While Mr. Lovegood was happy, he also mixed in some private goods and published articles about strange creatures such as harassing flies in the quibbler, hoping to attract more like-minded wizards. Sia Ran is also one of the people who subscribed to the quibbler. But he came to London just before school started, because the latest order of the Phoenix meeting was held. Sia Ran, well done. Sirius gave a thumbs up and handed over a glass of beer. Sia Ran took a sip of the beer and said with a smile, Fuji is just unpopular. Hey, if it weren't for the fact that I was cleared of charges, I wouldn't be able to openly express my opinion, mainly because Dumbledore doesn't agree, otherwise I would have to pay for an exclusive interview with Mr. Lovegood. Sirius laughed happily. Sia Ran was dumbfounded. Sirius inherited the Black family's legacy and was a real rich man, one of the richest wizards in the magic world. Mundungus laughed and said, Then Sirius, how about you fund a newspaper yourself and publish whatever articles you want to write, as long as I can publish a few articles on it. Hee <laughs> hee, the remuneration cannot be less. Huh, it's too much trouble to run a newspaper or something. I'm not in the mood. Sirius shook his head. Sirius, man, what era is this from? Mundungus picked up a silver tableware and wiped it, his eyes slightly narrowed, as if he had the urge to carry it away. Sirius glanced at it casually and said, My grandfather made it custom made for decades. Sia Ran glanced around and saw that there were many people attending this order of the Phoenix Gathering. In addition to him, Sirius, and Mundungus, there were also Mr. and Mrs. Weasley, Bill, Charlie, Lupin, and Moody. 
Kingsley, Tonks and other wizards from the Ministry of Magic also arrived, and finally Dumbledore, Professor McGonagall, Professor Snape, and Hagrid arrived together, and the meeting officially began immediately. Let us first observe three minutes of silence for the victims at the Quidditch World Cup camp. Dumbledore stood up, bowed his head slightly, and recited something in a low voice. Xia Ran also stood up to observe silence. Three minutes passed and everyone sat down one after another. The kitchen of Black's old house was so full that it was almost full. Creature was not in the kitchen and went upstairs. After looking at everyone, Dumbledore said, this meeting is mainly to fight against the arrest of dark wizards. According to reliable intelligence, when the Dementors attacked the Quidditch World Cup camp, a riot broke out in Azkaban prison at the same time. Dozens of dark wizards escaped from Azkaban and are still at large. Of course, we all know that those dark wizards must have returned to Voldemort's command. Many people looked a little unnatural. It is confirmed that Hogwarts will hold the Triwizard Tournament in the new school year. Our current objections are invalid. After all, we also signed and agreed to it. Dumbledore said solemnly, at that time, Miller and I will the energy of Wa, Snape, as well as Sharon, Rubius, and Alastor must be focused on Hogwarts to prevent the students from being persecuted by dark wizards. He looked at the group of order members present and said, you will have to worry about the situation outside by then. Don't worry, Dumbledore. Lupin said, I have contacted the werewolf army. They are skeptical about joining the Death Eater organization. I think they are a force that can be fought for. After a pause, sighed, werewolves are mostly innocent victims, and except for full moon nights, they are basically harmless at other times. Lupin's mission is to infiltrate the werewolves and try to get as many werewolves to stay away from this war, or to turn to the Order of the Phoenix, at least not to join Voldemort. Ran glanced at Snape, who shook his head slightly. It was obvious that the development of a drug to remove the werewolf's disease characteristics was not going well. By the way, Hagrid, regarding the giant matter, you may have to take action personally. Dumbledore said. Hagrid is a hybrid giant, so he is naturally more likely to come into contact with giants, and ordinary wizards will usually fight when they get close. Hagrid nodded. Sirius, how is the situation with the vampires? Sirius suddenly frowned and shook his head, not too optimistic. They seem to be more willing to follow Voldemort, because Voldemort will not have any restrictions on them, and we ask them to ban sucking human blood. Vampires think this is absolutely impossible. Conditions accepted. Dumbledore rubbed his forehead and said, put aside the vampires for now. They basically don't set foot in England. Now they mainly focus on the goblins. Bill, is there any news about the goblins?